A very good morning to you and welcome to the second round coverage of the 151st Open from Royal Liverpool. We're on the northwest coast of England this week and Hoylake is playing host for the 13th time in Open history. It's 6.30 a.m. here local time. Sun's been up for around about an hour, hour and a half or so. And the golf course is in absolutely pristine conditions. We hope you can settle in and uh, join us as we get the uh, first few tea times off this morning. But while we have a moment, why don't we tell you the story of the opening round? There were lots of them on the leaderboard as well. Tommy Fleetwood, about 30 miles from where he grew up, in with a 66 same score for the amateur Christo Lamprecht, who won uh, the amateur, didn't he, at Hillside. Again, about 30 miles from here. He loves this coastline. And Emiliano Grillo looking for his first major title, trying to replicate what Robert Di Vincenzo did. The Argentinian won here at Royal Liverpool. He's got so much history. Max Homer, three under par round of 68. He's finding his feet in the majors, slowly but surely. And the two Jordans, Matthew Jordan and Jordan Spieth, out with 69s yesterday. Matthew Jordan, what a reception it was for him on the opening tee shot. He's grown up at this very golf course. Some of the big names in golf there at minus one. Scheffler, Matsuyama, Kepka, Cantlay. It is the who's who. As well as uh, Shoffley, Victor Hovland as well with rounds of 70. As we scroll through the scores, Lucas Herbert had the lead for a little while in the opening round. Ended up with level par after coming a little unstuck at 17. That might be a story as the week progresses. Same score for Tyrrell Hatton and Rory McIlroy at level par. What a par it was as well for Rory down 18. Got stuck in one of the pot bunkers. Made a good up, up and down in the end. There's the defending champion golfer of the year and Cameron Smith with an opening round of 72. I'm Ali Whitaker, and alongside me in the commentary box this morning, Dale Hayes and Nicholas Colsart to take you through the uh, opening sequence here. Dale, there were loads of great stories yesterday. What was your favorite? Certainly, and being from South Africa, it was obviously Christa Lumbracht, the young amateur who won the amateur championship just a few weeks ago. And he's a massive hitter with the golf ball. He hits the ball absolutely miles. Six foot eight. He was born on a long weekend and uh, he's, he's just a very exciting player. You never know what you're going to get. No, you don't. And great to have uh, him in the mix. Haven't seen a, an amateur lead the Open since Tom Lewis back in 2011. Nico, what were your takeaways from the opening round? The course seemed to be playing very fairly. Yeah, I think uh, the, 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 the players kind of managed their way around this golf course as difficult as it was. I was a bit surprised of, of how we didn't see that many low scores in the morning. And then in the end of the day, when you looked at the scoreboard, just the good scores starting to come in a little bit. It's a different challenge this morning. It's a little bit colder. It's a little bit overcast. So it's going to play definitely different with, differently this morning. It was around about a, a shot difference in terms of uh, scoring average, uh, easier in the morning than the afternoon. Conditions are good out there at the moment. Only about 14 degrees or so. Maybe a slightly cooler than that with the wind chill off the River Dee. Expecting a high of 17. A couple of uh, very light showers have blown their way through already. Might get a little sprinkling as the day goes on. But all in all, pretty perfect for scoring right now. You can see there is a premium on hitting the fairway at the first if you can, if you can settle the nerves. And it's not long now until this group of Rasmus Hoygaard, Matthew Southgate, and uh, Alex Fitzpatrick get their rounds underway. It's David Lancaster who will be teeing off all of the players on the first this morning. Looks like they're ready to go now. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Royal Liverpool for the second day display of the 151st Open. This is game number one on the tee from Denmark, Rasmus Hoygaard. A winner two weeks ago in his uh, native Denmark, the first to do so. 
Yeah, the maiden Himmeland came a little unstuck with an eight on the third hole yesterday, but he is a supreme talent. Yes. Very fortunate. He's missed it so far left that he's actually on the other fairway, which is the 18th. On the team from England, Matthew Southgate. Known to be a Lynx specialist level par. One bogey, one birdie in his uh, opening round of level. in his last two holes to qualify in Wales Southgate. On the tee from England, Alex Fitzpatrick. Great storyline, Nico, having both Matt, Matt and Alex in the field this week. Yeah, two sets of brothers playing this week, the Orgard twins and the Fitzpatrick. What a thrill for these boys. Family affair. Pipe that one down there. Opening round of 74 for Alex on day one. It's a name we'll get to know more as the years progress. I don't think anyone questions that. He was watching on back in 2013 when his brother Matt won the silver medal in this event. So the first tea time, game one, is out on course now. As we mentioned, uh, it is our 13th time to Royal Liverpool for the Open. Been some great stories over the years. Let's wind back the clock. In uh, 1897, the first Open champion here was Harold Hilton. It was his second. Scotsman uh, Sandy Hurd won in 1902. Listen to these years as we roll through. Arno Massey became uh, the first French major champion in 1907. J.H. Taylor took it in 1913. And the Americans had their times with uh, Walter Hagen at Hoylake as well as Bobby Jones. They're great pictures as we roll through. Was, uh, of course, Peter Thompson won his third of five Open Championships here in 1956. There's Roberto Di Vincenzo, who came first and only South American to win the Open. Tiger Woods, it was an emotional one after the passing of his father, Earl, in 2006. And McElroy took it in uh, 2014. It was his last major victory. Even John Rahm said he'd like to see him get another. And they were playing out alongside each other yesterday. And just to make sure there's no confusion, Alison Whitaker wasn't there, in fact, in 1897. It does give you a, a little bit, the, a bit of the understanding of the history of this event, though, Nico, how special it is. Yeah, I mean, it's not often you see those old videos and pictures and everything, and and. Every time I see them, I just realize how much history there is and how grateful we should all be to walk these fairways after all these incredible golfers that have paved the way in history. Here's the ball placements down the first and the 18th for Rasmus Hoygaard. Ended up on the short grass. Not sure if that counts as a fairway. He turns around and plays his second shot the other way. He can say, this was the shortest round I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Southgate went through the qualifying, so uh, he was successful there. Level par yesterday. A good round of golf. Yeah, and his change, uh, his planes have slightly changed, Matthew Southgate. He was supposed to do some radio work this week and then qualified in, so another good story this week. It was an emotional victory. His fourth on the DP World Tour for Hoygaard. Like I said earlier, they'd never had a home winner. In the end, he posted the number of minus 13, and then all of the leaders faltered 
including uh, Robert McIntyre. It was a six-hole playoff he had to endure in the end, but well worth the wait for the crowds that all stuck around as well at Himmeland. Yeah, an amazing new generation of players from Denmark. I mean, of course, there's the Hoygaard twins, but I think there's over a dozen of them on tour. So, I mean, hats off to the Danish Golf Federation for, you know, bringing these kids into the game. As we watch Matthew Southgate hacking it out of the bunker, trying to go as far as he can. Not much else you can do, so he's put his ball in a position where he's got a wedge shot into the screen and will be doing his very best to save par. Don't want to drop a shot on the very first hole. No, he knows when to take his medicine. Remember at Carnoustie himself, another open rotor venue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, normal flat one of these. Yeah, trying to finish just right of the stick, yeah. Yeah, okay. Perfect. Played the Walker Cup here on this uh, very golf course in 2019, Alex Fitzpatrick. And there's a little bit of his older brother in this in this backswing. Very kind of fast and Sort of laid off at the top. Strong. So often you see that amongst uh, siblings, don't you? It's, uh, strange. You, you sometimes do. You know, the Henning brothers all had very different swings and all very different speeds. It was quite, quite strange how different they were. Yeah, I think if the, the quarter sisters are, are quite similar, then you've got the Hoy guards. Who, uh, where Rasmus has kind of a more fluid motion, Nico. Ni uh, Nikolai's is a kind of a, sh a shorter, more powerful move. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rasmus was a, a bit more the, s the steadier one of the two, a bit more robotic looking like, and Nikolai had a bit more flash to his game. As we're looking from here, I mean, this is actually an amazing angle for Rasmus. Yeah, he's quite a long way down too. Yeah, I mean, that big roping hook pitched on the fairway and Sorry. probably had about 30, 40 a roll. No, I thought you right. It's always a bit complicated for caddies to get the right yardage when you play for another, from another fairway. Just trying to pitch it, maybe. Coming on with thirties. Yeah. You got a field shot with that. Yeah. Tom Haling on the bag. Englishman that lives in France. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just left over this one. Stay there. Not bad from out of position. That back left pin on the opening hole. Look at Bertie coming for Rasmus Hoygaard. A little cheeky knowing grin. That was the old so bad it's actually okay that every now and then you see. Wind's just starting. Maybe not quite a, a club out there, but, but a factor nonetheless. No question about that, it's definitely a factor. Now, this is Southgate's third shot. And that's a beauty. Position A, nice uphill putt. So not to save his par. It's steady, like I said, one under on the front, one over on the back. Now the weather conditions ahead. Meant to get up to about 20 miles per hour. Do you think it is similar to yesterday, right, Nico? Well, I uh, know. I actually do think that this is a lot tougher this morning than, you know, what, what it was yesterday morning. There was probably half the wind and it was a, a lot warmer. So these two together will make shots into the wind play a lot longer than it did yesterday. Wind progressively built as the day went on, which uh, most of the time near the coast, it does exactly that. That's Kensei Harata making his debut 
And they have the company today of Kung Nam Kang, the 40-year-old and uh, a recent winner on the DP World Tour, and Daniel Hillier, strong player out of New Zealand. <laughs> Kang is stalwart on the Korean tour. This is game number two. On the team from New Zealand, Daniel Hillier. When Eagle Birdie Eagle, five under par and three holes to race through the field at the Belfry and take his first title on the DP World Tour at the Betfred British Masters. Played the Open two years ago, missed the cut at Royal St George's. ahead of him today after a 78. On the tee from Korea, Kyung Nam Kang. Might be a familiar face if you tuned into the coverage on the DP World Tour earlier this year. Played in the Korea Championship at Jack Nicholas Golf Club. Had a top 10 there. for two decades now. Yeah. On the team from Japan, Kensei Hirata. And from five shots back to win the Mizuno Open. It's part of the Open qualifying series. Got a great little sense of humor as well, Kensei Hirata. It's a good video of him talking about the bunkers. How are they? Easy, he said with a wink. Finds the right rock down the first. We go up to the green with Alex Fitzpatrick. Quite long grass here. He's got a very lofty club. That's obviously a lob wedge. And we're trying to pitch it up onto the edge of the green. And that's beautifully played. Fantastic shot. There's uh, Minwoo Lee in the black pants and the vest. It's out in the, uh, the seventh yeah, match yeah. today. So just a, yeah, a little under an hour's time. This coach over on the right, Richie Smith. And Matthew Southgate to try to save a bar on the first. Drove into the bunker, hit a wet shot to here. Just slides by. Grew up on the coast, Matthew Southgate. Loves everything about the Open. You can just see that in his eyes when he talks about it. This is his fifth Open appearance. Tied for sixth in Royal Birkdale. Tied for 12th in, uh, in Royal Troon. They've got a good spot for the morning. What a way to start your day here on Friday. This will be some birdie for Hoygaard. Well, a simple part to start. And after that tee shot, I'm sure he's very happy. You don't paint pictures, do you, Dale? But he needs some birdies. Yeah. Yeah, it was a tough start uh, yesterday for Huygard. Seven over par. Puts him 12 back off the lead. Needs to find something to make the cut as well. Three on top, though, in the 151st Open. On 
to look forward to here in round two. Second hole here at Royal Liverpool. Not a very long par four. Playing your position off the tee, trying to keep it in between all these bunkers on the left hand side. The pin that's on the right hand side today. There's a bit of a kink at the front there that's going to stop the ball pretty softly. A bit of a swale down the right there that makes things a bit more complicated. But overall, a decent birdie chance, number two. Probably the only one out of the first three holes. Realistic birdie chance we're talking about. Rasmus out with the iron. You can aim at that left bunker and let the wind do the work for you. Down off the left. Very good. Down the middle for the young Dane. Also an iron for Fitzpatrick. Excuse me. Fine on silent, please. Thank you. Spectators walk, so that'll be a pretty good lie. He just doesn't have a great angle into the flag. A little bit further That's left is better. Just look with you. Let's have a look up. Thanks, you know when that phone rings, oh. I'd love one day to hear the guy say, but the call's for you. A little bit of commotion down there. Hit it, win. Come on. Come on. Keep coming. Yeah, sure. Just finds the left edge of the fairway. And that will be a good angle to that front right flag today. This is uh, not normal for Kensei Harata. Links. Well, it's a it's very difficult shot if you don't practice it. But it's amazing how many golfers are out there that actually play very well left-handed, right-handed golfers who play very well left-handed. I don't think he would have had much of anything if he tried to stand in the bunker. Well, the South African flag was uh, flying high and proud with their amateur championship winner and Christo Lamprecht in the mix like he was at Hillside. The win obviously gave me huge confidence, kind of changed my life a little bit. I think I was kind of knocking on the door and playing some really good golf leading up to the amateur. It kind of just paid off and uh, here I am. The golf course suits me very well. It, I can be a little aggressive sometimes and uh, just got to miss it in the right places and I think I did that perfectly today. I kind of was walking up and I got the applause from everyone and I kind of looked up onto the big scoreboard and uh, saw my name on top of the list and I just said to my assistant coach slash caddy, like how cool is this, I'm just I'm playing an Open for my first time and I'm on the top of the leaderboard after day one. It's pretty cool just playing around in golf, playing 66 and playing in the major as an amateur, so I'm, I'm extremely pleased and uh, really proud of myself. Here, here, as he should be after that. Seemed to really enjoy it as well, the, the challenge and the spotlight, Dale. He does enjoy it. There's no question about that. And he's, he's, he's got a lot of confidence. 
he really does have a lot of confidence, especially after his win in the amateur championship. He's just been picked for the Eisenhower Trophy to play for South Africa. One of, Daniel. The, one of the highest honours you can get. Now Hillier from the fairway on one. Finds the left hand side there. A little bit of a ball, it's going to be a quick one once it gets on the green. forward to Fitzpatrick on the second you can see pretty much straight down wind this second shot for him and on the very front right of the green The smart play here is going to be just to keep it left of that bunker, maybe 12 or 14 feet left of the hole would be where he's going to aim. You've got to try and stay out of these bunkers, don't you? Yeah, of course you do. I mean, that's one of the classic lines that you hear from Lynx courses. I think, you know, it's, it's important that these guys, you know, Alex being three over and Rasmus being seven over, that they still respect their golf well they game plan a little bit and don't try to attack this golf course in a silly way they've all hit irons on this second green and they still respect the course trying to give themselves the better chance to make the birdies that are required for them to move forward into the week it's okay Maybe expected that to come out a little better from the rough. Now Southgate from 166 downwind. It's already looking like a an easy nine iron. He'll be able to pitch this on the green and leave it there. Beauty. Great birdie opportunity for Southgate. Chance to get the drop shot at one. Straight back. Best tee shot of the lot for Hoygaard. So he'll just have a wedge, I would have thought, into the green. Trying to keep it a little left of the flag. If he changed, yes, he looks like he has. It looks like even a more lofted club. So it might even be a gap wedge. That wind is really starting to strengthen, isn't it? For the morning. Down off the left. Down the green, but a long way from the flag. Not his finest. Nine feet for the Japanese. He was only putting for par after hitting a, hitting a left handed shot from the just outside the bunker. Never usually a good sign when you have to play left handed for your second shot, isn't it? No, it isn't. That's for sure. And it's not the it's not the sort of thing I don't know. Have you ever tried to practice left-handed? No practice. No. Well, I mean, I tried a few times and realized how bad I was left-handed. So <laughs> I, it, that idea quickly went out the window for me. Because it's not the sort of thing you go and practice, do you? And you actually should. Because it's going to happen to you. Especially on a week like this, you know, you see a lot of players coming into Lynx golf, getting down on their knees next to the bunkers, trying to understand what balance is required. Daniel Hillier now. Played so well a few weeks ago at the Belfry. Beautifully hold. Certainly was opening par for one of our more recent winners on the DP World Tour. <laughs> I 
think I'm right in saying that the, the tournament that he won, the previous uh, New Zealand winner was Sir Bob Charles. I wouldn't be surprised. I think so. I think I remember hearing that in the commentary. Mm. Yeah, great seeing the, the next wave of uh, New yeah, Zealand players coming through as well. Ryan Fox been yeah, around for a while, had a great season nearly. Yeah. Well, he did challenge Rory McIlroy yeah. for the race to Dubai yeah. last year. Up to two with Fitzpatrick. Right Putter is out. This first section here. Yeah. So just start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, both talking about how much break that first shoulder of the bunker is going to what the ball is going to do through that first third of the putt. Trying to match line and speed. I had a feeling that almost, you know, even looking from the side, that was going to move a fair bit off the right. Two putts on the green here. Oh my God, from just over 40 feet. It's just a wedge in hand here. Yeah. You would have liked this to be at least halfway closer to the hole. Green's running at a 10 foot five. Exactly the same as yesterday. They are pure surfaces as well. The golf course is in fabulous condition. I don't think I've ever seen a Lynx golf course better than Royal Liverpool is this year. So all the staff, the Lynx uh, manager, and all his staff should be congratulated. I know they would have liked a little less rain, but that uh, is not up to us. Very good putt. Simple par. So he starts off with a couple of pars. It's quite a firm start to uh, Royal Liverpool, the first and third in particular. Second, the easiest of the three. That you are grateful for. Nice shot in from Matthew Southgate. He might still have to deal with that shoulder of the bunker a little bit. You can see he's aiming right. So he will move left. That'd be a nice birdie to make after half a mistake on the first. Good try. This didn't borrow quite enough on the right. This is Kazuki Higa down the first, tugged his tee shot left. That looked like that came out with a fair bit of height. Is that going to come back down? Oh, and it stays there. That's going to be a tricky one next. Currently inside the cut line, projected uh, plus three at the moment. That 11 flow as the day goes on. It's a number that Alex Fitzpatrick is at. This for par. A little bit of right to left in this. He would have had a fair idea watching Rasmus Orgard coming from that side of the hall. Good putt from Alex. Those are two good pars to start off with for Fitzpatrick. And Matthew Southgate just to brush this in for his par. 
and they'll make their way over to one of the most dangerous holes on the golf course. Nicely done. Which for the members plays as the first hole, but uh, in the championship it plays as the third. Out of bounds all the way down the right. It's a unique golf hole. It is, yeah. If you're a fan of digging into uh, open history, maybe that kind of history. You can see the cathedral in the uh, distance in the, the heart of Liverpool. There's a great video on uh, Royal Liverpool's Twitter web page uh, that goes through all of the different routings they've had over the years. And it's amazing how much it's changed, including the new hole of Little Eye on 17. But it is well worth a look. Just under a minute long. Nico, talk us down the third. Third hole, like Dale mentioned, is one of those holes that gets your attention. You play to the corner here on iron, maybe a, maybe an hybrid, some sort of looking club, and then you have this shot into the green with the out of bounds on the right. The pin has got on the left of this, so we might not see as many players uh, playing with fire with that out of bounds on the right. So just a long iron into this flat bit there. I think we must mention it's not the out of bounds is not the fence. It's actually right on top of that little bank. You can see the white stakes there. So it really is close. So a lot of guys missing this fairway left, of course, then, which makes the second shot a whole lot more complicated. Used to be the race course over on the right, the uh, Liverpool Hunt Club as well. <laughs> Fisher, Co and Barker. And Fisher with the better of the three yesterday by far. Level par round for the American. This is game number four. On the tee from the USA, Zach Fisher. A nice reception for the man that won the uh, Argentinian Open last year. Can drive her off the tee. On the tee from Hong Kong, Tai Chi Ko. Really incredible win for him at uh, well, the place that he's an ambassador for at Hong Kong uh, Golf Club, becoming the first home winner of the Hong Kong Open on the Asian Tour. The World City Championship. Yes. Only been a pro for a couple of months when it happened. Wasn't the day he was looking for yesterday, but just punching his uh, ticket. Here from playing. South Africa, Carl Barker. really enjoying his golf at the moment Carl Barker making his debut here he said it's the best thing he's ever achieved in his life qualifying for the open oh yeah in the bunker Carl is one of the nicest guys that that plays on our tour he really is in the sunshine tour you have a look at him he smile never leaves his face it doesn't matter what happens. You have no idea if he's shooting 80 or 60. He's just a really a good guy. Just loves being a professional golfer. 
Five over par yesterday for Barker. So a little bit of work left to do, but it can be done from there. That's how the leaderboard looks and looked overnight. No change yet. It's Fleetwood, Lamprecht and Grillo who lead the way at five under par. Alex Noren would uh, love a good week here, as would the other 155 players. But in the lead up to the Ryder Cup, he's got a little bit of work left to do uh, to make his campaign to get onto the European side. Victor Hovland will be there. Round of 70 for him to yesterday. And at a course that rewards uh, ball striking. No surprise to see Jordan Smith there and thereabouts. The star of Minwoo Lee continues to grow. What a family story that is. His sister already a two-time major champion. Wouldn't say it's out of his grasp either. A trio of Aussies there at a plus one including former world number ones, Adam Scott and Jason Day, and the defending champion, Cameron Smith. Kita Nakajima, two-time winner of the Mark McCormick uh, medal, and the leading amateur in the world. He's a uh, plus two. Guys, where do you see the uh, cut going to or moving from currently? Uh, two over par. I'm, I'm guessing a plus three if the weather stays the way it is now. If it gets tougher, it might even go to plus four. Yeah, I was thinking that when we look at the prediction and what it's like this morning, it looks like it might be a little bit of a harder test today. So I wouldn't be surprised if it goes to four over coming at the end of this Friday. There's always a little bit of a difference in the waves. It sounds like the late early might have it just a, a little bit more difficult. Time will tell. Ryder Cup captain there and Zach Johnson at four over par. Round of 75 for him at yesterday, but he's got a lot on his mind this week. And many of these players have something to prove. Nice to see John Daly there. Not the best of rounds, but uh, terrific to see him still playing. The champion golfer of the year, Phil Mickelson, was on the same score there too. A lot of people had their eye on uh, Ryan Fox, an Alfred Dunhill Lynx champion. And a, a big surprise again from Justin Thomas, who currently is on the outside looking in at the FedEx Cup playoffs, let alone a Ryder Cup spot. But that's just the game, isn't it? It ebbs and flows in many directions. Confidence, confidence, confidence. You don't know where it comes from, but boy, when it leaves you, it goes so quickly and you don't know how to get it back. Uh, Fitzpatrick, at this third hole, that out of bounds, right up tight up against the right hand side of the green. Today the flag is on the left, so quite well away from that out of bounds. Well, that's going to be a very difficult chip shot, you can see it doesn't have much green. It's getting better though. It is something that you really have to see to believe to see how close the out-of-bounds cuts into the course. Back to Fisher at one. Hit a three wood off the tee, so that leaves him with a long second. 240 yards at 7 o'clock in the morning into the wind. Good morning. <laughs> Aren't you glad you woke up in time? <laughs> A lot of hotel wake-up calls, that's for sure. And Matty Southgate on the third. There's a lot of space to have this ball coming off the right. The wind will be off his right as well, which helps to find this short left pin position. That's a good shot from Matty. We'll see a lot of those today, I think. People staying away from that left-hand side of the green there. Uh, Carl Barker. Second into the par four. Come off a couple of good weeks on the Sunshine Tour. He won his first tournament a little while ago. And that is a beautiful second shot. Yeah, he's the first guy we see this morning wearing short sleeve. Huh? You build them tough down in South Africa, huh? 
Well, you know, not really for the cold, I must be honest. You know, we feel the cold. But I spoke to my wife early this morning and she said one of the coldest days we've had in our winter. It's got down to zero. In fact, it snowed in Johannesburg last week. It's quite remarkable. You'll be joining us from uh, SA. I hope you've got a blanket. Tearing it down. Oh no. A tough finish yesterday. 13 17 made a 10 down the last. Can happen. There's numbers that can just uproot your day so quickly. You know, we heard about so many high scores on individual holes. It'd be quite fun to do an eclectic of the of the <laughs> highest score on each hole. That would be quite fun to do. I'm sure the players would love that, those <laughs> that are included. Justin Thomas made a nine down the last in the closing stages last night. Up to three with Fitzpatrick. Yeah, the putter is out from there. He, he sits below the green there. Yeah, you could bump and run this, but putter is nice it's a nice club to use from outside the green on the links especially considering how good the grass is around the greens that's well judged <laughs> from Fitzpatrick very good So let's take a look at a couple of the groupings, the games out next. Brendan Todd, Romain Longasque, who shot 70 yesterday, and Travis Smythe. Gary Woodland, the US Open champion, has uh, the company of Adrian Otegi and Alexander Bjork coming at 7.30, who both played nicely yesterday. It was a level par round of 71 for Min Woo Lee, 73 for Christian Bezadenhout, and uh, the amateur Harrison Crow with a 76. Corey Connors, uh, one of the best ball strikers. There was a 73 for him, same two for Billy Horschel. And Alex Norrin with a round of 68, the Swede impressed. Always a joy to watch Tom Kim since he burst on the scene about 14 months ago. He's got Tom Hoagie and Abraham Anter alongside him for the first two days of play. Thirty seconds. Well, a bit of a fashion statement from Rongan Longask on the first. <laughs> I wonder if he'll play like that. He's a cool customer, Longask. Brendan Todd to play first. This is game number five. On the tee from the USA, Brendan Todd. Won twice in 2019. In quite quick succession as well. Made his first uh, ever open appearance right here. Top 40 back in uh, 2014 when McElroy took the title. from France, Romain Longasque. He's a very nice player, Romain Longasque. Does a lot of things very well. He's collected a bunch of top tens this year on tour as well. But I'm not so sure about this combination of the hoodie and the hat. <laughs> a quick call. 
Could have been a bit with his friends. You know, they're funny down there in the south of France. I think he lost the bit. On the tee from Australia, Travis Smythe. A runner up on uh, his last trip over to England. He's been playing some very nice golf this year, the 28 year old. Third place finish in Hong Kong, saw him qualify here this week. Making his open debut. Stay on that path, stay there. That's very fortunate. He's going to have a relatively easy shot from there. See how it works through the ball for Romain Longasque. Shot one under yesterday. Keep the ears warm. No, I'm not sure that's going to be a, a, a fashion <laughs> idea that is going to last. I'm not sure any of us can really talk about it, though, can we? <laughs> Putting across the green, south gate. Good effort. First, left hand side, little bump and run for Fisher. Oh, that must have been very low lofted. That hardly came off the ground. One of the skills here, you can use every club in your bag around the grains all the way to the three wood to maneuver the mounds and hollows and a lot of different skills required around the grains on links. Grand old clubhouse. Putting green right in front of it. Lovely. Imagine the history and traditions in there. Oh. I'm just waking up. Down at the first. Approaching 7.30 uh, local time. Round of 74 yesterday for Dustin Johnson, who uh, many had their eye on coming into the week. <clears throat> Wouldn't mind standing behind those two. Min will lead next to him. This is uh, what's ahead at the fourth dale. Fourth hold, that's kind of a straightaway tee shot, but once again, those bunkers have got to be avoided. That bunker on the right-hand side, you can see then the two on the left. Quite well left as that goes, so you want to stay out of that, obviously, as well. And then you can see the bunk, the pin tucked in just over those bunkers on the right-hand side. Biggish green. So just a nine for position for Southgate. We've seen a couple of guys trying to get close to the green yesterday. But this is the easiest and most sensible way to play the hole. Just a short iron in from there. to the right here yes, he has but it's lying well it's sitting up there in the grass you can see it so that's fortunate ball placements of Todd Langask and Smythe 
all down the left side, various places. Wow, two woods. You don't often see two woods being hit by professional golfers into a par four. And he's going to love that. What a wonderful shot. I don't think we'll see too many of better than that today. No, it is a tough part of the green to find on the first. It's not wide. Oh, the hoodie has come off for Longesk from 188. Just trying to predict what that ball is going to do from that rough. That needs to sit down. Amateur Championship at Carnoustie. Widely renowned as uh, the toughest of the open venues. Carnasty, they call it. <laughs> now, Travis Smythe loves his coffee, Travis Smythe. He's learned from the best, Benny Sweeten, in the, from the Sydney area. From 153, clean light. No doubt he's going to get ball first on this. Too much club, I think, there. Could almost say it's an obsession. He carries uh, his own coffee grinder, filters everything from Shell Harbour. And New South Wales. South Coast Shell Harbour, isn't it? Oh, you're testing me now. I know it's not far from Sydney, mm, yeah. about an hour or two. South of Wollongong and all that. Only three holes played under par yesterday in the opening round. Two of them par fives, five and 15. Surprised to see 18 playing over par, but given the scores that we spoke about earlier that were made down the last, I think that would have nudged the average up. It's actually okay. He's not sure where it's finished, but he's going to be pleasantly surprised when he gets up there. Yes, yeah. Crowds have been good. They were huge yesterday. They were big and big on Wednesday as well. There is Emiliano Grillo, 66. For him in the opening round. They've always produced amazing golfers in Argentina. When you go back to Eduardo Romero, Ricardo Gonzalez, Roberto de Vincenzo, of course, that one. He's a very pretty player. Emiliano Grillo does everything really well. He won his second tour, uh, tour title on the PGA Tour earlier this season. Tough down the 18th, but got it in a playoff over the end. Nice three ball this, next to come. Gary Woodland, Adrian Otegi and Alexander Bjork. Big hitter, Woodland. And playing with two very short players. This is game number six. On the team from the USA, Gary Woodland. A major champion himself. It's been a, an average year by his standards, kind of been living between the, the top 25 and top 40. But has made a load of cuts. 
this season. Oh, that is fortunate. That it pitched in the bunker, that could have been a dreadful lie. On the tee from Spain, Adrian Otegi. From the Basque region, Adrian. It's also produced amazing golfers in Sevi and Josemir Olasabo, who's his mentor. In his second open, stretch on the bag. Had a nice finish yesterday, four birdies in the last seven holes to post that 67. not sitting very well. No, I think we're going to see a three shot. On the team from Sweden, Sweden, Alexander Borg. Drive for show, Pat Fado. He's been doing the ladder this year, having uh, his best season on the DP World Tour. Yet to find the win. He's made the cut in every single event as well. So sitting down in the rough there. So not ideal, those tee shots. So two over par for Woodland, minus four for Otegi and minus two for Bjork as they get their day going. They go up to Roman Longasque. From the rough at the back there. Looks like he's going to play the mound on the right. That's a very good result from there from the Frenchman. Loves playing Lynx courses, Romain Longas. You know, we mentioned before he's won the amateur championship, so he knows what he's doing out here. So there is uh, the state of play. His uh, compatriot Antoine Rosner fired a nice little round of 67 as well yesterday. Under par for this year's US Open champion, uh, LA Country Club, and Wyndham Clark. And the same number, the man that missed the cut in front of uh, home crowds that week, Ma Max Homer. Oliver Wilson inside the uh, top 15 at minus two. Runner up at the Belfry at three, four weeks ago now. Had to birdie the last to get his place in the open and managed to get it done. Let's go to four with Matthew Southgate. Got a bit of the bunger to manoeuvre here. It's going to come up and down to his left. And then maybe coming back the other way. Ah, that's a good effort. The second shot of his would have looked really good in the air, but that wasn't really a realistic birdie chance from where he was. All right. Uh, Todd with a three wood off the tee at the second. Bunkers, 300 from where he is. Beautiful. As Dan Jenkins would have said, dead solid, perfect. Runner up uh, recently in the John Deere Classic as well, Brandon Todd. with also a woods most likely a five wood for him yeah, 
finds the fairway also. Frenchman, side by side. Look at these two, identical tee shots. Of course I hit my drive further than yours. We got now for his birdie at the fourth hole. Should turn a bit from the right. Beautifully hold. <laughs> Wonderful putt. First birdie of the day at the fourth. Down with Adrian Otegi no, in the rough. Carry. No, we don't carry. <coughs> well, if he can reach, he's going to have to bounce and run it in. This is where you want to try and force a flyer. Yeah, usually when you see somebody with a wood and long grass like that, it's going to require a little bit of manufacturing. It's not the straightforward shot. Sorry? Not going to affect it much on this. A couple more practice swings and I'm going to start getting tired. That's always the risk when you hit a wood off the long grass, that the head gets tangled in the long grass and closes the face on you. 40 paces long, the uh, first green. Pins 34 on today. Six off that back yeah. left edge. <laughs> Same club. Might be a hybrid, this one. See that swing is just like a chop hitting down on it. And that was always going to be the risk as well to find one of these bunkers. And that's ugly because he's sitting 20, 30 yards short of the green upper face. That's going to have to come out sideways for Bjork. Harsh punishment. It wasn't a bad shot. But that's Lynx Golf. So it makes us love it. The wind looked like it switched a little bit more off the right. 200 yards. The first hole's playing solid today. I mean, Woodland hitting has 200 yards in after hitting a drive, but what a shot. Into the first from Woodland. 10 out of 10. Birdied it yesterday, might do the same again in round two. There'll be many players in the field. The do that two days in a row. Go to the uh, open.com. There's loads of content if you want to keep on top of it all. There's live at the range as well, the par three channel, amongst other things to watch. I've really taken uh, all of the offerings up a notch the last two, three years. The R and A. Done a wonderful job. And it's wonderful what they do with the proceeds from this event, where they spend it promoting golf all over the world. Wind seems to be the strongest down in the bottom right uh, corner around 11 and 12 right now. A little gentler over on the opening holes. Yeah, I think that's just because there's those houses hiding those f first couple of holes in that loop. One, two, three here. An international group, game number seven, with two Australians and a South African. 
seconds. One of them here, one of the young stars. He's got an amazing career ahead of him. Incredible ball striker, long off the tee as well, I mean, Willie. Really. I think, you, I think you are right, you want to finish in right about just move right about the zone. This is game number seven on the team from Australia, Min Woo Lee. It's been a great year for Min Woo Lee, runner-up earlier this year in the Rolex series in Abu Dhabi top five at the US Open as well and like Nico says there's plenty more to come Longest one we've seen today, but I mean, on the team from South Africa, Christian Bazadenhoe. <laughs> Lovely, long, slow swing. Played some wonderful golf over the last few years in the South African Open Championship. Now plays most of his golf on the PGA Tour. Lucky. On the team from Australia, Harrison Crow. A 21 year old here, Minwe Lee actually played together earlier this year at the Masters as well. Familiar pairing. He won the Asia Pacific Amateur Championship toward the end of last year. you to drive it over there they would be impossible to do <laughs> he's put it in it's right into the middle of that pathway incredible now he, is he related to tom crow tom crow is the guy that started cobra from australia interesting i don't think so we'll find out up to two roman longask Looks like it's came out of that a little bit. It's going to be long enough. Yeah. It finds the short right bunker. That's a bit of a footfall for Longask. Just a wedge on the second. I've had two champions around Royal Liverpool in uh, the modern era. One was Rory McIlroy the last time and Tiger Woods in 2006. But when I got to Hoy Lake, I felt calm. I felt like I had, I had grieved enough with my father's death. On Sunday, it was a joke at how calm I felt. When snipers take shots. They take shots in between the heartbeats, and that's when the body's the most still. Well, that's kind of almost in its essence how I felt. I felt so still. Everything inside me was still and calm. And Stevie had said something to me that your pops, he kept you calm all day. And then it kind of hit me all of a sudden that he's not here anymore. I can't share this claret jug with him anymore. And I just lost it. Every great player who's ever played the game has, has won that championship. It's all on there. It's, it's just so incredible that we're still playing the same venues that you know, these guys did back in the 1800s. Yeah, it was a, an emotional win when you take the open title and you look for your dad and he wasn't there for the first time but how he went about it that week as well only pulling driver once it was a strategic and incredible display of golf 
This looks like a putter, and this is a very, very long putt. This is a good 45 yards, and he's judged it beautifully. Wow. <laughs> that's amazing. We saw where he ended up in the bunker. So that's uh, what he could produce from up against the lip to there. That is a real weapon for Alexander Bjork. Zach Fisher on three. From the first cut. Don't want this to move too far left. That's another player that finds that ball. That depression there to the left of three. That's going to be a very popular spot today. To answer your question, Hazy, he's not related because Tom Crow didn't have the E. That's how I've worked it out. <laughs> how about Russell Crow? <laughs> you two are killing me. <laughs> he, must be, he must be related to a crow somewhere along the line. I'm sure he is. Look at this from Longask from in the bunker. We're going to run out of famous Australians this named Crow in a minute, I think. I, I think Russell Crow was born in New Zealand. You guys are keeping me on my toes. So it should be a par for Long Gask. Back to one. This full par for Otegi. Yeah, you, pre you predicted that. I called that, that a minute ago, Dale, didn't I? Yeah. That's what he does. Uh, just look at this. This is the care that they take with every aspect of this golf course here at Royal Liverpool. That is not in play. Nobody will be in that. Nobody will be in that in the next three years, probably. Well, maybe some of our producers might play here. So, <laughs> but. This for an opening birdie for Gary Woodland. Boom, does it. Perfect start. Yeah, the first birdie of the day on one for Woodland. I don't think we'll see many of them. Just over 200 yards. Long iron in. That's as good as it gets. High, soft, great response of the ball on the green net. Now Bjork from a pretty similar position to save a bogey. That will keep him under par for the tournament. That's oh, a miserable way to start your day. Presumably, he'll uh, roll that one in. There is Otegi. So the first player on the front page of the leaderboard here in the 151st Open is out on course, headed to the second. Wasn't Stuart Sink impressive uh, yesterday in that 68? Terrific round of golf. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. He's got to take into account that slope that he coming off beautifully played well for down slope that's wonderful to get that spin and he just clipped it off the top of the grass so precise so this is from over at the second back to the first for Harrison Crow 266 into the wind oh! second shot of the day like it's heading for the people on the left. Now we've seen people left of those steel barrier for one, but not for two yet this week. I think he might get confused about which hole he's playing. He's playing the first, he's been on the second and he's now close to the 18th. They are major nerves. One of uh, six amateurs in the field. That's one out. A professional title before Harrison Crow, the New South Wales Open, but this is a, a bigger stage, one that Gary Woodland knows. He uh, has struggled the last three years. This is his 11th appearance, but missed the cut for the last three when he had quite a good record before that. It's a bit surprising, actually, you know, because when you think of where he won his US Open, Pebble Beach, and 
you know, he's a he's a low hitter of the golf ball, so you'd think his game would actually suit this type of golf quite well. Maybe this will be his first good open experience. He's played some good golf this year. He's played consistently well. Yes, one of those that's been in the mix a bit without really challenging so far in the 2023 season. Was here uh, back in 2014 as well, top 40 here. It was day two that he made his move. Perhaps that will happen again. That was his best round of the four. Iron out. So we'll wait for uh, everything to clear up ahead of him. Go to Matthew Southgate for his birdie at the par five. back to where he started the day. So just an iron for Woodland on the second. A big tent you can see in the far end there is what the players use. Right. The players lounge. <coughs> That's going to get stuck in the left rough. That's not too bad there, actually. That's probably the smallest of rough on the whole golf course. That's the barely rough. They had quite a dry lead up and then a lot of rain the last three weeks. You'd almost rather have it be the other way around, have a lot of rain and then be able to bake the course out accordingly. Three wood off the tee for Tagi. That's a lovely tee shot. Position A plus. Just such a tidy player, hit 14 of 18 greens yesterday. That's kind of his MO. Not the longest off the tee. Uh, good with his irons. Similar profile for Bjork. But he's had a really hot putter this year on season. That will find the first cut. It's okay. Not the very best of angles into that pin coming out the rough there. That pin tucked in tight on the right just over that bunker. just trying to find the nearest point of relief from the steel barriers which will which will most likely be on that side let's go back to the T who uh, has already been announced this three ball of uh, Corey Connors Billy Horschel and this Alex Norrin Played nicely yesterday. Normally hits his tee shots with a little bit of a left to right. That's uh, like a dead straight left. A question for both of you. Do you think that this golf course sets up better for a draw or a fade? Does it favour one or the other? I don't really know that, but what I notice on the scoreboard is you have so many different style of players. You have long hitters, you have plotters, you have great ball strikers. So I think in the end, you know, it's it's whoever, you know, manages and maneuvers and navigates through this golf course the best uh, the best they can. I'm I'm just really, I think it's really cool to see. You know, Harmon is a, is a plotter. He just plays golf a certain way, and it works different ways. I think um, when you play Lynx golf and you know you're going to have a little bit of wind, you've got to be able to do everything. You know, there's not just one way to play. And it's going to require um, a lot of different shots from, from every player. You're going to have to hit low shots and hooks and slices and everything. Plays out of uh, Bexley in New South Wales, Hall Harrison Crow. Trying to stay loose. So 
won the Victorian Amateur, the Master of the Amateurs Championship as well. He's uh, near on taking every title back in Australia. A little bit of a nervy start. And you know what's incredible is if he hits a good pitch shot here and gets it within five or six feet of the hole and holds the putt for a par, that could just set him off on a really good round after this. Very lofted club, so he's going to try and pitch it just on the front edge of the green. Sit down, sit down. Good shot. Great shot. About as good as he could do from over there. Took a big, big hop forward on the first bounce. But nice from out of position. A good handle for Gary Woodland. As we start to see a few raindrops. This camera lens. Wonder if he's going to get worse. 191. Probably a big 99 for Gary Woodland. Downwind. Just came over the top of that a little bit. Finds a bunker there, short left. You know, whenever you go, you just got to hope that you're somewhere in the middle of that bunker. That he's got a stance and he's got a shot. These faces are so, so thick. It, it can almost make you feel claustrophobic when you're at the bottom of them. Raindrops keep falling on my head. More. Just sneak it past that bunker on the left. Done well. Sit down, sit down. Yes, he'll be pleased with that. Birdie on four. Coming down from that bunker's shoulder. How nicely did that go in. Beautiful, soft pace. Quickly back to Adrian Atagi. Likes the look of this one. Just dug its heels in into the upslope. Got right a bit unlucky the there, yeah, a little bit unlucky. That could have been really close. Yeah, if that had gone three foot further. Oh, look at Birdie to come for Adrian Otegi. Rolls that in, he joins the lead. <laughs> <laughs> Batman alongside uh, Lambrecht and Fleetwood. There's Emiliano Grillo. Maybe trying to explain some of the spots he got into yesterday. Had a tough start to the round. Was two over through three. And then uh, seven birdies from then onwards. Starting at the fifth. It's a fine display of golf on the back nine. Now the Frenchman, long gasp, second shot on three. Some tee shot to only have 162 in. Mm. An 0 and one left, Dale. In your little yep. bowl there. <laughs> Very compact golf swing he's got. You know, it doesn't look like much can go wrong. Willie on the first. That's severely up and down. That's nicely judged. Been spending a lot of time in Vegas. Hello? I think that might be the base if he gets his PGA Tour card next year. Up to Woodland, third shot at the second in the trap. Excellent shot. Brilliant. You know, if you do get if you do get a good lie in these bunkers, they are wonderful to play out of. The sand is just 
terrific to play. It's like it's like the, the fairways. You know, it, when you hit a ball off these fairways, it just makes a different sound, doesn't it? That one certainly did. So uh, a chance to save par after the opening birdie for uh, Gary Woodland. Look for birdie coming as well from Adrian Otegi to try and get to minus five. Where the lead is right now, there's Romain Longasque. After two pars to start his Friday campaign. What will come of the Hovland, Reed, Peters, Cantlay, Kepka? Look at that. The world number one is there as well as uh, Hideki Matsuyama. Marcel oh, Seam uh, had it going for quite some time. Yesterday in the opening round, ended up with a level par round of uh, 71 after contending on his front side. Fitzpatrick at one over par. Of course, is playing uh, just a hair longer than it was yesterday. 7,294 yards in total. Uh, par putt for Christian Beside note. Beautifully hold. Very elegant golfer. Really just looks uh, lovely to watch. Bjork from the back of the green at the second, putting down the hill, should turn a bit to his left. Good putt. Incredibly reliable on the greens from long range. Bjork, another example of that. Over to six with Southgate. Birdie on six, yeah. Par three. Must have hit a really good shot to hit it this close. Just leaves it short in line. Look at him pesting about it. But that is the worst. It is. Leave it in the hole short. Now, Noren on the first. That ball sits a little bit above his feet. Expect this some follow through, trying to keep that club face open. Oh, trying to drill it low. Holding it against the wind. Now, would he have a backswing there, Dale? Oh, I'm not sure. I'm nervous for him. I've never heard that tone of voice in you. And the trouble is you don't know what you've got until you get right up to the, to the golf ball. You don't know whether you're going to have a shot or not. for his birdie at the second off that lovely iron shot. Oh, he's, he read that so well, didn't he? Now, another one with the putter on three from the left-hand side. And it's, it's never easy to judge right when you've got such a big depression like that in front of you. And then when it gets onto, green, onto the green, it kind of goes away from you past the hole. That yellow golf bag has got a two... 70 on the side of it now you know going back in time henry cotton shot 65 in the open the first time, lowest score they'd ever been shot in the open championship and they and the company made a golf ball called the 65 and a few years later bobby Locke shot 279 it was the first time 280 had ever been broken and they brought out a golf ball 279 i noticed on that golf bag there was a 270 on it was that the score that one last time Gently. Must have been Gently. Dale. You know a lot more Gently. about the game <laughs> than we do. Just can't uh, think oh, what uh, uh, the rele down. relevance it could have. But that is Fine not ball, good, though. that shot there. Don't think it's quite got into that course, but it's t too close for comfort. It was 271 when Rory McElroy uh, won here in 2014. And then 270 for Tiger Woods. 
So maybe that's the one they're picking. I feel so unprepared compared to you two. Gotta be quick on your feet here this morning, don't you? Wow. Interesting change uh, on the bag for Alex Norrin. He's actually got a guy called Carl Morrison catting for him uh, this week. I'm not sure how long they've been together, but he was on the bag for Mo Martin when she won her uh, AIG Women's Open at Royal Birkdale back in, uh, was that 2014, in fact? Not far from here, there he is. He's uh, a more recent caddy for Jessica Corder, who's been out with injury. Looks like he might have a swing. He's certainly got a practice swing. No, he's okay. That's well done from Lauren. It was about a 30 yard bunker shot into the wind. They're never easy, those. Pay attention to this one. I don't think he can pitch this on the green unless it's sitting up and he does this. How soft was that? Incredibly soft from Billy Horsham. Well, we've moved to the third hole now. This has got the out of bounds all the way down the right hand side. Three wood for Otegi. He'll be trying to hit it down the left hand side of the fairway. Such a smooth motion, it almost looks like it's slowing down midway through it the swing. It looked like a practice swing, didn't it? Mm. Fine tee shot though at the third on the short grass up to the green. Long gas for part. Quite a wide stance. Beautifully hold. There was a good two putt from down in that valley on the left hand side. Three pars to start for Roman Langast. So meanwhile, back at the first. Horschel sizing this one up. The height that he got from that pitch shot there, that flop shot, was incredible. Now, would that move off his right just a little bit? To stay at two over. Look at him trying to get comfortable over this ball. And then quickly goes. <laughs> He thought it was going to turn as well. It didn't turn at all. Now he he was a he was a fan of a football club, West Ham United. Is that West Ham? Okay. Used to carry their golf bags as well. That's right. I remember that. Did so when he won uh, the BMW PGA Championship. Won a lot of fans that week in the UK. Really lovely guy's been very honest about, you know, the highs and lows of golf this year as well, Dale. Some emotional interviews post round. After that, what was it, 84, I think, yeah. at Memorial? Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's just such a difficult game, you know, and people, people, you know, people who play golf as club golfers, you know, they, they obviously struggle sometimes on the golf course and they think they're the only ones who struggle. And, you know, they don't realize that top professional golfers also struggle. It's relative. So a struggle for a top professional golfer is a 76 or something. But, uh, you know, when you see somebody like Justin Thomas shooting in the 80s and Billy Horschel shooting in the 80s, then you know just how tough this game can be. Certainly can. It's a, an opening bogey for Alex Norrin. It'll be the same for Billy Horschel. He knows how humbling the Open can be. Went 19th, miscut, miscut ninth. <laughs> and he had uh, three top 20s. The last time out was uh, another miscut. How quickly it can change to Minwoo Lee, second at second. 
Bounce, go, bounce, One of go. his wedges wants this to go a bit. You see, that's funny because he miscued that a little bit and it pitched short enough to actually get a forward bounce. If that would have pitched five further, it would have get stuck into that first bounce, uh, into that first kink of the green there. Keep it a bit right of the flag. Don't go into that valley left. That's good. Birdie chance. Outside chance. Now, Bizzo night. Also on the second. Also a lot of club. Fine shot there. Took the flag on. Nice little bounce up and over and release back to Ategi at three. He's started that nicely out to the right. I hope it's drawing back into the flag. Keep going, keep running. Yeah, that was the right shot. Just needed a little bit more out of that. There's the right ID for Ategi. in our car cam. That's Zach Johnson, the Ryder Cup captain. Is that Claude Harmon the third, I think, over on the left? Shooting off a text message. Not sure we've ever had a, a car cam before. But everything, I've got wire cam down the 18th. Just produced some lovely pictures yesterday. Good thing they didn't have a car cam in our car this morning at five o'clock. <laughs> True. Seen us yawning. <laughs> it was um, 1955 when uh, the Open was broadcast on TV on the BBC for the very first time. And it uh, went over to the ABC in the US in 1982. We've seen some uh, some real changes of the time. The Open over the years, and it's uh, 151 years now. Well, that's an outfit that have woke you up this morning. Matt Wallace. He's wearing pink yesterday already, so pink is the theme this year, I'm guessing. Nice to see. He came through the qualifying. And I, I really admire some of the top players who, who you know, for what, whatever reason, find out they're not exempt and, and go through all the qualifying. Sergio, who didn't make it. Sergio Garcia. Matt Wallace is one of the ones who did make it. Johnson made his that way there eventually. You have to take a, a shuttle to the range, don't you, uh, here this week? Don't think he was coming from the hotel then. The voice of Matt Corker down there doing the announcements. Just waiting for uh, the fairway to clear. This is, was it the 8.14 tea time? Of, uh, Matt Wallace, Zach Johnson and David Michaluzzi. This is game number 10 on the team from the USA, Zach Johnson. That's a big year for uh, one of the 15 past champions in the field. He took his at St. Andrew, Zach Johnson. It's going to be a very busy summer as well for the Ryder Cup captain. 
Okay. Round of 75 for Johnson yesterday. Beautiful drive right down the centre of the fairway. Zach, I got the same ball eight times. I don't know what I just did. <laughs> <laughs> On the tee from England, Matt Wallace. Got his breakthrough win in the Dominican Republic earlier this year. Was surprised to see that he had to go to a qualifier to get through this week. Form between uh, that win and now has been a, a little lacklustre. And another one that finds a bunker on the wine. He knows it. On the tee from Australia, David Mitchellucci. Won the Order of Merit on the ISPS under PJ Tour of Australasia earlier this year. He's been piecing uh, his year together ever since then, making his debut. His full status on the DP World Tour starts next year. Good on that ball play. That's okay. That's not in bad shape. Struggled a little off the tee here, only five fairways uh, yesterday. Michaluzzi, round of 77 for the Victorian. Plays his golf about an hour out of Melbourne in Cranbourne. They'll be watching. Might have uh, been out playing 18 holes yourself already earlier today. It's uh, mid early evening there now. So that's how it looks in the 151st Open at Royal Liverpool in the final men's major of the year. It's Fleetwood, Lamprecht and Grillo. So the average proximity, a little under 32 feet at the second. Min Woo Lee has stuck it into just over six with uh, his birdie chance to come. And here it is to get under par. Oh. You know, you don't get that many opportunities around this golf course for birdies on on uh, especially on par threes or par fours you really you feel you feel ill when you miss one now we're taking on three for birdie outside chance perfect holding pace without taking too much risks either now Langusk for his birdie at the fourth. Alex Noren, second hole. Long way back, just over 180 yards. That was nicely played, coming off the left a little bit there with probably a bit of cut spin. Nice shot from Norn. The 
This is for his pa. Nicely hold. Wow. Yeah, fine work for Tom Hoagie. On a pebble beach uh, along the coastline last year. So he gets out of uh, trouble there to the tee at four, Otegi. This is one of the shortest par fours on the golf course. An iron off the tee to ensure that you're down the fairway. Three left-handers in the field this week. Phil Mickelson, Robert McIntyre, Brian Harmon, who's uh, off in a little over 25 minutes' time. Impressive yesterday, solid, really all the way through. Yeah, you were asking earlier if, if a draw player or a flayed player is better on this golf course. For a left-hander, when you play all these holes that are alongside the water where the wind is blowing off the coast, you can lay a fade against these dogleg lefts, which is not actually a bad thing. Like, the Masters has been good to left-enders in the last decade or so. We saw John Rahm struggle a little bit with his uh, fade with the water off the left yesterday. Yeah, he's on exactly the other side, exactly, mm -hmm. for a right-hander. Down to one, Zach Johnson. 209 is what's left for him. Oh. He doesn't like that at all. not going to be an easy chip shot from there coming out that thicker rough. A bit of patter of rain has started. The jacket goes on for Johnson. Needs an up and down there at the first. Kazuki Higa. Can he find a birdie at the par five? Yes. <laughs> Topped the money list in Japan last year. Led the PGA for a little while. Be awkward an iron on four. Straight down. You can see the flags at the back there. I think it's going to get tougher and tougher for these guys out here now. Bit of rain. It's cold. Windy. It was more mild and still this time yesterday, wasn't it? From uh, the first two hours of tea times. Matt Wallace has got his second shot out the bunker to this point. Try and get it close enough to save par. Pin towards the back of the green. Oh no. Now par's not just what he's thinking about, he's actually thinking about making sure he doesn't shoot more than one over. Great to see the way that uh, Liverpool has embraced the Open, just like they did in 06 and 2014. The 2018 champion golfer of the year, Francesco Molinari. Off in uh, a little over 10 minutes' time. He did it round Carnoustie. He did it staring Tiger Woods in the face as well. One of our co-leaders off next in Emiliano Grillo has the company of that man, Dustin Johnson and Sahith Thigala. This is game number 11 on the tee from the USA, Sahith Thigala. Great young player, very popular, 25 years old. Missed the cut last week, but has been uh, in very good form, solid form this season.
three doubles on the scorecard yesterday brought him unstuck. Back down the left. On the tee from Argentina, Emiliano Creole. Great back nine yesterday, five birdies on it. After making the turn at level par. Already a winner on the PGA Tour this year. That two is in Texas, doesn't mind the wind. The Argentinian. On the tee. From the USA, Dustin Johnson. Twice a major champion himself. Three over par yesterday. Cut a little bit, cut. Ooh, and it's gone down in that rough on a bit of a down slope. Just made hard work of it, didn't hit enough greens. Just half of them had 30 parts to match as well in the opening round. But Dustin Johnson right on the cut line. Peggy. See the pin there over that bunker on the right. Four under par. Oh, another couple of birdies would be really nice, but it's going to be struggling in this one. The rain looks like it's coming down a little harder now. Yes, it wasn't anticipated. They thought that they'd have kind of light every now and then some moderate showers today. That was the forecast. Temperature pretty stagnant, around 17 degrees. Back to one, Zach Johnson. Zach is making a little bit of a hash of this. That was not a good chip shot there from him, surprisingly. Look at all those people. It's incredible the amount of people that were watching yesterday. In the morning, there were they were eight deep watching one of the feature groups. And I mean, just look at all those people coming in. How many people do you think are in that line right now? Four across, a long way back. A couple of thousand. Couple of filtering, thousand. Yeah. I would have thought, yeah. Filtering their way in. Norren to get to three under. Well done. Nicely done. And he gets back the shot that he dropped at the first. We saw the shot too here of Adrian Otegi. to try and pitch it up just onto the green and that is delicious keep going wow what a good shot very tidy work should be uh, par number four to start the campaign today it was worth another look to play it so beautifully Wow, what a good shot. Was a good shot. Back to the fourth shot, though, of Zach Johnson at the opening hole. Well, that's nice, nicely done from Zach Johnson. He's going to need that to make a five and drop just the one shot on this first hole. 
Gary Woodland putting from uh, the back edge of the green. At the fourth. This for birdie, though. Might have learnt something from Motegi. Good for pace. Delighted to say we've been joined in the commentary box by John Cook. Morning to you, John. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you all. You've just walked in. What is uh, conditions like outside? It's starting to rain a little bit. A little bit of a um, uh, little sprinkle in the air. Cool. <laughs> Not ideal, but that's what you expect. Got to come over here and play all the conditions. That's it. It's almost a rite of passage, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Matt Wallace now. Not the start he was hoping for, that's for sure. Now that's going to be a double bogey six, I think. If I've counted correctly. Never good when you have to think about it that hard. Not the start Matt Wallace was looking for. <coughs> double bogeyed his last yesterday as well. Right, this is for just a single drop shot here for Zach Johnson. Yeah, after driving in the middle of the fairway, that would be a little bit of a struggle from, don't want to be giving away shots from fairways hit. It's hard enough. Isn't it just for this to drop just the one? <laughs> Captain Zach Johnson, do you think he's going to do a good job in the Ryder Cup? I believe so. He's uh, he's very passionate about um, the team. Uh, talk to him quite a bit when I'm out doing PGA Tour, and he's he's excited. Honestly, he's uh, he's all in. Um, he's got his ideas of what he wants to do. It, it's his team. It's and uh, he's uh, he's excited about it. Obviously, he's he's excited about the the guys that he's going to have on the team and who he has to pick from. So it's a uh, He's going to have a major really decision, like though, with just, Justin Thomas not, on what they're going to do with him. It's not really in form, but it's tough to leave Justin Thomas off the team because he's, he's so into it. But Zach, um, he's, he's bought into the whole Ryder Cup, and he's ready to do it. He's ready to go. Have you, have you ever been a, a vice captain? On a President's Cup team. Have you? Uh, for Fred Couples in Australia in 2011. Uh, but I haven't been on the, the Ryder Cup, which I would. <laughs> I'm a little past past that, I think. But uh, just that experience yeah. to me was an incredible experience. But, I mean, don't they cho don't they choose you anymore when you get to 40? No, ex Probably. exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, that that would be nice. But, uh, yeah, they they bypass you once you have different numbers in front of your age. <laughs> and it's not going to jump or anything, huh? trying to read the light on this for Tagala. He's only 25. The start of his career should be an exciting one. Yeah, world of talent. Uh, was a very accomplished college player uh, out of Pepperdine. Oh, and, no. uh, oh still oh, Really came on tour with playing pretty well. So still, guys, please. Still trying to learn, though. He hasn't quite, he hasn't won, so he hasn't quite gotten to that part yet. And that takes learning. World number 35 has been as low as 23 already. These are the shots of uh, Dustin Johnson in round one on the left, round two on the right in the red. Seems getting like closer. round one was perfect over there. It was in good shape. <laughs> He's getting closer to the fairway. A wonderful player. Incredible athlete. I think he might have been... He would have played about any sport at a very high level. Oh. Well, that, I'm not sure if that was a good break or a bad break. Cut might have gotten up a little further. Might have been a little more level. Might have been Could easier have if they got it that second little valley. Been a little plagued with injury this year, Dustin Johnson with his back. Should be Grillo to play it first. 
Emiliano has really had a nice season winning at Colonial. And a wonderful golf course. It was quite the tail down the stretch, wasn't it? He double bogeyed the 72nd hole. Yeah, then to regroup. Yeah. Took the playoff over Adam Shank. So we go down to five, the first par five on the golf course. So Tagi's there. Definitely want to hit the fairway. And he's done just to stay up there. Yeah. Good. Lovely drive. Nice little, sh love that little low draw that he hit out there, it's right around that corner. Beautiful. Three ball ready to go. This is game number 12 on the tee from Italy, Francesco Molinari. brother had made it we could have had three sets of brothers here <laughs> yes eduardo the Ryder cup vice captain francesco captain the continental european side for the hero cup earlier this year played very well there as well led by example in abu dhabi <laughs> round of 73 for molinari yesterday sitting up nicely on top of the grass here so that's fortunate for him hasn't played quite the same golf since he on moved to team. america from the usa danny mccarthy danny enjoying a, a really nice year on the us pga tour wonderful putter pretty much leads every putting category Ball striking starting to catch up with that, so you see his name more and more uh, up the top of the leaderboards in America. On the tee, from Argentina, Mateo Fernandez de Oliveira. Argentine uh, broke the record, didn't he, earlier this year of uh, Joaquin Neiman in the Latin America Amateur Championship in January. That's how he qualified here, making his debut this week. Yeah, he went down there in Puerto Rico. See him a lot in, in, in college. University of Arkansas standout. Good luck! Perfect. I don't know why those people stand on that corner. <laughs> they nearly get hit in every group. You want to be close to the action, Hazy. That is, but I don't want to get hit by a golf ball. <laughs> no, you prefer have, to hit them in Not yourself. Have you ever been hit by? Have not you been a hit driver by a golf shot. Ball? No, thankfully not. What great fun! Six amateurs in the field, one in the share of the lead as well. In uh, Christo Lamprecht. All right, down in the little hollows, green, uh, green side at the first is Dustin Johnson. Let's see what type of shot he wants to play here, Dale. If he wants to putt it up there, look, looks like he's going to putt it. He is. Big right to left, really slow. Very good. Great effort. Good to see Dustin Johnson make a nice run today. Yeah, he's got... Far. He's got all the shots. He's got the power. He drives the ball beautifully. His iron shots are terrific. He, I think he proved his wedge play. 
Yes. And 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 he's a, he's terrific on the greens. I mean, he's got everything. Just kind of where his head space is at at times. One of our co-leaders uh, needs up and down to save par. Grillo. Wouldn't that be something if he won? Emulating the great Roberto de Vicenzo. Did you ever see him play? Uh, yes, I did. What, oh. a, what a player. Yeah, early 80s. Played uh, a little bit with, I actually was down in Brazil and Argentina a little bit. Got to spend some time with the great man. Incredible, just incredible like man. He just he got the club to the top and he looked like he just dropped it on the ball, didn't he? Just whatever he wanted to do, yeah. Beautiful, and what a lovely man too. Safely down there at the fifth for Adrian Otegi. So a wedge ahead for him at the par five. Down in the hollow is Romain Longasque. Up ahead at the green. Birdie for the Frenchman there. That was the only hole yesterday on the front side that played under par, the par five. Two of them come in the last four holes, only three around the complex. Now Fitzpatrick. Just off the edge of the green. Oh, yeah. Nicely hold. Patrick there dropped a shot at the seventh. Two birdies to finish that nine out in 34. Nice little finish to his outgoing nine. So he'll make his way to the difficult tenth. Now a, a par four, formerly a par five. And go down to Dustin Johnson. Gotta be a little bit careful with this one. Maybe just a left of center. Well, the great Bobby Locke say no putt is too short to miss, <laughs> but no putt is also too long not to hold. There you go, and he can hold some putts. An opening par for Dustin Johnson down the first. Currently projected at plus three might, as we've discussed a little bit earlier this morning, maybe nudge its way out to plus four. Conditions a little bit more difficult this morning than they were this time yesterday. It's much more still this time on Thursday. It's been a nice little uh, up and down to start for Grillo. Certainly would be a nice, comfortable start. Hit a nice pitch shot. Had to be pretty creative had to keep it right on that little spine if it went left or right it could go into a tough area but nice up and down to start his day already one better than the start of yesterday bogeyed the first and the third still managed to shoot 66 it is a par start for one of our three co-leaders in the open Alex Noren, where's he hit it down the third? That second shot way left and out of position and nice little break there for Alex. Bogey birdie starts, been adventurous already today. Here's the view from behind the sixth. With Roman Longasque, 187 today. Well, oh, he's pulled that to the left. Yeah, I think it, looking at this green here, Dale, it really want to be hitting some sort of a little drop shot. Uh, anything moving right to left will will miss the green. Still had some heat on it. Caught a lot of uh, the hole. Alex Norrin needed to. It's going to be a drop shot. So now a bogey birdie bogey start. I think he had the ante left on the second shot all the way over there. 
the anti-right, I should say, the yes to the left on three, isn't it? You really do have to come and walk around Royal Liverpool to see how close the out-of-bounds is here this week. It's quite the feature. Made some good changes uh, since we were here last in 2014. And it was a good up and down at the first for Emiliano Grillo, who continues to lead alongside Tommy Fleetwood and the amateur of Christo Lamprecht. So we go to the second, the Argentine. I can hear that range. Well, that will be very difficult. That is some heavy rough right in there. A little change up in the commentary box and uh, Terry Gannon, the smooth tones of Terry will be here uh, shortly as we go back down to the first hole, getting ready for the next group to play. Game number 13 on the tee from the USA, Brian Harmon. And Dale, uh, Brian Harmon reminds me of old school Corey Pavin. Just very gritty. Now, he's a wonderful, accomplished player, and Corey, of course, a major champion. But he kind of has that little personality to him he, he he's you know he's small in stature but he's he's a fighter like he's he's really really tough uh, when he gets around the the lead and he, he can uh he can play some golf he's very very good and he has played some good golf over the last little while Stop, stop. Easy. Good shape now on the right side of the fairway to left pin. On the tee from South Africa, Tristan Lawrence. The announcement continue here, and gentlemen, great to be with you on this chilly, a little bit of moisture in the air and, and maybe drying out this afternoon some but temperatures I don't think expected to get rise much from this point on seems like the it's gonna be steady the rest of the day just as we're getting right now second appearance for Lawrence here at the open over that bunker. So many good young players uh, from South Africa there, Dale, and on the team. It's so great to Belgium, see how, how worldwide this game is and that you know what's being developed around the world. It's incredible. You look at that, you know, you look at the draw sheet and you look at all the different countries that are playing in this event. It's quite amazing. It's a global event, isn't it? Global sport these days. Fairway to hit that opener here, and the wind picking up this morning, along with some rain. Day two of the open. Hey, up. up near the green, Zach Johnson just in front. This for birdie. Just up that little slope. He give it enough. He did. Oh. Nice start there for Zach Johnson, part the first, or Bogey at the first, part the second. Shades of St. Andrews and the win there. No 
Otegi, his third at the fifth. Thomas Bjorn joining us now. We'll welcome him into the commentary box. Kind of drive it in there low, use a little bit of the slope. It's pretty well done. Now it's great to have you with us uh, as we look at some fescue here for Grillo. Right side, what have you picked up so far? Uh, conditions out there so far for the players. Yeah, it's a uh, it's def different day. I mean, you see the woolly hat there on, on Grillo, and that's uh, that kind of tells the whole story this morning. It's a lot more gray, a little bit of drizzle at times, so a bit more wind, cooler wind. So, yeah, tougher conditions, that's for sure. It's amazing how much this golf course changed yesterday in the afternoon. Once the sun came out, John, and, and it dried out, those fairway bunkers even more in play. Yeah, I was out there uh, with Rory's group uh, yesterday all day, and you could just see it as the, the hours went by. The golf course changed personality uh, right before your very eyes. It got firm, fast, got fiery, a little bit spicy. A lot of strange things happening. It's playing skull. It's Open Championship Lynx Golf. Second on the way for Dustin Johnson at the second. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, that's a nice bounce in this golf course now. Aaron Oberholzer is out there following this group. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, gentlemen. It is definitely brisk today. A lot cooler than yesterday. Not a speck of blue sky to be seen. Great. Dustin Johnson Looks toughing like it out with the short perfect. sleeves. Grio looks like he's getting ready to go skiing. Playing two different golf championships, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Condition wise. DeGallo had a really tough day yesterday. Yeah, he did. Uh, beautiful drive here at the second, trying to attack this front right hole location downwind. These front hole locations will be difficult today downwind. That's pretty well done there for Sahith. He's kind of learning Lynx golf. I think he has a lot of experience on, on Lynx golf, but, you know, wonderful player in, this, in the States. Young. Gary Woodland to pick one up here at fifth. No trouble off the tee. Did well to get here. Good putt. And a couple of good putts so far from Gary Woodland, U.S. Open champ at Pebble Beach. Yeah, nice start there for Gary. It's, uh, it's about getting it going this morning and just kind of get within that cup mark and then get yourself in a position where you can work on the weekend. Alex Noren, third on the way at four. Yeah, over the back of this green. Short hole here at the, the fourth. Put it in position off the tee. And it's really difficult going downwind to those front pins like Aaron had said. Molinari, this for par at the opener. Yeah, that slides by. It's been a tough few years for Francesco. Moved back to Turin this summer from, from Los Angeles and you know, big moves in his life. He moved from London to LA and now come back to Europe. It uh, seems to be a lot going on off the golf course. Yeah, a little bit of clutter. This game's hard enough to to have a lot of extracurriculars going on in your life. Par three, six, 187, Gary Woodland. One seventy seven front, when blown out of that right. Any shape shot like that has a chance to run through and off the left side of the green. Really need to go in there with some sort of a hold drop against the wind, or otherwise the green tilts that way and everything kind of gravitates to that back left. Got to go with, with the right shape. Grillo in the bunker. Aaron's out there. Yeah, I'm not sure. It looks like Dustin Johnson's away farther back over the green, so I'm not sure exactly who is going to go first. It looks like Dustin as Grillo is sitting there patiently waiting for him. And Dustin was just in the first cut, but um, Thomas, John, and caught a wicked flyer downwind and couldn't stop it. Yeah, you kind of have to take your medicine. Maybe just, you know, play as far short of the green as you can. Try to get it to the front of the green, but 
pitching back into the wind, though, I think, you know, yeah. will help them slow this down. I think you know, one of the things I think about Lynx golf is that, you know, you don't think about it in the States a lot is, you know, missing long sometimes is a good thing. And this is one of those things where he actually missed long, and it's a good thing. Plenty of green to work with. And as you said, John, back into the wind. Shot there from Dustin Johnson, just off the back foot a little bit to get the strike. Very, very underrated part of his game. It really improved from, you know, 10, 12 years ago to make him, you know, world number one and world class player. But I always think with players that are that imp impressive on their long game, you sometimes we get to talk about how good they are but in the short game Rory is another one that actually has a great short game you know clubhouse here at Royal Liverpool you think about all the great championships not only 13 opens now but 18 amateurs um, local the boys championships here some great pictures in that clubhouse Grillo from the bunker is third easy oh my gosh how close that was to being great <laughs> you gotta really really look at these pin positions they cut very close a lot of them today back in the fairway at the first Brian Harmon See what type of shot he wants to play in here. That back left hole. Let's stay up. It's going to try. That was really close to being a good shot there for Brian. Harmon, a popular pick this week. If not to win, at least to be in the mix down the stretch come Sunday. Yeah, good form as of late. Fighter. He embraces these conditions. So Grillo taking a long look here as he waits. Got the putter here from off the green. Yeah, I think he's just waiting for Figala to putt. Sorry, Aaron. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, that the surrounding areas here are so good. And, and I think you really feel like most of them you should putt them it, it, it's really difficult to judge the bounces of the hills and so putting is is the safe option that's for sure it'll be interesting to see thomas as the week progresses and as we get into the weekend with the forecast how much the guys go for the putter when it gets really wet around these greens because we're expecting a decent amount of rain the next couple of days but right now it's a very nice play from off the greens have you seen links greens any better than these they're pretty good terry Very steep slope. Grillo's coming up here. And then right at the hole, it'll flatten out. That's got to go. It does stay there at least. Yeah, that was close to coming back to his feet. It was, wasn't it? No one now. This for par at the fourth. A little bit of a struggle at three and now f at four. You have the par five coming up. Yeah. Nice save. T at six, so Tegi at four under, one back. Very unassuming player, but very much a guy that just kind of, I mean, everything just pretty straight down the middle of the fairway, pretty straight at the flag. But it's its not a big game, but it's a very, very solid game. Right along 
the shore and the dunes all along there. Yesterday got tougher as the day went on. See what today brings. So underway, day two of the Open, the 151st edition, 13th time here at Royal Liverpool. Hoy Lake, Brian Harmon from off the green with a putter. A lot to deal with here, though. Yeah, Dustin Johnson was in a similar spot just a couple of groups before and putted it up there about four feet. So Brian looking to do the same. Big swinger up to the left. Once it gets on the green, it might try to come back to the right a little bit. He's got to get it way outside the, the right. Pretty well done. And that is one of the reasons that he is expected to be competitive this week. That putter, Grillo for bogey. Ugh. Out of position off the tee, you know, with an iron in that right rough and paid the price. He's made a bit of a mess of that hole, Grillo. We head off to Alexander Bjork. This is for birdie on the sixth hole from, got to say, an outside chance. Or a very good chance. Good chance. <laughs> yeah. Trouble at the first, that string of pars, and then an impressive putt here at six. So the lead still at five under, but Grillo no longer there. Chops back to three under. Tommy Fleetwood, putter impressive. What a win it would be for him and how the excitement will grow. The man from maybe an hour from here, Southport. Lomprecht, Georgia Tech man, amateur. So impressive off the tee. And his length here. Jordan Spieth, great win at Birkdale. They had two under, Matsuyama major champ, Kepka as well. The lead at five under, if, if you're in red figures, if you're under par after day one, you feel like you're right there. You're okay. That's exactly where you want to be. You, you don't really want to be anywhere else. Uh, I always think in big championships, actually getting out in front from the beginning can, can be quite hard. You're the center of attention. You just want to be there, thereabouts. Lying between 10th and 25th is, is, is a pretty good place. Otegi from off the green at six for birdie. This will be a big swinger from right to left. Down that slope, hang in there. Trying to hang in there, go. Wow. <laughs> Grillo and Take now your time him. going up there. The wind's blowing that direction. Comfortable start. I know he would have liked to make four at the fifth, the par five, but all pars going out is okay. You go second to the eighth. Just following up on what we were talking about traditionally, numbers wise, if you believe in following the numbers, you, know, you want to be within five after day one. That's been, you go back years and years at the Open, that's what's played out. The eventual winner was within five shots after the opening round. Harmon trying to save par here at one. You know, a lot of times, too, whatever's leading after the first day, if there's any type of weather coming in, that's a pretty good score to be on after the 72nd hole, too. Solid stroke there from Harmon. I found him very impressive yesterday, especially on the greens. It felt like he just had everything figured out and good rhythm to everything. Solid and good player, Brian Harmon. He'll get his nose in there, I'm sure. No one now. Just off the fairway. So 271 here at the par five.
have to miss those bunkers trying to get it up the center part of the green, and that's going to be left. Not a terrible place to be right there. He'll have plenty of room. He's a wonderful pitcher of the golf ball. So it's an iron on the tee for Grillo at the third. That out of bounds right. Guys, this was the play yesterday, too, in the practice round. So much talk about taking a driver and taking it over that corner, over the out of bounds, and this was the play. Oh, definitely. Uh, in, in practice rounds, they come up with all sorts of ideas, and then, <laughs> then they come yeah. back to it in the tournament. Reality. <laughs> yeah, once you got to put your name on the scorecard at the end of the day, the strategies tend to change a little bit. Molinari ready at two. Front, front right pin position. So this just got to go in left of the flag. You really don't want to be looking at, at the pin here. Well, that's an excellent shot. Is it going to hang on? Yeah, it will do. It should be all right. Stop. It's hard to say anything until the ball actually stops. How many somewhere. early calls are there? <laughs> yes, that, <yeah>. exactly. <laughs> Whoops, it's not so good. Otegi at seven, the par four. Just aim at that left fairway bunker, try to let the wind take it down the center of the fairway, like just like that. Pretty strong golf hole, this one. 2014, it was the toughest hole on the golf course. Pin on the right side today so that it's not much protecting now. Yesterday, the pin over those bunkers was really, really difficult. Now, so what do you take away from Rory's round yesterday? Well, I, I, I thought he got off to an awful start. I really did. I, I, the, the tee shots off the first couple of holes were poor, and then he made some really bad mistakes on four and five. Uh, and that kind of, he never really settled into his round. He fought well. He, uh, he, he knows on this golf course at the back of the end of the round that comes a couple of par fives. That sets up nicely for him. I mean, he didn't take advantage of 18, but, but I thought there was a lot of heart and fight in the, in the round yesterday. But I, he certainly needs to find some of the golf that he played last week in, uh, in Scotland uh, to compete this week. I, I wasn't, I was impressed with the fight, but I wasn't impressed with the golf. Yeah, I followed him yesterday, and I, I would echo 100% of that. He just, he was a good fight all day. Uh, didn't really putt very well, missed a real short putt at the eighth hole. Didn't take advantage of the fifth hole after a perfect tee shot. Uh, so really wasn't on his game, but he did fight well. And that, that par at the last. Yeah, I was going to reference that. Speaking of fight, how important yeah. was that par at the last well, I know where that he was? The second shots by all three players, by my accounts, were, were kind of the wrong decision. You want to hit it over that green as far as you can over that green, not bringing those bunkers into play. Because any any shot that was going from the fairway at the green that were going in those bunkers could not miss the face of the bunker going in there so hard. And so um, with Rory and John Rahm hit, hitting basically the same shot. But then to have that imagination and that fight to make a par on the last hole, I think was big for Rory with that short night sleep you know have dinner short night come back out and now you know what to expect take a look at some of the games that are upcoming including rory mcelroy who played late on day one early on day two with victor hovland at one under tony finau justin thomas just really searching for his game at the moment we all go through it i mean and he's never gone through it at any level of his junior college amateur professional life so this is a this is something new to to justin he'll he'll snap out of it thomas we've been through it this game will it'll beat you up it'll knock you down it'll bring you up oh absolutely he's going through a horrid time with his game and and just trying to find his way and you know i think as a as a player you you kind of understand what that's like but each player to their own, you know, finding their way. And, and he really, really just needs to get back to basics and, and do the things that he's good at and then build from there. Some surprising scores. Six over, two over, eight over for those three. And collectively, that, that trio that includes John Rahm now, uh, 
six over par. I know McElroy's at even par, big par at the last, but uh, trying to turn that around today. Back out to Grillo. Yeah, just trying to steady the, it all after the last hole. This is a much easier pin position today on the left hand side. Now you feel more comfortable hitting it into the middle of that green. The pin, uh, the wind's off the right hand side as well. You kind of hang it out there a bit. It's overcooked that. And that was a decent place to be yesterday. This is not a, the greatest place not today. Not great today, right? Dustin Johnson now. Part of that, those white stakes on the right? <laughs> Definitely. Your, your last look is always, those are in the corner of your eye. And yeah, for Dustin to miss a shot like that, way long and, and left. Looks like you're trying to hit a cut in there and try to hold it in the center of the green and just got over top of it. And that's going to be very <laughs> difficult. Not the best of lies there for Alexander Bjork, but he's done well with it. He just kind of stood all over it, hoping it, hoping it would jump. Getting into front of the green was pretty good from there. The third shot here at the fifth for Norn. This shouldn't present too much of a problem. You know, with his pitching motion, he can clip that right off the turf. A little check release up the hill. Well done. Really not a difficult shot. He made it look very professional. Average amateurs out there right now. Well, it looks tough to me. <laughs> made it look easy. Grab the putter. Otegi, yeah, exactly. At the seventh. Asking it to come down, I mean, I think he just came out a little bit lower than he wanted. He knew he was going to have a big bounce on it. That's okay. Back to that adjustment you're talking about. It's tough. Woodland sets up next for a second to think about the. Tr there is trouble front. Oftentimes, the best play is long, but it's tough to make yourself think that way. Right, I mean that's you know some strategy and know, and knowing the golf course, knowing places to be. It's like going around Augusta. A lot of times, long is okay, pitching into different slopes. But um, yeah, that's. Do we have to tell you who, who that is? is? I don't think so. <laughs> I always say, kids, it's not Santa Claus. It's John <laughs> Daly. <laughs> So this is John's third at the first. Great win at St. Andrews. Hold position, please. Just hold, please. It's going to be going left and long. <laughs> you, you don't need to say. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. You thought it might have been good. Got the close up. <laughs> take you back to that opening tee for the next game. This is game number fifteen on the tee from Sweden. David Langmuth. Man who will turn 36 years of age tomorrow. The winner around the PGA Tour, that big win at the Memorial back in 2015, third time at the Open. So one of those in red figures under par on day one. Positive outlook for day two. Yeah, I see those flags on the top of the grandstand there at 18. Wind is freshening.
of the team from the USA, Ben Griffin. And was born in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, went to the University of North Carolina, first year out on the PGA Tour. I think if I were a spectator here at one, I would move off to the side, then get close for the second shots. If I'm on the left, that is a popular spot. It has been a popular spot for all these players. Most of them going left. All right. That seems to be the rally cry of the <laughs> more calls of four here than any hole in the history of the Open. On the team from South Africa, Hockey Strider. Two time winner on the DP World Tour. First on the order of merit, the Sunshine Tour to earn his spot in the open. Well, this is heading him down the right hand side towards those bunkers. Will be a pitch sideways. And maybe one of the main reasons we see so many tee shots left here at the opener. Well, they'll head off. We go to the second with Brian Harmon from the middle of the fairway. See what kind of strategy he has here, Thomas, if he wants to maybe run one in, try to keep it short of the hole, or just fly it on the green, take your medicine like that. Well done. Oh, that's an excellent shot. Send it right on the front of the green and use that little slope. Great judgment of distance. I mean, you watch him more than I do, but he seems to be a player with, with a lot of, like there's a lot of brain, good brain work behind his, the way he plays the game. He's a, and he's a fighter. He's a, I uh, made the comparison a little bit earlier to like a Corey Pavin, just a fighter. You know, he tries to play the right shots, but there's something inside them that just won't give up. So we saw how far from this pin, whole location DJ was with that approach. Got the putter. He's going to have to slam that pretty hard, and he did a good job oh. right on line. He's just not quite there, Dustin Johnson, at the moment, you feel like, but he can turn it around. Would take it for birdie on seven. So just swing a little bit off his right. Solid par, though, at the tough seventh. Well, he's doing the right thing. He's just making pars. That's what you want to do on these golf courses. Let birdies come to you. Agree, though, closer, similar line. Mm, way too much speed. Powered that right through. Because it just went off in my hands. Birdie at four. Nice look here for Tom Kim. They get the two over and well done. Walking a little gingerly off the green here. Gala, similar. Oh, well, Clank. you saw the other two <laughs> with a similar shot. Yeah, you're going to make that. Guys are good. That's the start that he wanted. Maybe battle back, get a few more, see where that ends up. 
Clark with this left. Yeah, these are the ones. Just a little bit more breeze and they get tricky. And just got to be a bit more confident on them than that. Unlucky though, isn't it? Wow. A horseshoe. Saw that for Rory yesterday. Grillo, this for par. Quite a bit left. That one just hung right there. Well, not long ago, he went to bed leading the Open Championship, and all of a sudden, he's three behind. And he's only played three holes. So Harmon at four under would join those at the top. And this is where he's taking advantage. Yeah, he was amazing yesterday on the greens, I thought. Kind of like that. Never really in doubt either. It just looks over the ball. Like, I, you know that kind of feeling you have with players when they stand over the ball, but he's most likely going to hold it. And then you look at other players and you go, oh, he's got not much chance of holding this. Yeah, they just, they just uh, elude, con they, you, well, I don't know what you say. They have a lot of confidence. They show it. <laughs> no, <laughs> exude. It's well exude, exude confidence. That's the, that's I'm a the math word. guy. <laughs> I'm not an English. I'm not a language guy. You know what? He's making putts at the open, and he shares the lead. That's the point. So Brian Harmon under par and at five under the other two at the top still to come here on day two 156 players in the field for this the 151st edition. Well you, you can see the golf ball they have gotten a break here with the lie we'll see. This is a pretty bold move here with a hybrid out of this. Pretty much, that's what you would expect a hybrid out of that tall rough. It would have to get snagged a little bit and go left. The car cam. We got Keegan Bradley arriving after hitting some at the practice area. Yeah, the rain rains here at Hoy Lake is off on the other side uh, of the road, so the players get in the van and, and go over there to hit their balls. It's a, it just takes a little bit longer, but. The service they put on the RNA for it, it kind of makes it not that big a problem for the players. Kind of a nice look. You're delivered by car right to the tee, right to that opening. Walk through the tunnel, start. So Dustin with the miss. I feel like he gave one away there. Definitely. Putting the ball in the middle of the fairway and making bogeys, that's that's rough. Let's try to avoid the bunkers Take right here at eight. That's a nice job right there. Yeah, he'll do that all day long. No wonder he won at Valderrama. You know, he's won at some very tight golf courses. He will love this championship. Co-leader waiting on the tee at the third. So Keegan Bradley has arrived. A few putts before he goes, about 10 minutes or so. That recent win in New England. A couple of wins this year on the PGA Tour. Good to see that game back. Definitely a wonderful driver of the golf ball. Has plenty of length. Hits a lot of fairways. And, you know, that this part of the game... He's found something. So not yet done for bogey. Okay, now he is. And a double and a bogey on the card, and just like that, Emiliano Grillo at two under, three back. Win at Colonial in a playoff earlier this season. The crowd 
which were great yesterday during the practice round we had nearly 40,000 people out here even more than that yesterday in the opening round. doesn't matter the weather they're going to come out they're going to be here well this is a massive sports city you know obviously well known around the world for its football and two big teams here but when it comes to golf they all love their golf up here there's some great golf courses and they'll all come out and their favorite son is leading this championship so they'll come out in big big numbers i'm going to do a little tour monday i think or Dan Field. New Everton Stadium going up, right along the water, the docks. Grillo, T at four. Really has to steady himself now after that uh, rough start. Let's start right here, put, a, put the tee shot in the fairway. Langask on eight for birdie. Oh, what a pot. As a player, you'd like, really? How did that miss? How did that miss? It was on the left side of the hole, a foot from the hole, and it missed on the right. How'd that miss? Co-leader ready on the tee of three. like a little low chaser. Really nice, right right to the elbow, right where you want it. Scott Tway, his caddy, brother of PGA champion, Bob Tway, nicknamed Big Country. <laughs> it's a good nickname, yeah. Fairway at eight, Woodland getting set. Think about yesterday, it got tougher, as we said, in the afternoon. The, the afternoon wave, about a shot higher, the scoring average, than the morning wave. See that happening today? It, it's, it's always tough. I'll, I'll say that with the wind conditions, whatnot. But it's not easy right now. No, it's not easy. And yesterday, you know, the sun just was out all day, and it just kind of kept growing and growing, and the wind picked up, and the course got firmer and faster. Today, it might be a cloud cover all day, so it might, I don't think the yeah. conditions are really going to change unless something comes in and it, the wind really picks up and we get some rain. And I, I asked that question because of the forecast, but do you trust the forecast? That's that's the point. Well, you probably can't really ever trust the forecast 100% up here, but I, I think that this these guys have probably got it a little bit the tougher side of the draw. It's cool this morning, you know, they're, they're facing a little bit. It will warm up through the day, so that does make it a little bit easier. And if the wind doesn't increase, well, then these guys have definitely had the harder part of it. Gary Wooden leaning like it's going left. It got over that bunker. Good now. The tougher, tougher aspect yesterday afternoon, judging those fairway bunkers and how much roll you were going to get, because that picked up and picked up throughout the afternoon. No question, those fairways got firmer and faster, and that just w makes these fairway bunkers just bigger. Uh, instead of you know three or four yards around the bunker, it was eight to ten yards. Yeah. If it got close, it was going in the bunker. Great chance here for a Teggy. See what type of shot he wants to hit in here, Thomas. Does he want to you know, get it out there to the right and kind of hold it there or take the pin on? Well, I think when the wind is like this, I always think you've got to play with the wind and not too much against it. I think you just hang it out there and let it come back in. That's an excellent shot there. That's, that's a very inviting pin position, I think, with the wind off the right today. Keep it here for Bjork. It is that judgment where it gets to a certain point. You can't really hold it up. You you can't fight the wind, right? You got to go time, with it. Yeah, it, you, there's too much downwind into it that you can't hold it again. So yeah, just let the the wind drop the ball. Good looking golf swing. I remember Bob Torrance said to me once. He said, Thomas, on Lynx Golf, the wind is your friend. Play with it, not against it.
Beautiful shot there from Alexander. Grillo trying to turn things around. Let's see how aggressive he wants to be here. Not very. Not very. That was like a, one of those last minute. Don't miss right. Tom Kim to get it to one over. Yeah, it's picked up a couple. Yeah, it looks like he's struggling a little bit with his walk at the moment. Limping a bit, Tom Kim. This for bogey for Norn. Trouble off the tee here at six. Yeah, the par three. That was the fourth toughest hole on the golf course yesterday. Tom Hoagie back on the tee. Like he started up way out to the right, right pin position. Use that slope. Well done. I don't think you can get it any closer than that today, can you? That was Did I say it was a difficult hole? <laughs> Evidently. Four screen here. Look, at it. it's not very big. The screen has got some big slopes from the front edge of the green. So it's, it's, this is a difficult pin position, even with a wedge to get close to today. See a lot of shots into the middle of the green and take your putt from there, 20, 25 feet. Interesting set of greens, I feel here, Thomas, that some of them are big, round, and flat, and then you have some that are small with a lot of movement to it. So great variety of green sites here. And then you have the 17th. Then Which there's that. <laughs> yes. The diabolical drivable par four. <laughs> or the drivable three. <laughs> yeah. Listen, it's going to add drama to the finish. It's going to be memorable one way or another. I think that part is true. That, that part is true. That's right. 20 mile per hour wind. Harmon setting up. Start this just right of that TV tower with the number three on and drop it into the flag. Yeah. And he's done that very, very well. That's an excellent shot. That's exactly what you're trying to do. You see a ball there close to the flag. You're not trying to do that. That's a that's a fortunate shot. That's exactly what you're trying to do on this hole. Yeah, that was a quality golf shot. Great strike. Held it right there. Beautiful shot. Otegi, this to get it to five under. Share the lead. Said that a couple of times so far. He's had some chances. Meanwhile, Dustin Johnson. <laughs> Bit of a struggle right now for DJ. Brian Harmon playing awfully well the first day and a couple of holes so far. Got a chance at the third with a birdie try coming up. Tommy Fleetwood and Christo Lamprecht, the amateur at five under. And Wyndham Clark on that first page of the leaderboard. It's got to be different playing your first major championship as a major champion. Expectations much different. Matthew Jordan, great story. Grew up right here. 
member since he was seven years old, Royal Liverpool. Yeah, isn't it just the nicest photos of him up and video, videos of him when he was a little, little kid yeah. around here? It was a big day for him yesterday. And Gary Woodland comes close. Not quite. Yeah, it's got to be a great thrill for a Matthew Jordan, but also add some pressure, expectations. You want to play well. Now he's done that after after one day. Maybe maybe he can go play. Just focus and go play golf. We'll see. Yeah, now he just don't need the expectations. Yeah, no, they have built, no doubt. Team at one over the approach here at one. It's a tough opening green, this. It really is. It's very narrow. Both ball runs off on both sides. So good shot in there into the heart of the green. Bjork for birdie at the eighth. It would be a good chance at the eighth here if you're in the fairway. Avoid those fairway bunkers or the fescue left in the gorse. Good putt. On gas, this for birdie at the ninth. <laughs> Harmon, yet another chance for birdie. He's been rolling it. He really rolled it so beautiful yesterday, and he continues today. And that's an excellent start. Back-to-back -back birdies by Harmon. Six under par. He's leading the Open Championship. So Keegan Bradley, the announcement has been made. Day two begins. I think they yelled four before the swing was completed that time. Yeah, it, was, it seemed that way. <laughs> On the team from Korea, Sung J.M. Twenty-five year olds got a couple of wins on the PGA Tour, the Korean PGA Tour, and the Corn Ferry Tour. He's played on around the world. There he is at the World's Open. Extension of golf swing there through. Not seen many be on short stuff. That just trickles into the first cup. On the tee from Chile, Joaquin Neiman. Twenty-four year old from Chile, who we saw at LA Country Club at the US Open, a share of thirty second there. Fourth time here. He's an extremely talented young man, this one. A lot of people have him down for greatness in the game. Not a great start yesterday, plus seven. And that's what the Open does to you sometimes. To the fifth Ryder Cup captain Zach Johnson for birdie. Well, that's a Zach Johnson we know and love. And, and you know it well, he's going to have some decisions to make coming yeah, up. There's some big things ahead of him, They're both for him and Luke Donald. The next, uh, next few months will happen very quickly and it will come at them fast, but 
you know, they got a lot of talent and then good players to, to make up their teams from. Grillo. Performance at this, a, a major championship, the Open, really come into play with those decisions. Oh, definitely. You know, there's, you know, there, there's probably no higher pressure in in golf than than a Ryder Cup in the way you feel uh, when you're standing on those tees. So to be able to do it in major championships under pressure is something that captains will always look at. Have you got the ability to handle the highest pressure in golf? then you can put them on the first tee on Friday morning at a Ryder Cup. Good, good shot right to the edge. Because in that setting, you're, you're not, it's an individual sport, but it's not there. No, it's not. And, and you know, guys that, that you watch through your career that are great and they handle pressure extremely well even those guys you see at the Ryder Cup looking completely different they've got different eyes they've got a different feeling wonderful putt there from Nakajima on the first I don't see many birdies there so yeah so, the, so it is it's a thing that the captains will always look at the ability to to handle the extremest form of pressure which comes in major championships on Sunday Sole possession of the lead at the 151st Open, Brian Harmon. Well, he finds another fairway straight down the middle. He's playing some lovely golf and he's in the lead. And this is how he started. This was on the second for birdie. never in doubt yeah. and went on to the tough third hole two lovely shots into here and another one finds the heart of the hole he's had a game plan coming in executing it he's played well lately making putts all of that adding up to six under early going here in the second round of the open. So the wind reaching 20 miles per hour early on day two has not bothered Brian Harmon a bit. Second here at the first. Yeah, it's played extremely tough this hole. So there you see that it's what two or three iron here for Sibu Kim into this narrow green. Just a little left bounce there, and off it goes. Thinking about what we're talking about, Brian Harmon and how he's his approach, and it, it fits his game. He's playing his game, but as a player at a place where the Open's been held 13 times now, could you go back and watch maybe some of the footage from 2014 or 2006 when Tiger won it here and try to learn some of the aspects to this golf course? Well, you can disregard 2006 because that golf course was as brown as anything yeah. I've ever seen and, and you know, it was com played completely different. 2014, I mean, it was a lot softer than it is right now, but that might come in on the weekend. The golf course might get softer with the weather that's coming in. So you could learn a lot of things from that, but I still think the back end of the golf course has changed quite a bit. Yeah. And that's where it really comes down to on the weekend, those last four or five holes. Yeah. New hole 17. Ends now a par four. It was a par five. Hang on. Oh. It was visible, and then it wasn't. He 
you see the flags there on the top of the hospitality units. They, it's picking up out there, that's for sure. It's going to ask some questions of these guys. That's the grandstand on the 18th there on the right, and that hole is played straight into the wind today. Good luck. <laughs> been laughing a bit about how many tee shots have gone left here but it it actually is not a bad play because the spectator area and and those gates though the stand okay. yeah. you get relief okay. yeah and you got to kind of a nice angle in through the, to the green as well from the left hand side from right yeah. it's, it's really problematic to to get anywhere with that front right hand bunker um i just i need to know the rules so i can Okay, I would say you ground your club and it moves. Okay, so as long as I don't ground my club. Well, it's not ground your club. If you cause it to move now, would it be a penalty? If you cause it to move? Yeah, I'm saying, but if I don't ground my club, then I'm, I can't, I'm not going to cause it to move. Okay. Correct? I'm gonna, yes. Yeah, yes. so as long as I don't ground my club. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Scotty, I'm going to need you to move that bag in case that yeah, moves. Yeah, yeah. They play. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 52. Yeah. Everybody's hit. I think um, the ball was m moving a little bit after the drop. Um, it wasn't coming to rest and then ended up dropping a couple of times to find the place where it will come to rest. Now, Keegan Bradley's question is, what if the ball moves after the ball is at rest? And... It was a question of whether or not the player caused the ball to move. It, if it was the player, yes, that would be a one-shot penalty. The ball would be replaced. If it's not the player, then the ball would just be played as it lies. Take a little off of it. Great. Thank you. I feel like there's some right to left. So he will now, you know, he will play this like he's in a fairway trap normally. So you just hover the club behind the ball. So he's making sure that he's not causing this ball to move at all. What's the cover on that left bunker? I think that's an issue. No, I mean, I'm talking about six, Oh. It's right at those right flags in between the one and the yeah. pin. Fly, please. So you see that yeah. that club please. never touched the ground when he put it down. So he just he just made sure he hovered the club. So then there was never a question if it was him. If the ball moved, it still wouldn't be a problem. It's an excellent shot from there. Just a little bit long, but but an excellent shot straight down the flag. Well done. Well described. So that tee shot. Now the second. Great touch. Really well done. Spanish hands. <laughs> exactly. See how delicate this is now for Grillo. Well, this is pretty straightforward. This is actually almost helping him being on that down slope. He's got to get up the slope here. And that's a pretty poor effort from where he was. So the announcement's been made. Victor Hovland set to go at one. Yeah, another guy to put on an impressive fight yesterday. He got off to a poor start, but he fought it back to under par. You think he could go close this week? Excellent start. On the tee from the USA, Tony Finau. His initial win, then it took a while, and then he just has kept winning. Last month or so, trying to get back to the form that he had earlier. Seventh appearance here at the Open. Everybody's okay there. On the team from the USA, Justin Thomas. Yeah. 
Great player, one of the biggest names right now. As I mentioned, he's searching, trying to find the game that took him to the top. Two-time major champ. So one of the things I think when you're in this situation as Justin Thomas is finding himself in now for the first time is that your mind is thinking like the world's best player, but your golf is not backing it up. So that's the constant battle you have between mind and ability. And you've got to get back to doing the simple things, the things that you know well, just do them and one day at a time. And this is the first day of his life. It starts now. It doesn't start in a week. It doesn't start in a month. It starts right now today. Putter from off the green at one. So that left the par. And Rory McElroy arriving for his tee time here on day two. Fought his way around that back nine yesterday. John Rahm. Surprising his opening round and where he finds himself as Keegan Bradley plays his third here at the opener. I am a little bit. I, 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 but I didn't think he, you know, there was nothing in his golf yesterday that, that said that he was going to play a lot better than, than the score actually showed. I didn't think, uh, it just doesn't look like he's on top of his game at the moment. He's searching a little bit. It's just not coming together. And then these golf courses, when you're not on top of your game, these golf courses become extremely difficult to deal with. Another chance for Brian Harmon. He's already at six under. Would not wager against him making that putt. All right, back to the first. In left with this for par as we welcome in Kurt Byram to the broadcast now. Kurt, how are you? Good morning, fellas. Doing great. Thomas, good to see you. It's always a pleasure, Kurt. <laughs> why, did, why did he smirk when he said I that? Don't Kurt, know. I get that a lot. All right, so a drop shot at the first. Been a difficult start. This stretch opening hole certainly the third with the out of bounds. You don't want to bring that into play. Take that out as much as possible. Up to the tee at the 10th. Otegi. And another one. Another one heads down the middle of the fairway. He's just such a good driver of the golf ball. Heading to the far end of the golf course here now before he turns for home. Keegan left with this par at one. It's an area of his game that's gotten a lot better here in the last couple of years. You know, that whole transition from an anchor putter years ago to this. And obviously, to win twice this season, it had to be pretty good. Yeah, he's talked about it. It took him a while, that transition. Rory on his way to that first tee. About what that win last week, winning the Scottish Open, did for him. It was it wasn't easy down the stretch. The wind was blowing 35 miles an hour last week in that final round. Yeah, he sometimes gets questioned a little bit about his ability to play in strong winds, and because he hits the ball as high as he does, I think that for him was a win where he was like, "If you think I can't play in wind." Well, I showed you I can. Yeah. I think the other part of that was he, he didn't play well on the first nine holes on Sunday, but then came back with that wind blowing as hard as it was on the back nine and shot, what, three or four under on the back. Didn't really make a lot of putts the first three days either, and then makes the putts at 17 and 18, two really tough holes. Close it out.
Byron, you'd be worn out walking to the first tee here the way you got to go. <laughs> it should be a workout. That'd be all I need for the day, that's for sure. <laughs> Should be a bench halfway for you and me where we could just yeah. sit and have a chat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they should have what they call them buggies over here. They should have a buggy for Thomas and I to get yes. there. And now listen. That's how they welcome you everywhere, right? The market, anywhere you go in town. Well, it's a bit of the Rory show, and, and John Rahm actually complained a little bit about that, I feel, like, after his round yesterday. And I was fortunate to play a, go a lot of golf with Tiger Woods, and, you know, you just got to deal with it. That's, you know, it's there, and you got to deal with it. If you, if you complain about it, it's going to be in your head. Hey, no complaining here. How about the way this man's putting? That's the strength of his game. Harmon, he's a bulldog and he puts great. Fino down the left hand side there. He's, look at that. He's almost as good as being on the fairway. Speaking of a buggy, little noise. Tony now ready. You guys have been in here for a while now, but this first hole is a beast right now. Back into this breeze. Yeah, it's played really tough. Long irons in here. And that's why most of them go down the left, Stay because the, 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 the green kind of sets at you from the left-hand side. So you, you're actually going straight up the middle of the green from that left-hand side. When you go down the right, you really have no shot into this, to this hole today. So you want to be down the left, but it's, you know, you've got to be a bit lucky with with the lie, or you need to be here. This is a nice place to be. <laughs> he got it down there too, didn't he? 186 to the hole. Well, if John Daly was where the wooden collars, he would be Papa Smurf. <laughs> <laughs> He had, to, he had to go for a new pullover today, or yesterday. The seagull got him. Uh, yeah. Has anyone played that as well? There's an intent there today, that's for sure. That's a, two beautiful shots on the first from Victor Hovland. Big improvement in his game there too with the putter this season. He's always been good tee to green, but the putter's been the difference. That's why he won at Colonial. A double and a bogey on the card, but gets one back there. So with the lead at seven under and Brian Harmon through four holes. Red hot today so far to start. This next game just about set to go. This is game number 19. On the tee from Northern Ireland, Rory McElroy. Thomas, you talked about the fight yesterday. Let's see if he can be sharp from the start today. This club was not as good as it normally is for him yesterday. That's the way we recognize him. Down the mid, long and down the middle of the fairway fairway.
on the tee from Spain, John Ram. So playing along with Rory McIlroy then and the reception he gets, do you use that on day two? He doesn't need a lot of motivation day to day. But I will say this. I thought he handled his frustrations pretty well yesterday. He can get really fiery. I know he was really disappointed in the way he finished and the way he played overall, but he doesn't need a lot of motivation. Now, John, John understands the game very well, and he, he takes a lot of the history in, and he has a big love for his, uh, his home country and what position they have in the game of golf. He wants this championship more than most. On the tee from England, Justin Rose. Kind of a brutal start to his round yesterday. Remember, he drove it in the fairway bunker here at one. He drove it in the fairway bunkers again at two. And it's just tough to have to get down there and have to pitch out sideways on the first couple holes. So let's see if he can get off to a better start with this driver. like a decent lie. No easy to hit a drive when those two have hit drives like they just did there. It just puts a little bit of extra pressure on it all. It's easy to feel inadequate around those two. Tony Finau just off the green at the first. Pitched in at the 13th yesterday from just off the green. Short game's been pretty good so far. Well, this is the furthest away from the clubhouse on the golf course, a 10th green. Adrian Otegi coming in here. He's played a look, great front nine. He really has. Just simple golf all the way. Keep hitting fairways and greens. That's what you want to do. Good chance for Hovland to get off to a great start. Birdie at one. Right in the middle. Just You cannot play that hole any better than that. Drove it in the fairway, great iron shot, hole high. Hoke, Hoagie, Hoke, Hoagie? Tom Hoagie, yeah, he, he's from North Dakota. Oh, well, how about that at the seven? I was gonna say he's from North Dakota, Thomas. I'm from South Dakota originally, so much warmer in South Dakota. <laughs> Sounds it. We get one foot less of snow in the wintertime. That matters as well. <laughs> Let me tell you. Back to back birdies for Tom Hoagie at six and seven. He's in the red. Down to five, Harmon. Leader by two. Oh, he's playing some golf at the moment. He's feeling it. He's feeling the love from the game. These are the best moments of your life. Especially when you're in the heart of the fairway. What a place to be, he said. Uh, his first ever shots in the Open came here in 2014. Brian Harmon leads the way by two in the 151st edition. What a start it has been with uh, three consecutive birdies from two to four. Got a chance ahead for another down the fifth. The first par five on the golf course. Hovland's uh, out there already. And is one under par already today. He's inside the top 15. Step in the wrong direction, but just the one for Bjork, who's one over the card. And just look at the views, look at the crowds. 
There was an okay. incredibly long line trying to get in here. We showed footage of it earlier on in the coverage. I think it went all the way back to Liverpool, which is a good 30 minutes away. How much they've embraced this championship, Kurt. Love the crowds over here. They never fail to show up. It's tremendous. Well, it's a six iron if it's hot, and it's a five iron if it's not yeah. hot. Six iron. I think it's a three-quarter five. Oh, wow. And Oberholzer has uh, moved out to this group. Good afternoon. It is starting to blow a little bit more here. That is for sure. And uh, Justin Rose has drawn a very good lie over in this left rough. Good angle to this back left hole location. Should be able to control this. 140 to the front. Probably doesn't need to pitch it on more than, I'd say, 10. Use the wind as a backstop. Just going for the three quarter five iron, and then it's easy with the three quarter ones for the club head to turn over in the rough. Just does a little bit. Tricky one coming up there. There's two flags together right up there. Yep, yeah, exactly. Wind just quartering off the right, 176 yards for Rom. If he wants to, he can go ahead and kind of hit a little cut and hold it up against this wind. I don't think it's hard enough to where he has to use the wind. Choking down on something. Try to flight this down a little bit. This is flighted up the right-hand side, trying to draw and move on the wind, but not moving as much as I think he wants it to. Just catches the edge of the green now, that's fine. And 172 for Rory, and he can use the wind. And obviously, we know he loves to draw the ball. He can put it up into that wind, flight it just a little bit, and then have his natural shot shape fall right on the flag. Flighted six iron on the way. Well, the intentions are clear on day two from Rory McElroy. Rough start for Griu for this round. This is for Birdie on the sixth. I had a nice birdie there on five after a double bogey and a bogey on two and three. Good roll. Quickly over to Minwoo Lee's birdie chance. Try to pick one up before the turn. Does so. So much charisma. Nice putting stroke as well. He's back in the red for the day. Colin Morikawa. Had a little bit of everything in that round of 73 yesterday, didn't he? It's interesting to me, you know, he he understands his game where McElroy and Rom both hit driver because they knew they could carry those bunkers down there. He can't get over those bunkers with drivers, so he's using three wood to stay out of them. Bogey birdie, double birdie. This is the first four holes. Headed left. He's going to get lucky. Going to be down there where all those people have been trampling the grass down. On the tee from the USA, Max Homer. Said yesterday was as good as he ever remembers hitting it in a major. Thinks he's been gripping the wheel a little bit too tight. 
Seems to free up a little in regular events. He's trying to channel that. He's working it all out, Kurt. Yeah, I think his best finish in a major was last year at the PGA. He was tied for 17th. So with his kind of game, Thomas, it's a little bit of a surprise. And I think Allison hit the nail on the head, just putting so much pressure on himself. Yeah, you've just got a good major championship. You have to learn to find your way with them. And they are only regular golf tournaments. You know, you, you don't have to do anything different. The obviously the courses are tougher. But don't do On the tee from England, Terrell Hatton. Popular character, entertaining one as well. Said he struggled uh, yesterday to try and work his swing out. Was hoping after a good sleep, the Tyrrell he knows would reappear. Did well to shoot level par in the end, in spite of that. You know, he looked good early on, and then all of a sudden he just kind of lost his way in the middle of the round. This is a great start. Excellent drive from Tyrrell Hatton. And just some gentle slopes here for John, as it's, oh, I'd say, a good 30, 35 feet, maybe even 40 feet to this hole speed everything on these oh my word had some pace on it it's still for that not to drop popped its way around might have to repair the back side of that <laughs> hole Brian Harmon. And a three wood here for his second on five. Oh. I guess that's a pull for him. Push, pull, pull, push, push, pull. Hard to get your left I got my left-handed mixed up here. This is it. It's all, it's all a little backwards. Help us out, Aaron, if, uh, the part ahead of Rory McIlroy. Yeah, there's not a lot there, I don't think. Uh, but this is, I mean, the, the way the first three holes have been playing this week, the first two over the first two days, if he could get off to a great start, this would be huge for the confidence going forward, especially on what proves to be a potentially tough weather day today. Yeah. Boom, McIlroy's in the red. That stroke looked great right there, very positive. Get that big crowd fired up too. Get that, start to ride that momentum. Comes in with good momentum as well. Winner of the Genesis Scottish Open last week. Tenth screen, Otegi. Going along nicely. Oh, he's a really had a go at this. It'll be a tricky one coming back. Tony Finau on two. Tough pin position here on the front. Right hand side, so you're really going away from it. You're going at the TV tower. If you go at it, that's likely what you're going to do. Tom Kim for birdie at the eighth. Playing a little bit better here recently, and he's got it going today. Playing some good golf out here early on Friday. 430s in the last five holes, bogey free today he's into the red over to Brian Harmon that back in the stance here gonna try to drive it in a little bit going back into the breeze oh. 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 
Oh, great strike on it. I think the pitch is just, uh, just that's a little an upslope there. He puts it a fraction too long, so it's obviously going up pace. And that's quite unlucky that it didn't go in. But he's about to take a three shot lead. To keep the par, par run going for uh, Adrian Otegi. Good save right there. One of the things that Tiger Woods always talks about in these major championships, especially the, the open, is to avoid three putting. One of his big things. Plot your way around, keep it out of the fairway bunkers, and avoid three putting. Driver for Rory McElroy at two. find out. <laughs> Bunker's about 3.40 to get past. Go up to the green where we find Victor Hovland for birdie. Birdie the first. Good chance here as well. Just a little bit, a little bit slow on the stroke there. Rom also with the driver here at the second. His go-to shape would be left to right. But, uh, he's certainly capable of going right to left. Here with that wind down off the left, he's going to just try to ride the breeze. up so open in his feet and then he just opens up that body and, and slides the ball just runs out of fairway though out in the far corner of the golf course adrian otegi at the 11th tee That's another part i i find really interesting you know like the 11th hole is a perfect example a lot of players hit something other than driver off of there. It's not a long par four, but then a lot of the other players believe that they'll take their chances, get it as close to the green as they can. There's no fairway bunker down there, so they'll they'll deal with the rough if they get in there. Fair to say that this golf course has seen some interpretations when you think about the last two additions here. The way Tiger did it, then McElroy. John Cook is out uh, with the three ball of Homer, Hatton and Morikawa. Nice to be with you all. Good to be out here. Max Holman. Beautiful tee shot. Right side of the fairway. 213 yards. Back hole location straight into the wind. He'd be doing well to get about middle of the green. Easy to miss it left. And that'll be a short side miss over there in the left rough there for Max. It's been popular in terms of the amount of balls over there, less popular with the results from the left side, up to nine. Norrin for his part. Everybody's made today, he's bogeyed the next. It puts him at one over through the turn. Back to Hatton. Beautiful tee shot there for Terrell Hatton. And Hang on. Trying to flight it down. 185. Good looking shot. Will it stay? Tried to, but that was a better shot than the result. This is one of the greens that have changed, have shifted it much further left. They've increased the roll offs on either sides over the years. A small target there at one. Narrow up to Grillo at seven. And just slides by. He's settling down nicely after a poor start, Grillo. Just got to keep it together and hope a couple of birdies shows up. In the past, Thomas, he's not 
shown a lot of patience with himself. So the fact that he's hung in there so far today is a good sign. Man of your heart, Thomas. <laughs> Second shot on the way for Otegi. Just the 132 left in. Yeah, that was a poor one there. He just got caught a bit on the upslope and it's a tricky shot sometimes in, in the windy conditions. You can't really control your flight. Oh, we've seen some big moves already. None bigger than that of Brian Harmon who did uh, tap in for his birdie, didn't he, at the fifth. Four in a row. He leads by three here at Royal Liverpool. So why don't we go there now? He's made his way out to the sixth tee. First par three on the golf course. Downwind again today. Second day in a row that the six is playing downwind. Front right hole location there. A little bit more of a cross breeze today, so a little bit different wind. Boy, he's on fire right now, though. Four straight birdies. Well, yesterday, the sixth hole was the toughest hole in the golf course. Well, it won't be much easier today, that's mm. for sure. But he's unfazed by anything right now, Brian Harmon. Just playing some lovely stuff. To the third, Hovland. Iron. That driving iron. Just trying to get the ball in the fairway here and then go from there. OB down that right side all the way through past the green. They're quite the feature, aren't they? The, the out of bounds on three as well over the other side of the race course on 18. How close they come. The little cops that are built into it. The mounding. These are the ball placements where they ended up. Down the second. Similar spots for McElroy and Rahm, both in that left rough. 356, cuts just like you. <laughs> now, Justin Rose, this is going to be his third. He put it right up against the lip on this in this left-hand pot bunker and then just had to pitch out sideways, guys. So this will be his third. Good angle on the left-hand side of this very, this front right hole location. Sun's starting to pop out a little bit. Wind is about the same as it has been all morning. I'd say about 10 to 15. And it should be, this should almost play straight down wind. So something towards the front of the green, one hop and stop. Downwind, you're gonna have to land it very front edge if you're going to come in at that hole location. Oh, I very much pitched it too, too far there. We'll take you on 11. Choosing to go with the putter even though he has a lot of green to work with. I have to say I was surprised by the choice of club there. I agree. Rahm on the way at the second. Surprise! that didn't bounce up a little bit more coming from the rough with no real spin on the ball. I dare say he might share that opinion with you, Kurt. Now, Rom just Rom just put it too far up in the air. He didn't play it low enough for it to run, Kurt. Now let's see if Rory changes tact here. Great angle, but definitely got to play to run. No, he put that one in the air as well. Needs a bounce. Two similar results from a similar spot for Ram and McElroy. It works its back way back down toward the front of the green. Well, this is a 
tough for Max Homer. He's going to really bump and run this and try and get it landing just on the fairway and roll it up over there. He's always going to have a chance of going a pass. That's a good shot. That's actually a good shot. Not mean to sound surprised. But you're always respectful, Thomas. Bjork's pulled a putter again, as he often does, from around the greens. Should have learned something from Otegi, but he didn't. Maybe next time. Get a little teach on the one coming back. Hatton from over the green. It should be fairly fast when it gets on the green, this. Ah, he's had a nice putt there. Yeah, it's all good effort from Hatton. Six with our leader. Putting this week's just been such a source of uh, confidence. The last little while should be said for Brian Harmonkirk. It's uh, I mentioned earlier. It's really the strength of his game. He's uh, he's become a better ball striker the last few years. But uh, this has always been the strength of his game. I really like the play here as well. Trying to take on that front right hole occasion with a right to left wind is a really tough ask. So I think smart play on his on his uh, behalf there just you're looking to make three and move on to the next hole and I think that tee shot showed that Decent roll there from Brian Harmon. Yeah, uphill for Rom over this little rise in the bunker. And then downhill to the hole. Tricky putt speed wise. And pretty good sized break right to left. Just didn't quite have the pace. Get all the way back there. Over to uh, the runner-up in the KLM Open recently, Adrian Otegi. Yeah, he hold a good putt for par on 10. Can he do it here on 11 as well? A few mistakes on that hole from Adrian Otegi, and his first bogey of the day. He'd really like to make this putt for Max Homer. Yeah. Nothing like making a nice putt to save par right out of the gate. I think Rory Speed will kind of tell the tale today, guys. If he's poured that first one in on the first hole beautifully. to be overly aggressive with. Gently done from McElroy. Grillo here at eight in the first cut. Can't really see the green from his angle. Right to left breeze, just ride it in there. Full location on the left. Boy, that was an aggressive line he took coming in over that bunker. Really looked like the wind was whipping through there as well. Perhaps starting to pick up in parts around the golf course, even more so. Our leader, Brian Harmon, tapping in on six. The lead is still three. Hovland second at the third. Front left hole location. Uh-oh, OB right. This might be a half shank. Wow. I hate to say that word, but that was pretty close to a shank, I believe. Cheryl Hatton, 
two quality shots and a nice par at the first. Just an iron off this tee. He only wants it down there about 270. <laughs> Steve, right, Steve, right. That's the right one, but close to me. What do you have to win? Down, not quite quarter. That'll work. Down there, found the fairway. Perhaps not quite the strike that Hatton was after, but in a decent spot up ahead at the green is John Rahm. This for his par. Yeah, that's a nice solid stroke there from John Rahm. He'll have to have some patience today. Just try and build around the golf and not really go chasing it too much. Easier said than done, isn't it? When he's uh, 11 back now, John Rahm. A little closer is Rory McIlroy. And he might just take a little bit longer over these today. He missed one of them yesterday, and he just kind of always sits in the back of your head. So you might just take a little, be a little bit slower around them uh, throughout the day. Yeah, that one came at the eighth, didn't it? Said he was um, he was happy to to find some momentum, build it towards the end of the round uh, yesterday. Good putt hold for par in the end, down 18. So that's how it looks. It's Harmon by three over the rest. The other 155 at Royal Liverpool. Grillo taking uh, two steps in the wrong direction. First bogey of the day for Adrian Otegi. We'll see what the fate of Victor Hovland is over to the right of three. That second shot came out of nowhere. And that's where... Uh, Rory McElroy and co are headed now down to the third. I don't think there's any reason to go ahead and take that out of bounds with the right to left win on, that's for sure. You're just gonna end up in the rough with, with no control up there, even with a shorter iron. So playing for control right to the corner and playing it in from there. Wind off the right about uh, 15. Hang on. Beautifully flighted shot. He's try asking for it to get down. Might have to a little bit. There was an aggressive shot from him, from Grillo on eight. If it's an outside chance for birdie. He never hit that. He's just a little unsettled today, I think. Also trying to play for position, John Rahm with the iron. All you're looking for is about 250 yards here. Yeah, that should be good. McElroy and Rahm both from the corner of the fairway. Hovland's third shot here, lucky to be inbound, only a step away from being out. Plenty of green, chop and run. Worked extremely hard on his short game, chipping, pitching, bunker play, and it's starting to improve. And when it does get there, he is going to be dangerous every week. We'll take you on 12. Good. That is an outsideways job. Alex Noren, this for his par at 10. Oh. They're just struggling out there. Back to back bogeys it just before and after the turn. Harmon at the seventh, his tee ball. He can start it with that left to right breeze. Start it down that left side and just ride it. This is 
headed towards that pot bunker on the right, though. And just skirts it there, so he, now he's in great shape. Oh, oh, just through that sand-filled divot. It's a roller coaster. Yeah. <laughs> Back to Max Homer. Max Homa now laid it way back, 187 yards. Gives him 176 to the front. Only really looking for something short of the green, kind of kill the speed because this is going to be coming in with a lot more club than on most of the other players. Nice save back there at the first. Going up in the air, going left though. Seen a few in that bunker already today. It'll be uh, line starts dependent. It's green to work with. It's for the par at three for Hovland. That was an aggressive putt, wasn't it? Well, this is what it looks like. That's why Tiger always said, stay out of those fairway bunkers. And he managed it so well around here in 2006, San Andrews 2000, he didn't hit one. You know, that's how you play these golf courses. It catches up with you if you keep taking them on. I'm just off the green at seven. McCarthy, could could he? He's playing really well. I'm, I'm a little surprised he, he did not play better in that first round. He had a chance to win at John Deere two weeks ago. A better day so far today. Another one of those good putters that just needs the, the ball strike in the lineup. Hatton on two, this is straight down win. Really. Number two sign on the TV tower is where you're trying to go. Landed on the front. That's an excellent shot. Got a lovely strike. Good spin on the ball. Grillo at the ninth. Downwind, 227 yards to a back left hole location. This needs to turn a little bit more. Nope. All right, good shot. Where is the bags? Not sure, mate. Well, Tony Finau for par. This is causing a few difficulties this third hole. Oh, nice putt. <laughs> you won't meet a nicer guy in the game of golf than Tony Finau, and he's playing some beautiful stuff as well this year. after just pitching out from the pot bunker here at 12. So I take we, his third shot to the par four. So from the front edge of the green for his palm. He's on that stretch of holes that's flanked uh, by the D estuary all the way till 14. These are ball placements down the third. McElroy and Rahm. Justin Rose first to play, though. Now 190 back in the wind, same direction as the second shot on one. So these guys are well versed in what the wind's going to do here. Similar clubs as well. Oh, this is a this is pitch out. This is out of bounds, you guys. That is straight out of bounds. It's two players in the last two holes that we've seen at the third now uh, hit the dreaded shank. Uh, it, he was in a divot, guys, but the, the lie wasn't that bad. I was in the front of the divot, and it was no problem getting the club on the back of the ball there. So he's going to try that one again. Rory was ready to play. 
Beautifully flighted shot just right of the flag. Oh, what a nice shot. We've seen so many shots into this green already today, and none have gone been like that. Excellent from McElroy. Hardest shot in golf right here, Aaron. 100%. The one right after you hit it out of bounds. Yeah, Most improved. This one pretty much right up the right up gut of the green, drawing towards the flag. Yeah, sorry, Aaron. No, but I, I just think with that first one, he got so short and he's got in his swing, which you easily do and on links into the wind. And then he just jumped at it and got ahead of it. Perfect Again, it just spot depends for a Rom here huh, to hold one. Yeah, it's it's either well with the flag on the left. You think he when the wind right to left, you think he might try to ride it, but he loves to play that cut as we know. <laughs> this one blocked out to the right. Well, the third sport, a couple on stuff. It was Morikawa and Minwoo Lee yesterday. Today it's Justin Rose, but that one finds the putting surface for John Rahm. Well, Max Homer, he's found a pretty decent lie here. Earlier we saw Grieve from uh, the FX2, same position. FX2, two, one, two, three, four, five, quick six, down the green. But that's a poor one from Max Olmert. That really is not his best. So that coming for par for Homer. Same two for Otegi after finding the fairway bunker at 12. Don't want to let it get away here. It's going to be back-to-back -back bogeys. to seven with Harmon. Typically likes to draw the ball. He's got the wind from left to right a little bit. Okay. Back right hole location. That was miss hit. Lucky to avoid that front bunker. Getting a couple of good bounces right now. Yes, he is. Put back towards it for birdie at two for Tyrrell Hatton. Nice no, right, gave it a run, par par start. Over to the fourth, Hovland. Just laying it Just up here. Just with the iron off the tee. Never stops, does it? Around links. Homa for par. Not a very good bunker shot. Mm. First drop shot of the day, he's back to two under par. Just having to stay patient so far for these first three holes, which is, you know, pretty much par for the course around here. These first three holes are difficult. What Rory's doing on these first three holes, one, and then obviously the shot in here is not indicative of how these are playing, more like Rom, just basically plotting yourself around these first three holes. Not great chances. This one from quite a distance coming across the screen. complaining with a par at three. Ram will need that to find one. Grillo found the green here on nine, which is a good shot today. So this is for Birdie. Ooh. Good effort. 
But it's an outward nine of two over par. He's sitting there on three under par in fifth position at the moment. This is the run that Brian Harmon has been on. Birdies at two, three, four, five. Made just the par at uh, six. And he's inside 40 feet with, uh, well, a bit of a fluky look. Did well to find its way to here. You get a good look at his right hand low stroke, and it's a good one. His speed's really good, leaving himself pretty easy tap ins when he misses. But you're always grateful for, aren't you, to keep the, the stress free nature nearby the hole? It's not always easy, too. You know, you have these are, they're exposed, the wind's blowing. You know, if it gets a little bit more windy out there, you know, then you start feeling it blowing you around, especially on the short ones. Going along nicely, four under par for his round today. Harmon, our leader. Over to Tony Finau at four. Great little flags out there today. No question about that. Well, looks like Rom's gonna go. Justin Rose did make his putt for for bogey. Beautiful grind there on this hole just to get in for bogey. He took some time on two over the short ones and as the wind picks up today, guys, I think it, these guys are gonna take more and more time. Stroke there from Ram straight in, and Rory McIlroy's marker is right next to him there, so he'd have a good look. Hovland second at the fourth, which is a sand wedge. See how aggressive he gets here. Downwind, got to spin it. About like that right there. Good shot. Two shots to hear, just bang on song, weren't they, for Rory McIlroy? Boy, this would be an excellent start here to his round. Birdie at the first, par at the second. Knock this in, and two under through three, he'd really have some good feelings going. I saw a stat that the last 13 winners of this championship have shot 70 or better, which is pretty amazing. That is disappointing. Yeah, sometimes the, the good shot's only as nice as the next part if it drops. The two before it deserved better, you could say, but it will be a fault for Rory McElroy. A little bit of an opportunity missed there. Oh no. Back on the tee, Homer. He's just got three, four iron out there to the corner. And needs to settle down. Just finds the first cut. Playing alongside uh, Brian Harmon is Tristan Lawrence who's already won twice this season. He's uh, getting it back after an early double. Adds another. He returns to the red. He's at one under par now. Otegi at 13. Nudie yards today. Pin on the front left, not far from there. Got a bit of a launch forward off the, the front left section, that down slope. A little surprised he's not taking the driver much like he did yesterday, just taking iron, trying to play for position. 
leave himself just a little flip wedge into this fourth hole, just 367 yards on the card. This one going a little left. Well, that makes that second shot so much more difficult going straight down when greens are starting to firm up and there won't be a lot of spin on it coming out of there. Unless he catches a great lie. That's the one where you think, Kurt, and you're like, well, why didn't I just take the driver and smash it down there? <laughs> yeah, you wonder if it's maybe the, the back hole location that he didn't like today. Yesterday, Phil Mickelson on this par four, while Morikawa was in the process of making his birdie putt from just off the green, Mickelson hit his tee shot here and hit it in the greenside bunker, rolled right by Morikawa. Rom pretty much, he's taking the same tact. This is a short iron, within seven iron or so. Maybe even an eight. It take, should take that first bunker on the right out of play with this club. Well, that got pulled to the left. Okay. This one's also left. And this one's gonna miss as well, I believe. Yeah. A couple of tactical errors right there. Boy, there wedge play they're gonna have to play to the front part of the green and let it release going downwind and they're gonna be on the defense now rather than the offense up ahead out the green is Tony Fina a little ridge to navigate up and over there it's going to be four pars to start the day He's at two over. That can only be one, Kurt. We're getting to know him this week, aren't we, Christo Lamprecht? In the shorts, doing his pre-game stretch and workout a little bit. Morning, Jim. How's it going? Six foot eight. 22-year-old from South Africa. Off in about two hours' time. Back to Brian Harmon. Staying aggressive with the driver. Two pot bunkers down the right side. No problem there. Right down the middle for our leader. Just into that step cut with the second shot for Max Homer. That, that first cut really makes a difference as far as their approach on these par fours. Again, he's going to have a testy up and down. We'll go to Hovland at the fourth for birdie. Nice bounce back. Bogey at the third. Right back with the birdie at four. Well, number five, keeping his name in the mix as it has been many of the majors this year. Go to 13, the putt back towards it. It is for birdie for Otegi. Hasn't made a birdie today. Two over on his round. In search of momentum. Only has five holes left to find it as well, the Spaniard. Now look at where this group drove it at the fourth. Both McElroy and Rom, I think a little surprised. Rom was very surprised. The wind got it a little and drove it into the left rough. So challenging second shots upcoming for them. 139 total, 25 front. Rom's lie looks to be a little bit better than Rory's, even though Rory's you can see it a little better. Yeah. Yep. 25 around that. First in the red there, just left of that. 
So on this angle, man, it's got to be. I would think it's straight down. It's got to have a little. If, if that tee shot got pushed left, it. No, exactly. It's supposed to be this way, but yeah. Not. I think it's just straight down on this angle. I might a little loose. You got some room there too if it doesn't come quite out, so. A 15 type number? Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. Pitching weight is going to be very hard it's, to land. Yeah, it's not one. Do I need to try to land it on top or not? Oh, it's got to land short. It's got to land short of the green. Yeah, it's got to land, you know, on that front to say five okay. short without that line. I think it still gets up there. Okay. Okay. See your line there, buddy. I think that's exactly what he has to do. Adam Hayes is spot on, guys. He's got to land this short, use the bounce, and let this roll up the front left. You have zero line at this flag with those pots sitting on the right. Total difference between being in the fairway and being where he is. Just handcuffed. Completely. Aaron, is it going to be a similar play for Rory McIlroy? I believe so, Allison. I, I do. And, and the lie is even, I'd say the lie is even much more of a flyer, quite honestly. Um, he's got a little bit of grass behind the ball, so I think contact's going to be even more difficult than Rom's. So tough to be patient and play away from the flag when you have a sand wedge in your hands. It's brutal for these players. Similar line. Showing some patience, though. Let's go down to the 10th, Grillo. Kind of a good break here. He's on top of a mound here, so he can see the green. Easy to have a blind second shot at 10. Let's see what he does here. Well, he didn't want to miss right. He would have had nothing from over there. Yeah, right's not the place to be at 10 today. Short left of uh, three is okay, though. That's where Max Homer is. A little ways from the edge. Doing exactly what we've seen before as well. Just coming through with a little bit too much pace. Has that for par. See what Brian Harmon's got for us at the eight. Drifted over to that flag today. If he attacks this whole location, oh man, this is going to be really into an interesting third shot. That bunker, there's a mound on the back side of that bunker. There's a lot <laughs> coming next. Let's look back at what has been already today, though, for Brian Harmon. This was at the second after an opening part. Made light work of it. Made the way through the tunnel up to the green. At about 25 feet. The back-to-back -back threes. Curdy just kept on going, too. Tough one here, big breaker from right to left, but just continues his great putting in that sort of 15 to 20 foot range. Went for the green in two at this par five. Not a great second shot, but made up for it with that third, the pitch, drove it in there. A little lucky to hit the flag stick. That worked out, another birdie there for him. Yeah, it's been working out today. Might have to get a little creative up ahead at the eight. That's worth sticking round for, see if he can get up and down and keep that three-shot lead that he's built so far today, courtesy of the four birdies we've just seen. Part of the game that Homa has 
besides his short game, he's really worked hard on his putting. He uses aim point express now to help read the greens, but that's a disappointing bogey right there. Did you see Tyrrell, Tyrrell's reaction in the background? Did, how did it hang out to the right? He too is thinking the same thing as Homer. I think it feel, fooled both of them. That's what practice rounds are for. Going to try and find out the nuance. You try to work as hard as you can in the practice rounds as we watch Hovland without wearing yourself out. You know, it's a long week. Again, a couple pop bunkers down the right side here at the par five fifth, but he likes it. Able to cut it back up against the wind and right in the heart of the fairway. It's a good tee shot. Tied for seventh at the Masters, runner up at the PGA. Top 20 at the US Open as well. Hovland under par for the day. Nice drive there to 12, Minwoo Lee. Giddy up. His fan base is growing, hasn't it, as well, over the last year. Over in the US too. Back to Ram. Oh, there's a lot going on here, Allison, with this putt coming pretty much from the bunkers on the right, on the right-hand side. The, the green pitches away from the player to a certain extent, but there's a ton of movement. I mean, it's uh, you almost want to play this straight and just worry about the speed because it's going to move all kinds of different directions down there. But the last, I'd say, 10 feet should be downhill and a little quicker. Coming more across wind here from the right. roll out there though you'll have a testy little four or five footer coming back oh check this out Brian Harmon not even trying to pitch it over the corner of that bunker using the putter actually pretty well done that was a challenging third shot at the eighth a lot of danger lurking mm. that could have made you look pretty silly getting that wrong and he's got to look at par putting back towards it Brian Harmon Now, Rory over here at the fourth, he should have gained something from Rom's putt. The wind's really starting to pick up now, guys, out here. I'd say it, I've felt some good 20 mile an hour gust, steady 15. And coming across the screen, it should be mainly right to left. And it is quick as it gets to the hole, just like Rom. So he's got to be careful of the speed. Back into the wind for Rory. Almost got a, a little scared out of it. A bit too much credit. Just important after the drive not to try and force the issue, Kurt. Yeah, and then you just had missed that short putt for Birdie at three as well. It showed a little bit of patience there as we go to the 14th and Otegi off the tee. Par four. 453 yards down the left side. That is pretty much ideal right there. The wind is hard from the left off the tee at 14. Little to think about over this for John Rahm. Such a strategic golf course. Quite subtle greens in areas as well. This at a little change in break where they put the pin today. <laughs> Holds it and does so nicely in the end. Four pars to start. A couple of back to back nice mm. putts for par there at three and four. Back on the tee, Hatton. Also just an iron off the tee. For position, he's not in love with this. And that's why. 
I mean, the lie looks okay, but you have to protect coming out of that rough downwind. Brian Harmon for his par at eight. <laughs> Keeps his good play going. Made those four birdies in a row. Four under on his round here in round two. Steve Sands, the legend, is back. Kurt, great to be with you. Nicest thing you've ever said. McElroy from par. Been an interesting morning so far. Kirk. The weather's a little bit different than what we saw yesterday at this time. Yeah, and Aaron was just talking about how the wind seems to be picking up as well. So it was a pretty steady, you know, somewhere between 5 and 10 or 12 miles an hour yesterday. But it's up around 20 at times today. If we go to 14 and Otegi second shot, location over there on the left side trying to hold a draw in there and does a pretty good job not going to get a green in regulation but that is not bad at all and Tyrrell Hatton now set to play John from the left rough little piece of grass behind the ball cannot take on this whole location front right just going to try to play it up the left hand side Does it get up a little bit that might find the bunker yes it does it will oh, it just trickles down into that and these bunkers are punishing that Royal Liverpool 82 in total part of the problem is they're so flat players are talking about how flat the sand part of that is and then it that could be right up against the wall Let's welcome in the great Terry Gannon. It's a legendary status and greatness, I guess, the two of us. Great to be here with you, Sandy. Three, though, with the putt. Early troubles for him. That double bogey and bogey early going today after he shared the lead at five under. Two back, though, uh, of that group and Jason Harmon at eight under. Southgate is third here at 18, the par five to finish. That is perfection. What a way to finish your day. It gets him to one under par. Cut projected at two over. Wouldn't be surprised if it goes higher than that. Good shape going into the weekend. Let's go back to Victor Hovland now from the fairway. Something out to the right here at this par five. Get it in the middle of the green. Loves to cut the ball. He's trying to hold the cut off a downhill lie. Oh, and he does a great job of it. What a golf shot from that downhill lie. It's getting better and better. Beautifully done there from Victor. <coughs> Came so close at Oak Hill with Brooks Kepka. Went toe to toe with him until the late stages of the back nine on Sunday. Bjork on the way here at 14 for birdie at even par, trying to change that. Some putts going in now. Now McElroy on the tee. Yeah, three pots. Steve dot the right hand side of this fairway. 270, 299, 333. I think he's got to worry about uh, the 299 one if he really catches one dead back into the wind. Gorse left. This is aggressive, though. The, uh, we've seen, as Aaron knows, we've seen quite a few players here lay back with a three wood to keep it out of those bunkers down the right, and they can still get home in two. But uh, McElroy, this is his weapon. Now, the wind's a lot stronger, I think, this time of day than it was yesterday, Kurt, so that's probably why he's going with the driver here today. Oh, this is... Gorgeous. Up the left center, low, just needs a bounce. That is absolutely fantastic. How about the trajectory on that? He's known for how high he can hit it. He took that ball way down with a draw. That was absolutely beautiful. Well, 
Well, it's still one of the majestic things to see in the sport. When he puts a driver in his hands, it is just amazing to watch. He, I love how he's willing to take that trajectory down like that. You know, there was a time, I think, in his career where he probably couldn't do that, but that was something special. Now, now let's Rom. see what Rom does here. Yeah. yeah, let's see if he can flatten it out too, guys. Usually when he likes to play the draw, he puts the driver about 6 to 10 inches behind the ball to help him kind of facilitate that inside-out swing. Looks like he's aiming for the cut, though. He sure is. Yeah, this one peeling right back to the middle. This should be good. Tell you what, you're gonna have a lot of confidence that you're not gonna hit that ball left. There is potential lost ball in the gorse left of the fairway at five. What do you think about his action there? Well, I love it. You know, he, there are some restrictions in his swing because he was born with a club foot and he's learned to adapt. He didn't change. He just said, that's all I can do. And he's so strong. It goes to that cut when there's any doubt at all. Up to 14. Otegi trying to get it to three under. Back to the fourth and Max Homa at one under. Huge difference now for him with this sand wedge from the fairway. Should be able to take on this flag stick. And does. Excellent shot. Might be a few surprised to wake up and see the lead at eight under, especially with the wind blowing 20 plus out here. Here's the man. Downwind, you just want to land somewhere around the front third of the green, something like that. Another great swing. It's not just his putting. The quality of ball striking early here in round two has been phenomenal for Brian Harmon. Matt Fitzpatrick's brother, Alex. He's putting for birdie at 18. Yeah. And he's making it. Ooh, that could be huge if you look at the bottom right of the screen. The projected cut right now at plus two. And Alex gave a fist pump there, seemingly knowing exactly what he needed at that point. Terrell Hatton now hitting his third at four. Not Terry. up against the face, though. I mean, we saw so many, especially late in the day when things dried out and it ran like crazy on these fairways. Doable there. Players just hold their breath walking up to these pot bunkers to see where their ball is. Tony Finau, feet in the fairway, golf ball just off it. Plenty of green to work with here. He's been pitching the ball really well, and another good one there at the fifth. when these guys, Kurt, open up their imagination and just let their talent shine through. Lynx golf brings out the best of them, I think. Sometimes, of course, you see some of the worst as well when they get in some of the positions that we saw yesterday, especially at 18. Remember the bunker shot? Yep. saw all kinds of uh, train wrecks there. As you go through some of the scores here, early part of round two of this 151st Open Championship. There you see Rory McIlroy, one of the players under par. Right now, he is seven back of Brian Harmon. Four under yesterday, he's already four under today, and he has a birdie put up coming at the ninth. 31 players in total are in the red. How about that shot Sepp Straka hit at 18 yesterday from behind the bunker? Speaking of getting creative, oh, bumped it goodness. in between two pot bunkers, used a slope to get the ball close. Had to play sideways out of a different bunker yeah. just to get to that point. Interesting to hear what Max Homa said yesterday. We'll get into that in a second. First, John, he's looking at a birdie putt here at four. Yeah, a little scruffy start there for uh, for Max. Really like to get this one in the hole with the par five coming up. Mm, 
just missed. Said after his round yesterday, he felt freed up. He usually doesn't feel that way in major championships. He usually plays that way at PGA Tour events, but yesterday for the first time, and he admitted that his major championship record is substandard for his standards, his lofty standards. But he said yesterday he felt freed up and he played very well. Terry, here's Brian for another one. Pick up another birdie. It's got to be a good feeling, though. You're a day and a half in, and you know you've got your A game. You've, you've, you know at least right now you've figured out what you want to do. He's in control of his golf ball, and that's what you hear the players talk about with the wind blowing a lot. Of the, a lot of times at Lynx Golf, I'm in control of my ball right now, and it's a great feeling to have. It will pay off. We saw that really good second shot from Victor Hovland here at five, so this would put him at four under par. And a, just a low area there. This is uphill, especially the first six, seven feet. Oh. Needed it to move just a skosh to the left, and it would have been a three, but he'll settle for his birdie four. Victor Hovland is now at three under par. He continues to just put himself in contention, Kurt, at these major championships. Have to give yourself opportunities. Well, t speaking of players that have control of their golf ball, Hovland, such a great ball striker, putts the ball well. There you another look going up that slope, hoping it would break left. The speed was absolutely spot on there. It, it had every chance to take the break. So Hatton able to play to hear this to save. It's in the mix last week, the Scottish Open. Otegi now at 15. Good enough fly, trying to run it into this par five and two. Oh boy. Yeah. And you can see because of the angle downwind, that third shot, yeah, there's your reaction <laughs> right there. That tells you everything you want to know about that third shot. You were saying it, he was feeling it. Finau. Okay. To one over par goes Tony. So Harmon on the tee at 10, used to be a par five, now a par four, and not an easy hole. 511 yards. The wind is hard out of his right. Sneak it down the left side. And again, it's wispy. You know, you, you don't know for sure. Sometimes you get a lie you can handle. Sometimes you can't move it 150 yards. Looked at the lefty swing. He's done a lot of good work with Justin Parsons back at the Sea Island there. He loves to play a draw, but I think he's more capable now than he's ever been of, of shaping it both ways. And so far this week, the ball striking has been great. Let's go back to the fifth. You see the yardage there, no location towards the back of the green and Aaron, it looks like John Rahm is in that right rough. It is just snuck in. Just didn't have the same amount of fairway to work with with a cut with this right to left hole. But that should help him the rough. He can run one to this back hole location, but this is left, guys. Tough to tell, but it didn't look too bad. I don't think it'll be a problem there as we take a look 
at this fifth hole. One eagle here so far today. Longest drive of the day from McElroy. And 229 left of the hole. Good opportunity. Phenomenal with wind off the right. He can just kind of ride his draw right to this back left hole location. Aimed well right with that wind pumping from right to left. Boy, the line's pretty good. So I think it's got to go a little. And it tumbles into the bunker. It's all going to depend on how close he is to that revetted face. I feel like indecision got him there a little bit. You know, he backed off, just couldn't quite make the decision. Is he going to ride it? Is he going to hold it? As well as he strikes the ball, that was definitely miss hit. To the 11th, and Emiliano Grillo to get it to four under. It's one of those days we're just trying to hang in after the rough start, which he has done. Shubankar Sharma made a late run yesterday afternoon. Fair enough. Oh, yeah, he's going to love that. That was quite a kick right there. Yeah. In the fairway part, short of the green. Hat, T at five, par five. Right back into the wind here. Maybe a little out of the right. Move it up the right hand side, trying to work its way back. It does. Now it needs to slow down. And that is fine. Johnny made way out there. You're in the uh, commentary box earlier today. Uh, conditions, we got some sunshine. We didn't. We had rain earlier, but the wind's been consistent. It's been blowing. It's been consistent. Uh, it's it, it's blowing out here. The sun kind of comes in and out, but yep. you know, overall, right now, it's a it's a fine day to play. It's just the Open Championship, and it's rough out here. Got three wood here, John. It kind of takes the gorse on the left out of play. He'd have to get it up the right hand side. Still might be able to reach the green in two if he hits a good one. Left hand side. That'll be just fine. He hit a lot of different clubs off the tee yesterday. Fine. Yeah, we saw the second from John Rahm here at the par five. Just in front of all those fans. I yeah, just uh, Adam Hayes trying to get the photographer's all settled down behind him right on line with where he's playing. It's not too bad. Lies fine. Plenty of green to work with all uphill. W winds helping him just a little bit more right to left than anything. Something he can loft right on the green and just kind of run right up the tier to that back hole location. Oh, that came out a lot softer than he thought. I'm just going to drift away a little bit. Not his best. Meanwhile, T at the six, the par three, and Victor Hovland at three under. Wind out of the right. 
front right hole location. That's a smart shot. It is a really tough hole location to get anywhere near today with that right to left wind. Well, let's see. Justin Rose. Yeah, he's trying to teach Rory how to hit this one, Aaron. Yeah, and Rory's watching closely. Oh, this is brilliant. That is brilliant. Oh, oh, oh. How do you do? I'll see your four majors with my gold medal and U.S. Open win. Now let's see you try to beat me. He takes a piece out of the revetted face here. Look at how much turf he took out of that face of the bunker. Great that, shot. Takes, that takes so much confidence, Kurt, to be able to trust that thing and know that your hands are going to take a beating into that revetted face. Uh, you, can use, you can use the wind as a backstop. That's exactly what Justin did. I would imagine Rory's going to try to copy the same thing. Use the wind as a backstop. Looks like he has a touch more room than Justin had. Just a tad. <laughs> Those two shots. I didn't think you could do better than Rose. That's phenomenal. Wow. Those were something else. Look at this again, Kurt. Got to get it up quick into the wind. You got to get to that upper tier. Just a phenomenal bunker shot. His fellow Northern Irishman was telling me in a practice round that the sand here is much heavier than it is on the PGA Tour back in the United States. So you really need to have that club speed going through it. And Rory showed the evidence right there. That was a fabulous play. Fescue, we can see the golf ball though at 10 for Harmon. Got to play the tumble here though. Should come out hot. of a bad bounce there and it drops off on that left side of the green. They're so afraid of missing right though at 10 that they just aren't going to take that chance and he's got plenty of green to work with for his third. So while Justin and Rory were hitting those magnificent bunker shots, John Rahm was thinking about this birdie. And uh, he hasn't been able to take advantage of anything today. It really hasn't been close. And this is, I'd say, this is an outside look having to come up up this tier now. Yeah, just your average four there for John Rahm. He's staying really, to that staying really patient. Yes, he is. He's got a good flow going with that putter. It looks really good right now. It's a pretty stroke here. Kurt. This is really good. It's been that way so far today. He's hit a bunch of good putts. They've been for par saves. Sometimes they're even tougher. To the sixth, then Hovland trying to get it to four under par. Hang on. A lot of steam. And a lot of work left. Over at 17, what'd you make of this par three, what we saw in the first day, Kurt? I kind of, I think, as we watch Smythe here, I thought pretty much what we expected. We were going to see a lot of birdies. Oh, and how about a hole in one? If you're gonna, uh, gonna do it on any hole here at Royal Liverpool, why not 17? All the talk leading into the week, Terry, about 17, how difficult it is. There are gonna be huge numbers there. Travis jars it for an ace. Brand new hole, now we've got an ace at the par three. 28 year old from Australia, worth another look. Guys, we heard that roar earlier when McElroy was in the bunker. The gallery reacted. Rory did not. A 
it took him one day in his Open Championship career to get comfortable. It's his first ever Open. And in the second round, he makes a one. You know, he kind of, he looked to the gallery for their reaction. He knew it was good, but this green is raised up. It yeah. plays slightly uphill. He couldn't see. I don't believe he saw that ball go in. Meanwhile, McElroy for birdie to get it to two under. Got it going in the right direction today, McElroy. But how about being able to say, I made the first hole in one at any given hole in the open rota? Amazing. That was a cool moment. There have been a lot of cool moments here so far yesterday and in the early stages of this second round. Brian Harmon continues to lead. The American has a three shot cushion. Someone pointed out to me earlier today that he has a last name that has all five vowels in it. A E I O U, all in one name. Interesting tidbit from this 151st <laughs> Open at Royal Liverpool. Well, let's see. It's, it's early. It's early, Terry. Everybody's just waking <laughs> up back home in the U.S. Can't give them too much. Victor Havla now putting for par. Somewhere Peter Alice would be very proud yeah, of that ridiculous note. <laughs> Good point. The great Peter Alice. Boy, I miss that man. Oh, my gosh. All-time great broadcaster and all-time great guy to be around. Yes, sir. Don't forget, he was one heck of a player as well. Oh, man, was yep. he ever. And doesn't matter how long anybody goes, no one will ever have a better World Golf Hall of Fame speech than Peter Alice. And and I wouldn't try to match it. No, no, no. So this group, McElroy first, setting up on the par three sixth. Right to left wind, this front hole location, very difficult. You're going to have to hold something here against this 15, 20 mile hour wind if you're going to get it close here, I think, today, guys. Choking. A riding draw is going to end up in the middle of the green, more than likely. Choking way down. Go, go. It's going to have to get up. Could have been a lot worse. Second iron in a row, he hasn't really hit crisply. Yeah. It's a four birdies so far here at the sixth today. You can see by the average proximity so far, very tough to get it close. Well, Kurt, it's short-sighted to the wind. Thank you. you know, with this wind blowing as hard as it is off the right, with that right hole location, it's just, you know, it's almost, you've got to come up with the, some serious goods to get it close to this hole. Definitely has a little bit of hurt. Okay. I don't need to turn this. No, you do not. Nope. Yes, sir. I really, I, I, I mean, this guy's capable of doing anything. He could hold one in there and hit it six feet from the hole, but a very good shot is 20 feet, even 25 feet left. I think you'd take a three here all four days and run. Amazing how comfortable he is, Kurt, hitting it left to right, but can also draw it in oh. when he needs to. Harmon's third at the par four tenth. The lie's good. Able to play it back in his stance and hit a lower runner, and he just handles it with ease. Every aspect of his game right now. Spot on. Looks really comfortable. 
we'll go back to that opening tee, the announcement of the next game coming up, and it will draw a rise from the crowd. This is game number 27. On the team, from England, Matthew Jordan. And from right here. So, you think about it. You've gotten through day one. All the hoopla, all the attention, the mindset now on day two, Kurt. Just riding such a high. He has to be really careful with his emotions and how high how low he might get out there today the huge crowd he's a member here he's won the club championship here multiple times just try to stay as even keel as possible all day and that has been the play get that's relief from the fencing yeah he'll get relief It'll be in that area that's trampled down. That is not the worst play in the world. No. Nope. Hit the first tee shot yesterday, made the first birdie in this 151st Open Championship. Now Brian Harmon still leading by three. No, no bunkers in the fairway here at 11. Wow, how about that turbo kick off mm. the downhill? That one rolls out quite a bit, sitting up nicely there. Eagle try, Tyrrell Hatton. He will explain it. He should be mic'd up 24-7. No question. It'd be a great Netflix show. Just mic him up the entire season. Emiliano, the Argentine. He had it to five under par. Well, he's dipped back to three under, and he's not pleased. That's a, a, as a big a miss hit as you'll see that guy have. He is usually very good on approach. Hovland. As you look at the target, all the way out there in the distance. Left to right breeze. Got to start this down the left, and then you need it to hang on. This is borderline. Hot bunker right there. That will be a pitch out if they're, he's lucky. They're like magnets, Kurt. Well, they have a uh, Seriously, they have they funnel a down funnel. Yeah, yeah. The, the turf funnels right in there, the contour. Now, what's it like to get a hole in one at 17, Terry? Should we ask around? <laughs> wow. There's only one man who knows. Make sure you look in every direction. Every picture that could be taken, you want taken in that moment. There we go. We know everything's different over here, Terry. I didn't realize they cheered holes in one differently as he gets the ball out of the hole and they give him that big, whoa. Very cool. Um, Rory's left this in an absolute perfect spot. If you're going to miss one, this is the spot to miss it in. Just short putter all day. Pretty good swing from right to left. After the miss hit off the tee, he'll gladly take that three and he march was, to seven. He was fortunate to leave it in a good spot there yeah. when he did miss hit. Terry, what's going on back at the fifth? Well, we had Hatton who had a chance at an eagle. And now Max Homa, his turn. 
doesn't break a lot left. If he gets it too far out, it'll miss. We've seen that a couple times today. Hovland hit a great putt that just hung out on that right side earlier. Boy, you talk about a miss hit from Emiliano. That was a really, really way off target shot for him. The only thing he has going for him here is back into the wind. Just lob it in there and hope it stops like that. Rose coming back down. You know, you can't give in, and he won't. Five over right now. It's been a struggle, but with a cut line at two over at the moment, that could go higher. Fight your way around to make it to the weekend. Especially if the weather turns up a little bit in the afternoon, the scores will get much, much higher. Otegi now for birdie at 16. Boy, oh, missed opportunity right there. That a great look at birdie at 16. A few people around this green at six? Just a few, that's for sure. It's a great look for John Rahm. Can be aggressive on this putt. A little left to right. Got the putter really working right now. Two in a row he's made. <laughs> Start the charge, John Rahm. Going to go back to the leader and Brian Harmon, and we hear this a lot about Brian. He's a tough tough guy. What does that mean to you, Kurt? Just that he's high, highly competitive, obviously, and just never gives in. The guy grinds. From that rough right there, it's a tough left side hole location with that breeze coming from the left. We've seen a lot of players actually miss the green or be well right. It's a good little front left hole location there today. On the tee at the sixth, Tyrrell Hatton getting set, John. 187 yards, wind out of the right. I'm not sure what kind of shot you're going to hit in here to keep it, get it close to the hole, but anything center of the green would be acceptable or maybe just a tiny bit short. And that is a good spot right there. That was a well-struck tee shot. At the third. Shubanka Sharma. Well, looks like he's going to stay at three under. All right, so round back to back birdies back in the mix here on the tee at seven. 298 to the pot on the left, Terry, and 307 to the pot bunker on the right. Wind basically just hard off the left. Maybe a bit of help, but uh, mainly left, left to right here. He can ride that cut right down the left-hand side of this fairway. There's a good look back at the tee. It's the seventh bends from left to right. And there is the target, dead center of the fairway. He's got to start at left at that almost at the crane for him and let it ride the wind. Just another beautiful drive doing everything really well here. Pretty good show watching these two guys drive the golf ball, isn't it? It sure is. I mean, two of the best drivers in the game, no question about that. And we'll see what Rory shot shape he decides to play. I would imagine he's going to 
use the wind as well and play the cut. Good look at how high he tees the ball here. Chance for him to sort of turn one loose. Oh boy. Go, 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 go. Gorse go. bushes. There are. I actually think it may have hit a spectator. Whether that helped or not, I'm not sure. Wouldn't help the spectator. No, obviously not. Another look here, just may have been the last second. Don't hit it left. He was aimed well left, but just a little late on getting it squared up. Max Homa now at the par three sixth. Coming off that birdie at five. Spicy meatballs! Four! Let's see how far right. Yeah. I'm just going to depend on the lie in there. Looks like he got it into the brown, wispy oh, stuff, not that deep, thick green. Even with a good lie, that's going to be tough. Tony Finau using a putter from well off the green. I think the players enjoy it being able to use a whole bunch of different clubs from off the green. Putters, seven irons, sand wedges, whatever. Third for Harmon. He's got a putter. Here at 11. Really, really doing a good job. His speed. Had, he just keeps leaving himself himself easy tap-ins for Make pars. It, making it easy on yeah, himself. Yeah, he really yeah. is. At the 17th, Otegi. Will we see another one? You're getting greedy now, aren't you? Huh. That's a question. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, I wish people could have seen your face here in the box. He's getting nervous. <laughs> off the tee. This is a par putt for Hovland. I mean, you drive it in a pot bunker off the tee, you have no shot here this week, so he had to go out pretty much sideways. Online just ran out of steam. A little more pace might have gotten there. Now you said that this is going to be a difficult second for Max Homo. Let's see how he executes it. I think he might be going right. Trying to use this slope. Tell you what, that's a really good shot. He had to get very creative just to get it to there. Well done. Maybe more so than any other place in golf. The Open Championship brings out the artistry in these players and not just the science, Terry. Got an applause from Morikawa there. V now for par at seven. Yeah, get up and down. Tony right on the number at two over at the moment. This is Michael Stewart. He's playing the third. The man from Troon, Scotland, where the Open will be played next year. Look from high above down on the sixth green. Terrell Hatton birdie try, John. Yeah, good solid iron shot right to the front of the green. How about that little pitch shot that Max Homa hit? That was really exquisite. Very imaginative, but decent look here for Terrell. <laughs> I'm sold on that 
series. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a year-long, mic'd yep. up Tyrrell Hatton. Yep. All access with Tyrrell on Peacock Live every night. Love it. Peacock's is the streaming service in the United States. Yes. Correct. Look at this. Oh. Wow. Back to what you were asking earlier, though, Steve. I think we got what we wanted. We, had, we saw a lot of birdies yesterday. Yep. We also saw a few disasters at 17, and that's kind of what we expected going in with this wind direction in. Mm-hmm. If the weather gets nasty, Terry, over the weekend and the wind starts blowing and then you rise the pressure up of trying to win a Clara Jug, that 17th on Sunday late is going to be so fascinating to watch. Finishing stretch will be memorable and tough, no doubt about it. Homa, the play to here was great, John. Now this for par. Really, really needs this one, guys. A little two-putt birdie back at the fifth was much needed and kind of a poor iron shot put him in a tough position. Is a misread there? Aaron McElroy is deep there in the rough to the right of seven. It's not too bad. The, the grain is lying with him, crosswind, and he's got a good angle from this right-hand side coming up the, up the gut of this green. Just can't miss it right. Turned out just fine. I don't think he liked it initially, but he's very lucky with all those gorse bushes over there to not be in when Mickelson lost a ball in the same gorse bushes yesterday. Now look at Rom's ball there. Maybe the second best drive of the day here at the seventh ideal position. And now he's got it downwind. Full attack mode here, Kurt. 137. Just a gap wedge, really, if he wants it. And he can kind of drip it with a little fade right onto this right hole location. Can't be one left. You guys, you get I, I was thinking it was one left. I thought it was just a little straighter 52. You know, use your room and, and then it, that way it doesn't, if this thing comes off and the wind, you know, it's a gust. It's not going to have as much spin. It could. Yeah. I'm just looking at those flags up there. The ones in the distance. I think it's a little bit more here, man. I think you'd hit a little straighter 52. It's, and I only think it's a hammered one. No, no, no. It wouldn't be a hammered yeah. one. You know, kind of just left him. I think it's absolutely just right for you, bud. I agree with Adam Hayes 100%. You just get the sense. A couple of birdies. This is the time in the championship when he puts the pedal down and charges. He's played some quality golf so far, that's for sure, Aaron. Well, you want to take advantage whenever you get wedges in your hand, especially downwind with the right hole locations. I mean, this is just perfect for him. Talked him out of a pitching wedge into the gap wedge. Hated it, but it's still okay. Silence and just marches towards the green. Not happy with that one. Here comes a par putt at 17 for Bjork. player succumbs to 17. Back to the leader. Wind from the left, so he's got to start it down the rough on the left-hand side and let the wind drift it. Yeah, like it that? Does, yeah, let's see if it doesn't turn over too much. There's a pot bunker there. Right in it. Things changing a bit, starting to run a little bit more after that rain this morning, maybe. Hatton on the tee at seven. That's what happened yesterday. This is potentially in trouble as well.
So from off the green with a putter, Matthew Jordan at the first. That's a very steep slope he's dealing with. So a challenge to save par at the opener. Now Michael Stewart. Trying to make a three at three. Gonna head all the way up to the seventh green now. Not sure about the hoodie in the wind. It gets in the way. I actually agree with you. I, I mean, mean and I'm, I'm being. I'm serious. not trying to be funny. Yeah, I'm, I am, I'm not either. I, I agree with you. If it's flopping around, wouldn't yeah. that be distracting? We've seen that with players. Yeah. Now Rory's got this one downwind on this green. This is one of the more exposed areas. Not a lot of grandstands around here, just the ones in the back, but exposed to the direction of the wind right now. So this one's downwind, maybe a little bit downhill. Should be moving to his from his left to right. Speed's been pretty good today. Back here at 17, Otegi trying for a two. Ah, oh, pushed it. So John Rahm hated the approach, but it stayed right there. Got a chance, Aaron. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. And the way he's rolling it right now, I wouldn't doubt it. Wind coming across now, and, and it's definitely hard enough now, guys, where you've got to pay attention to it a little bit on the greens, as the, especially as the ball's slowing down. That looked good for a while. Started the turn, tried to. This is Min Woo Lee putting for birdie at 16. What a run he made at the players earlier this season on the PGA Tour. Had to be a great experience for him. It's, yeah, great putt there. Extremely talented. Energetic as well, shows his emotions. A lot of personality, but he's got one thing you pretty hard to teach these days, and that's a ton of speed. He hits it a mile. He also has a ton of confidence as well. He's become a fan favorite with all that emotion that he's pouring out in front of the fans. To eight now in Victor Hovland. You can see that wind direction and velocity right now, pretty hard out of the right, so you've got to get this started more towards the middle of the green and just let it drift with the wind. Don't want it in that bunker short left. Sit. Sit. Good shot. Well, he asked for it to sit, and it did. So Victor Hovland will have another good look at birdie. Grillo for birdie at 13. There you go. And hang in there. Had a rough start to his round, but hanging in there after a really good opening day. Kurt, we are we are now joined by the great Nicholas Colsarts. Mr. Hole in One. What a reaction <laughs> from that hole in one. What Nicholas. an introduction. Thank you, Steve. Justin Rose, back of the cup, aggressive pace. Was that your first one in 25 years? Well, been playing the game for 35 years, and it was my, it was my first one on a competitive round. I've made one on a power four in a random round, so all the box are ticked now. I can go in peace. We just saw the leader, Brian Harmon, there 
Yeah, well, you talked a, about how it, penal yeah. those bunkers can be. Kurt. I mean, he literally went backward away from the green on his second shot. So he has, there it is right there, yep. going out backward, had no choice. He's At times, you're lucky to have even that much of a shot. Sometimes you have to go out sideways and you have to go out into the deep rough. So it yeah, won't make him happy, though. We saw Tony Fino yesterday had to play one with the putter, with the, the toe of the putter to get out from the lip. That only happens on links golf. Speaking of holes in one, how about this guy? He made a hole in one earlier at 17. Funny enough, we have friends in common too that are watching the coverage back in Australia. So two of their best friends are making a hole in ones in a few days succession. Really cool. You might want to check your phone. You may have gotten a lot of text messages about that. Making a hole in one at 17 here is awfully good. If you didn't see it earlier, Nicholas, when you were walking over here, here it is. Couple of bounces, drops right in. There we go. Doesn't quite have the Cole Sarch reaction, however. of the green so he really need to check with the fans before it goes in right yeah you could see him glance up to the right to look at their reaction and it wasn't just a, a appreciative clap it was a roar so he knew he had made it now Brian Harmon after going backwards out of the bunker here's his long third at 12 front right hole location and again you just like to get it left of this hole and have a shot at par uh, that'll be a challenging up and down And now we're looking at John Rahm. Par five eight, going with three wood. John's starting to percolate here in about the last 30, 45 minutes, Kurt. Playing with some confidence. This is to avoid the bunkers down the right-hand side. He knows even with three wood off the tee, he can get home in two at this par five. Matthew Jordan. Power on the first. Walked a few holes yesterday with him early morning. It was incredible to see the reception for the local boy. It was really a treat. What a people thrill that must have been for him. People fist pumping in the crowd and everything. It's 6.30 in the morning. I mean, you don't get to see this very often. So cool. And he put on a show for the home folks, too. Played very, very well. Here's McElroy. Definitely taking the bunkers out of play. Excuse me, here at 8. Oh. And a concerned look on his face. Well, there is the out of bounds there, short left. He kind of hit a little low draw. Yeah, the, the, the out of bounds on eight is not only left, but it actually comes in on a corner. So that's why he was asking for that ball to fly. Look here, he may have caught this just a little bit heavy. He's definitely trapped that. A little low hook. Victor Hovland now. He has a birdie putt just inside 20 feet. And he's going to stay at two under. He's getting closer and closer, Nicholas. Closer and closer is Victor getting. Now Homa. needed something good to happen here after playing so well yesterday. It's been a little shaky here in round two. Nothing shaky about that one. Now Brian Harmon hitting his fourth at this par four. Back into the breeze. That should help stop it. May have made it. Oh, what a par for Brian Harmon. Kidding me? He's got it going today, doesn't he? Remains bogey free, remains eight under. And remains three ahead. That's 
some way to save fire after missing the green with his third. You know, if you miss that a little bit further down, you can easily make double, and he walks away with a par. What a shot. Looked good the whole way. He's got a great DNA to play Lynx golf. You know, he clicks his way around, he plays right shots. He's a gritty player. He's got a great profile for this. 18 fairway. The second for Otegi. And if you weren't tuned in yesterday, there is out of bounds that these guys are dealing with. It runs sort of in front of them and then down the right side. There you can see it right there. That's going to end up just fine, uh, I believe. Yeah, he'll have some room to work with there. Tony Finau. He has this little one for par. Mm. Long way to go, but the cut line right now is at two over par, so Tony needs to be careful here. Yeah, he's definitely going to have a bit of work left to play for the weekend. That cut might go up a little bit, you know. Probably lurking towards three, I'd say. Yep. Especially if the wind picks up this afternoon. Tyrrell Hatton, just off the green. He still has a putter in his hand, though. It's not that big of a rise up there from the back of 12. Excuse me, at seven. That's a couple of them. He's left short in line. The par three also, nine. He seems to be staying fairly patient for Tyrrell Hatton, so far anyway. He's so entertaining to watch. I love how you qualify that, Kurt. <laughs> He's patient for Tyrrell. There you see the golf balls of two of the greatest to do it right now in the game. Here's John Rahm. You can see how far right that starts using the wind for this left pin position on eight. Came out a bit hot. Needs to stay put or it'll roll down. Yeah. Now that happens when you play a trap draw at times. You know, you come over the top of it a little bit and it goes a little bit further than expected. Let's see what McElroy can do. Choking way down. Start this right of the hole somewhere. Let the wind drift it. I think he was trying to hold it, but this should be left. It's, it's not good. It's not a good shot, but it's doable from there. Not a bad result, actually, yeah. for the execution. That's a few we've seen recently uh, with irons when he's choking down, Kurt. Yeah, it seems like the sort of the knockdown hold right now is giving him a little bit of trouble. The reception he gets all over the world, Nicholas, is remarkable. Everybody seemingly is rooting for Rory McIlroy. Uh, everybody loves Rory McIlroy. I think we all would like to play like Rory McIlroy and people too, you know, not just us. First five names on the leaderboard. It's an eclectic one. Five countries represented. 13th time the Open coming back here to Royal Liverpool. The last two, 06, Tiger Woods. Eight years later in 2014, it was Rory McIlroy. Bobby Jones has won here. Walter Hagen has won here. Peter Thompson has won here. For whatever reason, Royal Liverpool, which, by the way, has never had a repeat winner in its 12 previous Open championships. For whatever reason, this place, the cream rises to the top. Slightly different golf course this time around, yes. too, from 2014. The 10th hole is now a par four. It was a par five back in 2014. And then obviously 17 is a brand new hole. They just built that from scratch. So it's going to be interesting to see how, especially 10 being a par four, affects the winning score. I don't expect it to be nearly as low as McElroy did back in 14. And Nicholas, there was a long gap in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s before it came back here when Tiger won it in 2006. This club means a lot 
to English golf. It's important that it's back in the Rota and performing well against the best players in the world, isn't it? Well, I think it's down to the golf course. I, I, you know, I played an amateur championship here in 2000 and I actually forgotten how good the golf course is. I think it, it has a vibe, it has a different vibe than other courses. And I think what they've done with the tented village around when you get to around 14, 15, it's where it really where the heartbeat of the tournament is and it's going to be very exciting coming in the weekend. And Kurt, these major championships have become so huge. You have to have the infrastructure to go along with the golf course and they've done very well here the last couple of decades to fix that. Tremendous job of, of Taggy trying to finish up with the birdie there. Not a bad pitch from over there, but you're right, Steve. And unfortunately, I think there are some venues that just can't handle what the Open brings now it's in terms of build out crowds, parking and whatnot. Yeah, they announced Royal Troon will be next year, Royal Port Rush in 25, and they just recently announced Royal Birkdale back here on the west coast of England in 26. As they continue to move out that schedule and it's nice to see Royal Port Rush in the rotation. I tell you, the, the Sunday round between Stenson and Mickelson at Troon last time around may have been one of the greatest battles and scoring, I mean, that you've ever seen in this championship. You can make a strong case that Stenson 63 going head to head against Mickelson and his 65. Stenson 63 is arguably the greatest round of golf that's ever been played in major championship history. Considering the circumstances, the the day that it happened and who he was going up against having never won one before, as we see John Rahm here, Aaron. Yeah, just waiting for the guys coming off the ninth tee, the Finau group. Uh, they were waiting patiently for those guys as the eighth green and the ninth tee are very close, about 20, 25 yards apart. Back up the slope for Rom, very slow. Maybe a little crosswind to this putt. Mm, that's going to leave him a tester for his par. He made a couple of those early already in this round. Now Victor Hovland's on the tee. At the par three ninth. Oh my God. Doesn't sound like he liked it. No. Yeah, that's a pretty good result because that was right in line with that bunker for Hovland. Rory McIlroy, a little bit of grass underneath that golf ball. Yeah, but it's a little fluffy too, and he played that very well. Uh, he could have he could have kind of stubbed that if he wasn't careful, Steve. It's excellent contact. Short game seems to be intact right now for McElroy. They make it look so easy here, Kurt. Well, it's a part of the game. I mean, they constantly are working on. I mean, you can work on your short game for hours and not wear out your body. So they spend a lot of time doing it. Matthew Jordan. You'll hear it if it goes in. Yeah. Bogey birdie start. Maybe that'll settle him in, Nicholas. You can imagine his heart's pumping just a little faster than normal. 100%, you're playing at home. What do you think? Now, Grillo. For Birdie on 14. Just slides by. Good try for the Argentinian. Now, Hovland. Part of his game he's worked so hard on. Going downwind that uh, made it a little more difficult. Probably not what he was hoping for there. Yeah, you can still see him thinking about it just a little bit. Put in a ton of work with Joe Mayo on his pitching, and it has gotten much better. He recognized a deficiency and then made sure that it got up to snuff with the rest of his game as Otegi now has a birdie at 18. Not to be. Didn't make a birdie today. Two bogeys is all. Started off early. It was a bit difficult this morning. And it's a pretty steady first tenth hole. And then 
you start to hit the turn, that's where the holes start to get a bit difficult between, you know, 9 all the way to 14. Brian Harmon's trying to get to 9 under. Probably hoping to cozy it up there a little bit closer. John Rahm is to remain one over. He's had a really nice rhythm with this putting stroke today. Okay. Well done. hear it all the time from you guys all the best players in the world it's those par saves that keep the momentum going even more so than birdies and eagles when you can make putts like that you just have just a little bit more of a bounce in your step now McElroy he has a par putt as well but from a much shorter distance than what we just saw from John this is actually the hole yesterday he missed a little mm -hmm. what three footer at the yep. most and he missed a short one today on three You just expect McElroy and Rom to handle their business when they put themselves in a bit of a spot. Both of them succeed there. Harmon's trying to do the same thing, but he's on 13. Hasn't blinked yet. No bogeys. Get it to the house, go relax back where you're staying, and hopefully you're playing very late on Saturday. Oh, man, Lee on 17. <laughs> Entertaining the crowds. I'm not even sure that's a bunker at the back. That could be Wasteland. Yeah, that was something else. John Cook, you're out there with Max Home in the middle of the fairway at 8. Yeah, 203, and I'm wondering why he laid it back so far. No way to get it near this whole location. He's trying to get it up the center of the green. Coming off a nice birdie back there at the seventh. And he's missed a lot of, a lot of iron shots, maybe a little long left, but that was a pretty good one right there. Certainly hasn't missed that one. <laughs> Cookie's expectations are yeah. pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't win 11 times on the PGA Tour card and not have high expectations. That's right. <laughs> Emiliano at the par five. Playing down a win, 15. Yeah. You send this down a runway. You can easily have 30, 40 roll off the fairway there. Have a long iron to the green. It's a cool finish with a couple of par fives and that 17th par three. Could be some extra drama come late Sunday. Hovlin for his three at nine. That's a bit disappointing, you know, he hit that shot over the bunker, ends up having a pretty simple up and down and makes four, where off the tee in the air, he was going to be four all the way. Those are the ones where you have to make those spots to keep moving forward. Huge crowds all week. It was amazing going around in the practice rounds, how many people were here earlier in the week. And you know they're going to show up Thursday through Sunday, but... When they're here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Kurt, it's something to see. Yeah, great crowds here as we watch Harmon off the tee at 14. 4.53, the wind from the left. Remember at 12, almost the same kind of a tee shot. He hit it in the pot bunker on the right. Got to start it down the rough line on the left. Just looks like he's in complete control. I mean, other than the ball finding that pot bunker at 12, he really has been. All facets of his game. The putter's working. The short game is on. His irons are sharp. And he's driving the ball confidently. Yeah, 
Yeah, Justin Rose will be first to play here on the ninth tee, 227. This angled green kind of from front left to back right. Wind off the right. This one starts over the bunker, but I don't think it's coming enough. Ooh, just cleared that bunker. I'll tell you what. That couldn't have missed by more than a yard, Steve. Yeah, it just climbed over it. What a group, what a group this is. Seven major championships among the three players and a gold medal. John Rahm won the Masters earlier this year, becoming the first European to ever win the US Open and the Masters. He's halfway to the career Grand Slam. You have to figure he's going to contend for at least 10, 15 years at Opens and PGAs with chances to win. Goes without saying, you know, we all know what John is like. He's an incredible driver of the ball. He's got piercing iron shots. He's great around the greens and he puts really well. It's a decent combination. That's why he's there every week, isn't he? Trying to hold this one, but the wind's got it. It's going to miss the green, but it also avoids the bunker as well. See the different hole location. Yeah, two, two, different two, different, today. two different pins actually with the wind off the right, you know, because here you can't even pitch it, you know, 10 paces short a hole on the right. You, you can't hold the green. It's hard to believe it's been nine years since McElroy oh, won no. a major. Oh, oh no. this is a double cross, guys. Way left. Ooh. Kind of hit that mound and grabbed a little bit. Didn't bound forward. Looked like to me he actually just almost slowed down through rotation, through impact there, and then the face just flipped over. Maybe trying to slightly hold that up against that right to left breeze, but uh, a pretty poor swing considering how well he has been. Yeah, something's going on with his iron play, Kurt, because since we got in here together about an hour or 15 ago, he has not hit his irons very crisply. Yeah, he could have been a lot better off at this point, no doubt. McElroy sitting there, two under par, six back of the lead. Brian Harmon's in the fairway at the 14th. Jordan Spieth will be going out later today, as will Xander Shoffley and the world's number one player, Scotty Scheffler. Tom Kim playing very well today. He's three under with three holes to play. Deep bunkers. There is the amateur Christo Lamprecht. All right. You play the round of your life, Nicholas, but you've got to tee it up the following day. What does he need to do to erase what he did yesterday and concentrate on the task at hand? You need to keep things simple. You need to look at shots. What is my goal? What do I need to do here? Don't get ahead of yourself. I think the guy on the back today is going to have a mission to keep this guy in control at the right pace and trying to reproduce what he's done yesterday. It's not going to be easy, but he's an incredibly talented player. Tyrrell Hatton putting for birdie at eight. Good look from right behind the hole. We let that one get away. Yeah, Midwood Lee, he looked like he was about to play, but he's resetting things here with his third at 18. He's kind of sautéed that one. He's, he is so talented. I mean, there's not many holes in his game, really, and all that speed. I'd like to know who's giving shots when he's playing his sister, Minji Lee. Uh, Grillo was second shot on 15. There's a bit of deep rough there, short right of the green. It's not a crazy good leave there. It's going to be testing. 
Aaron, we're looking at Rory McIlroy's golf ball here on the screen. What's it look like down there in person? Uh, it's not great, that's for sure. It's going to take a heck of an effort to get this uh, up and in. He's got to go high, so obviously he can use the wind as a little bit of a buffer out of the right and into him. Severe upslope. No green to work with, hardly any green to work with. Kisses the flag stick, lands about five, six feet away. Lousy stance, tough lie, no problem for Murray. Using the flag as backboard is always a way to stop it. Didn't hear him call glass there, Kurt, but we'll take his word for it. He'll take it, that's yes, for sure. He will. I mean, sometimes you hit the flag stick in this game and it can go the wrong way. That time it was a good break. Another look out of that heavy lie. Just trying to lob it up there and stop it somewhere and that certainly helped. Let's see what John Rom decides to do here. This is the options that uh, Lynx Golf provides. I, I thought this was tricky. I think putter is the safe play. He's got it on a downslope, severely tight lie. Again, not a lot of green to work with. Now you've got to read the break from a lot of little whoop de doos around the green here on the left-hand side. Speed's going to be tough to judge. That's pretty good from there. It is. That'll be a test, though, to make par. The good news is he's passed every test so far today. He's made every one of those par putts similar to that. Yeah, just made a par save on the last hole. Min Woo Lee. Can he get to four under? Oh, he can't. Like he put the blinker on there, Nicholas, and went left Just at the end. Lacked a little bit of pace that would have hold the line. But still 68 today for Min Woo. A pair of 34s. Guido Migliazzi, he's at the fifth. Par five, that's only his four shot. That was a bit of zip. It's well judged because that flag sits on the top shelf there at the back of the green on five. There's Max Homa. After that beautiful iron shot from over two on the yards. Oh, that's a bonus three. Mm. Look at him fist pumping and all. Yes. He knows it's a good one. Marched three. it in. Three birdies in his last four holes, Nicholas. After a tough start, Max has bounced back. Victor Hovland, nice drive. At the 10th. It sits back right. Not easy to get to with the wind direction today. It needs to sit down. It'll stop there. All right. Back stop. Yep. Well done. Brian Harmon. What does he have to offer here with the second shot at 14? 57 yards. He's going to play about 20, 30 further with the wind into his face. Yeah, that might have upshoot a little bit on him, and that comes a good 20, 25 yards short. Here's Jordan for his part three. Okay. Nicholas, great to be with you. I'm going to bounce out of here. Have nice a great one, afternoon. Steve. Always great to see you. You too, buddy. Now, Migliozzi to save par. On the fifth. And he does. Five straight pass to start his day. You 
Next group. Nearly ready to go out, including at that man, Patrick Reed. This is game number 32. On the tee from the USA, Patrick Reed. Some good golf out there. Three birdies, uh, just a two drop shots. Round of one under par here on Thursday. Really impressive off the tee yesterday. Plays, the from plays for position, finds the fairway. We go to John Rahm, this for par at nine. Yeah, he's had a few of these to haul to save par the last couple of holes. Oh. This one slides by for John. First drop shot of the day. Will be when he knocks that in. Over to Grillo. That's his third shot on the par five. That's not an easy shot for Grillo. <laughs> it's almost as good as it could have done from there. Downwind, no room to play with. It's not the place to miss to that flag today. After nearly knocking the flag stick out, Rory McIlroy has this for par at nine. Yeah. Good three. Stays at two under today with all this. He just can't stop entertaining the crowd, can he? Yeah, he's worth the ticket. That's for sure. Has been the last two weeks as well, what he did at the Renaissance Club down the 72nd hole at two iron. After the shot of the year that we thought came from Bob McIntyre. What a finish that was. Max Homa coming off a couple nice birdies, much needed. 227. This is a six iron. Got to ride the wind, maybe get it to the front part of the green. Beautifully done. Pin high birdie chance coming. That's for three in a row. Back to Rory. Going with the iron today, Allison, which I think is smart. He went with the driver yesterday and kind of left himself a blind shot behind those mounds. Wind's cooking off the right. Yeah, yesterday he hit it through the fairway. And then it just kind of rolled back into the first cut of rough. Yeah, he can hit that two on a long way if the wind's off the right. That's always his favorite wind. That's gone a long way down. New voice in the commentary box in uh, Andrew Beef Johnson. Good to have you with us for the afternoon. Yeah, it's good to be here. Good to be here. Here we have Hovland fighting for birdie on 10. As I said, every time you see a player with their hands on their knees, you know they're thinking it's in the whole way. Yeah, looked at over to the birthday boy, Shibanka Sharma. Outside chance at birdie. Good lag. Great pace. John's got the three wood here, and I would think that he's obviously going to cut one into the wind, so the wind will probably kill it a little bit, which is why he's got the fairway metal instead of the iron. Please. The crowds are massive here, guys. I mean massive around this group. They look it. They're pretty excited, too. Someone's yelling at someone every hole. Let's 
This is a big pull left. Started left and stayed there. So down the heavy rough. Rory McElroy's threaded it down there nicely, though, on the now par 4 tenth. What did you both eat on the golf course? Well, funny question this. I remember in the junior days playing with Rory, and the thing we got told to eat were jelly babies and Jaffa cakes. And clearly, <laughs> there's only one of us who's kept eating the Jaffa cakes, the jelly babies. And nutritional advice has changed a little over the years. Has to get to five under par for Grillo, not quite. He's always up against it after leaving it where he did at the par five. Nico, how about you? I was just thinking that Beef should have brought a few Jaffa cakes in the commentary room now. That would be nice. Yeah, we'll put the order in for tomorrow. What is it? It's like chalk orange little sponge things for people that don't know. You either love them or, the, or otherwise, I guess. Perhaps. Loads of people do. Here we have Thomas for birdie. Not having his ideal tournament, but all you can keep doing is keep trying your best and keep going. And that's what, that's what you expect from him. Level par now for his round today, courtesy of that birdie at 10. Now Brian Harmon came up short with a second shot. It's all about pace, this, into the wind, all the way uphill. He would have hit this pretty hard to get all the way to the hole. Slow green from front to back. At the sixth, Shubanka Sharma. This is just going to try and hold this one up into the wind and get it to land soft. And that's not a bad miss there. We've seen a few there throughout the day. All pass to there so far for Shubanka Sharma over to Matthew Jordan. Second shot on four. The local boy pinned it, sits on the right. Tucked that in a little bit. It's okay, he finds the green. Knows this course like the back of his hand, you'd think. What an advantage. Oh, this not too pretty here. It, yeah, I mean, once... Once you hit it into that bunker, that is a tricky tee shot. And if you end up in that trap, that can happen. These bunkers are brutal, as we've seen so far this week. Now, Brian Harmon for his bow on 14. Moves to the 15, the par 5, playing downwind. He can keep move forward. He's on 8 under now, 3 ahead of 2nd. Two par 5s to come, like you say. He's bogey free for the day, leads by three. That's the view of the 10th green down on the left, 11 T in the distance, down with John Rahm now. That is nothing but a layup. He had nothing over there. Just playing to a yardage so he can hopefully make uh, a part of the old fashioned way on this now par four. He's done pretty well. He's on the fairway. He's opened up the green net on 10. Hovland on 11 here. Wind off the left. Just trying to find this fairway to try and set up a good birdie chance. Oh, he's just missed the divot. He's good now. Terrell Hatton now for par from front of the green, had it buried in that right bunker right against the face. All they could do is pitch out sideways, and that's going to be a good eight feet now for his bogey. He's 
bunkers take their pound of flesh, don't they? Certainly did that. Here's Harmon on 15. Just looking at that far bunker in the distance will probably be his line here. If he can just slot it straight in between all the others, it'd be perfect. That's what he's looking for. Yep, exactly right there. Well, Rory's got a good line. That's two good breaks in a row for Rory. Hitting the stick and making par on nine, and now just avoiding this kind of semi rough over here on the left hand side, which would have made it. A lot more difficult to control the shot coming into this green. Little help off the right. Seven iron. High and soft for Rory. Rory just didn't come out the way he'd like. You can see by his reaction. I thought he could get a bit more out of that. You see that ball just sits right on the collar of the first cut in the fairway, and sometimes you know the club just grabs a little bit of grass before the strike, and that makes all the difference. His home or a nine for birdie after a wonderful tee shot here. Can he make the most of it? Yeah. Absolutely. That's a great two there because that is not an easy hole. It's a hat trick of birdies from seven through nine for Homer. Back out one under par for his round, four under total. Over to the fourth with Matthew Jordan. Knows these greens well, knows it. Does he ever? The fairy tale continues. Two birdies in the last three for Matthew Jordan, who struck the first tee shot here at 6.35 a.m. yesterday. What an honor that was. As we go over to Grillo at 16. He's got a good line coming in from there. And again, yeah, not a bad, not a bad leave there. It's going to be a tough two putt, but it's not too badly placed there. Saw the tee shot to here for Shubanka Sharma at the sixth. Just short of the green at the par three. It's all uphill for Sharma. Should come off his right now. Just a bit hard and through the break. Just the pace, he had the right line, it was just the pace. Homer on 10 with three wood. Just gonna be moving this right to left with the wind. Exactly, just like that. All he needs is a little confidence in the majors. He said it himself. Yeah, it can be confidence and it could just be the right timing. You know, it's very hard to peak at the perfect time for four weeks during a whole season. Well, he got a lot more out of that shot out of the rough than I thought he could. This is a pretty simple pitch up the screen, especially with the flag in the back. Yeah, that's a great pitch from John Ram. From about 30, 40 yards. Sharma f for par here. He's just rattled his, his first part past a little bit. See if he can knock this one in. 
Yeah, straight in the middle. Lovely par part there. They're always, they're always good. Keeps the score there. All pars for the day. It's been a little bit of a struggle for Rory since I'd say, well, really iron-wise since about the fourth hole. He hasn't really hit it. He hit a beautiful iron on one, beautiful iron on three. And then the iron play's been a little spotty since then. Not good contact, maybe just getting caught out on the wind. And well, that's gonna leave you a lot of long putts. And that's kind of what he's had since the third hole. Yeah, great putt there. It's not easy coming up the slope there. Slightly downwind to judge the pace. Jump over to Victor Hovland. Second at 11. Only 99, 90 yards in. Wind's off the left. Yeah, now the spin on that. That comes off the green as well. This is Michael Stewart for Eagle at five. Four pass to start the day. Be good enough to tap in for his first birdie of the round. That'll move him into that pack. That minus four alongside Rosner, Homer, Grillo, amongst others. Well, not long until they're all out there, but what a day it's been thus far for the American Brian Harmon, who leads here at Royal Liverpool. We're back for the 13th time in the Open. I'm trying to clean up here on 10 for his par after, after a good pitch shot. These are the ones where you just got to keep knocking in all day. You're going to have a lot of these on Lynx courses. Oh. Ah. Apologies for any language there. You can understand it is from a player's point of view. It's so frustrating, you know, where you don't drive it well. You've made a good pitch shot. You just want to get off with par and the frustration can really kick in. Two drop shots in the last two holes will do that to you. Running a little hot right now. Get out of the way of John Rahm. Yeah, that is wise advice. Charm on seven. Using the left wind perfectly. Funny bounce, but it stays there on the fairway. Perfectly fine. He has a habit of showing up for the big events. We talked about it earlier. Top 15 in his home open, but also a top seven in Abu Dhabi. Third at Nedbank last year. Rising to the occasion yet again. It's Hovland after he spun one off the green here on 11. Sometimes you're thinking with 90 yards in common, let's make a birdie. And now he's, he's looking at a fairly tricky putt. to do there like you said sometimes the psychology in that after you're standing there looking for birdie and now he's got sort of a five six foot for for par now grillo on 16. Now that's slow the first two thirds of this are pretty flat but then it climbs onto that shelf that needs to hurry someone else is going to have a bit of work left to save his bar on 
16. Seen quite a bit of that at the moment. First one about 80 feet, a good 10 feet left or so. I wonder if the wind is starting to play part into putting and pace and green reading and everything, because it is a big part of the skill set that you need on the links course. As we watch Harmon here after his driver, 356 yards, 257 to the hole. He's going to play, you know, about 40, 50 shorter of that. It's a very skinny entrance of the green here. It's about eight paces wide in between that bunker and the right and side rough. But it's a great eagle or birdie opportunity. Yeah, you can feel with that pin position, you can get it quite close today. Yet to see an eagle down there. Surprisingly, just the 12 birdies. It is under par. We will, Ali. We yeah. will. It's coming. Drop back a couple to Rory McElroy at the 11th. Light the candle, Rory! <laughs> Relax, buddy. It's just an iron off the tee. It's fun to write there. You know, they're all happy they're going to get to see Roy McElroy from up close. <laughs> Finally picked the perfect spot to watch from. Weak made. Well, from the view, we can uh, tell it can only be one. We're going to learn so much more. Playing out alongside uh, his idol, Christo Lamprecht, with uh, Louis Oosthuizen as well as Joost Lauten. He bested Lauten by five. And Oosthuizen by eight yesterday. This is game number 34. On the tee from South Africa, Louis Oosthuizen. Past champion at St. Andrews, of course. 2010, home of golf. On the team from the Netherlands, Joost Leuten. He's been trending in the right direction, hasn't he? The last little while, uh, the Dutchman, known for his very steady ball striking from Tita Green. Yeah, would have played with him a, a lot over the years, like you, Nick, as well. And yeah, he's a very, very solid player. On the tee from South Africa, Christo Lamprecht. What a remarkable day it was yesterday. He said the only time he actually felt nervous in the opening round was for the opening tee shot. And a chat with his caddy, his assistant coach from Georgia Tech, and he said, you're an amateur at the open. Just play stress-free golf, and he did. A hundred percent playing stress-free golf. But again, that adrenaline will start kicking in. Obviously, he's on the leaderboard at the open and if he continues to go you know a good finish could completely change his direction and course of his career as well so that pressure can start to build over the days and um he looks like he's got a great mentality yeah he said uh after he, he won at hillside he went back had a bit of a break feels fresh and ready to go there's a lot on the line now for college players as well with the uh 
the name image likeness contracts that are up for grabs it's changed quite a lot the last two years there he is at minus five alongside tommy fleetwood they're all chasing brian Harmon right now at royal liverpool Seven birdies in uh, that round yesterday. Just the two drop shots. Both came on the back nine for Lamprecht. Uh, Grillo to see if Bar on 16. To stay at four under. Hovland for par at 11 here. He'll want to knock this one in. That's for sure. I mean, 90 yards in and coming off, and he's still got knocked this one in for, for a bogey as well. Some big mistakes being made by Hovland there. Shah mount seven from 188 to a pin that's on the right. The wind comes from the right oh. direction for this. Doesn't like it. Little debrief there. Over to Thomas Peters. Chance to double his total. Played a pretty solid round yesterday, Peters. A good chance for Birdie missed on the first, but off to a decent start. It was just the putter hit loads of greens, had 32 putts in uh, his first round. It, Creel on 17 here. Pins a bit more accessible than yesterday. They're just trying to draw this one into the flag. Oh. Oh. I tell you, walking up to that, you're just hoping that's that's not up against the edge. Ram on 11. Oh, that's a bit unfortunate. It's a relatively easy up and down, but that was a lot better about eight seconds ago. I feel like he's about to bubble over. Yeah, this is testing times for John Ram. Now Rory from the rough. Let's see how much control he can get on this. That's a tight flag to the left. Not easy to control this. Have we got a half a flyer or a big flyer? Half a flyer. He's going to have a tricky one next. Twice as hard as John Rams. Harmon here, third to 15. He's left it in a in a fairly decent spot. It's going to be a quick one though. It's going to run away from him. I say it's pretty decent from there. And he's going to have another chance at birdie. He's racking them up today. Birdie the fifth, the first par five. He got it 15 over to Grillo. Oh, he's got a stance here. We thought by the way that that ball fell into the bunker, he was going to be against the back of it. Oh. What a shot that is. Great shot from Grillo. Sharma here after missing the green right on, on seven. He's got the big part of the slope. It's going to be fairly slow. Fairly slow, absolutely perfect, straight in. What a putt. 
A long time coming, that first birdie of the day, but it was worth the wait. It's always funny. You see guys missing shots, and then you see Amuri rehearsing, and he's not happy about himself, gets there and, and makes a one out of a million putt. You just feel you've just stole a whole shot off the field there. So he's back in five inside the top five now. Here's Rory with this difficult pitch shot here, this little chip shot. Yeah, opted to throw it the whole way and try and get some spin on it. But you've got to hit them absolutely perfect off the off the tight turf. You've got to nip them absolutely perfect, haven't you, Nick? Yeah, you do. I mean, that's the thing. Like uh, you can see from this angle here. I mean, not, not only had one depression to deal with, but two. So you had no choice but to chip it. But yeah, the precision of the strike needs to be excellent. Got a fair bit wrong out of that, Brian Harmon. Probably the only time that he got something wrong today. Because he's been excellent all day. And here's, here's the difference with Rahm. He's got the putter out. Like we said, Rory couldn't. And as you said, Nick, Rory's was, was a lot harder than Rahm's here. Yeah, that slow up that hill there with the putter. And then the last end would be a little bit of rest, a uh, bit of right to left in this. Yeah, that was tracking as well from John Ram. Great effort. It's been a testing last 45 minutes to an hour for John Ram. Needs to stay in this. Needs to work his way back into it, doesn't he? Quite quickly. Should be said as well. To Max Homer. To get to minus five. Still, he's had uh, more than his fair share of birdies today. Four of them, to be exact. Fought back nicely after being two over through three. Now Lamprecht on the first. From a thick rough. Down. Oh, it's so weird. Mm, that sounds like a flyer. Oh, lift. That's actually not so bad. All right. Let's make it work. Got killed off the first bounce there. It's not an easy up and down, but in the air, I'm thinking he would have thought it'd be a lot worse than that. He said when he was growing up, he had to change clubs almost every six months when he had his growth spurt from the age of about 14 to 15. Yeah, that would have been some budget for parents, wouldn't it? <laughs> change sets so often. You'd like to think maybe those secondhand st sets, perhaps, over to Victor Hovland. He's just escaped the, the bunker here. Yeah, we've seen this this hole's been playing tough coming back into the breeze a bit and up the hill but it's not a bad leave there i'm loving his retro drum jumper i think it's a little polarizing <laughs> like that hatton character back to level par if this goes in which he does some shot he must have hit in there because that's the closest one we've seen so far on 10. tyrell hat looks back to even par And this is what's ahead of Rory McIlroy. Yeah, you can see the way he stands here. He opens up the angle to the left-hand side of the hole. That's going to move a fair bit. It's never been so quiet in that group. No, that just didn't turn as much as he thought. Bogey for McIlroy. Which will drop him when he holds that back to one under par. It's Richie Ramsey over at the fifth, third shot. 
link specialist Richie Ramsey from up in Aberdeen. How oh, good is that? Great control of the golf ball, pitching it on the top shelf there and dead. That's for his third birdie in five holes as well. Watch that space. To the character of Tom Kim. A couple of them in golf, isn't that? To finish with a final birdie. Now, Beef, are we going high here? Are we using the ground? That ridge looks really tricky. I'd be going high. Just like that, he's made that look pretty easy. You can't run it across that ridge. There's too much going on there. Sometimes, though, it can make up your mind. Coincidentally, uh, Tom Kim signed for a round of 68, did roll that in. So good work from him today. Back inside the top 30, over to 17. This for par, Grillo. Coming off the right there. Never had a chance. Strange one. It's offered this fair bit of drama the last couple of days, the 17. I think we're in for more today. Yeah, we've already seen a, a hole in one from Travis Smythe. Back out to the furthest corner from the clubhouse, the 11th tee, Max Homer. Going with driver, this is aggressive play. It's gone way right. It might not be the worst angle into the pin though from there. Matthew Jordan on the par five. Fourth shot. shot Matthew. Can you hear the crowd in it? Shot Matthew like they know all they all know him. It's great. It's great. He's grown up in front of them. Tough driving hole sixteen here. Missed the traps is the key. Doesn't matter too much if it's in the rough. You might be able to chase something up. Yeah, that's absolutely fine there. We spoke about this yesterday watching Harvin. It just looks so different left handed, doesn't it, Nick? <laughs> it certainly does. Been playing a fair bit with Bobby Mack as well, yeah. But they have something, those left handers, I've always thought. Lamprecht for power on the first, off to a good start for him. Right, it's going to be part of his journey today to see how he reacts to some of the things that might happen throughout the, throughout the day. <laughs> Looking back from 11 green. <laughs> Try and get the measure of uh, where those three players are. The likes of uh, Homer, who's out to the right. Looks like Morikawa is down the left. And that's the 12th tee. It kind of folds back onto itself a little bit with a half crease. Again, we spoke about this yesterday. Tough driving hole with the wind off the left. Everything pushing you towards, towards the traps on the right. And you've either got to stand up and draw it back into the wind or just let the wind push it back. And you've got to have the guts to start it left and let it drift. I had a little stroll out there earlier as well. And it's a fresh, fresh breeze. And as you said, this, this one's going right. Yeah, he was trying to hit a draw, Ram. When he sets up with that club head a little bit further back from the ball, that's when he wants to play a draw and just completely came out of it. 
there, as you can see, the importance of hitting this fairway. Once you might draw a lie in this rough, you might not, but if you're on that fairway, you can control that flight coming in and and get to the green. If you draw a bad lie, it's, it's tough. How will McElroy respond after his first bogey of the day? He's setting up to use the lift here, use the wind. You can hit this any better, Beef? Oh, that was pure, wasn't it? Now, nah, Lamprex is a driver on the second. Downwind, remember, 442. This has a chance to get really close, I think. Close to the first tee shot, the first tee box. How far right was that, Diva? Uh, it's a little bit right, Crystal. I think that I think that went right of the seats. Those two people down there didn't see it come back at all. Second for Harmon here on 16. I'm just going to say he's going to try and hit a flat draw in here and try and work that ball left to right. Yeah, not a bad shot at all. It, it could be difficult out of that first cut. It's a long second shot into 16 today. Difficult bow for long. Michael Stewart had a, a glittering amateur career on all of the events in Scotland. This for birdie. Go on. Yeah, it's great to see him doing well. Played a lot of junior golf with him, and there's the cracking lad as well. So, well, keep keep watching him make some birdies. Well done, mate. Could be a very big week. Now plays uh, on the Challenge Tour after graduating through the Euro Pro Tour uh, last year. It's been a little bit of all or nothing for the Scott. There he is uh, in a tie for third place so far this year. Missed cuts or a top 20, it seems. He's four back from Harmon right now. It was a round of 68 in the end for Min Woo Lee, who was two over through four. It had an eagle, it had three birdies as well to offset that. So a nice move inside the top 10 from him. Adrian Otegi and Emiliano Grillo falling down a couple of rungs here on Friday. Jordan Spieth going through his warming up routine. He's off in 50 minutes. You want to leave the range probably 20 to 30 minutes before you play because you've got to take a shuttle to go yeah, the other side, back to the clubhouse where the putting green and, and the chipping green is. What would you do on your warm ups there, Nick? My standard procedure, just trying to get loose, hit wedges, couple of mid irons, couple of drivers, and off we go. Goes Hovland for his birdie putt on 12. And you're going to take four all day there. Happy days. Nice. Nice putt there. A little better than the, the mess he made of the 11th. After the bogey, ball on the way for Sharma at eight. Yeah, came over the top of that when Long left. That ball had never a chance to stop. You have that 10 short up there, that's flat still, you know, short of the front. You want to feel like you're flying this to the front. This looks quite tricky to me. Ball looks sort of slightly above his feet, but yeah, on a downhill lie. Right and you cannot yep. miss this green right. There's a massive drop off to the right here. He's got to be looking sort of 20. 20 foot left of the flag and trying to pitch this sort of five yards, 10 yards short of the green. And if it hops up to the front edge, he's, he's hit a good shot here. This is not easy. Go, go, go.
yeah, it's, it's one of them. It's very easy just to catch it a little at the top of the club, face out the toe when you're trying to keep it low off that lie. He knew straight away that was short, John Ram. You could hear him. He's got to be careful, John Ram. He's got to stick, stick it together. He's got to watch out for that cut line, too, that's currently <coughs> projected to be three over par. Down to Homer. Up the rise. Hearing he had to play off 10 fairway to get to that. So a chance of saving his par. Now Rory here on 12 after hitting the longest drive of the week, 120 yards. This is all green light, a little bit left, hold up finish. We don't want this to move too far right. Just enough. For Rory, I mean, this is going to be a golden opportunity. Crowd like that one, huh? What a shot. So did he. Here's Harmon's long putt for birdie here. He'll happily walk off with the two putt and get off this hole. It's the second player we've seen from down there that leaves it a long way short into the wind, remember, and up the green. Especially when it's gusting, it's so easy for the wind to gust and just, just make things so much more difficult. So I think we do have our answer from earlier, Beef. I think the wind is starting to play part into the putting skills and green reading skills. 100%, definitely. Eight under, you can start feeling a little bit tight as well, coming in knowing you're close to finishing your round. This is the ball search for Christo Lamprecht after his tee shot went way right over near the first grandstands. It's something you don't see too much because there's so many spectators and people around. Usually someone's is pitched near someone or it's someone's seen it and gone straight over there. You never see this too much. Yeah, this wouldn't be a nice way to start his round. Bogey the first. Come on, give the young man a hand. Let's find that ball for him. There we go. Good Samaritan. He's probably going to get TIO there from there. You know, Steve, you can never find a ball. Good, isn't it? Could be glove worthy, couldn't it? Finding that ball. <laughs> I'd say so. <laughs> Now Harmon to safe bar. It does. Keeps Har a clean scorecard. Hardly a mistake today. If any, for Harmon. Here's Hat Hatton for Birdie on 11. He's battling away. And that's something Hatton will do. He will. <laughs> He'll keep, he'll keep, he'll keep going. But yeah, you know how he's feeling by the look of that. This is the third for John Rahm. A little work left. Throwing it all the way up there. Oh, just superb. It was fun to watch. He'll save his par at the 12th. That's a double for Homer. On 11. Such good crowds out following uh, this group of Rory, Ram and Rose. Yeah, it's good purdy putt for Rory here after two perfectly executed shots on 12. Look at this gathering here. It's amazing, isn't it? Best tournament in the world. That's why you play the game.
closest shot in we've seen all day. We're hearing from Rory McElroy here at the 12th. Can he convert? Just to creep inside the top 10. Another confirmation that that wind is playing tricks. As I said, when I popped out there, it was really gusty. And it's a it's a cold breeze off that sea as well, which really does affect the golf ball. He just never looked quite comfortable over that, did he? Yeah, it's funny. When sometimes you stand over the ball and you have that wind. Sometimes you see the ball oscillating as well, and that can throw you off. Or second-guessing yourself to see how much break the ball is going to take with the effect of the wind. Shibanka Sharma, this for his par, pitch to here from through the back of the green. Couple of dimples away from falling, Sharma. Now Lamprecht on two. So this is the second shot. That is a big break. Would have gotten a free drop from the, from the first tee box grandstand. Finds the green, makes this one, and it's another day starting for him. I said, is it glove worthy? I think that's dinner worthy yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, table for six at eight o'clock maybe. Gosh, that could be some three coming next if it rolled in over to 13. Hovland's there. And that is a long way short. We've seen a lot of lagging a long way out. So it must be difficult out there. It's Jordan, second on six here, just chipping off the side of the green. They're always quite fiddly ones, aren't they? You're just trying to pop it out three yards and let it release, and you hit it one yard too far, and now he's got a little eight-footer for par there. Well, no one knows better than him what it will do. It's whether he can execute it, isn't it? Matthew Jordan in the top ten. There he is, uh, one under par through six. We'll see if he stays there. Roll through uh, some of the scores. Been a solid day so far for Guido Miliozzi, three time winner on the DP World Tour. Some of the biggest names in golf yet to come this afternoon. And the likes of uh, Scotty Scheffler, the world number one, the Masters champion, and uh, Hideki Matsuyama, Brooks Kepka, too. Good friends of uh, Cantley and Shoffley on the same number. They're in the red. Richie Ramsey's been having a very nice day, but he's just dropped a shot at the sixth. Aside from that, three birdies. So we come back to Hovland's par putt here. And again, he's been under par and dropped a few. And these can be so important to stay at level through a diff difficult stretch. Yeah, that's a great part, that is. That's great. It's really ones that kind of can play on your mind as well after after leaving that distance for par. Knock that in and get off and, and reset. Yeah, had it going uh, early stages, didn't he? Two under through five. Has given three back since then. Stewart on eight. Second shot. He's found the fairway. Can he take advantage? That's a solid shot. really is almost like a two-section golf course. The first kind of paddock, if you will, and then you go out to the dunes where there's far more undulation. So the dinner is on already. Or are we going to see a week holiday? 
Oh, I thought it, I thought it was a trip to the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, I dare say whoever found that golf ball was rewarded. It's going to be a four somehow for Christo Lamprecht. Anthony Wall has made his way out to the uh, 13th with McElroy, Rahm and Rose. Afternoon to you, Anthony. Afternoon, Ali. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. It's quite blustery out here. It's a nice cold breeze. It's nice when you've got a waterproof jacket on, let me tell you. Quite a tight left-hand pin. Semi-blind, even though the tee is slightly raised for Rahm. Have to hold this a little bit, I think. Wind's too cold and too strong off that left side. Missed the bunker that he didn't want to go in. It's going to make the up and down there a lot easier than from the front bunker, of course. John Ram. It'll be a popular spot, the right hand side of this bar three today. It's a good pin, actually. That right hand bunker is certainly more in play today than yesterday. They can really move these flags around and these holes can play completely different even with the similar wind direction. Happy moving it both ways. Certainly with driver he's been happily left to right but this very much suits the eye and he can just turn this over, wrap the right hand over just a fraction. It's going to be a popular spot that just watching that wind gust. And he's getting blustery and he'll be straight back into it for Brian Harmon, who's made his way to 17. Yeah, all you're thinking here is come on and stick it middle of the green. Want to hear a nice round of applause from the crowd. Stay there. That, oh, 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 oh. I reckon that stopped just for a second and changed its mind. Second shot ahead of Max Homer here. Yeah, he's hit a great tee shot here. Go, Go. Go. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Not, not a bad place to be there. I think on that whole short's always, always the miss. A little under 30 feet for Stuart for his birdie at eight. Just made one at seven. Ooh. Nearly had the double. It looks like he's playing, playing really well and looks very relaxed out there as well. It's, it's good to see. Hopefully he can just keep ticking along. I think ticking along is okay. Right now, just over the bunker is Hatton in the rough. Again, got to keep it left of left of this pin. Yeah, it's a very good shot there. That's exactly where I think he'd be aiming there. Strike sounded good too. Maybe the grass was a, a little shorter than anticipated over there. To the third tee driver for Lamprecht. Where's he going with this one? Well up. Well up. Well up. He hasn't held back on this. And that's a long way left, but it's popped back out and he might be all right again. And he's he's on the trodden down rough. Interesting play. We haven't seen a driver pulled at three for quite some time, given what he did at the second and the first. Here we go. Can Grio finish off with a birdie here? No, he just struggled a bit with speed in the last few holes with his putting, but still coming in two under going into the weekend, he's in a he's in a good place and um he'll be happy with that, I think. I think that's the whole thing, isn't it? That you know he got into the limelight last night. He said it's an honor to be leading the open. He said, I want to lead it for as long as I can. It's it's hard to do it with the world of, of the got the eyes of golf watching you. 
And again, it, it all, all, all that matters is if you're around that leaderboard on Sunday. And as long as you're in the mix there and, you're, and you've got a chance to win it, that's where you want to be. And it, sometimes leading the whole, whole week can be irrelevant. Three over par round of 74 for Grillo in the end. Back down to the par three. Oh, it's, it's, got... it's good news, Beef, in the flat of the bunker. About 15 paces of green back into the wind. That's the issue for McElroy. Oh, that's a pretty good result for McElroy from that bunker. He's going to keep putting into the wind, which is a big thing. Again, another good, another good lie in this trap. We saw his ball sort of just stay there and trickle back in, but it seems to be okay. This one, he's going to open the face and just try and get it out, let it release down. One thing in his favour there, it looks to be, at least you're playing the bunker shot into the wind, that, and you can float it up and get it to stop a bit quicker. It'd be a nightmare if it was downwind. Home on 12 for birdie. That'll come a fair bit off his rides. A little bit of fringe too deal with but it doesn't make a difference for Homer and not a birdie for him that's a lot of red on this call card today probably one of the guys out there that's making the most of him today yeah level par for the round there's been some to offset it but still I think he needs to see the red now my Belgian colleague Thomas Peters or oh, Thomas Detry sorry there's two of them <laughs> Nice little two on 17. I always get confused between the two Thomases. It was good. It's always nice when you hold a little chip for a three. Working hard for it. Over to John Rahm. He just moved away from the sprinklers alley. Took a club length the other side. Putter out. Keeping it low. That's the, definitely the play down the hill slightly. Different angle to McElroy. Never easy these when they're back into the breeze and downhill. It almost throws out your judgment. That's one of the putts we've, we've seen recently that's got to the hole and oh, that's a, such a good putt there. As Wally said, that's not easy. Will be a three. Will it be as well for Brian Harmon? Yeah, that's solid from Harmon, getting it up and down from the left trap on 17. Top five on the PGA Tour in scrambling and bogey avoidance. He's doing that out there today. Look at that scorecard. Just the four birdies, nothing else aside from pars. Now Lamprecht. Third hole. It did the same thing yesterday. Hit driver over the corner. He's only got a wedge in. I got caught up in the wind a little bit. Because that was straight at the hole. Seeing maneuvering, saying that ballooned a little bit. Hatton for birdie after a terrific second shot there. Let's see if he can convert this and get it under par. Absolutely. I tell you what, that's two great threes there. And two birdies in the last three holes as well for Hatton. So he's back to one under par where he started the day. Should say one better than where he started, in fact. Started at level. Over to McElroy. He's just missed the small one. This is key, I think. A couple of tough holes to come, then a little bit downwind action where he can pick up a couple. Just watch Justin Rose on the same line, just miss it left. So. Will this be influenced inside right, I would imagine. 
Also solid for McElroy. What a great up and down from the trap on the par three. It's one under today. He's managed himself quite well today with not his best ball striking display. He's hanging in there. Here's Sharma on nine, just putting off the left side of the green. This, this is going to be tricky to judge. I'd say that's a pretty good effort from there. That, that was not easy. It's quite a steep bank, as you can see him walking up there to judge the speed of that. Fino, 14, into the wind. I expect this to be a driven iron shot from the American. come over the top of that just a little but what a bounce you do get those breaks on links courses gotta take advantage of them he looks confused while people are clapping there can't see it can he after the second at 14 kind of tucks its way around the corner one of the few blind shots you really have on this golf course back to 13. 180 yards today at 13. It's a tough shot. We've saw a lot of players struggle with this one. Yeah, you can't go left of the green there. That's why we see a lot of guys bailing out to the right a bit. How do you see that, Nick? I see that as quite a flat kind of draw. I'm trying to really draw it hard off that trap. Yeah, but with a win off the left, you know that if, you, if it doesn't come out the way you want to, it's gone even further right. Big crosswind, Nico. T just nestled in the back of the dunes. Beautiful hole, this. One of my favourites, 14. It's all on that first bounce if you start getting it left or right. Finds the fairway. Cut off a great par. At 17, Harmon's down the last. Wind down off the left for Harmon. Aim at those bunkers in the left-hand side of that big white tent. Try to get as much run as possible. Looks he's done quite well. That becomes a great birdie opportunity for Brian Harmon to finish what has been a very, very good round already. It is amazing to see just how much noise these players and how, how much of the crowd interaction they get, and even just walking along, it's something Rory McIlroy knows all about. It's so Rory going with the, with the two iron that he's using a lot this week. He's leaked this one right. But there's a bit of an opening there if it's outside the rope line. And people would have walked there the whole day and it'd be flat. Yeah, you're hoping hoping for a lie, but when you go two iron, you've got to hit the fairway, right? This is the third for a Lamprecht coming up short with the second after the adventurous drive. So up and down for par. Yeah, I just didn't get the contact there for the young South African. Well, there's one thing we're learning about him. He's not dull to watch. Hasn't been yesterday, hasn't been today, but it's a slightly different story so far with uh, bogey at the opening hole, par at the second, a good par at two. There he is uh, at minus four alongside Antoine Rosner, who's yet to play today, Michael Stewart, who's going along nicely. One under par. They're all chasing minus eight, which belongs to Brian Harmon, who has a, a chance to improve that as well. Down the par five, 18th, he's found the fairway at Royal Liverpool. Not always easy to do. Matthew Southgate in with a, a round of 70, including that eagle at the last. Level so far for Patrick Reid through four. So we go down to Justin Thomas at 14. Long pitch for Justin Thomas. 
Hello. Some light in Justin Thomas's week. There we go, a little smile. It's, it's one of them, you know, golf is so difficult and you can have a bad week at any given time. Now we're going to see somebody hit the green on 13 today. They like it at the back. Yeah, that's incredibly unlucky. But that just shows you how difficult it is to find that green on 13 with that wind that's whipping off the left. You can't see much of it either from back on the tee. We hear Hovland's been in one of the fairway bunkers. This for par. Hole ahead at 14. So close. So close. Great try from Hovland. Lamprecht for his par here. Off the, not the best little pitch shot. Let's see if he can knock this in. Go, 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 go. And that'll be a, that'll be a bogey for him. But off the start and where he's hit it, it's not too bad of a start, really. <laughs> yeah, it could have been, it could have been worse when you think about it. Got away with it at the second. Important now to gather yourself back and do the right thing again like he did yesterday. Got a lucky nudge off the hill behind him, Finau, but doesn't take advantage. He's on three over, Finau, with the cut that at the moment sits at two over. Projected to get to three or four. This looks lively. I hope you've got some stretchy trousers for this. What a shot. Oh. How good is that? To, to generate the speed out of that, having no having no movement from your legs, that, that's a great shot. I mean, I'm going to be honest here. I don't have the flexibility to even stand like that. It takes a Scott to know how to do it. Michael Stewart there. What's the liar ahead of Rory McIlroy like, Anthony? It's not good. It's not good. It probably shouldn't be. Yeah, I'm just going to go with that. Uh, but do you think he can get to the green, Anthony? I wouldn't have thought so. Because of the lie or because of the wind? Mostly lie into the breeze. I think the choice is give it a go and see how close you get. I'd be amazed if he pitches this on the putting surface. Well over 200 yards back into the face. That's as good as he'll do. Yeah, it's a good shot from there, McElroy. It's a good chance to save par, actually. After that tricky, tricky bunker shot here, Stuart for his par, even to give himself this chance, I think it's amazing. It's going to be a front nine of level par for Stewart. He stays at minus three. Not a good lie for Justin Rose. Terrible angle. This is a hack forward. That didn't look like it really came out for Justin Rose. He's wondering where that's gone. Down the right, in the dip, had no lie up against the ledge in the sand. It was horrible. And we're starting to see more of these. You, you whip them offline, you're going to have some shocking spots. Perfect position for Ram. I watched him play a lot of golf these last two days. He don't think he could be scoring any worse. He's had no luck at all. Perfect position. Fraction up the hill. Can he draw this in close? And he's, yeah, leak this, leak this right. Again, just trying to draw it back into that flag. It is very easy to get ahead and get the, the club a little bit behind you and not, not draw it.
in our car, Cam. It was a 72 yesterday for Matt Fitzpatrick, Billy Foster, his caddy. So they're still looking forward to their rounds ahead. Sending a couple of last minute texts. The uh, US Open champion from last year. Now Harmon on 18. 2.42 to what can possibly be the easiest pin position on 18 as he found the green. He's done better than that. We're going to have an eagle chance coming up from Brian Harmon. He's putting together some round of golf today. Here's Hatton's second shot on the par three. That's it, just trying to, yeah, chase it up the green. Oh, that's a wonderful touch, that is. Absolutely wonderful. Nice work, Tyrrell. Keeps the momentum going since the turn, two under. Now this will set up well for Hovland on 15, a par five. Wind down off the left. Just going to avoid that last bunker there all the way down. Stop. That's perfect for Hovland. Homer for par on 13. Oh. Fist pump says it all. Again, real big momentum putt there. Keeps him at three under. Some save that. And showing some grit after the double bogey that came at 11 to birdie 12, hold that at 13. So he's at minus three, up to Rory. I remember, was it Wentworth two years ago? McElroy was hitting so many people that his wife... 52 yards for McElroy. Just comes a bit shy, but he's putting into the wind again for part. It's a good side to leave it. Putter out. Down 18 with the lead at the open. Beef doesn't get much better than that for Brian Harmon. 100%, yeah. Once you're walking down 18 with that crowd, with the putter in your hand, you know you're in a good place. Especially with an eagle putt ahead, which could build him a five-shot lead. Just like that, he's only 12 feet away from doing it. Yeah, he'll have that putt to actually go to double digits. I never thought a couple of hours ago we'd see somebody get to double digits. A real testament to how well he's been playing today. So many of them 10, 12 footers, 8 footers, he's hold for par as well, just to stay at 8 under, and now he's given himself a chance. And here's Jordan for birdie on 7. Oh. 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 He's going along nicely. He just needs to keep doing what he's doing and ticking along. Chipping away at it inside the top five at his home course in the open. Playing some good golf. 100%. He's going to be absolutely loving the crowds out there and bouncing off them nicely. In the same spot as yesterday, Ron, but could putt it today, chipping. A little bit more of the mound in play. This is quite difficult, actually. Not a great lie. A little bit sandy and a little bit thin. So he needs to guarantee the strike. He will. I think pretty much stopped pretty quick, this. It's pretty good from Rad. Six, eight feet. Save his spot. And he's playing as the hardest hole on the course right now. 14 opportunity comes at 15 and 18. In the way of par fives. Now home over three would. Pretty good. Oh, easy now. There's a bunker there. All right. We're good. It's been pretty solid from inside 15. I only missed three of them all week long. Pretty solid. Mm. 29 out of 32. That's incredible. It's amazing, isn't it? It's been uh, a real tool to lean on and a reliable one. A 
hush of the crowd. Would also be for the lowest round of the week so far, should this drop. What a way to finish that round. Brian Harmon, 65, eagle on the last, four birdies, one eagle, enough said. What an incredible round of golf. That hole must look huge to him, what he's put into, <laughs> huh? Brian Harmon leads the Open by five. Just a magic day for him out there. It's a brilliant round of golf. And we said the putsy hole to save par. And then to set yourself up for an eagle at the end is just icing on cake, isn't it? Yeah, you have those couple of rounds in your career that stand out. And when they come at such a big stage, it's an unbelievable feeling. It seems as though, from our stats, he's only had 23 putts out there. And it feels like it from watching him. He is our leader, well out in front now. Back to McElroy we go. Yeah, he's had a, had a few of these par putts, and he's got another one, brilliant. Again, another brilliant save. And he just keeps him under par through the difficult holes. And let's see if he can make a few birdies coming in now. Now Lamprecht on four. He's a driver yesterday. He can get close to this green. Now we don't want this to go too far left because there's a few gorse bushes there. Saw someone pointing left. Yeah. Yeah, it quickly goes in there for him at the distance that he hits him. Yeah. Keeps pulling driver. He obviously has his has his game plan and he's gonna stick to it. Yeah, but when you're two over after three, trying to stay in this. Provisional ball now. Sometimes, sometimes, Nick, when you've played and you get into a situation where you can almost go into like a shell of yourself, have you ever had that experience where you just don't think quite clear enough? Yeah, of course you do. When you rattle like that, sometimes, you know, you, you, just, don't, you just don't think right. John around for power on 14 to stay at three over. <laughs> Makes it. These might be important putts to stick around for the weekend. Brian Harmon will be there and he's going to have a very late tea time tomorrow. Oh, I love that. You know, you finish on the Friday. You're up the top of the leaderboard. You know you're going to be out late. And all I'm thinking is, oh, I have a nice dinner and a good lay in. <laughs> I dare say he'll have both. He certainly earned it. Out there today, four birdies and an eagle to finish it all off. It really was the icing on the cake for our lowest round of the week so far. Minus six, 65, Brian Harmon up by five at Royal Liverpool. At 68 from Min Woo Lee, standing tall out there as well after a very tough start, couple of bogeys at three and four. Worked his way right back into the round. It's important to keep your wits about you. Tristan Lawrence continues to impress. He's had four wins the last two seasons, Lawrence. Round of 70 for him today inside the top 20 alongside Patrick Reed and Rory McElroy. So, all of, all, all of these players that are uh, getting their days underway here in the next hour or so. Tom Kim, 68. He's enjoying his time in the UK yet again, like he did last year at the Renaissance Club, down to 15. He felt like he missed it right yesterday, Ali, Rory, and it found that fairway, so he'll be testing that side once more, helping Breeze. Left bunker is the issue.
begging for it. That's why. That's going to be up against the lip too, isn't it? Oh, that could just be horrid. Coming next for Rory McIlroy. Now Homer, second shot on 14. That's going to play well. Further than 200 yards. It's only playing 183, but into the wind, remember. Wasn't far off from holding the green, but look at where that finishes. Links. Very linksy. Now where is this? It's down the left of four. Uh, he must have taken an unplayable there. Line back. Yeah, I think that, you know, after the start, two over after three, you know, that might have been a bit of a risk to hit driver down four. Just play an iron, give yourself a birdie chance with a wedge in. Fourth coming next for Lamprecht. Stewart's third shot on 10. Oh! <laughs> Is it one of them, Nick, where you think, how hasn't that gone in? But you're also saying, thanks, mate, to the flag, stopping it. I think a little of both, isn't it? That was exciting. A couple of exciting groups as well. All three of these players, Cantlay, Kepka and Matsuyama, are out with 70s yesterday. So they're off in uh, around about 40 minutes. And the world number one has the company of uh, one of our overnight co-leaders in Tommy Fleetwood and Adam Scott. Defending champion golfer of the year, Cameron Smith. It was a little scrappy off the tee yesterday, but made it work in one over par. Minus one for Shoffley. And they're out with Wyndham Clark, who bested the others with minus three. And that's McIntyre, Fowler and Lowry out at 3.10. So about 80 minutes from now, set your watches. Wasn't it impressive what McIntyre did last week? There's a little bit of work ahead of him for the afternoon, as does Bryson DeChambeau. They start on the same score of uh, three over par. We have Siwoo Kim and Cameron Young. Is Tommy Fleetwood getting ready? Yeah, 100%, just going through his warm-up drills. I think every player has their has their certain drills, and especially for me at Opens, it's been all about sort of six, seven foot and in, like he's hitting there, and then hitting loads of long putts again, because he's going to have a lot of 40, 50 footers coming up today. Third shot at 15 for Hovland, at the par five. Hit it through the green. Chipping back into the wind. A bit shy, but a good effort from the man from Norway. Lamprecht's fourth shot here. I'd say this would be great if you could just get this up and down and, and steady the ship here. I'd say that's a good touch there from from where he was and hopefully he can knock that in and just, just calm them nerves down and settle in for the round. We've said a few times today that he'll do well to walk away with five and he would and he's only through four holes. It's exactly what's happening out there for the amateur up to Homer. Homer also chipping into the wind. And that was high and loopy. An outside chance to see this part. Par tester for Tony Finau. At 15 of all places as well. He's made a bit of a, a mess of the par five. And it's going to cost him one. He's going to feel that's going to cost him two because it's a very reachable par five for him, player of his length. I'm prepared for both. Come on, mate, knock this one in. Yeah, great putt there. Lovely, never easy when they're left to right. You've got the wind knocking around as well, and that's that's a solid part. And let's see if he can reset now. Now, 
us to it to save his power on 10 after a wonderful chip that hit the flag stick. Yeah, that's what we thought after seeing Roy McElroy's drive find the bunker on 15, can only move it sideways. It was against the face of it. Here's Hovland's birdie putt at 15 here. He'd love to see this one, this one go in here. Get him back on track. He's had sort of an uh, up and down day where he's made a few birdies early on and a couple bogeys and, and in the difficult stretch. Bit of left to right in this for Hovland. Makes it solid four. Yeah, very solid. They can be quite tricky as well, you know, when you've made a few bogeys and you can almost overread it and try too hard. Stayed very still over this putt. Now Jordan for birdie on eight. Bit of left to right in this hole, so. Oof. Close. Very close. For Matthew Jordan. Right, let's head back to the first tee where the 2017 Open champion is about to get going. There he is. This is game number 40 on the tee from the USA, Jordan Speed. Dropped a shot at the last yesterday for an opening round of uh, 69, which he admitted himself took some of the shine off it, but a decent enough start. Drawing it off the right bunkers for speed. It's a great start. It's not the easiest of opening holes. The first here at Royal Liverpool. On the tee, from England, Matthew Fitzpatrick. Very downbeat about his chances this week. Top 30 finish he thought would be a really good week, but uh, he started okay. 72 yesterday. He will be hoping to go better than that, of course, out there. Yeah, On the way down the left there. From Australia, Jason Day. Also opened up with a round of uh, 72, but it's nice to see him back, isn't it? Nice to see him back in the winner's circle on the PGA Tour and seemingly managing the uh, the back that has been an issue over the years. Yeah, it's great to see him back back playing well and injury free you know no one likes to see players get injuries and have long periods of time off and and stuff and I think what a lot of people don't realize is how many players do have a lot of niggles going on when they're playing during the season we're playing a lot of golf and it's taxing on the body you know you're hitting every shot and you think how much force is going through one shot now John Ram on 15 to par five 
just under 270 yards. Now, what's he got in store for us? A couple of big hops. Just dodges that first bunker, but it's going to find the back edge of the green. It'll be chipping. That's gone a long way. Jeez, that's gone a long way. Big, big first bounce. And his homer for par. Here, can he knock another one in to stay at three under? It just slides by. But again, still in a great position. He's bounced back well from, from the double bogey. Let's see if he can do it again. That'll be four pars on the card today for Max Homer. It's been a, an exciting ride. A rather colourful scorecard, yes. I've seen a few guys there from the rough short ride of 15. But that was Rory's third shot because he hacked it out of a bunker after finding sand off the tee shot. The world number one, Scotty Scheffler on uh, car or, or van cam, as it probably should be. There's no karaoke in this one, is there? <laughs> Where is James Corden when you need him? You've got a nick when you go from the range and have to get a shuttle to the first tee. Does that, does that bother you? It depends on the company. If I was with you in there, I would have no problem at all. <laughs> so, Ram over the back of the green at 15. On the downslope, actually, it's going to certainly have that sort of natural down ball flight which is going to help into the breeze, but he's pitching on a bit of a down slope. So it just needs to be careful. This could shoot by, even though it's into the breeze. Trying to find the pitch as he walked up onto the front, but actually bounced the bunker, I thought. Tough, firm conditions, not easy out here. Swirling around. Yeah, that's a good shot from John Rapp. About six feet for birdie. He'd love to squeeze out a couple of uh, birdies in these final four holes, wouldn't he? Back to the tee here at 15 and home up. He's got a lovely rhythm about his swing, hasn't it? Never seems to go after it particularly hard. Yeah, that's right, Dom. His, his rhythm is never changing the whole day. Here we go then, Anthony. What's, uh, what's the story for Rory? It's a jumpy sort of lie, Dom, down breeze. I expect this to have quite an aggressive bounce. Beautifully judged. How soft was that? We've seen a couple today where they've been sort of eight, ten foot pass, and that's come out so soft, isn't it? Yeah, we all talk about the power, don't we, that uh, Rory McIlroy's got, but I think most people who are in the game know that he has also got an exceptional short game. Is day second into one? Is it three with off the tee? He's got a long way in here. Go. 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 Oh, a some shot that is. And that is that is a narrow green as well. So coming in with with either it looks like a five wood or something like that. Great shot. Off to uh, Michael Stewart at the eleventh. Pin that sits on the left-hand side of the green today on 11. Oh, that must have looked so good from where he was. Oh, just comes a bit shy. Still a birdie chance. He's having a ball out there, isn't he? To Matthew Jordan at the par 3 ninth. That's pretty good from there. There's a long way left. to John Rahm, who has this chance, Anthony. Yeah, very much needed, isn't it, I think? 
Ryan Harmon is sort of, well, stretching everyone out at the minute. Rosie rolled his in. Good up and down from some 80 odd yards. Just slightly across the slope, not much. Maybe a bit of breeze in this as well. Just for a moment, I thought it was going to get away from him. That hall came just in time. So John Ram moves back to two over. And moves inside the cut line now because we have, well, that makes it 73 players, I think, a plus two or better. 70 and ties through to the weekend at the Open. You can see that just catches the right lip there. And meanwhile, the par putt from the other side of the hole for McElroy. Third one in a row as well. So he's riding his luck just slightly. Tough line, the bunker, that was the trouble. Couldn't really get any distance, had to go sideways. So from behind the eight ball all the way up this par five. Oh, I mean, it's a frustrating one. And then bunkers are so punishing around this golf course, having to come out sideways. He'd be up on that tee thinking, if you can get the tee shot away, you're looking at potentially having a, an eagle putt. And at the easiest hole on the course, McElroy makes bogey. And he is back to level par. So two under going out, two over coming home so far. As we head to one, and Jordan Spieth. Difficult part of the green to find on one from 191 yards. I've seen a lot of people there left. I haven't seen a lot of people long though. So as McElroy, Rahm and Rose wander over to the 16th tee, we'll go back down 15 and Max Homer's second. That's actually a good play, three wood off the tee you hit. You make sure that you stay out of the bunkers and you know you're going to have enough length to get there in two. Yeah, it's a very clever play. That isn't dependent on lies. It's not the worst miss down there. We've seen players get up and down and Rory chipped one fairly close there, so it's not it's not the worst place to be. So, let's hop over to the 16th tee. And the story continues. Bunkers left and right. 285 to the right one. Got the beating of that, but this breeze is strong. It's all about the ball flight. Needs to be direct out here at the minute. Definitely you could hear him there's definitely short of the traps today that wind is strong and it's a cold breeze as well uh, Havilland second shot on 16 I've said it before it's a long haul I think it's the first player we've seen that find that top shelf on 16. First time we've seen it. That's an incredible shot, that is. Well, we saw the uh, approach from Michael Stewart here at 11. So he's got the putter out from the fringe. Everybody's missed that putt high on 16. Back to the 16th, and this time McElroy. Flush one down here yesterday past all the bunkers. That's not happening today. That cold breeze, it's certainly playing at least 25 into, I would think. Damien left once more. Just trying to drift one back into the middle, I think. He's looking slightly anxious. No need, he has flown it past the bunker. I'll just find that space in between the two bunkers. We're good now for McElroy.
Jordan Spieth over the back of the first. Now that fringe is looking at him and then it's going down towards the hole. Has he got it? Has he got it? Oh. <laughs> Some skills this man has around the greens, I. So good to watch, isn't he? Really is such an exciting player. Matthew Jordan, this is for par at nine, remember? To remain at three under. Seems slightly disappointed after his opening round. I thought he did very well, didn't he, to shoot two under yesterday. But you do have to remember his, uh, his handicap when he was uh, an amateur here was plus seven. So he's probably thinking, well, that's about five over par. I, I kid you. I kid you. Of course. This is Dave Putting for birdie after an unbelievable shot into the first here. That is some birdie, that is. Wow. Nice move from the Australian, a major winner, of course. Let's go to Tyrrell Hatton, who's looking for his first major championship victory at the 15th. Yeah, this is such a narrow entry into this green. You've got to be so spot on. Missed this bunker from about 30 yards. Just like that. That's a great shot there. There can't be more than sort of 10, 15 yards to hit that into. And then you're relying on the bounce. Great shot, that. Now back to the first, and this is the birdie putt for Matt Fitzpatrick. Hovland on 16. After an iron shot right over the hole. And this will be a bonus. Needs a bit more legs to get there. Putting downwind. He would have thought that maybe played a bit quicker. Here's Homer's third shot on 15. We've seen quite a few chips from here. It's going to have to be a delicate one. Just pop it out. Go, 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 go. Ah, oh, it's a great shot, that is. As I said, it's not too bad of a miss there, but you've still got to play a really good chip shot. Pretty much guarantees Max Homer a birdie. So... He'll move to three under in all likelihood. Over on the range, meanwhile, the world number one, Scotty Scheffler. One under past 70 yesterday for him. Yeah, his, his putt was quite cold yesterday, and I think he struggled a bit with pace. We'll see if he'll get that right today. I thought he hit the ball well. Yesterday, just going through. He's out at uh, about just before 10 to 3, Scotty Sheffley. He'll play with Tommy Fleetwood and Adam Scott again. As we go to Tyrrell Hatton, this is for an eagle at 15. It hasn't quite got the legs. I don't even want to start to count how many putts Tyrrell Hatton has left short in line today. There's a fair bit of him. Still a birdie for him, though, on 15. Strange-looking leaderboard, really, isn't it, with Brian Harmon so far out in front. Long way to go yet, of course. Shabanka Sharma not going to get there either. The greens are the same speed, aren't they, as they were yesterday? It's Stenson putting for birdie on the fourth. Ah, oh, great putt. Let's see the Iceman. 
the winner at Troon in that uh, wonderful final day tussle duel with Phil Mickelson to Jason Day. Coming off a birdie at one. Jason Day with left. Could be a five wood. One needs to stay left. There's a bit of rough and a few bunkers there. Uh, that is just rough there. Not a great angle to come in from on the second. Problems, more problems, I'm afraid, for Christo Lamprecht. Yeah, this could be a testing day for him with the way he started his second round. It's going to be a big test of patience for the South, South African. Hovland cleaning up for par here on 16. Yep, lovely. Always a good, good score there with that wind. There's only been three birdies on 16 today. Second hardest hole. Spieth driver on the second, trying to get close to the screen. Come on, Come on, Jordan. On this to fly on that line, I think. Just enough to pitch on the fairway. That's a long way down. Still hasn't stopped rolling. So John Rom has found the fairway at 16, Anthony. What, just over a couple of hundred yards to go here? Yeah, 207. Sort of standing here thinking, well, what's it playing? All about the flight, but you've got to add at least 25, I would say, even with something like a three iron. Just a pin to stay away from, even though you're over par. You don't want to be giving another one away when you do hit the fairway. A lot of these flags seem to be tucked behind bunkers. That's why the scoring is such. not going to be too pretty from there he's going to have a real delicate bunker shot well we saw the chip and this is the birdie part for Max Homer at the 15th the par 5 to move to 3 under well done, which will put him in 4th place at the moment with Min Woo Lee that's already shot a round of 68 this morning he does love his Lynx golf, doesn't he? Remember, Max Homer played around at the Scottish Open last year, then went out and played North Berwick as well. Here's Jo Slouten, the Dutchman, and uh, this is a, a chance for Eagle at five, so this would be a great move for him. He's been in terrific form this season on the DP World Tour. He's kind of done everything but win. Back over to 16, and uh, Rory McElroy. Big drive there, Anthony. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely flush that. Just needs to be mindful of the flotter. If he floats this, there is a bunker waiting, as we know. So long, I think. Trying to play a cut, Rory McIlroy. It's not cutting, Nico. Still finds the top shelf. It's a decent shot. But yeah. See him there with his hands. Wanted that to cut a bit more. Reminded of those iron shots he hit down the stretch last week at the Renaissance Club. The uh, what was it? Five iron to the 17th, and then that two iron off a hanging lie from a divot into 18 to finish birdie birdie and pit Bob McIntyre for the title there. Only Phil Mickelson has won the Scottish Open and the Open the following week. That was back in 2013. Maury McElroy trying to do that, where he won the Open in 2014 here at Royal Liverpool. Great round this morning. Nice finish from Matthew Southgate, who loves playing Lynx golf. He's a, a country member, I think, over at Carnoustie. His dad's been taking him there for years. He used to go on their summer holiday bits there. There is the 17th, much talked about, par three, the new hole here at Royal Liverpool. What have you made of it so far today, Beef? I think the pin's a lot more accessible. Obviously, we've seen a hole in one today, and it's one of these where I would see it as like just trying to draw it into this flag today. But very easy to overcook it like that, and 
that doesn't look great. I agree with you, B. That doesn't look great at all at the back there. <laughs> Shouldn't be laughing, really. It's like one more than yesterday. Though. Jason Day coming out of the rough at the second. Yeah, you're going to have to run this onto the second green. Yeah, that ball came out with a bit of heat for Jason Day. It's a decent result, though, from the rough. In contention, remember, a few years back at St Andrews. Right. Well, what about this one for John Rahm? Anthony? You, you want to say he's got lucky, but, you know, he's just in the middle of the bunker, sort of right side of it. Pretty simple, this. It's nice when John's in a bunker, you can see him. He's a tall fella. Just popping this one out, letting it release. It's good, but there's still a bit of work left for John Rahm. He's too over par. You know, the one thing about, you know, a little technical thing this week, you know, guys tend to use wedges with less bounce. And when you play out of bunkers, you know, it changes a little bit the way that the club gets through the sand. Cut line has just moved to plus three, by the way, as we go to Jordan Spieth now up ahead. Big drive on two. Absolutely perfect position here. Some drive. And, and that is the difference, and this is what this golf course can do. Whether you, you take iron off and leave yourself longer in, or you do take some of the holes on where they're downwind, and that is the advantage. If you get a good driver where you can have a few more chances of birdie. So McElroy with, what, 35, maybe 40 feet or so for birdie here at 16. Just predominantly left to right, Dom all the way. Greens such as these, these are chances. Every now and then he does something like that. It's a simple one to read, but just maybe just the pace with the wind across him. Well, yesterday he said he felt it was the putting that had kind of let him down at times out there. Today I think he's putted really well. He's held some really good putts for par, hasn't he? He seems to have had the pace of the greens well. Here's Tyrrell Hatton. A three wood off the tee hat, and that's going to make the 16 hole a whole lot longer. Worst Especially if you strike it like that, Tyrrell. <laughs> oh my god, leave the heck of her off. <laughs> isn't, isn't he a beauty? Uh. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's on the fairway, I know, but it's only gone 200 yards into the wind. Guido Miliozzi. Well, that's amazing because he has not dropped a shot yet in the Open. I believe he's the only player in the field to be bogey-free so far. His days-long birdie putt on the second here. See, he's going down and back up and over a ridge. They can be really difficult to judge the speed of them because you're going down and then back up and back down and also into the wind as well. As you can see, the slope there. This is a big part, isn't it, for uh, John Rahm, par part here at 16. Just managed to get it back to plus two. As I say, the cut line has moved to three over. Bang on 70 in ties at the moment at uh, three over par. He's just backed off here as well and just had a second look at this as well. Sometimes when the greens are fairly flat or the pin position is quite flat, you set up to the putt and you can feel the slope on your feet but not where the ball is as well when you're looking. So he, he can play tricks on your mind and he's got to be, he's got to have a lot of clarity where he's going to hit this and commit to it. Yeah, good putt there. Well, Rory McIlroy still has a little bit of work to do as well for his part. 
has been a lot of work for these guys, I find, for Rory and John Ram today. Having to haul a bunch of par putts to stay where they are. Yeah, straight in the middle. Solid putt there. Little debrief. As they wander over to 17, we'll go back to the second. And Jordan Spieth, remember, this one is for birdie to get to three under. That's what I love about this golf course, the, the risk and reward. He's gone with driver and it's paid off. Nearly chipped in at the first for Birdie, so a good start from Smith. Hovland, we know, was over the back of the 17th green. He's chipped out to here, so this is for par. I think he's done quite well to find a green in two from where we saw his first shot finished. That'll most likely be a, be a bogey four for Victor Hovland. We've seen it play downwind, we've seen it play into the wind. We haven't yet seen it play with a crosswind, have we, on, on a championship day? I don't think no one wants to see this green play crosswind. Stuart Sink. Getting underway and nicely done. Here's Homer's second shot into 16. 222 yards, long way. I think he's here one where he's absolutely flushed that straight through the wind there. To Michael Stewart and this is a, a chance at 12 and he's got it oh. no he hasn't <laughs> the open always throws up some lovely stories doesn't it yesterday it was Christo Lamprecht today it's Michael Stewart was he birdied the five four of the last five holes at Dundonald in the 36 hole final qualifier to earn his spot here at the open And there he is, the Scot, in amongst the three unders, in amongst some of the stars of world golf. A little bit of separation at the top as Brian Harmon continues to lead by five. It's going to be fun to watch Tommy Fleetwood out there this afternoon. Plenty of uh, local support, of course, for the man who was born in Southport, just up the coastline. Jason Day has this for par at two. Yeah, he was at the back of the green, remember? Good solid two putt from Jason Day. Former USPGA champion. Former world number one. Here's Hassan's approach into 16. We've seen Homer just rip one straight through the wind. And look at Tyrrell's reaction straight away, see if we can pick anything up from him. Yeah, good shot. It's a good shot. It's a long way and it's into the wind, but he's going to have a tricky putt. He's not quite got it on that uh, top tier, has he? Back on the first tee, Patrick Cantley, Brooks Kepka, and Hideki Matsuyama will be getting underway very shortly. All under par opening rounds. He had to battle very hard, Kepka, this year's PGA champion. He was really struggling in the early part of his round. And uh, like a true champion, he brought things back towards the end of the round. He 
yeah, he's me mentally so tough, and he he'll be loving it if the wind picks up and it gets tricky this afternoon. It's it seems what he absolutely thrives on. So yeah, he'll be. This is game number 43. On the tee, from the USA, Patrick Cantlay. That is a fifth successive Open Championship appearance for the 2021 FedEx Cup champion. Patrick Cantlay opened up yesterday with a one under round. On the team, from the USA, Brooks Kepka. A five-time major champion, Kepka. He was a couple over par through ten holes. He'll want a better start out there today. On the tee, from Japan, Hideki Matsuyama. Three birdies yesterday for the 2021 Masters champion. Couple of drop shots in there as well. So, like his two playing partners, opened up with a round of 70, which is one under par here at Royal Liverpool. That looks like that finds the middle of the fairway for Matsuyama. A couple of good tee shots down the first of that group. Here we go. 17. It's a tricky little par three. Ah, there we go. Great shot there from Ram. Clearly see, kept that down a bit into the wind. Beautiful execution from John Ram. Homer through the back of 16, out with the putter. You can just see there where he's putting through, down and back up the slope. Very difficult to judge. Now oh, Rory on 17. Now that's not too bad there, that's okay. Not a very complicated up and down for Mario Rackney Roy. Saw a holy monitor here earlier today from the Australian Travis Smythe. It's a tough, tricky hole. You've got to execute everything perfectly. I knew it was going to be um, on the green, which I was happy about. And then halfway through the flight, I was like, oh, this is getting good. And then as it was coming down, about to land, I was like, be good. Must have gone in pretty fast because the, the crowd just went crazy like straight away. Kind of upshooted in the wind and obviously landed perfect. I heard when I was in the scoring that a lady that can't break 100 actually had the first hole in one there. 
Yeah, so I'm the second person to ever have a hole in one, but first in a tournament. At the moment, I'll never forget. What a lovely, lovely memory for uh, Travis Smythe. Uh, sadly, I don't think he's going to be around for the weekend at eight over par. It doesn't matter, Dom. He'll remember this hole for the rest of his life. Amazing. Didn't take him quite as long as you, Nico. <laughs> That's exactly why I'm getting involved with this. I know how <laughs> difficult it is to get one. McElroy, left-hand side of 17, second shot. Good enough lie for the putter. I've seen many chip this and not get up and down. I like this play. Ah, bit racy for McElroy. He's going to have to hold another one of those for par, isn't he? To the third, Jason Day right into the corner of this dog leg. Yeah, perfect. Perfect tee shot. Slightly up the hill here. Right to left wind. Yeah, good shot there. It's a tight pin position. It's really easy to just turn one a bit too much. That's a good shot. Little Eye, they call it. All the holes here have got uh, individual names. Number 17, the new one, constructed by Martin Ebert. Well, not personally constructed, but designed by Martin Ebert, a design consultant for the RNA. And McElroy has this for par to stay at even par for the championship. And I feel like Dom, this back nine, it's number of par putts for McElroy, tiring in these conditions. That was heavy handed, a good couple of feet below the level of the green, but this was heavy handed. So, yet another important par putt. He's done it again, it's been quite remarkable. Yeah, he's holding some real, real important putts at good times here to just hang in there. Funny, isn't it, when you think about the chances that he's probably missed? He had uh, that short part yesterday at eight, and he had the the one at uh, three, certainly, earlier today, where he was only about six feet away, and you thought, for all the world, he was going to make a birdie there. It can be like that some days, you know, where every par putt seems to go in, and you, you get some great birdie chances, and you may put too much importance on the birdie putts and try too hard for some reason, and they just don't go in, but the par putts do. Well, never mind par. This is for birdie for John Rahm. Yeah, but he could really do with this. Yeah, that's a great two there. And again, even being three over with four to play, if he can have a good 18, he can even make three up 18 and finish under par going into the weekend. And it just turns that fast. Right, back over the other side of the course to Jordan Spieth coming out of the rough at the third. These can be tricky as well. You get a slight flyer and you can just go fly straight through the wind here. That one, and again, that one's come out dead and it, it's tricky, but not a bad miss there. Shouldn't be too much of a problem. Clearly what he was playing for, it just didn't run out quite as much as he had expected or hoped. A little change up in the commentary box as we're watching Tommy Fleetwood moving towards the first tee. He's going to play a course with uh, Scotty Scheffler and Adam Scott. And Jay Townsend has climbed in the commentary box alongside Andrew Beef Johnston and myself, Dom Hollier. Welcome, Jay. Uh, thank you, Dom, and good afternoon. It uh, is going to be a really exciting afternoon. I've been watching all morning, as you do, even if you start in the afternoon. And windy conditions I just love the wind beef the way the players have to you know play more shots just not golf by numbers so much more fun and entertaining when it's like today it really gets you thinking yeah it really does and you really have to commit to shots you can't get away with too many miss hits there when the wind's up 16 Max Homer to remain at three under par 
He's on quite a few of these today as well to keep his score ticking. And that one just slips by him. Again, still in a great position. And if he can pick up a shot or two coming in, it's a good couple of days work and ready for a good weekend at the Open. Still only four pars today through 16 holes for Homer. It has been a bit of a roller coaster. Big 18th grandstand on the right hand side of your picture there. And right next to it, there is the rather smaller stand at the first. I love that grandstand on 18, that walk. And even when you come up down the steps onto the first and you come through the grandstand and you get a nice applause from the crowd, it just makes your adrenaline go up just a little bit more than it normally would. Ian Finnis his caddy had a word with him, didn't he, before this week. He said, just be a little bit more selfish. Think about yourself a little more. Don't do all the requests that you're asked to do. You're a bit too nice sometimes, Tommy. And he feels it's working out for him. This is game number 44 on the team from the USA, Scotty Scheffler. The world number one who was one over through 14 holes yesterday and then he made a couple of birdies to uh, finish under par for the day. He mentioned the putts that he didn't make out there beef today. If he warms up his putter, he will definitely be a challenger out there this weekend. Yeah, 100%. Everyone, we always talk about his ball striking and, and the way he plays. I just think it was more of a speed issue today. And I think he probably went off yesterday and hit a load of long putts. And hopefully his speed's a bit better. And we'll see a different Sheffler on the, on the greens today. From England, Tommy Fleetwood. <laughs> oh, no surprise, a bit like yesterday. He was cheered all the way around the course in his opening 66. Remember, that was the, the low round that he's had in a major championship on day one. And when you think about great groups and similar type of personalities, you've got Scheffler, Fleetwood, and then Scott, all extremely nice, easy guys to play with. Great pairing. On the team. From Australia, Adam Scott. We kind of went the other way from Scheffler yesterday. He was uh, nicely under par, but had uh, an unpleasant finish, including a double bogey at the 18th. Yeah, it's... It's so interesting how a round of golf can just change just like that and all of a sudden you could be three, four shots ahead of someone after nine holes and all of a sudden you make a few bogeys or you hit one poor tee shot and next thing they make a few birdies and you're a, you're a shot behind. It did cause some carnage out there yesterday, that 18th hole, Joe. You were here late. There were one or two train crashes. It's the nature of the uh, of the golf course, the design, the setup. But I think the, the final four with two par fives, both over 600 on the card, that are reachable. And then the short 17th par three, just so exciting. So you can have a five, six shot swing in four holes easily. Spieth is trying to lag this one off off the front of the green. It's done OK. Still a bit, still a bit left there to do, though. Ram coming down the 18th. Look where he's aiming. As you would, wind coming off the left, out of bounds, just down the right. You just aim it at safe territory and hope it wind, and the shot takes it over into good territory. And that is going to be good. Short of the bunker. Can't see that bunker. There's a bunker hidden behind that mound that his ball just disappeared behind. Yeah, you don't know. There's not a big room to hit it through that gap of bunkers and obviously the out of bounds really tight. It's it's narrow. 
Yeah, and remember there's the out of bounds down the right hand side. They've moved that in about 20 yards from the last time we were here. Similar line for McElroy. Oh, double cross this one. Just squared the face on this, and this is left. That's a bailout. It's a safe shot, though. I mean, if you get it far enough left, you're where the gallery is, and it's all trotted down, almost like being in the fairway. First green, Matsuyama from, what, a good 55 feet or so for birdie. Yeah, tough to tough to get the second shot all the way back there. This this first hole is is playing long. Day for birdie at the third. It's a slowish putt, especially at the end. Just goes uphill a little bit. That's a cracking start there for him. Two under after the first three holes. Day two, one under par, one over is Victor Hovland. This at the 18th. Two great shots there to leave it there and pretty straightforward chip shot, as you see. He really worked hard in that weak point of his game, the chipping, that was well done. Back to 17 in Hatton. It's all exciting here. I'd like to have the heart rate monitor on these guys when they walk up to 17. Hundred percent. I'd love to see the heart on it too. Yeah, it's a good shot there. I think it, it, because it's only 135 yards, but you know, especially when that pin's on the left, if you hang one out right, you, you cannot miss that right as well. And we've seen a few turn over left. Spieth. He's left himself with quite a bit to do for his par here, but he's up to the task. You always want to watch speed on those short ones because he can make the short putts exciting. He, he used to look at the hole. I don't know whether he still does that, didn't he? Was it the Masters? He started looking at the hole when he was over four or five footers. Well, the problem is that his head moves, especially on the short putts during the hitting area. So if he wasn't looking at the ball, he tended to not move his head as much. Kepka, after driving in the left rough, this for par. I do love his honesty. He actually called the, the start of his round yesterday sloppy. And he was really not happy with himself. Not bad if you're sloppy around this course and still shoot under par. He's just so good, especially in this type of arena where par is a good score and three under is a great score. Plays right into his hands. So back down this uh, first hole is Scotty Scheffler, who took a three wood off the tee, so he's left himself yeah, over 215 so yards. Out, just, just over the left edge of this right one, and the front one, I mean. Coming down there, you know, with the turn. 83 front? Yeah, and you got 89 to cover this uh, far one. Yeah. So, decision made, and following this three ball yes, sir. is Jamie Spence. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. Isn't this going to be a fun ride with these three? Long way in, 216, Scheffler. Could be a three, and I think it's a four. It's playing about 230 to the back pin, straight into the breeze, and it's freshening. It's not not too bad a miss there. It's it's such a tricky green to hit from from 216 yards into the wind. Fleetwood, he's actually pulled a good lie here. It's on a slight down slope. That's the only problem. It's getting away from him a bit, but that should help with the ball flight from 200 yards, five iron. You better keep this down nicely, actually, up this slope. Just a great view right there of how narrow this green is. Not easy in the, in the kind of the back half, the back two thirds actually go gently away from you as you hit your approach shot in. So it's a difficult one to judge correctly. And a beautiful drive from the Aussie, 182. 
Big six might just feather a five in there. Wow, that is some shots. I was just looking at the flags behind the green, absolutely flapping away. And there is a strong breeze there. What a shot. Victor Hovland, this for a closing birdie. Yeah, nicely done. Good up and down, wasn't it? Very nearly hold it for an eagle. And Hovland round in 72. That's one over par today, but goes into the weekend to even par. Ten shots behind Brian. Harmon, our leader. Spieth going with the iron here. First bunker off the right is about 235, and one off the left is about 270. Everyone just going with iron. Well, that's not true. The South African amateur went with driver and paid the price. But that's the right play, the percentage play off 4T. Oh, gives you an idea of the uh, layout here at uh, Royal Liverpool. They actually switch things around for the championship. The third hole is the normal members' uh, starting hole. And I believe two is the 18th for the members. And what is the story here for Rory at 18, Anthony? Hey, he's far enough left, Dom, to get a shot. His lie's actually not too bad. He's sort of coming straight down the breeze. Actually not a bad angle, to be fair. He's just sort of... There's lots going on behind him on the first green, so he's conscious of that. A couple of thousand spectators to move. We're pretty much ready. Can certainly get this online. Whether he can get there and get the right bounce, we'll have to wait and see. Oh, well they wait we can head back to the first tee this is game number 45 on the tee from australia cameron smith <laughs> lovely reception for the defending champion who played this opening hole yesterday beautifully and then he really struggled for the rest of the round he made a couple of great par saves out there in the end, a round of 72, one over. But I expect there was a bit of range work yesterday. Yeah, 100%. Um, it was just, it just seemed off the tee. Just, everything was just heading a bit left. As I said, good lie, McElroy, down breeze. In a funny way, quite a good angle. It's my boy! 283 straight down win. If this gets a big bounce, oh, head in the wrong direction. But it is a front right hole location today, so unlike yesterday, that would have been unplayable. Maybe a play, but there's a bunker short and there's a bunker right behind. That might be a tough one to fit in there, Beef. I think we're going to see a big flop shot coming. To the first and Fleetwood. I said this a few times yesterday. Tommy's pace putting yesterday from long range off the green was absolutely superb. And we've just seen it there again. Up to Ram at 18. Two seventy one. Not a problem at all to reach. Two sixty to the front edge. Oh, there's out of bounds right. Hang on. It had a look at it before it flew over. That's gonna be a, an awkward angle. There's a front right bunker there that might interfere with the ROM pitch point. It's not quite the uh, John Rahm that we saw earlier this season, is it? Here's the US Open champion getting underway, Wyndham Clark.
It's right on the gallery area. No problem at all there. Perfect lie. Off they go, up to the green, and uh, Scotty Scheffler also looks like he's out with the putter from the other side of the green to Fleetwood. Yeah, he's got quite a ridge to come over here. It's going to be a bit more tricky than Tommy's, I think, for pace. Yeah, very easy just for that to get away like that did, and he's still got a little bit of work to do for his par. Wicked hole location here at the fourth. Speed will likely be aiming left. Wind straight behind him. <laughs> the softest of bounces. Well, of course, it's firming up, but that's a pretty good play. You had to give respect to those bunkers that the hole is cut just over. He must love walking down here every every year. The reception he gets, and deservedly so. Anywhere in the world, isn't it, Beef? Wherever he goes, they uh, do seem to love Rory McIlroy. He plays an exciting brand of golf. I think he'd like to be a couple of shots better than he is at the moment walking down that hole today. But back to the first. Terrific approach from Adam Scott. Can he convert? When you start off and you rip two tee shots, uh, tee shot and a second shot like that, it could be frustrating not to convert that. Slow putt from the back of the green for Spieth. We just saw his approach shot. This is back into the wind. Oh, he didn't even wait there, did he? He was off and running after that one. Knew it hadn't started online, so over to 18. John Rahm seems to be pacing this one out. Looks like to me, yeah, this is just going to be like a, a big chip and run here where he's going to have to pick carefully with his club, loft-wise, and, and let this one sort of run up the green to the pin. Scheffler trying to clear up for par here on the first. That's a part of his game that's been bothering him this season. It's amazing. World number one has won twice already in the PGA Tour this year. It's struggling with his putting outside the top 100. Bump up for Matthew Jordan at 12, and he gives it the fist bump as well and gets a big cheer. Well done, the Royal Liverpool member. Back over to 18. Rahm. Difficult here coming down with out of the first cut of rough. So you know it's going to release with that front hole location and that front bunker, as you can see, just to the right. Look for this to be a little long left. Oh. Well, aggressive line, but it was always going to go long. Very easy to get too cute with that. All right, Rory next. And look at the bunker facing him right there. He's got to carry it over the bunker. And the, the bunker that I think that's really the worry is the one that you can't see right behind the hole. It's a tough fit here for McElroy right out of the rough downwind. Oh. I say the big flop shot is the only one, the only shot. That's a superb shot, that is. That is unbelievable. I said it yesterday. I said it many times last week. I'm going to say it again right now. His short game is so underrated. Everyone talks about the great ball striking, but he is as good as virtually everyone, and even the best around the greens. I mean, it's just amazing. So underrated. This shot is extremely difficult. He made it look easy. Very easy. So easy just to slide the club a bit too under the, under the ball and it come off half the face and end up in the bunker. You can turn the face a little bit. You've really got to be so committed to keeping that face wide open. Toy Fleetwood with an iron here at the second. Definitely playing percentage, percentage play. I don't see anything else there, to be honest. Jason Day 
up the middle of the green. So a lengthy birdie putt at the fourth. It should swing a little from right to left. That's a solid putt. He looks like he's rolling the ball really well. Coming off the bogey at one, Scheffler. Things look iron off the tee, 442 today, but because of the rollouts that you see right there, probably effective with the wind behind, effectively playing probably about 375 between roll and wind. And having found the first fairway, Cam Smith's second, and Anthony Wallace dropped back to watch this three ball. Yeah, splashed out to here, up the face of the bunker off the tee, so third shot. Yes, I've forgotten he'd uh, driven it into that fairway bunker. So already problems for Smith to 18 and Ram for a closing birdie. I think the way he's battled today, if he comes off, knocks this one in and comes off even, he'll be delighted. It's been yeah, a couple of days like that for him. But you can never rule John Rahm out. No, and if you think about it, I mean, right now Fleetwood is at five under par on the second fairway. Harmon, if you're one of these guys, you, you just have to take him out of the equation and figure, okay, let, let's catch Fleetwood and we'll worry about Harmon later. Oh, hold on a minute. Very hold lucky. on a minute. Out of bounds down the right. That's out of bounds. Yeah, the white, there, there's, a, there's like a walkway on the top of that little mound as Spieth goes for par at four. And it's about two feet wide where it's kind of like the first cut of rough. That ball looks like it came to rest on that. So there's a little bit of area up there where that, it's gonna be close. I don't think Patton's ball is definitely out of bounds. We'll keep our fingers crossed. I think he's going to reload. He is. Oh, my God. oh, he's Groundhog Day. I think that one is out of bounds. Yes. But now he's going to reload again. Now he's hitting five. Now he's in danger of missing the cut. Oh, dear. That is very unpleasant, potentially. So, in the meantime, McElroy for a closing birdie. Wow, that is some up and down, that is, from there. And I think that is, that is a nice feeling, you know, coming off a good old scrap for two days and birdie in the last, finishing under par, and he'll be ready, he'll be ready to go this weekend. What do you think? Out of ten. Five out of ten times you're going to get that up and down? He just did it in one? Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good, a good shout. So he's under par. He's four behind Tommy Fleetwood, albeit nine back of Harmon at the top. And John Rahm has this for a round in the 60s. And this will be a good result, as Beef said. He's going to shoot in the 60s gotten it back to one under par and a player of his ability he has a 65 in him although it's going to be a tough weekend the forecast is not good wow and, and you know that totally changes kind of the mindset you have going into the weekend you've thrown one away you've missed a short putt done for the day. Why is it that sometimes one shot seems like five? It is. You just get moments on the golf course where that tension just ramps up ten times more and one putt becomes so much more significant than, than others for some reason. Like you can't really explain it. Mac 
McElroy's putt from a different angle. Truly amazing to get that ball up and down, to, to chip it this close. Yeah, a little fist bump says it all. Played that hole twice, fist pump twice. A great par last night, and that is an even better four today. Well, here goes Tyrrell Hatton again, playing his second provisional ball. With driver this time. Oh, this is miles left now. That's a pretty good size par three in between his first two and his third. Let's just hope the first one is somehow inbounds. It's, it's close. The, the second tee shot, his third shot, was not even close. Cam Smith, remember, he is here in three, so he's got this for par. Yeah, good shot there. As like I said, it's not the ideal start you want, but if you can get off with bogey and, and move on, it's not the end of the world. Up to the second, Tommy Fleetwood. Downwind, front right hole location with a bunker guarding it. It's a tough one. Landed it in the perfect spot. and actually landed pretty soft. Unlucky to not get up hole high. Great shot from Fleetwood. So a pause for breath, there it is, Harmon still ahead by five. Fleetwood has a chance there at the second to get to six under bar. Antoine Orozner is among the uh, later starters this afternoon. The Frenchman goes out at five past four. And wonderful stuff, Michael Stewart, the Scot, the qualifier, has had a lovely day out there. And the Royal Liverpool member, Matthew Jordan, in amongst the two unders. Long part here on number one. Coming up for Chauffele. Just trying to get this nice and tight. Yeah, good solid putt there. This is one long green, 40 yards long. Scheffler at the second. And yeah, not a great angle here, a little bit further right than what Tommy was. Downwind left to right. Just have to give that front right bunker some respect and go a little left, as yep, both well Scheffler and Fleetwood did. Anytime someone's hitting it hole high, especially in these type of conditions, bouncy, windy, he's in control of his game. Great shot. To the US Open champion, Wyndham Clark, to get to four under at the first. Again, he's not going to be disappointed with that. Tapping for four and difficult first. For me, just kind of snuck up the, the leaderboard yesterday. He didn't do anything magical, but just did his thing. And all of a sudden, three under, and he's in a great position. I had won twice in the last couple of months. And, you know, he's got tremendous power off the tee. And that's going to help on a golf course like this. As we go to day at the fifth tee. Going with less than driver on the par five. When helping from the right. That is the way the uh, hole shapes. Yeah, absolutely perfect there. And back to the first, the bogey putt for Cam Smith. Just such a good putter, isn't it? Just watch that face, it's just so stable. Well, Scotty Scheffler has got a chance here at the second, Jamie. Much on it? Yeah, a little bit up from the right, Tom. Um, he was fuming on that second shot. Can't believe he dropped it on the first good chance here, though. He'll just drift left of the hole.
Yet again, he grazes the side of the hole. Spieth at five. Yeah, again with three wood here. Just trying to work this right to left and use the wind. Get the ball running. Yeah, you can see a perfect flight there. That's really nice. Kind of right center of the fairway. Just opens up the second shot a little bit more than that shot off the left side at the fifth. No birdie for Scheffler. What about Tommy Fleetwood at the second? Similar part here for Fleetwood. Maybe not quite as much break, but he's had a good read from Scotty. So great chance for Fleetwood here. To 18, and I'm afraid to tell you this is the seventh shot for Tyrrell Hatton. We were saying Rory's was difficult. I mean, this isn't thick or rough. And a little bit different mindset as well. 100%. I mean, that's a good shot there, but it's one of them just want to knock that putt in and get off the golf course now. Well, we had a few eights there yesterday, didn't we? We had a Nine, I think, at a ten as well. Here's Bob McIntyre getting underway. He's trying to squeeze cut one into that back left hole location. See a lot of balls over there today, and many of them end up on a down slope. Looked pretty good early stages yesterday. I wonder whether the the efforts of last week may be just beginning to catch up with him. That wonderful Sunday finish. Sharma is ticking along nicely here. Birdie putt on 15. Yeah, dead centre great. He's been playing very steady golf today. Look at that, just the one drop shot over at eight. Won a couple of times early in his uh, career on the DP World Tour. Good tee shot for Matthew Jordan. Now for Birdie to get to three under par. Yes. What a story. Fantastic smile. Keep it up. Well done. Fleet was just clearing up here for par. I think what you said about Finno saying to him to be more selfish is, is so good from a caddy. It's not just about giving numbers and distances and stuff. To have that by the side of you in the biggest tournament in your home area and all the pressure and all the people, you can see it here, is so key. And he has to be selfish. If he sign, if he sign autographs and pictures for an hour, someone want him to do an hour, one minute, hour and ten. Wyndham Clark back on the tee here at the second. And going with driver, he's got the length to take those two bunkers on the right out of play. This is going way right. Right, right. For the really long hitters, driver off two is not a terrible play. Now, is that down in uh, Christo Lamprecht country down there? I think it probably is. This is for a triple bogey eight for Tyrrell Hatton at the last. That is why golf is so brutal as well. You, you, play, you play well and you claw your way around and just a couple bad shots on the last hole uh, and that happens. That's why golf is so brutal. 35 holes, two under par and then a quadruple bogey nine. Now all of a sudden he's just inside the cut. He's going to make the cut. The cut's going to likely be three, possibly four. I don't think you want to be on four waiting around. But he's really in one hole taking himself out of the conversation for the weekend. That's going to be a tough one to take, isn't it? it really is. He looks somewhat shell-shocked, doesn't he? He's normally got something to say about things, but it is a very quiet Tyrrell Hatton there, greenside at the 18th to Fleetwood at the third. Yeah, just hitting iron into this corner here. Should be pretty straightforward hitting it up into this corner and um, 
once you get it there, the green really opens out. Any surprise that no one seems to be taking the corner on there? No, not really, because especially today, it's a bad angle in if you do hit it in the left rough, you know, through the fairway. If, you, if it's a good angle, as we watch Lowry play his third shot to the first, if it's a good angle, that means the pin's on the right side of the green. The out of bounds is, is just right of the green at three. Great shot from Lowry. So I don't really see it ever being a good play. It's safer off the tee to get it, you know, not out of bounds, but your troubles just start then. Yeah, 100%. I'd, when I had a walk, I'd, I'd never see driver off this hole. You know, the thing about golf is the only thing you're trying to do with this shot is make your next shot easier and driver off this tee doesn't make your next shot easier. It's Homer for birdie on 18. He's battled really well today. Can he finish with a birdie? Oh just slides by but again good couple of days and right in the mix yeah, certainly you'd have to think that home is a danger player on the weekend he won last year at wells fargo in really cold windy wet conditions and looked good doing it this is ricky fowler at the first third shot Decent effort, and he will have that for a uh, par. Needs a good round out there today, does Fowler. Here's Spieth into the par five. Yeah, back left pin location here again. It's hit the draw with the three wood off the tee, and it's pretty much a similar shot, trying to shape it right to left down the green. That's a superb shot there. That for an eagle three for the Royal Burtdale champion of 2017. I always love to see it when you hit three wood off the deck. Just that little divot, little bit of sand come off the turf. I love that. Barb up for McIntyre at the first. Yeah, lovely putt. Always good to knock one of them in on the first and and get going, especially a three over. You don't want to be going any further backwards early on. Yeah, nice settler for the Scot. Meanwhile, to Colin Morikawa, by material Hatton. And he closes out with a birdie. And the man who won at Royal St George's a couple of years back, safely through to the weekend. Oh, I beg your pardon. No, he's not. He's in danger of missing out at four over par. Fowler. Good work. We saw Jordan Spieth approach at the fifth. This is uh, Jason Day's second. 256 yards to go. Drop back to the second and Cam Smith out of position. Very nicely done. They've all been struggling here a little bit because Shane Lowry's got this for par to remain at one over.
They're wandering over to the second tee. We'll go up to eight, and Stuart Singh, the Turnbury champion. Fifty years of age and still got so much game, so much skill. Oh my goodness! I wish I'd left that comment till after he'd hit that shot. Absolutely stunning, wasn't it? Just to the third and Scheffler. See exactly where the flag is over on the left-hand side of the green. Those active feet of his he loses his balance occasionally, but it's after the strike, so it doesn't matter. Uh, he'd be a little disappointed with that. Funny, isn't it? If you saw him swing and didn't know, as we watched Tommy Fleetwood into number three, mm. you wouldn't necessarily think that Scotty Scheffler is arguably one of the best ball strikers on the planet. Also coming up a bit shy. No matter how well you're playing, when you're playing links golf, you're going to leave yourself a lot of long putts to be a winner. In the Open Championship, you have to be good at that. Sharma, 16th hole. Swing is looking pretty sound, isn't it? Looking beautiful, actually. Dead pin high. Shot. That's, that's the foundation of his game, isn't it? He's a good iron player, Shabanka Sharma. He's got another chance there. Meanwhile, to Matthew Jordan at the 14th. Sounded good. Another change up in the commentary box you've heard from Tony Johnston and uh, Nicholas Colsarts has rejoined us. As we take a momentary pause for breath, Harman still leading by five. Good start from Tommy Fleetwood. Shabanka Sharma's moving through that field. One under par today. Minwoo Lee with a terrific round of 68. He is an excellent young player, isn't he? So exciting. He's got everything. Grio took a, a step backwards today, the Argentine. And there's Rory McElroy in the one unders. Just 22 players under par at the moment out there on the links of Royal Liverpool. I wonder how many that'll be come the end of today's play. You would expect, Nico, wouldn't you, for scoring to get a little trickier out there this afternoon if we still get the breeze pumping and things dry out and firm up? Yeah, I'm not sure. You know, you still have two good par fives to finish with, so these guys that are out on the course around the even par mark can probably still make some ground, but as we've seen, the course has proven to be quite challenging. Xander Schofele swishing away on the second green. Yeah, three really good shots in. And three completely different angles up and over the slope, right to left. And the green is, greens are firming up a little bit. It's playing a lot shorter out here this afternoon. That comes up a bit short for Schofler. Look at the, the fans making their way across the spectator walkway. There are quite a few out there by the looks of it, Jamie, following this match. I wonder why, following the local boy, Tommy Fleetwood, who sits in second place at the moment at five under. What a thrill it must be for these local boys to play in front of their own crowd. Three pars to start the day for Tommy Fleetwood, a birdie putt for Wyndham Clark, meanwhile. Because he's a little calmer on the course these days. Here's Scheffler at the third. bit under the line for Scotty Scheffler, he looks a bit confused of what that ball's done on the third green. 
Well, we saw the approach shot of uh, Cam Smith. He's left himself with a reasonable chance here. Yeah, easy got it so close, actually, Dom, really. The line was nice and clean. The angle was awful. And she get a load of spin on the ball. This is actually a good chance back into the breeze. Just a hair in this. Interesting day for these three, three proper players. Not many crowds out here. They're obviously forward with Tommy. So a chance, I think, this afternoon to have a good score. We saw some right to left in it. There was very little. Some <laughs> outrageously subtle breaks on these greens. Now, Manny Fitzpatrick just stayed short of that bunker on five. Third shot. Nice clipping off the golf ball, off the firm grass. You could hear that, it was great. What a difference if that ball had rolled into the bunker. Completely different prospect. He's taken advantage. Hopefully, he'll hold the putt. In the meantime, to Adam Scott, who's got this chance at the third. He'll stay one over. Meanwhile, Sharma for another birdie. This to get to five under alongside Fleetwood. It wouldn't have been shots a lot closer than that on 16 today. One of the tough holes coming in. Jason Day at the fifth. Chipping always being one of his outrageously great strengths. Man, haven't been too many better than him in the last 15 years. Oh, no, another one of those for Scotty Scheffler. No problems this time. Jordan Spieth for birdie, for eagle, excuse me, on five. I will swing a bit of his right. Ooh. Very close. Very, yes. very close. There's none better from that range, is there? Okay. I mean, a couple of years ago, I remember his average from 25 to 30 feet was one in four. Well, back a hole to the par four, fourth hole. Yeah, and he's just laying up Fleetwood. He did it on two. Now he's doing it on four. Nine down the last. He's not been tempted so far. It's only 3.45 to front. Straight down the wind. I thought someone might be tempted here, but not for Tommy. Some have been tempted, like Jamie just pointed out. But if it doesn't go according to plan, it becomes a very difficult hole. It is tempting, but... A nice wedge in there is also a good option. Jordan Smith has tapped in. He's moved to four under at the fifth. We'll head back to the first and Siwoo Kim. This is for par. Beautifully done. Back over to four. Yeah, just a layup as well for Scott. Can't be more than a six iron, five iron max. <laughs> One of the few players who can carry Brown off and still look cool. But if you're going to hit a five or six iron off that tee, you've got to be hitting the fairway. Because then you ask yourself, why didn't I just have a blast at it? Foul on the second. Oh. Loft the club into the second yeah, today, yeah, yeah. downwind. And that is perfectly executed by Ricky Fowler using the kink at the front of the green. Had to heal for him, yes, feel for him yesterday. He made an eight at the last to slip back. Scheffler. Cole Sars will be having a crack at this green, I have no doubt. None whatsoever. I am for Scheffler. Come on, Nico, of course you would. You give me a bucket of golf balls, I would, yes. One, I'm not so sure. All right, Scotty. First cut for Shuffler. Yeah. 
see all the players trying to keep it down the left wing there to give themselves an angle into the, the right hand flag. Round two of the 151st open, and it is Brian Harmon who leads. Well, they may as well enjoy the conditions out there this afternoon. And we are told by the forecasters it could get a little grim this weekend. We'll see. Speak on six to par three, short right pin. Win off the right. Not easy to get to. Incredible goal shot by Jordan Speed. Haven't seen many as good as this today. It just seems to free him up a little bit. He's, he relishes the channel, the challenge, I should say, of the links. Does Jordan Speed Stewart sink to get to five under? Difficult to feel sorry for someone who wins the Open, isn't it? But you kind of did for him because everyone wanted Tom Watson uh, to secure that victory at Turnbury. In the end, it was a, a fairly convincing one for Sink in the playoff, or the four-hole playoff, I should say. Well to be laying down a little bit at the moment judging by that it's getting a little bit stronger uh, that's what can happen by the seaside isn't it and very often that wind can quarter and even change directions completely from morning to afternoon and it may well depend on which part of the course you're on as well how breezy it is well there's an idea you get the, the general picture of where it's coming from off the DS jury yeah, I wouldn't pay attention too much to these ones that are sitting on the left of the screen because all these holes, you know, from 16 and left of that are all hidden a little bit by houses. Ah, the wing foilers. You're an adventurous man, Dom. I bet you've tried that. No, I no, I wouldn't dare. No, I've got some friends who are into it. They all seem to love it. Looks like some kind of magic, doesn't it? A great story, this, isn't it? Matthew Jordan at the 14th for a birdie. Oh, you, you so want one of those to go in just so that you can hear the roof come off the house. Been a member here since he was seven years of age. How much pressure has been on him this week and how well he's coped with it? Yeah, especially that opening tee shot. What a what a privilege, but what a responsibility. You see the wind coming off the right. And helping here at number four. Pretty equidistant for both these players. I think it's Scheffler just to go first, or is it Tommy? Looks like Tommy's having a crack. It's only a wedge 150 straight down the wind, but it's a tough pin to get to on that right hand side. It's got to be middle of the green. Tommy's guy's head screwed on this week. He's he's not being tempted. He's playing sensible stuff. He's just going to wait for the right number. Not sure this is it. Good sensible shot by Tommy Fleetwood, not taking any risks. Playing the middle of the green, give himself a chance. Playing the long game, Nico, isn't he? Great life for Scheffler, really is. Slightly better angle. You can have to chop this up if he wants to get it close to 150. Just a wedge. Looks coming from the moon from Scheffler. Had to coming from the first cut. That's the, the other way to try to stop a ball. Played a height. Let me ask you, does what Brian Harmon did out there this morning, the fact he's got to 10 under par, change anything for these guys out there this afternoon? I think it just shows everyone that it can be done. Like it requires an extremely good round, but 
it can be done. I didn't particularly think there was a six under in today with the wind and the cold this morning, but you know, there's always somebody. So if you're playing behind, why wouldn't it be me? Last to go here at four, Adam Scott. Don't think he's got any chance of stopping this. Scott, just be playing middle. Yeah, he doesn't want to flirt with that bunker short right, does he? Got to keep it centre to left half, and that's well executed. No option there, unless you're completely crazy. Jason Day from the grease side bunker at six. Yeah, he had no chance to go straight at the hall, but that's extremely well played. Mm. Got it out safely, has a chance for par, well done. That would have been unplayable yesterday, Nicka, before they brushed sand up the face of these bunkers. Ricky Fowler. Chance to get back to even par. And does, lovely putt. It's a par birdie start for Fowler. Back in the winner's circle, a couple of weeks back at the Rocket Mortgage Classic. Now, where has Wyndham Clark got himself? Uh, he's hit it through the gallery on three to try to open up the green. Done the same thing yesterday. Got a pin eye, just a bit left, just below the green surface there. All the way back to last year's runner-up at the first, Cameron Young. Still waiting for his first win, Cam Young. Jordan Spieth again, this is Spieth's range. Hello. Nobody, nobody holds more 20 to 30 footers than this young man. I mean, it's just frightening how good he is. And, and very odd that he's so poor from three feet and in. So he lines alongside Fleetwood at five under par to 17 and Sharma. Don't want this to move too far to the left. And that's a couple of steps too far and takes the massive bounce off the back left there. Wonder where that has finished. So day out of the bunker at six tiers. This one is for par to remain at two under. So first bogey today for Day. Meanwhile to four and a birdie putt for Adam Scott, Jamie. Yeah, across the slope, bit of right to left in it for Scott. Quite exposed this green. Left it short in line for Adam Scott. You can always tell by the player's reaction. Like they had it, they just didn't commit to the pace enough. Show play. This is the smart play. It's just about the only play, really, from where he is. Got to putt this, but it's up that tier. It's slow and oh, that had so much steam on it. Fortunate to hit the flag. But it was the percentage play. Let's see who came on the second. Just a flick onto the screen. Oh. Yeah, that's the one spot you don't want to go on to. Short point. To a bunker, most likely. Back over to four, Jamie. Yeah, you just can't be tempted with these wedge shots. He's in a good spot here, Fleetwood, putting across the green again. A bit of right to left at the end, and the breeze is that way. Well, he held a couple from that range out there yesterday, didn't he, Tommy Fleetwood? Another par goes on the card, though. Four in a row to uh, start the round. Yeah. 
Well, he shoots another 14 pass. He's in a good spot, isn't he, really? I think that's his attitude. Next time we can have a crack at the fifth. There's a bit of a hold up there. They're just waiting for him to tee off it. Not sure Sheffler's going to go or not. I think he's going to wait. Deciding to wait. Let's go and watch Jordan Spieth. Nail a drive down seven, hopefully. It is far enough, Jordan, to carry the gorse bush, but it is in long grass, I'm afraid. Tough hole, the seventh here, over to 17. Sharma over the back. Oh, dear, oh, dear. In the sand, but that sand, it's a, it's a waste area. It doesn't get raked. You can get all sorts of lies down there that was a bit ugly. Cameron Smith, birdie on three, long range. That's somebody else that's quite good with the putter, Tony. It's frightening, isn't it? We walked around on Wednesday and watched them. I mean, you know, they, they throw this disc down on the putting greens that they put to from long range, and I mean, it's always in a one-foot circle. It's got wonderful touch. Scheffler ready to go now with this birdie putt at four. Yeah, same line as Fleetwood. A little bit slow, isn't it? Up that slope to start with. Just took a little bobble, didn't it, halfway through its journey. Mm. Yeah, he didn't really get a great roll on that, did he? Really, even off the putter, it started bouncing a little bit. Lost the pace. Now, Wyndham Clark, left of three. We've seen Xander Schofield put from the same spot pretty much. It goes up and then gathers a bit of speed. Never easy putting up a slope and then going down the other way behind the hole. Shibanka Sharma. Oh, third shot. And this is not a pushover. It's, it's come out a bit hot, carried it a bit far and... Well, this has just got five written all over it, hasn't it? That is a real pity. Schoffle to uh, tidy up for his far. Remember, he ricocheted off the pin. It was moving, as Tony said. And he makes it. He's pretty good from that range, isn't it? I think he's about the best on tour. Who came third shot on the second hole? Oh, he had a flick to the green. Recovers really well after that poor wet shot. Clark for the par at three. <laughs> Nicely done. Another player who says he really enjoys the challenge of uh, Lynx golf. He enjoys the creativity, the imagination that comes with it. So different to what is normally played on a week-to-week -week basis over on the PGA Tour. Absolutely beautiful views out over the DS Street. Difficult to believe it. It's not going to stay like this. Now we're all holding thumbs for Shibanka Sharma. He's a delightful human being. Oh, pity. And the 17th takes another prisoner. Double bogey five after so much good work. Mm. Well, he'll have a chance at the last. There are only three holds, by the way, that are playing under par out there today. They are the par fives, five, 15 and 18. 
Harmon still five clear of uh, Tommy Fleetwood and Jordan Spieth, who has made three birdies already today. Stuart Sink moving forward as well. Rosner is one of the later starters. McElroy and Ketka there in the one unders. Guido Migliazzi, remember, was uh, bogey-free, but a couple of drop shots over the last half or hour or so. Bogey's at 15 and 16 for the Italian, so he's back at level par. Fowler into this awkward front left flag at three. Worst places to be. Dangerous pin. And interestingly, at the moment, the cut line having moved to three over par has gone back to plus two. You got it, 56 with a little jump. I mean, I think it's like a like a 40, 40 up in the air shot here. You're I trying to just short. Fine, right? Yeah, exactly. Short's fine, right's yeah. fine. I mean, if it jumps, it's good, and if it doesn't, it's just yeah. short. Short, right, long, it's all fine. Off the left, a little bit yeah. help. Just don't let it turn it over in the heart. Mm -hmm. We're being told that Jordan did hit a provisional off the tee. You can see why the length of this rough. And they've decided the option that should be best if it comes out dead or hot. It's not a bad leave from where he was. Looking down over Matthew Jordan at the par 5 15th. Beautifully played. Much appreciated by his uh, adoring local fans. And that's his girlfriend, Kate, who works for us, works for us in the TV crew most of the year. She was out there yesterday morning when he hit the first tee shot. What an experience. Playing with Jordan Spieth. This is Jason Day, 174 to go into seven. Down off the left for Jason. Aim at the TV tower and let the wind do it for you. Well played, well read. Well executed for Jason Day. Yeah, drop shot at six. Every chance of bouncing back there. Meanwhile, to three. Uh, well, an outside chance for Shane Lowry. The importance of lag padding on links, Tony. Huge, isn't it? Okay, because you know on links courses in the wind you are going to have innumerable long putts during the week no matter how well you're playing aren't you and i remember nick price talking to him about uh you know i thought he would win at st andrews the way he plays and he said the biggest problem was even when he played well when the wind blew he was always 60 feet away and he said he just he wasn't a good enough long putter to win around there and you know that that made me think and i thought you're right you've got to be very good from long range Nick, I like that. It was pretty concise instructions. We're not flirting with this. I just want you to know, boss. <laughs> Flirt is good at times, Tony. You know it. But not when you play in the open. <laughs> it's a tight pin, absolutely. I think pin high is the goal, isn't it? 15 feet. 
Every pin out here seems to be tucked behind the bunkers. Just trying to get that first bounce, pitching towards the flag, otherwise it will kick through. Great control of the spin there, knowing what to do with it from Xander. Brooks Kepka coming out of the rough at the fifth. A long iron from the rough. Trying to find this fifth fairway, fifth green, par five and two. Leaves it in the long grass. It's not bad there, actually. Opportunity to watch Spieth's exquisite chipping. It's glorious, isn't it? And such a variety of shots he plays. Man, you could just hear from the strike there that it was absolute perfection. Meanwhile, back on the tee. Fleetwood. Just in the first cut, but we'll have a go at this bar five. Come on, Adam. Matthew Jordan. After that brilliant chip. Nicely done. Once again, back to the uh, fifth tee. Scheffler, teeing off on the first bar five. Fifth hole. Sometimes I wonder how he does it. You know, a couple of times last week, Nico, that right knee slid in so much, it actually hit the left knee and knocked him off his feet. I mean, the foot movement, you know, it's not something you recommend to a youngster, but you know, whatever works for you, and man, does it work for him. Not pretty, but effective. The seven, we saw the approach shot of Jason Day. Pretty good look at birdie. Remember, he's just dropped a shot at six. Yes. That's about as close as you want to get to that flag. Ricky Fowler. Birdie on three. Hit that second shot straight down in line. Ball moved a bit. Nice lie for Kepka. Got a bit of green to work with. <laughs> Wasn't that a fine shot? He's a sleeper so far this week, isn't he? Kepka just lurking, pars all the way today. But how close was this? Let's jump up to the 10th uh, where Stuart Sink's got another chance. This is to climb alongside Spieth and Fleetwood at five under and a share of second place. I think that has to go a bit. 
Very strange from Stuart Sink. Very un Stuart Sink like. Oh, I can't get my head around that one. Can't quit to the camion. Out of the rough. That is a great shot. Because <laughs> the first eight holes on this course, it's very hard to run the ball into the green off, out of the rough. To the eighth tee. And Spieth. Treat today with Jordan Smith. Missed the cut last week up in uh, Scotland, so a little extra time to work on his game here ahead of the Open. Cam Smith, remember, dropped a shot at the opening hole. Quarter of a roll. Lovely putt. What on earth did you do with that first putt, Mr. Sink? Yeah. Okay, all is forgiven. You must have just seen so much more pace down there. Stuart Sink doesn't leave putts that far short. Hideki Matsuyama, former Masters champ. That's on the fifth hole. First birdie today for Hideki Matsuyama, so he moves to two under par. What a star he must be in his country. I won't even start thinking about it. I think he's on a sort of deity level, isn't he? Probably over there. Head of state. <laughs> for the birdie for oh, Brooks Kepka deserves this with that terrific pitch shot well done mm, just starting to do his thing he loves it when it's tough and it is tough here this week was on the show flight Is it? Oh, yes, it is. Oh. <laughs> Identical to Cam Smith's putt. Gives you an idea of the shape of this par five fifth hole and where the wind is coming from. Yeah, Adam Scott, he's hit it into the open arms. Some thirsty people over there enjoying the delights of the hospitality this great championship offers. However, he's got a long way in. He's all right, though. He's on the trodden down area. Adam Scott from 270. Good angle to this pin on the left as well, actually. Can get a contact. How do you fancy hitting a shot with a wood through that avenue of people? I'd stand back a little bit. That might be the biggest cheer of the week so far. That is just my idea of the Open, just playing close to the people and the proximity of the, of the UK fans is always special. Tommy Fleetwood's uh, had a result here. Just sneak past the bunker. He's on a downslope. He's got a mini driver in the bag, and that's what he hit off this tee. Be a three iron this off the downslope. Should go nice and low. Heading left, though. He's left that a little bit shorter than Brooks Kupka a couple of minutes ago. 
If you catch a light, not too bad. Well, Scotty Scheffler has hit the longest drive today down this fifth hole. Yeah, he sort of cut the corner, Dominic. Miles down here, 227. And you can stare it right down from here, really. If you look at the pictures in the middle of the green, it all feeds in to the left-hand side where the pin is. Be four iron for Scheffler. Went straight across. No, 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 hit it. Hit it. Hit it. What's got it? Finds the green, but just a little too much cut on this ball to get it up all high for the world number one. He's been by far the steadier of this group. Hitting almost 80% of fairways. Now that's a lot in windy conditions. On a length course. Terrific. Clark. Beautifully played second and cleverly played. And having seen his two playing partners come up short, he just gave it that extra little bit, didn't he? Sharma at the 18th. Third shot. Oh, it's a beauty. It's a beauty. Wouldn't it be lovely to see him finish off with a birdie after that? Horrible double bogey at 17. Now Bobby Mack on four. It's one over today. Full weight shot, trying to put as much spin as possible on this. One of the best one we've seen. Aggressive player, McIntyre. Knows no other way, does he, McIntyre? And I think that's when he's at his best as well, when he's in aggressive mode. Cam Young to get to a uh, level par, nicely done. Par par birdie start for last year's runner-up. If I could just finish one better, one better. It's not asking a lot. Shuffle off the fifth tee. He's going with three wood. Don't want this to move too much to the left. All good. He's found the fairway. Underlies Tommy got you, Jamie. Oh, not great, to be honest with you, Tony. Just going to release on him. Just bumped into one of my all-time football heroes, Liam Brady. Good mate of mine. He's watching this. All they're all out here watching this. Brilliant championship. So he's sitting in it. He's sitting in it, Fleetwood. Oh, yeah. It's going to release on him. But he has got quite a lot of green to work with here, Fleetwood. Just getting the strike on it. First mistake he's made with it. That wasn't quiet, difficult please. for sure. That second shot, so. He's still got a chance to make his four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The strike on the spin, and. Yep. Pretty good. That was definitely not straightforward out of that line. Acceleration. Go back 528 yards to Wyndham Clark. Looks like a good line. Oh, yes. Seven yards today, the sick is playing. Tricky 
flag for some. Not so much for Kepka. Beautiful shot. To Jordan Spieth into the eighth. My bad. Go hard. Go hard. Gosh darn it, Jordan. Well, a bit frustrated with that one, but it's been an excellent day so far for Jordan Spieth. Par the opening hole. And then at the second. Yeah, no mistake there. Two pars would follow, and then at the first to the par fives, the only par five on the front side for Eagle. And Spieth has looked very tidy. He's been stingy around the greens. Super tee shot, wasn't it? It's the par three sixth, and he got his just reward there. Back to back birdies, three under for the first six, and Spieth at five under par. This was an amazing chip shot, just clipped it. Spun it left to right. Made it look easy, it wasn't an easy position. Fluffy little lie here. Not an easy one. You have to be careful you don't slide the club underneath it and hit it a couple of moves too high in the club face. Oh, that just was a perfect shot. They did it right where he needed to. Once again, a brilliant pitch shot. Scheffler from Eagle from Eagle Territory. Oh, hang on. That about three feet. That distance that giving him a little bit of trouble, but that'll be for Birdie. Sharma to finish with a birdie to get it to three under par. Does so. Two really nice days for the Indian. Played well the last couple of years in some big events and doing so here this week. Oh. A little bit of change in the commentary box. I'm Jay Townsend, joined in the box by Thomas Bjorn and Beef Johnson. And uh, Fleetwood's looking pretty good, Thomas. Yeah, he's looking nicely. He's just getting out there and continuing to hit good shots and just trying to will these putts in so he can get these crowds going. And from one local hero to another, Matt Jordan, is going along nicely. A three under par. And the final game has reached the first hole. It'll be Yannick Paul. This is game number 52. On the team from Germany, Yannick Paul. And he has certainly been in the conversation about being at the Ryder Cup this fall, but a very disappointing opening round. Six over par 77. He'll need a lot better today to be around for the weekend. I think that has just caught the trap there down the right. Oh. 
on the team from Finland, Sami Valimäki. Valimäki, a winner in the DP World Tour. Round of 76 yesterday. So I need a couple under to be around for sure. You never know what the weather might do, but four over an outside chance. Going with less than driver. Yeah, I like this play. I do. It, it just takes the bunkers out of play. I know it's a longer one in there. On the tee from England. Laurie Cantor. That's the last call of the day for our starter, David Lancaster. It's been a very long day. He's going to be ready for a little afternoon tea, and Cantor is ready to go to his first tee shot in anger on this second round of the 151st Open Championship. Beauty. Straight down the middle. From Laurie Cantor. Yeah, that's the tea time, isn't it, Beef? What, quarter past four in the afternoon? I had this tea time in my first open in 2011, and obviously so nervous and excited, I was exhausted by four o'clock come round. Sixth hole, Scherfler, 187, much friendlier pin today, front right. You can get to it, just chop it up into this right to left wind. Who's going to carry the ball? Cut, cut. There we go. Just a little bit of a turn there from Scheffler. Just gets it riding on the wind, a little bit long, but that's OK. Tough hole, the six here, Royal Liverpool. were cut in the first round and the second round here at the sixth. 204 yards in the first round was cut in the back of the green and today 187 yards where it's tucked over there in the front right portion of the green. Yeah, it's a difficult hole for Fleetwood as well. Generally hits a little draw, can hit the straight one, the whole one, but that right hand bunker just short of this green is not a friendly place to be. Oh, that's where he's hit it. Just stalling a little bit. Yeah, that was heading nowhere by that bunker. It's going to be a tough one coming up. It's Chauflet, second to five after a good tee shot. He's just going to be trying to draw this one in again. He's having a good look at it. Yeah, it's a good shot there. You're only trying to just pitch this up up the green a little bit and try and get it to chase up towards that pin. Still a good shot, though. Jordan Spieth for par on the eighth. Going a little tap in there. Going along really well today, Spieth. It just is a little bit better open championship with him on the board, I think. And Adam Scott, he hates that as well. I don't think he's quite got it heading left. Even at this level, Thomas, when you're the guy you're playing with hits it over to the right short size himself before you, does that kind of bring in left? Well, a little bit. I, I think you read into other people's shots and then he obviously spun one up in the wind there Fleetwood and and just kind of makes you think oh might I might have to turn it a little bit not to get that spinner he overdid it there Adam Scott but you should be experienced enough enough not to look at other players too much I'll tell you one I'll tell you one thing Jay I just came back from the golf course and being out there just drove in a buggy through the crowds around Fleetwood. 
the atmosphere out there is electric. It really is. I mean, I, I don't think I've ever seen it this great at an Open Championship. And we just saw a great putt from a Royal Liverpool member there to, with the lap of honor, Matthew Jordan. McIntyre. Rosner here putting from a very usual place. We've seen a lot of players today just off the green on the left. It's one that can just get away from you a little bit. And it's also one that can go straight in the hole. <laughs> it's a great start, great putt from there. Yeah, all you're thinking about here is pace, pace, pace. And then when it gets on the green, you're like, oh, hello, hello, there you go. Here's Jordan Spieth at nine. Here, tricky, tricky green. I find this when I was walking around having a look. There's a sort of a narrow corridor. You've got to hit this in. Just there, that's a great shot there. Have a shot there at the ninth by Spieth. He's five back, tied with Fleetwood and Rosner after that brilliant shot hold at the first from left of the green from the Frenchman. Launching the 151st Open Championship at Royal Liverpool on a wonderful day. And Wyndham Clark, now you can see him. Even par on the day, comfortably under par, but in a little bit of trouble here at the fifth in the bunker. Yeah, but this one is, it's not that difficult to get out. It's more the slope on the green. So just, just before the flag, it goes up, up a tier. Can you get it all the way up there? No, just slams in the slope and stops. Due to the nature of the face of these bunkers, it takes away kind of what we talk about, the, the chunk and run, the, the low runner. You can't do that. Up the face here for Fleetwood, but you know what? He's on a very slight upslope, which is going to help him just pop it out. I think he can get it out. Brilliant. Well, Arne decided overnight to change the bunkers a little bit they they're not as 90 degrees as they were yesterday and I think from they, they listened to the players the players weren't happy and I think they just made it slightly easier which you know to see the ball is now sitting on an upslope instead of 90 degrees into the face it helps the players get it out I guess that's it's nice when everybody comes together for the for purpose it's not an easy shot it's just made a little bit easier to get it out of the bunker, not necessarily close to the hole. Correct. Yeah, it's slightly more fair. I think when when sometimes when you hit a good shot and it just rolls off side of the green into a bunker and now you're trying to you can't even play it out sideways. It can you want it to be difficult, but you don't want it to be completely unplayable. Uh, Scheffler eyeing things up from uh, 48 feet away. Yeah, listen, just been listening to you. I agree with you. I want to see him play shots like that. I mean, that was a very difficult shot flu would have, but he had a chance and he took it. That's what we want to see. This is just a difficult green, difficult hole. As simple as that. Scheffler, this is left to right all the way. For him for the two. I mean, line and pace, just both off there from Scheffler. I wonder if that went off a little bit in his hand because, it, you know, when they are that fast and past the hole and, and left, it just there's a tendency of the right hand just overtaking a bit. Here we've got Matthew Jordan, home favourite. Tommy Fleetwood sits. That is not pretty from there. 
And it's been easy to do this. Where that pin location is, you want to kind of draw it back into that pin on the wind. And if you start it too straight, it rides the wind and you can end up there. Having a look at Cam Young on the fourth ult for birdie. Really came on everyone's worldwide radar last year at the Open Championship when he played so well in his runner up here at St. Andrews in the Open. Fitzpatrick on nine. Again, this whole straight downwind. Sit down. Sit down. Sit and this Sit is down. the problem Stop. when I said a Stop. tight, Stop. narrow entry into this green. If it's too far left and it doesn't hold, it might roll off the left edge of the green. No, that's a great shot. Yeah, it's just one of those complete flushes, aren't you, where you go, oh, I've overdone this. I've hit it too good. It ended up in a good place. A little bit of surveying going on down there. Adam Scott has made his bogey. Both Fleetwood and Scheffler work to go to save par. When you've got such a big following, it's so loud. And then all of a sudden, when when you're on the green, you get situations like being in, in crowds, and it just goes like dead quiet as well. It really builds the atmosphere. A lot of shouts out there for Tommy just to keep going. It's no disaster making a bogey. You're going to make bogeys on a day like this. You just need to answer back with birdies quick. Fitzpatrick for birdie after that good tee shot on nine. Yes. That's some two, that is. I don't think there's going to be many there today. And Fitzpatrick gets it in the red numbers. Second birdie today out in two under par 33. Scheffler. That's nice. That was a good stroke. And Thomas coming into the week, he on PJ2 is outside of the top 100 in putting. If he starts holding like that with his ball striking, he is a force to be reckoned with. Hasn't fished outside the top 12 since last October. That's an amazing run of golf. Your bank manager will be happy. Is Jordan in a rough position there? And 17. And that's a good shot from there. You'll take that all day long from where he was. Well, it's a beautiful shot in here from Jordan Spieth. And this is to go forward, but just slides by. He keep hitting goal shots like he's doing right now. He will definitely be in there come Sunday. Clark for his birdie for on five. He's straight up this slope here. Just a bit too heavy on pace there. Scheffler ready to go at seven. It's always a difficult tee shot. Yeah, wind off the left here on this 484 yard par four. There's a bunker at 295 down the left. And there's another one just over the 300 yard mark on the right. Try and split those if you can. If you lay up, it's a long way in.
trying to aim at the left and cut it back there and it's squared the face and hit it straight, but it's not in that trap, so should have a shot into the green. So we go to Matt Jordan on 17. Unfortunately, he's had two goes at it down from over the green. So this is for bogey. Oh, dear. And that's a shame. It's going along, along so well. It's unfortunately a double bogey five for Matt Jordan. And drops back to one under and one over on the day. But he'll head to the par five 18 as Fleetwood drives at seven. Exactly what you're trying to do. Hoshino, 15, chipping here up the green. Tracking. <laughs> wow, did he need that? Yeah, and that takes him inside the cut mark. Not that with 16, 17, and 18, that's by any means sure that you're going to make the cut, but at least just within the mark. Second for Fowler on five. He's coming in from a good angle here. I don't think that's too bad there. We Pitching it straight up the green. Loads of green to work with. That's not a bad place to be. Kepka from the fringe at seven. Pretty good pop out oh, from a long way away. Shuffle on six. Front right pin position there. Just try and start it on the flag and just turn it off it. This is online. Is it getting there? Yeah, it is. What a goal shot that is. Absolutely magnificent from Sandra Shuffle. Nearly missing the Fleetwood bunker, Spieth. Tee shot at 10. Shiver me timbers! Clark on six. Again, it could suit him this. Just going to try and hold it up in this wind. They don't know me, son. Definitely a fluke. Yeah, he's just, just turned that over. How would you play this whole time? I would quite like to cut this back up in the wind and aim pretty straight at the flag. How would you play that? Aim at the middle of the green and hope. <laughs> Pure honesty comes out from Thomas Bjorn. <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously you want to try and hold it up. I, I always feel like I'm links, that the wind is your friend more than it's your enemy. And, and I like playing on the wind if, if possible. That's tough on that, with, to that pin position. But I think I'll just not really think about the flag and just try and put it in the center of the green. When you think of traditional links golf course, not that this one isn't, dates back to the 1800s, but you, you think of more round or ovalish shaped greens, you don't get that that often here at Royal Liverpool. They're, they're very different. Would you like? Yeah, one of the things that this golf course has, I think, is, is those long greens that are narrow and that roll up on both sides. Oh. Stage lead, great shot, nearly holes out. 
but that's that's the one thing that's a bit different from here to to on the other open venues it's a great set of greens these it really is a great set of greens Charles hasn't got it over that slope, but still he's going to have a good look at birdie there. Patrick Cantley, oh, he's on two over par. This is for birdie. Gets him away from the mark a little bit. What's the mark at the moment? What, three or four over par. And that's a nice birdie. Here's Clark's second shot after he just pulled his tee shot. Had some green to work with. He's going to have a, a good 12, 12 foot of a par there. Good look at the tee positions at the seventh for Scheffler and Fleetwood. Fleetwood in perfect position, and I think Scheffler will probably be lie dependent over there in the left rough. Yeah, Scheffler's fine. Slightly off the left, yeah. Fleetwood to go first. Yeah, we'll go about equidistant, really. Start the left edge of that, you'll be right. Yeah. 189 nice to one. Fleetwood, 66 to front. Straight down breeze. Uh, I've got little eight, but I think he might pummel a nine, you know. It's a big one to put it down there and let it release, but might just chip an eight. It is straight down the wind. It's quite fresh. Right. Yeah, he's just unsettled here. Perfect, this. It's a nice one, just left. Nice one, I would say. This is an eight, then. Pin's not moving. There's no breeze down by the green by the look of it, but there is where Tommy's playing. Well, you've got to love the work from the caddy. You really do. That's a good shot from Fleetwood. But you've got to love the work from Ian Finnis there, just giving him confidence. This is the right club. Even if it isn't, he's put him in the right frame of mind to hit the golf shop. And that's all you can do. Adam Scott's laid up just short of the green, did really well to get there. Just a that's yard closer good. for Scheffler. It's sort of sitting in a little bit of a valley. There's a little bit of a twig around it. But to be honest with you, he's got very lucky here. 188. This will jump a little bit. I hey, think he's got to pitch it just short. Directly behind. Just come towards. Come hang with me over here for a second. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. We love those marshals with the sticks, Thomas, don't we? <laughs> that were your favourite people in the <laughs> world, weren't they, Jamie? <laughs> oh, here comes Jamie Spence. Take that board down. Go, 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 go. Asking it to go, didn't quite get the jumper that he wanted, and it just lands into the upslope and comes up short. Pretty much exactly where we saw Kepka a few moments ago putting from the front fringe. We go to Cam Smith. Well, that's the difference. That's the difference a year makes. Last year, he was every one of those was threatening. This year, it's just not quite happening for the defending champion. Long birdie putt for Lowry here. Up on five, up the slope and across it. Lovely speed there. That's, that's a really good putt. big greens and they're slower than what all these players are accustomed to week in week out because of the conditions as Shoffley has this for birdie at six you have to have every aspect of your putting down because you have a lot of long lag putts and then then you're faced with a lot of short three four five footers for par time to shuffle it not taking advantage of one of the better iron shots on the six today Speed second shot into 10 here. Pretty much downwind, maybe a little bit off the right as well. Let's go, Jordan! Oh, come on, Jordan! Oh, that's in it. Oh, that's 
just pulled that down the left side slightly. Ricky Fowler. He had a scruffy day yesterday, Fowler, I thought, early on. Oh, that was a good looking pop. Just overpaced it a little bit. And he was one that 18 took its toll yesterday. Fowler fought back bravely and then uh, had that disastrous finish. Back to six and Wyndham Clark. Again, don't know if he's just misread that slightly. Same as Chauffeur as well, just missing it on the low side. Jordan on this tricky 18th tee shot here. <laughs> and oh this miles left. It's such a tricky tee shot to, to aim that far left and try and shape it back in. Back on the tent, far corner of the golf course. This is Jason Day. This is from perfect position. Dancing around the hole, and so it should be excellent shot from the former world number one. Stuart Sink hit a poor chip shot at 12, so this is for a bogey. Champion golfer of the year when he beat Tom Watson at Troon. At times he felt like he was a villain stopping Watson from winning his sixth. I'm sure he got over that thought very quickly. <laughs> McIntyre with another birdie here. And he's making back-to-back -back birdies and a good rallies. One of the guys who will not give up. And Scheffler, two parts may be great. He's right down Fleetwood's line here, so watch Tommy jump in here. Well, when you're going in to look at someone's putt when they're on a similar line, you th they could at least get it to the hole for you, Jamie. <laughs> well, Adam Scott was on the same line as well, and he did get it there, so he knows what it does. Antoine Rosner has just got his round going. Birdie on the first. This is for another one and two. Tracking. It was tracking. Good putt. Okay, for the birdie, Tommy, get back on track. He's had a couple of poor irons, but this was a much better one. Great chance. It's just a bit from the left. Seven for Fleetwood. He remains four under par, one over on the day. But it's Harmon who leads at 10 under. Lowest round of the championship so far from Brian Harmon. He was out this morning. He posted that 10 under par through 36 holes. Currently holds a five shot lead over the best field in golf. Scheffler here for his par on seven. And it looks like the, f the first putt's tricky, going sort of downhill and away from you, and, and downwind, it can be really difficult to judge the speed. See if he can knock this one in for par. Beautiful. 
Lovely putt that. There was a nice one on six for par, and then again here on seven. Struggling a little bit, Sheffler. Cop cut. Not so great wedge from Butch Kupka. He just got it riding on the wind a little bit too hard. It's Spieth on the left side of 10. Chipping up. He's got a lot of green to work with, though. Just made it tricky. Just coming across that slope at the back of the green there. something. This is second. Likely hit the fencing. Went back and to the right. Safely up there. It'll be a lengthy third shot at the final hole for the local member who just happens to be playing pretty darn good. He they came out Shiyama. This is on eight for Birdie. From over the back of the green. Oh, it's a nice roll. It really was a nice positive roll. Spieth's par part here on 10. Should be up the hill. I can give this a good hit. Oh. Oh. Jordan will drop out of the tie for a second. Rosner will be second on his own as we go to Scheffler with the big stick. Yeah, here on eight. Intimidating tee shot. Bunkers down the right. Gorse left. Well, he starts it way left. That has got to come back. I tell you, that was some serious dance moves. He's got some good ones at times, but that was up there with the best. He's got away with it, though. Look at this. I mean, everything is so good. He gets off the and look at that right foot go. Hello, and knees together. <laughs> Definitely a contender for Strictly, right? Michael Jackson would have been happy with that move. A little bit different footwork from Fleetwood. Similar position. Will be down to the lie what they can do with their second shots it's kept putting for birdie after he after he had a wedge in his hand he probably want to be a bit further away than he wanted to not a bad putt though tap in par on a difficult hole and bogey free so far today. Kepka's lone birdie was at the fifth. We'll go today for birdie at 10. Yeah, should just be a slight left to right here. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, lovely pop. It really is nice to see him playing this kind of golf again. He went through a couple of tough years when he was world number one. He was just unbeatable almost. Jordan with, his with, with his <laughs> Jordan with his third shot on 18. Yeah, he got quite lucky with the drive, and that's a good shot there. He'd be very happy putting for birdie after where he probably thought his tee shot was heading. That would be a good four, this one, wouldn't it? Been like a Jay Townsend four. Well, when you didn't hit it very well, you had to make uh, scratchy pars, didn't you, in birdies? Great stuff there from Jordan. One over on the day, one under on the championship. Coming off kind of a nasty double bogey at the 17th. But let's go down and join McIntyre at the 6th.
lovely touch there. Just opening the face, a nice high pitch shot, and it's a soft land to land softly and just roll down that slope. Shortly out of the rough at seven. Caddy were moving quick, they knew it was on a good line. Just wanted to see if it got the bounce. Foul a second, putting from the front here, up the slope. On six, and there's still a bit of work to do there for his par. Much of the green unsighted. Second shot for Clark. Ooh, that was a big bounce that, but it hangs onto the back edge of the green. Excellent goal shot. Well, Matt Jordan coming up the last. He's played here so many times, he's walked up here so many times, but he'll never have walked up like this. It goes grandstand, and I'm telling you, there's no better feeling as a golfer than walking up the last with those grandstands folk. Yeah, pretty cool as a member here at Royal Liverpool. He was given the honor of hitting the first tee shot yesterday morning. He didn't disappoint and not disappointing today either. Kepka on nine. Let's see, we've already seen it's a tricky one. Not much room to hit it, keep it on the green, and that's that's the problem. This green angles, it's a funny angle, and you've really got to stand up and hit such a straight shot at this flag. Uh, tee shots at eight, missing over on the left side. And Fleetwood should be first to play, Jamie. Yeah, he is, but he's blind down here. I mean, you play away from those right-hand bunkers, you're hitting this left-hand rough. Popular spot here on eight. Lies okay, can't see anything in the pin. Pin's cut left. So we're trying to hit middle of the green, 157. Yeah. Back into off the right. Yeah. Yeah, you've always passed fine. Yeah. Yeah. Even just normal nearly, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That lovely, strong Liverpudlian accent from Finnis. He's in his element here. 9 iron for Fleetwood. <laughs> Just come up short there. It can be tricky when you're on the angle, right, Thomas, isn't it? Because if you start it too far right or balloon it a little yeah, bit, it's coming I back into that wind a lot more and it hurts it a lot more. Yeah, it's not that easy to I hate when you can't see where you're going. I think we all do. It's just like one of those you're trying to make, pick a target, trying to make commitments. There's just a little bit of extra thought in it's short of that hill. In the, it's, it's not going far by. You're seeing it the same. Just a little bit inside the box. Yeah, target wise. Seems like this tallest little. Yeah. It's a pretty good target. Yeah. You're thinking like a 35 shot, 40 shot? Yeah, barely right at this tall little, tallest little stick. Yeah, that's right. About 35? Yes, sir. 148 all up, but he's playing 135. I think his, his, his ball's sitting down. It's going to help him here. He's going to just come out with no spin, go through this breeze coming from his right hand side here for Scheffler. Both of them playing for a fly and don't, they didn't get it. 11th on the way home, Jason Day. Is 
Tight. Tight. Hold your head. Wind coming off the left. It's an interesting change when you head back to the clubhouse here from the furthest point out on the 11th tee. Larry out this front right trap on six here. See what magic he's got. Ah, oh, it's a great touch. He's one of the guys who's just got an unbelievable short game. How many times do you see him chip it in week in, week out? He just makes it look so natural. Back to Spieth on 11 T. And, and what is it like? Most of the first 10 holes you're playing with majority wind out of the right quadrant. Now all of a sudden coming back, it's out of the left. How much does that change your game and swing? Yeah, it can do a lot because you're so used to if you're using the wind and you're, you're setting it off right and all of a sudden you're letting the wind come back and next thing you start trying to hit it a bit lower and you can get ahead of it a little bit and definitely I find into left to right wind for, for right handed is, is probably the toughest wind. Matthew Jordan to finish with a birdie to get to two under par looking good. Slides by on the left side. He would have really loved to have given the the big horseshoe grandstand, a massive putt to cheer about. But as it is, a brilliant 36-hole effort for Matthew Jordan, which, well, to be honest with you, he feels like one of our own. You see Matthew quite a bit. Just got to listen to them crowds. Yeah, this is one of those moments that will make him grow as a player. You know, that he'll take this in and enjoy that and know that It'll drive him home to great things, I think, like enjoying this moment, know what it, the feeling is like playing in front of all of these crowds and this environment. Excellent performance over two days. Certainly the pressure of being a member here at Royal Liverpool. He stepped right up to the pressure, embraced it, had the honor of being first to tee off yesterday morning. But Brian Harman leads the way by six at the moment after a brilliant 65 from the American. Matthew South, he was one over par teeing off on his final hole, chipped in for an eagle three at the final hole for a 70 and one under par as we go to a par putt for Cam Smith, the defending champion. Bunker off the tee, so he had to chip out. And this is for par. There you go. That's the way we saw him all the last year at St Andrews when he won that Open Championship in such stylish fashion. Just that par putt just slips by there for Fowler. Second bogey of the day for Ricky Fowler. We saw Scheffler come up short at the eighth. This is his third. Coming off the slope off the left bunker. Nicely done. Hole high, very difficult to get far enough left without going up on the fringe. Look at this contact. Just look at the way his hands lead through to this tight lie. Absolutely textbook. Fleetwood has a more difficult shot. He's on the angle, he's further left. The bunker and the slope is definitely more in play. About exactly where Scheffler was, just inside Scheffler's mark. Spieth. It's the third shot for Spieth at 11. And that one just creeps past off the back fringe. That's a very tough hole location. Cut on, on a downslope just over that front bunker. I thought, Tony, that the hole location at 11 might have been the most difficult of the day on the entire golf course. I would agree. And they've got a couple of beauties. But yeah, 
so tough to get it closer. We've just seen there, you know, one of the best chippers in the world couldn't hit the green. This man's not too shabby with the chipping either. And pitching, got great touch, Kepka. Yeah, tee shot just got riding on the wind a little bit, and that is what he does so well. Turns three into two. That's what the best players do. To the seventh hole, and the U.S. Open champion Wyndham Clark. Playing back into the breeze. Amazing. Not a not a single birdie in that group today. After seven holes. Work here for both Tommy Fleetwood and for Scotty Scheffler to make their par at the eighth. And only one birdie in this group, Dom, so far. It's been a been a drought. Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle, Tony. Just a little bit. Piece of par. For Scheffler. Played a really good chip. Needs this. And we had a low view of that one, Jamie, and it bounced a couple of times when he's been missing those inside of 10 foot putts this season he's been missing on the right primarily just kind of not releasing through to Jordan Spieth who's playing the 11th and he's in bother here this is a par putt up the steep bank in front of him it's not going to roll out either so well, he's still not home yet for bogey, is he? Well, Liverpool beginning to bite a little bit out there at the moment. And we were just saying before you to rejoin the broadcast, coming in from the 11th is so difficult. Let's go down and watch Fleetwood here for par. Yeah, same part of Scheffler for Tommy. Well done, Tommy. I was being cheered like their birdies out there for Fleetwood. Well, at times they're going to be just as important. Again, we've seen so many parts this week, haven't we, from uh, this sort of distance from the hole. Such a slow putt, wants to break left to right at the end. TV flattens everything out. That is such a slope from back to front in that first quarter of the green at 11. Antoine Rosner to remain at five under par. Oh, you get a sneaky look at it on the scoreboard on the right there. Yep. So a birdie at the opening hole for the Frenchman, but he gives it back there at three. He's back where he started the day at four under. But in a share of second place. Hideki Matsuyama. Sweet, sweet touch. Well, Anthony Wall has moved forward to watch Jordan Spieth and his group at a time when Spieth is struggling to make five, Anthony, to drop just the one shot. Yeah, baffling. Perfect tee shot, completely misjudged the second. Third and fourth similar, so this is across the slope. You bite your hand off right now for a bogey. And walked it in. That was a confident stroke and anything but an easy line there. Had to start it outside the hole right. Hit it with speed to hold it. But it is a bogey bogey start to the back nine, I'm afraid, for Spieth. So he's back to three under. They're falling away, aren't they, from Brian Harmon? 
Cam Young with a chance for the par five fifth. Nice little move out there this afternoon from Smith. Two birdies, no drop shots so far. Beg your pardon, Young. Fleetwood. Oh, nine, 227, straight down the wind. Shots here yeah, on this group. Yeah, any day now, Wayne. Yeah. Yeah, just safely playing away from that bunker. You can see left of the hole. These guys give these bunkers so much respect, even after they've kind of, you know, well, re engineered the way they're raking them today. Putting a little bit of an upslope close to the face, so the players have a little bit easier time getting out. Ninth tee, Adam Scott just waiting for the eighth green approach. Sheltered back there, they can't really work the wind out. It's off the right, mainly behind here for the great Australian. shot we've seen this afternoon at nine he's still a great ball striker isn't he adam scott into the back nine moves brooks kept up no fairway bunkers at 10 but you've got these humps and hollows and some long rough he will need a break and last to play by no means least, Scotty Scheffler should suit him. He can hit that little chop down the breeze. Well, he might need a little luck with that lie as well, Scheffler. Too often you'll see him wound up about a shot. Fowler for birdie at the seventh. Slides by on the left side. Ricky had that tough triple bogey eight finish yesterday to close out his opening round. Here's the defending champion, Cam Smith. close and start his birdie account. Wow. That was seriously aggressive. Two feet left of that and he's got no shot in that pot bunker. To McIntyre. To get back to two over par. And he does so. A nice bounce back birdie. He's birdie three of the last four holes now. Moving in the right direction. Huge week for him, wasn't it, in Scotland in terms of uh, potentially making that Ryder Cup team. He has one at the Ryder Cup venue, but another good week this week would really back that up and maybe even cement his place. He is now in the automatic places. There are only six of them, and both captains will have six picks as well. It's going to be some tough decisions for both Zach Johnson and for Luke Donald to make in, a, what, five, six weeks' time. Rory McIlroy at one under par there. What have we got? 24 players under par at the moment. Scheffler back in amongst the level pars. So is Nikolai Hoygaard, whose brother Rasmus won on uh, Danish soil. 
couple of weeks back. That was exciting stuff, wasn't it? It was uh, quite the playoff. Benan, who led the way last week in Scotland after an opening 61 and secured his place there in the end in the Open. You know, you were mentioning a moment ago the Ryder Cup and that. I think Justin Rose, the last three events he's played, has made it a little bit more difficult on the captaincy of Luke Donald. <laughs> yeah, Justin Thomas for Zach Johnson as well. Here's Spieth, Thomas's great friend and Ryder Cup partner. As things stand right now, I, I don't think that Justin Thomas is even in the conversation. He's outside the top 70, outside the playoffs, hasn't won in over a year, albeit his last win was the PGA Championship, but he, he is just not in the conversation. Had a huge impact, didn't he, for the Americans at Whistling Straits? He was their cheerleader, if anything. Right, 2-9, Scheffler, Jamie. Big tough to grasp behind this one. He's going to have to use that cushion, just pop it up in the air off the upslope. Nicely played. You just, you just have really no. You can't be precise with those. Always a bit of hit and hope in it. Antoine Rosner. It's for the birdie. At four. And then right to left. Oh, quite a bit more than that, though. Most people we've seen putt from that portion of the green throughout the day have missed that wide left. They're all seeing the same thing, and they're not seeing the break that's there. Amazing, these wonderful players, when there's a pattern, because they see the same thing, they all react the same way, and they tend to have the same miss when they're misreading something. To nine. Where Tommy Fleetwood's only just missed the green hit. Yeah, we've got a great chance here, Fleetwood. He really has to go out in level par. I don't see anything in this. I'm trying to make a case maybe a bit of right to left at the end, but I think it's straight. So his wait for a first birdie today continues. I mentioned the progress being made today by uh, Nikolai Hoygar. This is for two in a row. Thank you very much. Gobbled up by the hole. And a big week for him because this counts as far as points and money on both sides of the Atlantic. And he's trying to retain his playing rights, playing under special status in the U.S. At the moment. Clark, U.S. Open champion for birdie. tracking. Let's go to nine quickly. Adam Scott. Yeah. Off that fabulous t-shirt. There you go. Back to even for the day. One over. To another Aussie. Cam Smith. We saw the approach at eight. Great chance here. That's the tightest shot we've seen, especially left of the hole. This should have a little right to left off the slope coming off the bunker. And no mistake for Smith. That's his first birdie to date, so he's back where he started at one over. This would be a fantastic up and down for Scheffler. If he can roll it in and does, good work. If you're a Sheffler fan and he starts holding those punches on a regular basis, look out. Just to remind everyone, hasn't finished outside the top 12 since last October. Yeah, that's some run, isn't it? Fleet the tide is up, makes his part. So one over front line for Fleetwood, likewise for Scheffler.
Well, it's been a very entertaining day. The uh, shot of the day, arguably, came from Travis Smythe, the uh, Australian at the par 3 17th, this new hole at Royal Liverpool. Well, it's supposed to be a hard hole. We saw a lot of balls end up where the hole's cut today, and well, that's how it's done. What do you mean it's a hard hole? Open up the bar. Not a good week to make a hole in one unless you have hole in one insurance. I don't know if you have that over here. We do. Meanwhile, to John Rahm. This for Birdie at the par five, the world number three. McElroy. Pitch on 18. Trying a bit of rough. Great control. Oh, Ryan McElroy rounding 70 to Laya to plus two and minus one respectively. Meanwhile, among the afternoon starters, terrific tee shot at six from Jordan Spieth. Well, that in for his third birdie of the day. Rosner left of the green at one, putting out of a swale, up a slope, then downhill, just trying to get it close to the hole. Or maybe make it. Tommy Fleetwood found himself in this deep bunker, greenside at six. Played that nicely. Sadly, he didn't convert the putt, so that was a drop shot for Fleetwood. And earlier today, Brian Harmon. What a round of golf it was for him. Wonderful run of birdies, two, three, four, and five. And a bogey-free round was capped with this eagle putt at the last. The lowest round of the week from Harmon. An error-free 65 to get in at 10 under par and currently six shots ahead of the rest. Well, that's looking over the estuary towards Wales. Beautiful part of the world. Great golfing country, isn't it? And Harmon, six clear on day two of the 151st Open. Fleetwood. They all like it. He's just giving it a second little look. And, oh, six inches right would have been nice. Aggressive tee shot at 12 from Spieth. Wind howling off the left. It's going to be a tough slog coming in with that left to right wind. Have to guard against missing right and safely left of the hole. Scheffler at 10. Ideally, kind of up the left center off the tee gives you a little bit better view of the green. View, if you hit it up the right side, can certainly be unsighted. Well, that was a good little break. It's just got a nudge out into the shorter grass. Tony, this is one of the few guys that can make your foot action look conventional. Wow, I mean. You could, you had moves as well. Uh, but not like that. No. All right, let's catch up with uh, Christo Lamprecht. Remember, a share of the lead for the amateur champion overnight. It's been a bit of a struggle out there today. Uh, that's a missed opportunity. He's yet to make a birdie out there. He's two over par, so he is right on the cut line as it stands. It could still go either way, could go to three. In fact, that's probably the, uh, the better bet. Spieth. In Spieth range. Well, he stopped the rod at least, Tony, after bogeys at 10 and 11. 
Smith. 227 yards. We've seen some terrific shots in here. Can get it into that back left flag. Probably one club too few there. Wonderful strike. So it had very little curve to it. It's always a delight to watch this man. But the grass is growing away from the hole. It is not easy. No. For Shane Lowry, it's very easy. I mean, that is a joke. <laughs> that is such a tough shot. Just a piece of cake for him. You can't teach that, can you? Fitzpatrick for birdie at 12. He was down low, laying on the grass a moment ago, trying to read this and just didn't get the read correct. Impressive stuff, though, considering his uh, pre-tournament comments about uh, really struggling with his game at the moment. Here's Ricky Fowler. This for birdie at eight. Nicely judged. Bit of a groan there from the crowd. He won't be too disappointed. How long is this putt? Now, something's going to test your long range touch. Not bad. He was in that thick rough off the tee, wasn't he, Tony? So he did it well to muscle it up just short of the green there. Did uh, Katka should make his par. No one, it looks like, has uh, actually managed to hit the fairway here at uh, 10. Long way back, and the angle's all against him here on 10, with the flag on the right. Lies are okay over there for Scheffler and Scott. Tommy's got a better angle. Long, long way, this one. Used to be a par 5. Now par 4, the 10th. Scheffler's got 240. How about that into a par 4? With the wind off the right and the flag on the right, this is a tough one. I think he wants to get it on the green. He's got to chop it up it as high as he can from here. Well, they seemed to like it, didn't they? <laughs> so we'll hope for the best for him. Meanwhile, to Wyndham Clark at nine. This is when power really helps. Clark, tremendous club head speed. Looks like Tony Smith, just an absolute dart, but this one has the correct club. Gosh, it stays hit, doesn't it? And he makes contact. Bob McIntyre. Nice birdie opportunity here. Not too much break in it. And oh. Yeah, just slightly back up the hill. He was out in the supermarket earlier this week with his mum. That brought him back down to earth with a little bit of a bump. I think he probably played the round of the year last year. Got beat by the two birdies of the year from McElroy, but it was a great round from McIntyre. Don't forget, uh, for more information, all the great content, and you'll get uh, video, leaderboards, all the player profiles, and more, open.com, theopen.com, I should say. Fleetwood from 217, not a bad lie. Have to pitch it on the front if you can. About there. Keep going, go on. It's trying for him, Jamie, it's trying. A little bit of history being made. Longest par four in open history. This tenth hole. Playing particularly long. A lot of guys actually don't hit driver off the tee at ten. Not a great first putt for Jason Day at the twelfth. This should have a little left to right slide to it. Very nicely done. Good bounce back today, isn't it? Three under for the day. Smith, well, we saw the tee shot. Now 
becomes his judgment of pace. Can he get it all the way back? We've seen a few come up short. Pretty good. Anytime you walk off nine with a three, it's very good. Cam Young for birdie at seven. A lot of slopes in this portion of the green. the 18th and this is Alex Maguire had a great day yesterday shot a one over par round bit more of a struggle out there today and this for a closing par shame but some great memories for him to uh, take back home he's had a terrific season won the St Andrews Lynx Trophy. Sandra Chaufle. This is the par putt at nine. Went the opposite direction, actually, to what he had seen. Sepp Draka, long range at 13. The Austrian won his second PJ Tour event a couple weeks ago to John Deere with a fabulous 62 in the final round. A little excitement to the Open Championship with that long one, and he's in the conversation for the Ryder Cup as well. Back-to-back -back birdies for the Austrian. Don't know whether you saw the way he finished yesterday, but he threaded almost Seve-like, a little chip shot between the two bunkers, at, well, three bunkers, uh, to the left of 18 and managed to get it on the green and hold it. Lovely stuff. Scheffler here on 10. Grass is into him. He's got to fly this most of the way here down this slope. Otherwise, it will get away from him. As he goes a dribbler, no, he pops it up in the air. Super shot from Scheffler that. Didn't have much. Wyndham Clark. Oh. And once again up to the 10th, Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, it's a long one for Tommy. This will be a big chair. Still a big gallery at the furthest part of the golf course away from the clubhouse. Long way away. Won't do much this actually, a little bit left to right here. And the chair, and it is a first birdie for Tommy Fleetwood. The only reason it's as muted as it is, it's the furthest green from the clubhouse. <laughs> Probably the least amount of people of any green that Tommy Fleetwood will play all week is the tent. six inches from there it's looking so good and then you think it's pulled up side door so Fleetwood back where he started at 500 moves clear of Antoine Rosna solo second well follow that what a cheer that was they're all in the gardens at the back of this green as well. Down the hill for Scott. Yeah, just came out that second bit of fringe, a bit iffy. This is the par 3 13th, Jason Day. 
Holes count front left, wind coming from the left. It's just nearly impossible to hit it far enough left to get it right in line with the hole. That's about as good as you're going to do line wise. So, Scheffler. That was. Uh, Jamie told us a good chip from where he was with the lie he had at 10. But he is facing this one for his par to remain at even par for the championship. Oh, another side door. <laughs> Very good up and down. He's going to pat himself on the back for that one. It's a beautiful evening out there, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful evening. Left to right, into the breeze at 13 for speed. Five iron needs to draw this and turn this into this fresh thing breeze. Shot from Spieth at 13. Such a hard hole. Can't even see the bottom of the flagstick from the tee today with the hole location. Brooks Kepka from the fairway at the 11th. You can just see that bunker. Short left. You have to land it just over the bunker. Land it on a down slope to get it close to the hole. Yeah, helped by the fact that he was into the wind a bit. Enabled him to be aggressive, take it all away. Just the three wood for Wyndham Clark at this long par for 10th. That is a seriously long three wood. Wow. Just in the first cut of rough. Eleven T Fleetwood with the three on. Big mound in that fairway. He's come up short of it. Bit of a blind second from there, but it's on the short grass. Tough to push it all the way back there. Two hundred twenty seven yards at nine. Narrow, not the widest of greens. Fantastic shot from Fowler, who recently got back in the winner's circle after quite a slump for a player of his ability. This is the par five fifth hole. This is Antoine Orozna. He's had some issues. He's to get up and down for his par. Just for a moment, I thought he was going to do the same as he did at the first. And Scheffler with an iron as well. It's 250 to get over that big mound. I'm not sure he can get over that with his club. He needs a chaser if he does. I'd like to get over it. Don't mess with Texas. <laughs> Two holes in a row, no fairway bunker. The mound here. And the fairway comes up short. That green will be unsighted for Scheffler. You make a choice, lay up short in the wider portion or hit it over the mound into an area that's only 17 or 18 yards wide. No bunkers, but still very difficult shot. A, a interesting choice off the tee with club selection at 11. Got a few holes now, haven't you, that uh, play down the side of the estuary. And you switch back in, 15 and then Head back out towards the water, 16 and 17. A lot of these holes that run along the D estuary. Also, the wind is coming off the left, maybe into a little bit today, but 
everything seems to slope off the sand dunes left to right as well. Makes it even more difficult with the wind direction. Kepka. Brave second shot straight over the flag. He's got a plan, hasn't he? He wants to make that move, narrow the gap. He's not going to be shy. Jason Day for birdie. A little left to right in it. He saw the same thing. And there was any left or right. There wasn't much. Remember, Spieth's got a chance from just inside that. In the meantime, to Rosner for his par at the fifth. Yeah, these par fives are gettable. The only holes that are playing under par average. You do not want to make a bogey. And he doesn't. Well done. Good recovery. And it's going to be a late finish, isn't it, for Rosner and others? Because it's, uh, what, 22 6 in the evening here. He's still got 13 holes to play. Well, we told you about Speeth. Here he is. Oh, he won't be happy because his touch putting is second to none he just so often he manages to just roll it eight or nine inches past the hole from any distance Fleetwood back within five of our leader Brian Harmon and solo second and with huge support out there on the links of Royal Liverpool It's going to be a fascinating weekend, I think, with the uh, with the weather forecast in play. See if Harmon can keep pushing forward, and whether others start have to take start to have to take risks out there. Well, when you have a large lead like Harmon has at the moment, and you're going into bad weather, sure, it's bad weather for you as well. But it makes it more difficult for the chasing pack when you're playing in wind and rain. It becomes kind of a bit of a survival test. Lowry. That free flowing, natural looking stroke of his. One over part of the uh, turn for Shane Lowry is at plus two for the championship. Over the ball. Positions, I beg your pardon, uh, where the birdies have come from at 11. Scheffler on the way. Oh, it's got to sit down, it will. That is quite a deep hollow down there. He'll be quite glad that he's six foot plenty. He'll be able to see the surface at least. Well, Fleet was just looking over to Adam Scott because he's on the ninth we'll fairway. Okay. We'll Tommy's going to go. 142. Let's go. Oh, I like this. Top shot, this. It's only like a nine iron. It's a wedge distance, but it's a bit of breeze into it. It's definitely died down, this breeze, you know. That's what it feels like. Quite warm out here. Tight left pin. Must be past it here for Fleetwood. Leave it. Leave it. Left and finish. Asking for the wind to leave it, and it does. Just catches the right side of the green, hole high. Ricky Fowler. Oh! oh. <laughs> Had a look, got scared of heights, and then decided, no, that'll do. That's a fine two on the ninth.
All the way back 14. This is one of the most demanding shots on this back nine. Quite a long wait actually. Just gonna try and hold this one against the breeze. So easy to let this one go on the bunkers. Get lucky, get lucky, get lucky, get lucky. I think it's sat there in the rough. Uh, Looks to be lying one. okay, actually. You've got two, the two toughest holes on the course coming up in the next three holes, 14 and 16. Yeah, a big puff of sand came up. I'm not, I'm not so sure. It's right on the edge of a waste area. So I'll get down there as soon as possible. Fitzpatrick. Just a three. We're just trying to nudge it short of that fairway bunker I mentioned. Good looking shot for Fitzpatrick. Bogey free on the day. Couple under. And this 14th, Jay, just sums up Hoylake all day long. You can hit driver as many times as you want, but there's a fair chance you'll catch one of those bunkers down the right. Sometimes you just got to play it cool and, and just get it somewhere close and rely on a really, really good second long iron into one of these tight greens. Just seems to have got a little bit ragged, Spieth. Good shot into the last, but it's been a bit ragged the last hour or so. But it is playing tough on this back nine. Yes, and he hit six out of 12 greens. Thanks to only hitting five fairways. Still five fairways. Anthony brings up a great point there here at Hoylake. You're going to have to hit a tough shot on every hole. You choose where you want to hit the tough shot. If you want to lay up off the tee, it makes your second shot more difficult. As Scheffler plays from over 11. Yeah, I like the way he chips Scheffler. He's always looking to hold it. Picks it up nice and steep. Hits it low and spinny, left to right. Need some spin on this. Rosner at the par three sixth. Oh, is it guy? Oh, I think that's gone. Oh. Well, it must go eventually. I'll pop in the back door. No, it's not. <laughs> well, that could leave a tricky one, couldn't it, for Antoine Rosner? Um, Kepka on the tee at 12. <laughs> Another change up in the commentary box for us Andrew Beef Johnston and Thomas Bjorn are back. Yeah, Kupka going with the big stick here. Kind of a good bounce there, almost makes his back, but that's all down to the line now, coming across that corner on 12 up the hill. Here's Fowler on 10. Go <laughs> see most of the guys, nearly everyone hitting three, but you can't hit driver down there really. That is perfect. Everyone excited to see Fowler back here. Of course, he finished a uh, runner-up behind Rory McIlroy in 2014, further up the course. Stuart Singh playing his third at the par four, 16th. Oh, nice shot there. He got that to land very softly, didn't he? He's just enjoying it, isn't he? That's nice. I won this championship. I'm just going to enjoy myself a little bit with my wife. Fleetwood, can he hold another long one? Not on this occasion. Well, here we go. Rosner at six. It shouldn't be too bad from here. I love these tight lies where you just nip it off. Just a touch too hard. Hard there, and he's going to have a 
That 12, 15 foot putt for par. Some do, some don't enjoy the uh, chipping off the tight lies. Up to 10, Wyndham Clark. There. Here's Scheffler on 11. Well, it's a good chip. He just ran on, didn't it? For Scheffler, he's got one of these. Six footer for the par. Back into the breeze. Oh, and that's run on. That was a big swing of that one from short distance. Not the move that he was hoping to make out there today, the world number one. Cam Smith chipped up here. So this is for a par. He really would like to just get this one in and stay away from that cut mark. There you go, that's a lovely stroke. It's just bobbling at the moment between two and three over par. I think we all thought this morning it was going to go at least to four. Conditions have been proved on the golf course. Surprisingly, actually. Yeah, Jamie was saying that wind felt at the moment as though it's just beginning to drop a little bit now. Quite often does that in the early evening by the seaside, doesn't it? And Tommy Fleetwood for his part. Yeah, good work. Always good just to keep seeing them just go dead centre. Sometimes I quite like it when you're just knocking them ones in. It feels good off the putter face and know that you're just knocking these in nice and easy. It's a nice little confidence booster. Wyndham Clark for his par. Uh, solid stroke. Really solid. Extending through nicely. Now can Stuart Sink get up and down from the rough at 16 for his par? Sink will go back to one under par. Rosner has this for par at six to remain at minus four. It wasn't a bad effort, was it? But it's going to cost him a shot. Here's Stracker. This is for three straight birdies. Oh, that is a good run on them stretcher holes as well. Well, that's what he did plenty of, wasn't it? The uh, John Deere Classic. I mean, he was just holding from everywhere on that final round. Well, we hit all the way back to the fifth green. That's quite remarkable that that's only how far they've gone. This is Valimaki for Eagle. Tell you when he was putting on the 18th tonight, and it might just be getting a little bit dark. But that's a nice start. Bogey off the first, a birdie on the third, and then Eagle on the fifth. Last group out for the former Sir Henry Cotton Rookie of the Year on the DP World Tour. I actually can't get used to him with the shorter hair. He's uh, had it all cut off. He was looking a bit like a Yeti. I asked him earlier in the week, why the haircut? And he says, well, I'm too old for that long hair now. 12th hole. It's a little beauty down the hill, right to left. Two drivers in the bag. This might be the mini one. Looking a bit anxious, his bunker's down the right. Uh, it's up in the hills on the left there. And he needs to lie, and then the work. bad thing as well is the next shot kind of going over that hill, up the hill as well. Space for the tough looking lie there for his second on 14. He's done well to chase it up there, but we all know it's, it's no picnic from there, is it? Well, 
drop back four holes to Ricky Fowler. Blind for his second. Into the tenth. He's done some good work on that golf swing. It was really getting so flat and was struggling for quite a long time now. It really does look like he's back to swinging it extremely well. Be aggressive on the ball, knowing where the club face is. Back with Butch Harmon. They do a lot of stuff over video, though, don't they? Because Butch is in, in Vegas. Ricky's not. That's not going to be a birdie for Brooks Kepka. Not sure he expected to miss on that side of his playing partner's marker. Yeah, Sheffield with the driver here on 12. See so the cut. Don't want to be cut here. Sure. Yeah, this is heading up the left as well, Jamie. Yeah, they need a lie up there, Thomas. It's a short way in, but keeps him out of the bunkers, though, doesn't it? It's better than the bunkers. And that looks like a pretty decent live from where we are, but our camera is high up, so you don't really know what's sitting behind it. Yes, it can be deceptive, can't it? Uh, Jason Day has found the short grass, so no problems for him here. Too far, left. Yeah, it's good bounces there. Just coming off, he will think that's worth further away from the hole. He'll be happy when he comes up and sees it. Cam Young for a good birdie chance on nine here. Tremendous shot in. Oh, just gets there. Great two there. Great front nine as well. No drop shots, three birdies. So uh, Young to two under bar. His piece, third shot. As you said, it's not the best of lies. Like I said, it's no picnic up this slope. It's a big slope. You've got to chip up here. I, I mean, that is an unbelievable shot. He's made that look very easy. Yeah, he had a lot of green to work with, but still it's difficult over that bank. Ah, routine, beef. Routine. Matsuyama for par and 12. Just standing over it a bit longer, that's a nice stroke though. <laughs> Staying in red numbers for Matsuyama. Jordan Smith for Eagle on 15, this is two great shots in here. Go on Jordan, that's nice. Takes him back to level par for the tournament. Getting away from the cop mark. With some tough holes coming up. You can see the lovely roll on that. Well, Jason Day, I was leading you astray. He didn't find the fairway, did he? He actually had to chip back into the fairway. So this is for par at 14. Once you do have to chip it out sideways, it, it, bogey's not terrible there. Kopka finishing up here on 12. It was such a poor first pot for, by him, and he left a little, himself a little bit worried. I think he was so annoyed about the first one that he kind of get a little bit extra nervous over that one. Not that Brooks gets too nervous. I was going to say, even Brooks Kepka. <laughs> of course, we saw a very different side of him, didn't we, in that uh, in that Netflix documentary series where he was really struggling with injury and actually admitted he didn't really know whether he could compete against the best players in the world anymore. It's been a remarkable comeback. Yeah, he's doing all right. He's playing some pretty beautiful golf this year. He really is. And I think he's just so delighted. You know, caught him in the players' lounge. He just said, "I'm just so delighted. I'm healthy and fit again to play the game at the highest level." And that's all what his focus is on: playing good golf. He loves competing in these championships. Ten on line with that corner. Sure, he's going with 
Do you think jumpy that? I, mean, I do, yeah. No wind. Shoulders is 37. Yeah, I like it. Like a bit more. No, I don't, because if it comes out short, it's an easy chip. Okay. You don't want to come like a rocker, do you? Okay. If you have to put it well in shoulders, at the Split the stairs like... in the grandstand. Oh, uh, split the, sorry, the TV tower in the edge of the grandstand. Though. Where do you want to land it? You want to land it in the edge of the grandstand? Yeah, okay, yeah. It's going to kick wider. So, right. If it comes short, it'll kick wider. Yeah. Like... I'm mean, interested in my shoulders, I'm making normal. Okay. So 158 playing for a bit of a jumper. It's not a bad spot down the left here. He's got a decent lie here, Flea. We're going to sit down a little bit, but he can get to it. So just going to play it up the left a little. Hope for a bit of release. Flag front right. Good angle, this. Right. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh. Exactly what they're trying to do into the heart of the green. They are a great pair, they work well together. It's lovely when a plan comes together. Second here into 11 from Clark. From the 10th fairway, I think it is. It's a good angle to come in from here. Yeah, good, good shot there. to the green before that, the tenth. Well, that wasn't his best, was it? Antoine Rosner from the fluffy stuff at seven. Bit on him, and that's going to career through the green. <coughs> oh my god, Scheffler again, that's just come out straight right off the face there. I've never seen a ball curve that much in my life. <laughs> Welcome to Lynx Golf, Scotty Scheffler. No commentary needed. He's just going through a little sticky patch at the moment, isn't he? The world number one. Remember, he has got those two par fives. In the closing four holes, an awful lot can change. Tommy Fleetwood is level par today. Round of the day from Brian Harmon. Round of the week. 65, he's still five clear. Others are beginning to fall away a little bit. 68, great move today from Minwoo Lee, such an exciting young player from Australia. Cameron Young making good progress, he's three under today. So is Henrik Stenson, a former Open champion. Talking of which, uh, yeah, it's a, the defending Open champion, Cam Smith, on 11. This is tough. This is really tough. I'm just going to try and just pop it up on top of that. It's, that's a lovely shot. About as good as he could do without taking on too much. Lowry fighting for par on 10. It should be slightly up the hill. Yeah, good putt. To the 12th. Horrible lie here for Scheffler. Sitting right down. Just short-sided himself. He's had a lot of these today. He's had some practice. Got to play this like a bunker shot. Just use the grass to cushion it. Just let it pop up in the air. He's got the, the loft added with the slope, but... Controlling the distance, very difficult this. Trying to hit, trying to hit it high. Oh. So dumb. Well, came out softly, didn't he, there in three, so struggling for his par once again. 
to Matsuyama at the par 3 13th. Yeah, 180 yards, as you can see there, to the hole. He'll be taking dead aim at this one. This, this is Matsuyama at his best. Hands off the club and not particularly happy. Yeah, 30 feet. That's how we recognize him. He's been unlucky here, Rosner, hasn't he? Through the back of the seventh after that flyer in the thick stuff. I'd say that is so hard to judge out of that lie. You don't know if it's going to pop out or, or come out dead like it did. Very nearly another birdie for Tommy Fleetwood. Look at those crowds. They're just out there enjoying their Friday evening with Tommy Fleetwood. Can you imagine if he's in the mix coming down the stretch on Sunday? Good heavens. Can you imagine if he won it on Sunday, the party would never stop, I don't think. Kepka at 13 here. It's tricky, par three. Yeah, the good shot there. You can see all three, three balls just in the front edge. It's tough, tough to get it close there. It's a good shot. That's Yama and Kepka. We'll get a little read there from Patrick Cantlay. Thirty pound for Henrik Stenson at the difficult 16th. Hello. Two in three holes for the true champion. He's got a bogey free round going as well. Scheffler drops another one. Yeah, now he's bubbling on the mark, the cut mark. Don't be careful here, Scotty Scheffler. He'll want to be here in the weekend. Driver for Spieth. Wind's definitely dropping. So right-hand bunker's possibly in play. This is quite hard to find, I think, when the wind's not blowing. What a lead! Just having a stare. This should be all right, shouldn't it? Is he reaching any bunker down that left-hand side? Nah, I don't think so. Stop, 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 stop. Uh, no. Oh. Your fault. Seen that a few times this week, haven't we? Though I mean, it's so difficult that when the ball begins to run out there. I'm just just struggling again a bit a bit similar to, to yesterday well just just can't quite get it going well, he's putting for power a lot isn't he and that's that's never a great sign that's eventually going to catch up with you that's the trouble with the wind dropping off right hand side is tough to carry so they're feathering it down the left catch in the bunkers they can't carry the right either I don't think and that's where it's heading Anthony oh just that's the bounce. Yeah, pretty pinchy now, isn't it, for Jason Day? Kepka's long birdie chance, 13. Ah, good effort. Nothing wrong with a the par there. Anton Rosnap, he's in all sorts of trouble here. This is for par. It's over the green in the thick rough, as you saw. And that would be a bogey. Back to 13, last to go here is Matsuyama. Oh. 
just an, a hair more speed. And he was in. Here's Cam Young. Generates some power, this guy, doesn't he? I got away with a really bad shot. That was not a really bad shot. <laughs> oh, there's Kenny work. That wasn't a really bad shot. Well, I think it was. Shut up and keep up. <laughs> Wyndham Clark just missing out on a uh, birdie there and actually leaving himself four and a half, five feet or so for his par. Such an impressive win, wasn't it, at LA Country Club? And you look at the people that he held off on Sunday Rory McElroy, Scotty Scheffler. And he is now a major champion. Could he be a double major champion? He's got some way to go because Brian Harmon leads by five still here at Royal Liverpool on Friday evening of the Open. Good shot, Charlie Fleetwood. Oh, Fleetwood. That's reached reach the 13th tee. Like the group in front of them, just into that front right portion of the green. That's exactly what we're trying to do. It's always a nicer walk to the green with a pot in hand. I always think when I watch Tommy Fleet, why doesn't he just have shorter clubs? He always has that bit sticking. I wonder if he used the whole shaft. Here we go, Clark on 12. Tough tee shot here. Aiming a long way left. All right. Oh la la. Yeah, and they say the modern golf ball can't move in the air. He proved them wrong there. Hope everybody's all right. Up to 18, coming towards the end of his hour to Christo Lamprecht. He's at two over par. He yeah, might need to get this up and down to be here on the weekend. It was always going to be a difficult day for him after yesterday. It will be a shame, though, if he's not here to enjoy the weekend. Scheffler. Into this left to right wind, slightly hurting him in 13. Oh, there's some movement there. <laughs> I mean, it just looks like he's going to fall over every time he hits it, and then the ball just lands in the perfect place. It's, it's just remarkable. Maybe that's the way you should play the game. Maybe that's the technique we've been looking for. Piece. Not much you can really do here, just advance it down the fairway a little bit. Yeah, that was a little bit of an unlucky break, wasn't it? Interesting, Ricky Fowler in the rough, out with the putter here. Yeah, he was in the greenside bunker as well, so he had to come out to there. This was his fourth shot. All right, up to 18 once again. Is this going to be the putt that takes Christo Lamprecht, the amateur champion, through to the weekend? This is for par at the last. Now he's got a nervous wait. Right now, the cut line is just about at three over par. It could, could be good enough, but he would have been much more pleased and much more confident 
about playing the last two rounds of the Open if he could have popped that one in. Yeah, it's a remarkable game, isn't it? Golf, great day one day, and then you wake up the next. No birdies, just a tough day on the links. It does it to everyone. 253. How do you get close to this flag? I'm not sure. Here's McIntyre for birdie on the 11th. Putting up this slope. Should swing. Here it comes. Uh, good speed there. Good solid putt. There's a look at the uh, 13th green from sort of eye level. Okay, from Mac to Fleetwood. Pairing dreams are made of. Huge crowds on the right hand side of the screen, Thomas. If this goes in, be like Goodison Park. Don't see much in this part. Have you seen these parts today? Because I can't see anything in this for Fleetwood. <laughs> yeah, at the end, if anything, it just seems to fall a little to the right as it approaches the hole. You can't accuse him of not having a go at that one. No, that's one of the first ones I've seen where he hasn't rolled it up stone dead. Fowler to drop just the one shot at the 11th. So he makes a step towards that uh, cut line backwards as well. Scheffler now for the two at 13. Oh. And he could just do with, with one of them popping in and just getting away from that, that cut line. Sip Stracker. This is not an easy one, this one, 15. Oh, that's a lovely play shot. Really got the nice, soft, smooth flight on that ball to land it softly. Matsuyama, 14, here with three wood. That's lovely, that is. Just shaping it off the left side, fading it back into the middle of the fairway. That's the place you want to be. Back over to 13 and Adam Scott for a birdie. Almost inevitably as a result of seeing his two playing partners and the way the ball moved over the hole just gave it a little too much. Off the clock's wild tee shot on 12. He's got a line into the green. I don't know what his lie's like, but we'll see. It's a strong stab at it. That's an excellent line. Got a goal shot aside. He read the lie well. He had a good stab at it. Steep down onto the ball. He got his flight out. He controlled it nicely from a difficult position. Tommy Fleetwood has this for par at the 13th hole. It's not much you can do there. It looked like he hit a good putt. And it's just one of them you've got to take on the chin and move on. 
for the lead is back to six for Brian Harmon. Third shot here for Spieth on 15. So difficult to stop it straight down wind like that. Hoping for birdie off the tee now. He's got to get up and down for his par. Back to 12 and Cam Smith. Just sitting up down the left hand side trying to just sting cut this into the hole. Beauty, mate. It's just beautiful. When he swings it like that under full control, I mean, it's just a beautiful golf swing, controlling his flight. Big opportunity for him there. That's what he did a lot down the back nine, didn't he, at St Andrews last year? Seth Strucker moving through the field. Rosner's a couple over par now. Tristan Lawrence has had an excellent season. A couple of wins for him. He's alongside McElroy and others. Here is the cross-handed chipper, Fitzpatrick. Still got a player quite delicate. It's easy to get away from you. Have you ever tried chipping like that, Thomas? Well, I tried practicing chipping like that. I, I wouldn't say I would, I've ever tried it on the golf course, but I have tried it. it. It really does square the face up nicely and get a good understanding of how the arms are supposed to move. As Pete Cowan started using it a lot in his in his teachings, and I think just Matt, you know, it wasn't ever the greatest pitcher of the golf ball, and I think he just loved it as an exercise and then stuck with it. sure if that one's found a fairway bunker down there for Fowler. If so, he'll have some potential issues. Meanwhile, up ahead, Shuffle to get under par. Well, that's another big under read here on the 12th hole. We saw Brooks Kupka do the same. It's a perfect lie, isn't it, for Jason Day through the back of the 15th. Yeah, we've seen that's a good miss today. Past the green, past the green there. Up on the left, you've got loads of green to chip it back to. Brooks Kupka on 14. It's a long way back here. But he's in the right place on the fairway. And he's just going to try and drop this into the middle of the green. Just a little bit out of it. Just got going on the wind. And there's a big elevation change from down there. On a downslope as well. Could be a tricky one. Here's Rosner on eight. Second shot after a good drive. seen a lot of that today as well if you just get it right on the wind a little bit there yeah, but not a bad place to be it's a tricky hole Wyndham Clark out of the rough at 12 to here wonderful shot can he make the birdie and move it to three under I mean, that's a real bonus after a tee shot that tee shot was wild and then you still walk off with a three on a tough hole as well That's the armor second on 14, 164 yards. Pin tucked up that left side. 
Oh, friendly bounce. And that has worked out really well there. Beautiful iron shot into 12. Cam Smith for the birdie. That's more like it, isn't it? Bounce back after the drop shot at 11. So back to one over par where he started the day. John Spieth on 15. From the ferry bunk off the tee. Poor wedge into here. Not a great putt either. It's just a little bit messy for Jordan Spieth on this par five. And have that left for a par. Tough hole this, 14th, round the corner, down the hill. Three wood here. Can't reach the bunkers with this club. Par part on 15 for Spieth. He won't want to be dropping one. This par five with a wedge in his hand. To be fair, as soon as went in the bunker off the tee, it always kind of looked like a little bit of a messy one for him. Tommy Fleetwood with the driver on 14. They're loving it. He picks up the tee. That's down the middle of the fairway. That's no problem. Antoine Rosnup is coming up the hill here on eight from the back of the green. Second shot was straight over the flag. Good roll. It's another par. And on to the next we go. Well, he's in the second last group out on the golf course. I'll be finished in a better part of three hours. So, Cam Smith coming off that lovely birdie at 12. wonder if this is the same club into 13. As we know, difficult to even get it to the pin. We've seen a lot just on the front edge. Straight down it beef and it was straight down and it was just a beautiful golf swing. It's just one of them, you just flush it so good into the wind. That was pure that. It's kept good opening the face here, just trying to cut across it. That looks thin to me. So tricky. You, you can't tell with the downhill lie. How tricky that is to get the get the right connection, but he's still got a good chance for par there. Jason Day, meanwhile, chipped from over the back of the green to here. So this for a birdie four of 15. I tell you what, Brian Harmon's doing is chasing pretty good at the moment, sitting watching this. Six shot lead. Good. No, it's, it's, it's so tricky to judge coming up the hill into the wind. Matsuyama. I saw him bounce it off the side cushion there and it came into here. So he's got this for a birdie. 
Oh, you would have sworn that would come from the left. Quick look at the caddy. Going to, have to send you out to have a word with some of those spectators out there, Thomas. Sounds like they're getting a bit rowdy to me. I am not getting into any arguments with these wonderful people up here in this great city. We have Chaffel on 13. Let's see what he can do on this difficult par 3. Stay, stay there. Yeah, that's absolutely fine there. It's not a bad miss. So the par part for Kepka at 14. Oh, that second shot just got away from him, really, didn't it? Yeah, and that's two bogeys in three holes. It's just getting away from, from Brooks Kupka a little bit here. Just want to steady the ship and get in under in red numbers. It's a long weekend ahead, but you don't want to be 10, 11, 12 shots behind. Yeah, at the moment it's almost like two separate tournaments, isn't it? It's uh, Brian Harmon on his own out there in front and everybody else quite tightly packed together behind Tommy Fleetwood. Yeah, it's quite remarkable to think, that Dom, that, you know, three under par is third, and we're talking about a cup between two and three over. So that means that you've got, what, 70 players in that, in that bracket of five, six shots. It's another cup made for Alexander Bjork. He hasn't missed one so far this season. Tom Kim through to the weekend. So too Victor Hovland, who had a, a good open at St Andrews last year. Played in the final two ball, didn't he, with Rory McElroy on Sunday. Stracker for par now at 16. He was on the birdie run, and this time he misses out. So after four birdies in a row, it is a drop shot. Stracker back to two under. Three holes, two holes, I beg your pardon, to play. Stuart Sink at the 18th. And this is a birdie putt, which is good because he's just dropped shots at 16 and 17. And it is a second round 73 for the 2008 Open champion, Stuart Singh. 50 years young and safely through comfortably to the weekend. And this does not look nice for Wyndham Clark. He can't go anywhere. He can't even go at the green. Now it's always odd when you have to play away and now he's... Well, he's gone from the edge of the bunker on one side to the edge of the bunker on another and might not have a shot yet. Oh, take your time. Definitely want to go for a walk about here. Has to take Ooh. such, oh, there you go. Such a steep descent here. It's so easy to get the club going behind it, Tony, go and, and come off low into that face. It's also easy to hit the lip on the downswing and go straight over the top of the ball over fresh air. This is, so this is horrible. Yeah, I would think. Mm, man. Yeah. He's already right, gone backwards not. once. It might be best to go backwards again. We just hit it right over here and make a putt. Yeah, this is the time when you need some clear thought, don't you? And just settle down. Quick set of the wrists. That's excellent. Cleverly done. You could have got in there frustrated, had a go, and you end up spending the next 10 minutes in there. Wind left to right off the tee here at 14, and then you're playing back into it. Scheffler with the ball below his feet. Wind off the left, second into 14. Fight, Fight ball. Hang on, Luke. 
There comes the slope in to play. You know it's there. You know, you know you don't want to go there. But missing left is more of a penalty. Rosnap. Side by side. Not bad. Up ahead, Fitzpatrick. Looks like he's found some thickish rough here at the 16th. Deep rough. Oh, jumped, all right. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Have to play for a flyer. Carries it over the bunker. Brilliant shot. I mean, to judge it that well out of such a difficult lie. To Fowler. Get a nice run through that fringe, which he did. Stay the two over. A little left to right are coming back, mm. Tony. Yep. Great mm. He definitely knows how to play wind shots, doesn't he, Tommy Fleetwood? I mean, that is just striped at the flag. That is a beauty. I think the way things stand on the leaderboard right now, worst case scenario for Brian Harmon playing with hometown favorite Tommy Fleetwood in the final game. Wow, that would be a tough pairing for the American. Jason Day. Going left. Well, at least it's on the dance floor. Long way from the hole. You can survive that. Scheffler, yeah. Difficult chip way below the green. He could putt it, but it'd be a real whack with a putter, so he needs some spin on this chip. Expect it to come in low. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever option you took there was going to be difficult. And it's so steep to to have to bump and run that you just don't want to do it. Wyndham Clark after a couple of goes out of that front right bunker. This for bogey for the US Open champion. Once again, the bunker takes its toll. Jordan Spieth into the 16th. Don't plug. Don't plug. Don't plug. Don't plug. Tira, dear. Come on, Jordan. Well, he'd be quite glad that they changed the bunkers overnight, raked sand up the face to make it less flat at the bottom. Adam Scott, looking good. One pokey, one birdie, all day. Cam Smith for birdie at 13, hit it right over the top of the flag stick. Very aggressive tee shot, trying to get back to even par. He misses some, but never by very much, Cam Smith, does he? Now he can roll his ball. He saw it 72 holes last year when he hoisted the Claret Jug. Still not out of the conversation. Five shots out of second. Brian Harmon has that huge six-shot lead at the moment. Well, is it that can remain six? Jamie. Well, a chance for a finish here for Fleetwood. Great opportunity this below the hole. Bit of left to right net for Fleetwood up the hill. Yeah. And he did a birdie for Fleetwood on the hardest hole on the course. So he's back on track. Drop shot at 13, bounces straight back. 
back to five under and once again within five and a par five next up Just watch the gallery when this goes in they are so pulling for tommy he's a near local if caddy ian finish he is a local They make a great team. They really do. Play a lot of golf together when they're away from the tour. Now Scheffler for a par. He needs this, doesn't he? He's hovering around that cut mark. Those chips he's hitting are just not checking up on him. So he's had a few of these for par. Sneaky one, this. Three gone in four holes for the world number one. And Scotty Scheffler slips to the cut line at three over par. He needs a big finish. Chauffele, meanwhile, at 13 for par. You may have heard Jordan Spieth begging it not to plug as the ball was in the air at 16. It actually hit the bank and then bounced back into the bunker. Got a beautiful line. And his skills, not going to be a problem. It's lucky it yeah, rolled down into the, the flattish area. And far enough back for the look to be no problem, but you've still got to play the shot, and he played it beautifully. Back three holes to the par three thirteenth and McIntyre. These final holes from, you know, 11 through 14, this stretch with the D estuary down the left and the wind off the left, much easier for a lefty, both Harmon and McIntyre. And we haven't seen too many better than that today at 13. Henrik Stenson. Oh, with a par putt at the last. In fact, we're being told that was a birdie putt. It's a par for him. Good day, though. Three birdies, no drop shots. And a round of 68. So the Troon champion. Heads into the weekend at one under par, within four of second place, to Little Eye and Sepp Stracker. Just want to play a driving short iron. That one got a lot of air underneath it. Safely on board, and that's pretty much all you want there at that 17th hole, isn't it? there not much of it makes 17 a lot easier now yeah, the wind beginning to die down it'll probably get a little bit chilly out there shortly as well but red hot today Brian Harmon five ahead still of Fleetwood Jason Day in amongst the two unders Laurie Cantor's made a couple of birdies so the Englishman has got it to uh, two under par as well. McElroy earlier today, a battling round of 70 to lie at one under par. There's Stenson also in the one unders. Fitzpatrick, good move from him today. Wyndham Clark with a double bogey at 13, dropping back. We saw the tee shot for the Austrian Sepp Straka at 17. Let's see if he can convert, get it to three under par. Tie for third. <laughs> Look at that. Five birdies in six holes, albeit with a bogey sandwiched in there at the 16th. But yeah, he's only two shots behind Fleetwood in second now to Jason Day to get to three under as well. Long range. Had to play away from the bunker. You can see at the top of your pitcher. 
so slow up there. I don't think we've seen anybody actually get to the hole up that year. Fowler. Well below the level of the green at 13. Just didn't carry it far enough. Not nearly far enough. Maybe could have gone with a club less of loft. Yeah, Ricky Fowler is flirting with that cut line as well at two over par. He's not got much wriggle room out there over the closing stretch. Jason Day tee shot tee mark on the left side of the tee markers tells his intent. He's going to play a draw into this front left hole location. Oh, love. Watching the ball play on the graphic just to show you what type of shot the different players try and play. A much lower ball flight than Sepp Stracker. Shane Lowry. Man, he could do with a birdie. Soon. Five holes to finish. Okay. You know, there is a chance with the current trend, Tony. It, it is starting to drift towards four over par at the moment, just in the last hour or so. Spieth. Draw it in. From a good line. Oh. Just getting better and better. That ball didn't. It almost like it landed in another pitch mark the way it hit. I mean, if that would have bounced the way it was coming in, that would have come close to the hole. Wyndham Clark muscling this one out of the rough from 171 at the 14th. It's going to feed away. And down it goes. It's on that lovely little downslope there with the green about seven feet above you. To 13 and the path up for Ricky Fowler. Drifts out to three over the projected cut, but we have a suspicion it could go to four. If it goes to four, it's going to be a massive number of players that make the cut as we go down to Matthew Fitzpatrick. Yeah, it's not a good spot. It's doable. It's just called Michael Erickson over for something. I think it's more the fact he can't ground the club. He's probably asking whether he can. It is a waste area. We haven't seen how it's lying, Anthony. Yeah, it's not great. It's sort of a bit scruffy. I think he can get to the back of the ball. It'd be a good shot if he finds the green. Because he's hitting it quite hard. That's the only issue for me. He's got to dig for this a little, but it, it's not a bad lie considering where he is. But he's fully, I think, four feet to get on the ridge and another foot to get over the, the last little ridge onto the green. So he really has to be careful here. He needs to really go dig and hit this hard. Hmm. Oh, that's got so much worse. In a deep footprint. It's a waste area, it doesn't get raked. That is just, now where do you go? Likely it's his own footprint when he was walking back and forth. Let's have another look here. Just got a little bit too much sand to get the ball hoisted over the top of that massive lip that was at shoulder level to Fitzpatrick. It's, it's better than it was. It's just getting over that lip.
It's like being in a pot bunker, but up the face with a bad lie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, oh. dear, oh, dear. No, no, now it is buried, isn't it? Anthony, it's down there so deep right now, you can barely see the top of the ball from our camera angle. I don't oh. think he can get it up that bank. I can't see how, Jay. I just can't see how. These guys surprise us time and time again, but this one is hard to see getting out of the over the bank. That might have drifted into that. Yes, there it is in the green side bunker. But that's four on the par three and is in the green side bunker. Up and down for a triple. If we only had webcam in here watching Tony and Dom count those up on their fingers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is not fun to watch, though, is it? The only reason he got out is because he went out sideways. Yeah. Played essentially away from the green towards that bunker, which is the lesser of the evils from where he was. Well, he's got a good lie, finally. This is relatively simple compared with what he's just had the last two minutes. Oh, come on. Oh, this game... Two birdies, no bogeys all day. Great day's work, and he's there for five. Fuck, I could bring a man to tears. This was no easy bunker shot. It's a deep bunker shot. He couldn't even see it. He had to jump out of the bunker to see it. It was, you wanted to admire your work there, but unfortunately, that was his fifth shot. is going to go tumbling back to two over par. Sorry, yesterday with Lucas Herbert, didn't we? He was in a great position walking onto that tee, but he made six. I'd love to know what he's writing in that book. It's probably not that pleasant. Well, this should be right to left. I just tiptoed away. I think it was probably wise. Listen to this roar when he rolls this one in for a birdie two. Jason Day is four under on the day, headed to a reachable par five. Speaking of. Two sixty-nine and he's whiffed it really. There's a bunker between himself and the hole there. That's gonna be a tough one. Well, Spieth. Also has a really good look at birdie here. A much harder one to read, Dom. I've seen a number of people miss this this morning. I had a wander out here. It was a difficult one to read. Taking quite a long time as well, Spieth. So you'd think left to right. Yeah, it feels that way. I think it is, but it's not as much, I don't think. It almost tracks back. The hole's almost sitting the other way. why it's called a knee knocker. Missed opportunity for Spieth. He'll be frustrated with that one. Yeah, after hitting the brilliant tee shot to not take advantage of it, it's frustrating. Bob McIntyre. Great second shot into 13. I beg your pardon, tee shot. We saw the tee shot. One of the best we've seen all day, and oh, pace was perfect. I'm afraid it is a triple bogey six at the 17th for last year's US Open champion Fitzpatrick. Real body blow 
though, isn't it? Kepka. Looked to have a really awkward stance. Uh, evades the first one, catches the next. To the double bogey at 13. Clark struggling again. This is for par at the next. That's a great save right there. <laughs> That's a bounce back. Really, a great up and down from right of the green for the US Open champion. Talked about it before the uh, at the start of the week, how he used to get so hot on the course. If he made a bogey, it was, you know, tragedy, and he was got annoyed with himself. Six sixteen yards. Oh, it's hung out right. Missing everything though. Oh, it's gone from a little worried to glorious. That is a wonderful drive. That's a long way down. Up ahead, Matsuyama's third. Yeah, wicked angle here over the depression was some deep grass just landed in the upslope need to carry that another yard and it would have run right out to the hole back to the tee chef up up the left side oh just bounced off the edge of one the second one the foot action the leg action is unique isn't it the amazing thing is that it looks terrible after impact but until just before impact it's actually pretty darn good it's just the after or it's the last six inches of club head travel and after impact cam young's come up well short of the 13th tasty chip good recovery maybe caught a gust of wind or something that was strange seth stracker on the final hole the par five three wood and just smoothed it down there. Powerful lad. And that is perfect. Kepka in the bunker here at 15, playing his third shot. Long bunker shots out of these deep pot bunkers are very difficult. You can't get it going. You have to get it over the lip, which is near vertical. So you can't get it going low enough to hit it far enough or to play the, the kind of the chunk and run extra sand where it comes out lower and runs out. It, it really limits your choices of shots. If you're not up against the face, you have a chance if you're close, if you're short sided. But there, not so much. Got to find a birdie. Same applies for Fleetwood. Be nice. Back to back birdies. A little bit of a wait for them back down this 15th hole. Meanwhile, Matsuyama. That's not going to get there, is it? No. That doesn't even get inside the circle of friendship. Tony just mentioned to me, what's a circle of friendship? <laughs> he doesn't have any friends. <laughs> McIntyre from the fairway at 14. The hardest hole on the course, let's not forget. Tony, I didn't mean to make you laugh so hard. You had to turn your microphone off. I choked. <laughs> right. Be quite pleased after that tee shot and that second shot to be putting for a birdie. Oh. 
Just hanging around even par, only five shots behind Fleetwood, but it's the 10 behind Harmon that will be on Kepka's mind. I think the guys that are chasing besides Fleetwood are thinking, all right, let me try and catch Fleetwood. We'll worry about Harmon later. a little bit of work isn't there for Matsuyama here works his way into it so deliberately nice of the cheeks you don't want to have to work that hard to make a par on a par five that's reachable well it's not been the best of days for Patrick Cantlay because this is for a bogey six he is three over par at the moment make that four over that's three shots gone in the last four holes Had a horrid start double bogey bogey and Cantlay in trouble at four over Oh, down there in that popular position. Thankfully, he's got a bit of green to work with, but it won't be easy. We know that. Yeah, 269 for Scheffler. Oh, he's sitting right down this one. He's hoping this just jumps out of here like mad and runs and runs. Given that everything he's got. He's done well to get it that far. And he's got a decent shot into that pin too. Up to 18 and the two-time Open champion Ernie Els. One foot in, one out. Extricates himself rather well. Problems for Shane Lowry at the 14th, playing three now. Where on earth has that gone, Shane? Some mystery. I hope it wasn't a massive flyer. Matsuyama with the driver at 16. Much easier right now as the wind has died down. <laughs> Earlier today, this was a big two shots just to reach the green. Fleetwood. 235 for Tommy. He can carry that bunker 27 short with a 7 on, but I think it's got to be a 6. It's cold now. Ball's not traveling quite as far, but a perfect spot. Seeing that's okay back there. <laughs> well, is it time for Tommy to push forward and get that first major championship? He's come close in the past. Jason Day is a major winner. Here he is at 18. 
Taking a very confident line. We see many tee up from the right, aim way left and try and cut it back. But Jason Day, certainly confident, aimed it right where his ball ended up with the out of bounds close on the right. Fowler. Got a lot of green to work with. Still not an easy shot though when you're that far below the level of the green. Down breeze off the left, two bunkers are in perfect position for Spieth. Can he find the fairway? Yeah, that looks like they're drifting away from those bunkers. Never any trouble in the middle of the fairway, is there? Big Ernie. Birdie Pat. And she goes, but sadly that's for a 77. And a total of 10 over. It seems to drop. Another open championship done for the Big Easy. Kepler on the 16th. Light the candle! Light the candle. Playing over there on purpose. There's an out of bounds up the right side off the 16th tee. Oh, we wondered where Shane Lowry's ball went. And this is not a happy sight. Well, hopefully, hopefully he can roll that in for just a bogey. Such a surprise. I mean, that's. That's a bogey putt to go to four over par, which it could be the cut, but he was a, a lot of people's favorites coming in. Yeah, and at the moment, four over would not be good enough to make it through to the weekend, let alone five over par. They're the leading contenders at the moment. Very rarely get a situation like this with so many good players that one player manages to separate themselves this much from the rest of the field, especially in a major championship. McElroy, one under par round today. My word, he holds some good par putts at times. It certainly wasn't easy for the world number two and last week's Scottish Open champion. Here's Scheffler. Seen him play a few of these today, and he's not got the spin on it. He cannot go past this pin. It goes down into a nasty little dell here. Needs some spin on this shot, Scheffler. Hit some low. Nicely done. Long birdie putt at 14. Come on, come on, dead on line. But you couldn't be silly. You couldn't. So easy to rush one of those three or four feet by and then sweat it on the way back. Good effort. One of the very few people who's still playing in shirt sleeves out there, Bob McIntyre. Here's Fleetwood over the back of 15, Jamie. Yeah, good lie, but he's into the wind and up the hill here for Fleetwood. It won't turn much, but it's a long way from where he is to that pin. So he needs to be firm with this to get it all the way to this pin. Golden opportunity to get it up and down here. It was a good miss, actually. You can't go right here on 15. It's a beauty. An absolute beauty. They're just pulling them around the golf course, aren't they, with the support? And it does make a difference. The crowd's on your side. Ball 
ball back in his stance. Downward blow, trying to get as little grass between club and ball as possible and achieved it. Straka third at the 18th. No bunkers in the way. This is just all about distance control downwind. This is a big putt, isn't it, for Shane Lowry. This is to drop just the one shot at number 14. And just at the wrong time, it is a double bogey six for the 2019 Open champion, the man who beat Tommy Fleetwood to the title at Portrush and sparked those wonderful scenes of celebration. Where's the birdie? Where's the birdie? Nikolai. Oh, you got? Trying to get into red numbers and does. Very nice. He's got the power to take advantage of the par fives, hasn't he, Nikolai Hoygaard? Meanwhile, uh, Scheffler at one of the two closing par fives. Give himself a, a little bit of wriggle room. This to get back to plus two. Putter has been stone cold. Straka for a closing birdie. A little left to right action in this one to get to four under. And that is some back line, isn't it? Five under coming home, Seth Stracker, the Austrian. Round in 67, and very much in the mix here at Royal Liverpool. It was cleverly played that 18th, Tommy. Obviously, he wasn't going to take risks. You know, you've seen guys making seven, eight, nine. He's done great work all day, played it as a three-shotter, and it paid off. Waited a long time. It's cold out here. There's a bit of breeze about 273. Can you find the putting surface, let alone that right hand flag? Taking it on speed. of the bunker that long floating left index finger of his I can never take my eye off that 272 for Jason Day the more I've walked around today the more I've appreciated these flags they are tight bunkers everywhere it's so hard to navigate your way around here today right. also trying to cut this one in isn't he Jason there, about 20 yards in between the right greenside bunkers and the left greenside bunkers if 20 so that's really stringing it through pretty straight Two fifty-eight for Fitzpatrick going aerial mm, you have to think after the last head's gone down a little is that up in the stands yeah, I think it is Dom. It's a good job it's in that one and not the other one, because part of halfway down there, it's still out of bounds. Unusual. Right, Fleetwood back at 15. This to get to six under within four. favorite they love it better listen to that applause today not going to hear much tomorrow they're going to be holding on to an umbrella hard to clap oh we saw ricky fowler 
from the right hand side to here and makes the par. Not too many of them have uh, read that putt correctly, but Fowler does so. Third for Kepka from the first cut of rough below the level of green at 16. Let's go up a big bank and it bounced a couple of times. You have to think that was a suspect lie because Kepka's a wonderful chipper. Chose to putt. Yeah, it did bounce that high, Brooks. Must have been, I think it must have been lying in the hole, Jay. Must have just hit hope that it wouldn't do that well down the 18th come Jordan Spieth and Fitzpatrick and Jason Day it's been a good group hasn't it Spieth two under tied eighth Day three under tied fourth. Fitzpatrick was going very well till 17. 16th tee, Fleetwood. <laughs> Time to peel it off those two bunkers of the left side. It looks like it might have found one. That's an outside ways job. Yeah, how's this for difficulty? Gripping it down on the steel. That's brilliant. That's you, sheer brilliance. Are you kidding me? That was a serious downslope where the lip of the bunker was probably four feet above where he was standing, and he hit it right into the bank, killed the momentum off that low trajectory shot. That's just unbelievable. Back to 16, Scheffler. Getting at the same bumper that Tommy Fleetwood's in. That might be the first of the two. I think Fleetwood's in the second one, but anyway, they're both in trouble. 14, Cam Young for Paul. Not to be. And that's his first bogey today. So back to two under. But par five next up for him. We'll go to the 16th green and Kepka for his par. Seeing a lot of break and the line was pretty much right, but on the stack nine. It's just gone bogey par, bogey par, bogey. It's got away from him. The ball of Matt Fitzpatrick. He's come down to the drop zone by the side of the stand at 18. Yeah, not left with much. Coming mean, almost down breeze at this point. He's sort of navigating right, maybe trying to run this to the front. He goes out the flag. The heavy light's just going to run through anyway. It's par five, you take it on, you see what you get. Billy's having a look through the middle of the bunker. <laughs> Didn't take him long to decide, did it? No. no. We're going to the front edge, Matt. We're going to the front edge. <laughs> he got halfway and he thought, no chance. Just one thought here, make five. Play. He's, he's still seething about that triple bogey on 17. Got nothing here. 
Just got to try and get it out here, right up the face here for Scheffler. So is Fleetwood. That's all you can do. Now they're going to rake the bunker and Tommy will place his ball back there in the same spot. It's cold out here now. Back to 18 or ahead to 18. Jason Day. Uh, going more the aerial route and maybe just stalled a little into that wind. Just like that flag stick blowing on 18. All of a sudden, the wind has started blowing again. Uh, can you, yeah, do the other footprint. One or two spits and spots of rain on our camera lens. Spieth at 18. <laughs> no idea where it's gone. Yeah, very easy for that to hit the rivet and pop up and come back and hit you on top of the head. Are a serious penalty, aren't they? These bunkers. Got a face for as well. Did well to get it out. I mean, that is just about vertical. I think that. I might be wrong. I thought that actually hit the revetting and then and still popped up. That was the difference between today and yesterday as the rain just starts to fall. This is relatively quick for Fitzpatrick. Be careful here. Oh, no. It's not very often you'll see Matt Fitzpatrick get this flustered on a golf course. And the cut was moving towards four. Right now there's 76 on three or better, and it has now moved, you know, more towards three in the last few minutes. Fleetwood ready to go. Hold on, hold on. Mike Scheffler just punching it uh, back into the fairway. More rain is falling out there. This was in the forecast to start about now and uh, pretty much go through Sunday night with a few intermittent breaks in rain. I don't like the sound of that, Jay. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. I apologize. You are Mr. Doom, aren't you? Even if you are telling the truth. Stop picking on Jay. <laughs> exactly, Anthony. A, Thank you. Just, you. You're just coming out with the facts. It is raining. It is cold. And it doesn't look like it's going to improve. What an up and down this will be. You wouldn't rule this out, though, would you? This man around the greens, just breathtaking. Just slightly up the hill. Just wonder whether the breeze off his right will just play a part in this. He does love a crowd at the end. Just a little bit too high. now that the rain started coming down to get the job done get into shelter it's about the last of the round of 71 for Jordan Spieth so he'll move into the weekend at two under par eight off the lead but uh, currently four behind Tommy Fleetwood in second looking so good after six holes for the par two putts will make the cut it won't feel nice but one putt you get to sleep in for quite a lot longer it's going to be a big cut we think Yes, not a happy camper. I think if it's a three over cut, it's going to be pretty close to 70, maybe 70 to 72. If it goes mm. to four over par, Huge it's going to be in the 
82 to 84 range. You can see the tee shots, both in the bunker, both Fleetwood and Scheffler did well to splash out to the middle of the fairway. Scheffler first, Fleetwood interested spectator to see to see how he goes about this one he might want to forget it though a long way from the hole with that slow slow putt <laughs> i would think tommy could do better but let's go to jason day for his birdie is that one that wants to just break a little bit left to right from this angle i think you want to not get it the ball all the way outside the hole. Started it outside. You need to split the edge at the most. Still a fantastic round for Day. Yeah, four out of par, 67 for the Australian. So he's safely through at three under par. And not just safely through, but in the thick of it. You always want one more, don't you? Same number of birdies and bogeys today for Jordan Spieth, but as Tony said, he was three under through the first six holes, and three over from there on in. Tommy Fleetwood's third into 16 now. 181, right hole location. Oh. There's a couple of bunkers over there. Started right. To, to get lucky, that is going to be so difficult to get anywhere near the hole. Katka up ahead at 17. Putt in the middle of this putt wants to break left to right, right there. So hard to get it high enough to give it a chance. Tough little chip here for Fleetwood, got to skirt the bunker, but he's done brilliantly there, Tommy Fleetwood. Cleverly done, wasn't it? Use the little hollow, that little contour just right of the bunker. Getting wet and getting cold out there now. But his neck will be warmer than most. Oh, to have hair like that. Up the hill now for Scheffler for a four. Doesn't he need it up this bank? It's going to be another one gone, I'm afraid. Scheffler's going to move to four over par, which is outside the cut line. Cameron Smith to get to uh, two over. Matsuyama, a birdie putt. Coming off the slope, the shoulder that intrudes into the green. Done okay. Tough putt that was. Could be a rough old hour or so for those who've got holes to play if the wind does get up and this rain gets a little heavier, but Wyndham Clark not distracted. The US Open champion makes a birdie there at 15. Adam Scott. Another one in the jaws, that was for a par. Second bogey, bogey of the day, just the one birdie. And he's now at two over.
Kepka to tidy up to make his fire at 17. And a big, big putt in the context of this round for Fleetwood now. It certainly is, isn't it? This for a bogey just to drop the one. It's a little bit of break on the right here for Tommy. Wow. Some bogeys are superb. That was one of them. What an up and down that was from Tommy. Scheffler to drop a shot to fall outside the cut line. Seventy six players at three over or better. Scheffler hasn't finished outside the top 12 since last October. This is worth another look. I mean, the, just into the far end of the little upslope. One bounce, then over the top, onto the downslope. That was class. He's a class act, is Tommy Fleetwood. Through the tunnel, and out into this uh, new arena here at Royal Liverpool. Don't forget a brand new hole. third one to go off in this three ball you can just watch what the other guys do get an idea on of clubbing and flight but you don't always have the option they're going outside the grandstand there just so they can try and feel the wind well, we'll come back to 17 in a moment first of all Sander Chauffele back at the 16th 20 minutes the wind has really picked up the shot is much more difficult than it was a half hour ago that ball really settled down and some nasty stuff the only good news is he has lots of green to work with just to kind of update on how things stand on the cut line there's eight guys on the golf course currently right now that are on plus three so things could change when you have that many players right on the line Well, here we go to this amazing 17th hole here at Royal Liverpool. Well, what do you hear? I mean, you could hit two or three clubs here, really. 132. They were hitting eight times this morning, and it's colder now, and more wind. I think nine for Fleetwood. Jamie, what would you give for dead centre of the green right now? <laughs> you pay a lot of money. Tommy Fleetwood, it's not easy this. It's slightly off the right, so he wants to be aiming down the right. There is no miss. Simple as that. Just trying to hit it as straight as you can, then the wind won't touch it. Okay, it's survivable. I think that is, I think, I think that's a case of as the ball gets out of the grandstands, the wind just grabs it. Fowler for a welcome birdie. Oh, laser straight didn't break at all. William Clark after a massive tee shot, second into 16. That 
low finish, the knockdown, links he shot. Playing away from the bunker over to the right, just giving it all the due respect. And Scott launches it. Higher flight here for Adam Scott. Nice, learned his lesson well. Started it a little further right. And Tommy Fleetwoods. Well, as uh, I think Jay said, you didn't want to be going first really there because you've got a much better idea once you've seen Tommy's ball in flight. I'm a, actually, that was Tony that said that, and it's so oh, true. It? Not often he says such truisms, but I don't <laughs> want him to lose that. <laughs> and the stands are still packed late into the evening here. They love this sport, this part of the world. And they're watching the world number one. And he needs a finish here, Scheffler. I love this play. Tee up on the left, so you can start it more down the right. Gorgeous shot. Yeah, a beautiful control, kind of low, short iron shot, just playing a little bit in from right to left. So five back, he's in a little bit of a tricky spot there at 17. Depending on how it's lying. There's an awful lot of people out here hoping for a 3-4 finish for Tommy Fleetwood to get within four of Brian Harmon, our leader, who's, well, he's been up at the top of the leaderboard all day. Maybe a 3-3 finish like Harmon. Oh, that would be nice. I wonder what Brian Harmon has done this afternoon. Just had a little doze, just chilled. Why would you not? Exactly. Harrington. He's three over. For the birdie, he's not going to do anything silly, but... Oh, I didn't want to leave that there, though. Great to see him make the cut. 15. McIntyre for Eagle. This would make his last few holes a lot easier if he could pick up two. Pretty much right on line, and well, we'll give him that one. That'll be a birdie four at the 15th for McIntyre. Jamie, I'm dying to hear you describe this chip. Well, it's not a chip for a start. He's going to putt it. Is he? Thought he might. Mm. It's a safe shot. It's a good light, Tony. He hasn't got much rough to go through, to be honest with you. I think it's a good play, this. It's, uh, I was on doing the par three. They're doing the two par threes you can watch online. This is one of them, obviously. And I watched this earlier. It's quite slow up this bank. But this is a smart play from Fleetwood. I, I, difficult chip. It just grabs you. And then it goes over the hill the other side. Left to right, this one for Fleetwood. Slow down, slow down. There's no easy shot there, Tony. No, that was the percentage shot, wasn't it? Just You just get scared, don't you, Jamie? If it takes a funny bounce, or you under-hit it. And, and then the hands take over in the subconscious and you blast it. Yeah, and it rolls back to your feet and you start again. Oh, no, we don't want that. So up to 18, and Harrington makes the putt. And that is likely going to see him through to the weekend. Well, Seamus Power, who's playing with him, is going to have a bit of a nervous wait. He's four over par, and Taylor Gooch at plus seven will not be through. Adam Scott. Oh, somehow does not manage to find the bottom of the cup at 17. 
broke right across the front edge. It's an immeasurable amount that would need to be hit harder for that to go in. Maybe an hour earlier, less growth, that would have gone in. That's the difference between a two and a three for Scott at 17. So who's next? Is it Scheffler for the birdie or is it Fleetwood for the par? I think it's Tommy to go, Tom. And it's just across the green. Scheffler's is left to right, so I've got to think Fleetwood is just on the right side here from where he is. Look, he's level par for the day. That's pretty good. It's pretty cold out here now. You can knock this in, birdie the last. Or even if you miss it in birdie the last, it's still a good day for Fleetwood. Big chair. He does make the putt. He remains at five under par with just the par 518 to come. Huge save right there. Far from an easy putt. Had a pretty good break from right to left. Just showed a lot of heart there. That's two good saves, isn't it, really? The bogey save back at 16 and then that one for par as well. This is important for Scheffler. Yeah, that's a big part. This one is it's definitely left to right outside the hole here for Scheffler down the hill. Look at the wind tugging at his trousers up on that hill. You have to think the wind played something in that. The wind was going the same direction as the slope and Scheffler now looks like he'll have the weekend off barring something special at 18. Clark, slow putt at 16. You've got to give this such a thump. Very few people have managed to get it to the hole. That's about as good as we've seen. That's well done. To the par 3 13th, where the Frenchman Antoine Rosna has a par putt. No sun. The wind is picked up. Getting colder. It's going to be tough for these guys coming in. I mean, these guys are nearly finished. One hole left to go, but they're going to have a long wait at 18, most likely. The, the Rosners back into the field. The next hour and 20 minutes is going to be very difficult. That's the other. There is going to be a delay on this tee for the group behind, and that is a ripper. Kepka all the way over on the right hand side of the tee. Driver. It up right, trying to slide it left to right. Seldom does Kepka make a bad decision. Everyone makes poor swings. Important putt here for Smith. He's right on the cut line. This is to stay on three over, which is the cut line. Powers it through the break. Like Scheffler, Kim Smith goes to four over. He made a double bogey at the 14th, the defending Open champion. Then he's dropped a shot there at 16, so two holes to go. Smith at plus four. Scheffler with just the par five, 18th to come. Also a four over par outside the cut line, battling to make it through to the weekend of the 151st Open. Well done to the Scottish qualifier, Michael Stewart, through to the weekend. Enjoy watching him out there today.
playing with Antoine Rosner. Richard Bland is also at a one under par. Victor Hovland comfortably through to the weekend as uh, Tom Kim and the others who are under par here at Royal Liverpool. Hmm, interesting. Juicy stuff. Oh, Ricky. All Ricky. about the strike. Oh, ooh. Did not like that second bounce. Fifteenth hole of par five. Cam Young on his knee. Does very well to get it out with the left knee up the right foot down in that deep bunker. McIntyre also well left, but a good lie. Stand still. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ball visible. Is that something? There you can see the Fleetwood Scott Scheffler group waiting on 18 T. They're actually there as the previous group of Kepka, Cantlay, and Metsiyama walked off. And you know, it's cold. You can see uh, the hands underneath the uh, arms folded, trying to keep your hands warm. But it's a long wait. The temperature's dropping. It's getting, you know, on and off a little bit of rain. Cantlay. A long way back. And this is a three-shotter. Nudge this into position and wedge it in and hole a putt. Cantley doesn't play checkers. He plays chess. He knows he needs a five to be around for the weekend. As long as you're around to fight, you can move up. Clark. Started five or six yards right of the flag. Let the wind blow it in and uh-oh. Uh oh down she goes. To 18 once again, 277 to go here for Hideki Matsuyama. Obviously gonna aim left. Play away from the out of bounds. You can see the flags on the marquee on the right just whipping. Definitely got a bit of turf first, then ball, didn't he? And on this tight links turf, that's never going to work. Back to the 17th and Xander Schauflate. Same place has a 132 yard hole ever put so much fear into so many guys' hearts. We haven't seen anybody come up short at 17 in quite some time. I think that's the wind in their face that's just picked up in the last 15 minutes. A lot of green to work with and an upslope to go up, so that'll help slow this down. Just a question of where to pitch it, what club to use. And I'd say both choices were pretty darn good. Well, Fowler's at three over par, so he hasn't got a great deal of wriggle room. Cam Smith now at the 17th at four over. Needs to pick up a birdie in the last two. That's a good start, but there's a putt that we know is hard to play far enough left to give it a chance to go in. Oh, we've just been told this is the fourth shot for Kepka. T shot was out of bounds.
second shot was out of bounds for Kipper. Clark. Oh. Oh. Touch of class. I thought you said that bunker was tough. No, that bunker's a dream bunker. Is it? Okay. You know what, Jay? When we had a look at this on Wednesday, it's, it's actually the only bailout place on the entire hole, isn't it? That left-hand bunker. And it's still not easy. But, yeah. Whew. He's closing three holes. My goodness. So Kepka hits his second out of bounds. He now lies four. He's on one over par. I know where you're going with this, Jay, and I don't like it. At least I don't have my shoes and socks off like Tony did when he was counting up earlier. <laughs> well, Cantley actually just made a really nice birdie at the 17th to get back to plus three. So the right side of the current cut line, as we say, it could go either way. This is his third. Yeah, and as you said, Jay, this was smart, wasn't it? He knows five is good enough. Just don't do anything silly. Safe tee shot, safe second shot, safe third shot. Utterly professional play this is. Young from long range at 16. Needs to get up, had to go up a step and so slow and there's a little moisture on the green. We had that little bit of drizzle there. It's gone away, but was there. Tee shot for Fleetwood at 18 with less than driver. Oh, yeah. That's pure class right there. Look at that. Playing it as a three-shotter, I think, like Cantlay. Taking all the trouble out of play. Fifth shot now up ahead for Brooks Kepka. Careful, there's a bunker back there, but there's a bank there. It'll, it'll feed back off. You know. These guys are the best players in the world. Just goes to show you how difficult that pitch was over the bunkers that are short left of 18. Back to the tee. Scheffler also not with driver. Jesus, Lucas. Light the candle! Little fairway finder, low burner. Wind behind. Don't need driver. Likely, especially the way Scheffler's ran out there. Got a lot more run than what Fleetwood did. Scheffler should be able to reach the green in two if he chooses. Yeah, well, as it stands, he needs to uh, make a four there. Matsuyama played that pretty quickly, and I think he's found Bunker. Hmm. One over standing on the tee, and there it is, up against that face. Close to the face, Tony. Yeah, no, this is no fun, is it? And he'd be so disappointed. A good drive. He could have got home in two ETH. He had the the metal wood out and now struggling, really struggling for a par. Oof, these are scary. They really are scary. Getting a lot of flex in his knees. I'm gonna release this club head down and past his hands. There you go. Come on, Ricky. You need this power. That's a clutch part, isn't it, from uh, Fowler. So he stays at three over par, two holes to play. The 
putt here from Brooks Kepka is his sixth shot on this closing par five. And he has to deal with a shoulder coming off that bunker to the left. So have some left to right to it. That's pretty good. That wasn't to be confused with simple. There's some real class players that are going to just barely make the cut by a shot or two. I'll tell you what, there's going to be some great action if you like to watch feature group coverage tomorrow morning. Bryson DeChambeau for birdie back at the 15th. He's at three over par. Well, that'll help. One other for the day. That's good work. Young, we saw from the lower level, come up a good bit short at 15 for par. I'm afraid that is two bogeys in a row for Cameron Young. So he's back to one under and he is frustrated. Apologies for the bad language there. Well, let's see if Cam Smith, one of the best putters in the world, can work this one out. This for birdie at 17. Yeah, everyone misses that to the right. TV flattens everything out, but his heels were so were, were well above the ball at address. And they've all just got it to the hole, Jay. Pretty slow putt. Cantlay. For the birdie. That was known as a filthy lag to make the cut. Yeah, it'll be good enough. And he's going to have an early start on Saturday here at Royal Liverpool. Matsuyama from the other side of the hole here, Tony. Yeah, for the par. And to stay under par. Excellent stuff from the Japanese gentleman. One bogey, one birdie, and all pars. Brooks Kepka for a, a double bogey seven at the last. And in contrast to yesterday, when he started slowly and finished strongly, it's been a complete reversal of fortunes today for the PGA champion. He has come home in 41, which is five over par. This back nine has taken a dreadful toll, Tom, hasn't it? The last ten groups or so, wow, it's been tough. Back down this hole. And he's having a crack at it with his two wood from 310. He'll get relief into the drop zone. Just find a half decent line. Chip and a putt, Mr. Fleetwood. Six under par. Happy days. everything didn't he and when you're that far back yeah. that tight right out of bounds has to be lurking in the back of your mind Scheffler 276 there for Scott he's had a couple of clubs out here between the three and the four perfect tee shot really and with the way he shapes the ball left to right, he's got a chance. It's downwind, a little bit off the right for Scheffler. It's perfect breeze for him.
Oh. Oof. Oh. It tried its best for him. Ooh, I was a little worried with the amount of left to right on that. Certainly an aggressive line. He's going to need a, a good break to be far enough away from the lip of that bunker to get it up and down to be around for the weekend. Another look from the high camera. He's lost it a little to the right. Where does it end up in the bunker? That's going to be okay. On the angle, I think he's going to have a shot. Good news is he's not far away from the hole, so he doesn't need to blast it a long way. Get up in the air, it'll hit the down slope and trickle down there by the hole. Good chance to get up and down. Yeah, and especially with it being sort of semi-plugged. If he just gets it out over the lip and lands, it will run out to the hole. And he's number one in the world for a fairly good reason. Aggressive play from Wyndham Clark here on the 18th tee. He's got the driver in hand. I think he played it over there on purpose. I believe he did the same thing yesterday. It's a good lie, clean lie. Yeah, I think you're right, Jay. We set up over there and well, there's no out of bounds. No, it looked like a good swing. That's why I think he was set up over there. He said it, but a good swing. It didn't look like a left swing. From 18, let's uh, drop back to the 15th hole, the par five. And this is a birdie part for Nikolai Hoygar, who's making a nice move out there on the back nine. Well, I say that, I didn't realize he dropped a shot at 14, but anyway, it is a birdie, so a nice bounce back. And he's at one under par. He's going to get a big reception here. They love him. And why wouldn't you? One of the nicest men you will ever come across. I'm just wondering, Tony, is he going to go to that same drop zone that Matt Fitzpatrick was in, in which case it's quite tough to actually go for the pin from there. He might be looking at the front of the green. Either one, I think. Purely down to which one he's nearest to. He will drop it in the nearest drop zone, I believe. Rosner for par at 14. 14 has really taken its toll on the field today. Yeah, it's been the hardest hole on the course today. Only 10 birdies in the entire field. De Shambo. <laughs> this is a par putt at the 16th. Remember, he's just birded 14 and 15. So De Shambo is going to slip back to three over par. As we head to the 18th, and Cam Smith also with the driver. Started on those bunkers. And drill it with a little fade. The wind will do the rest. Oh. A bit a, like that, Tony. A bit like that, I would say. <laughs> That's just a delight, isn't it? Oh, he'd be able to cruise it onto the green from there. We've taken a drop, Fleetwood, to the nearest drop zone. Actually, nearer the hole, doesn't matter. There's a real fluffy lie. It's downwind, it's going to get away from him, so he's going to have a good look. He's looking at the miss behind the pin here. That's what he's looking at. What's it like there? Because it's going to be hard to stop this. He's got to carry that bunker, and he's going to pitch on a slight downslope, so it could get away from him, this one, Fleetwood. But, yeah, he's got magic hands. 
He's going to have to flirt with that bunker if he wants to get close here to make his four Fleetwood, but tricky shot this. Jamie, Matt Fitzpatrick was in that drop zone a while ago and he and Billy Foster had a very long conversation about it. In the end, decided to just play for, to the front of the green, short of the green. He's not going to do that, Dom. I don't think. I think he's, he's in the mood to take it on and entertain. He's going to have to lob this right up. You've got to get it all right here. Long's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world here. Anywhere within 10 or 15 feet. Oh, unlucky. Caught the downslope of the bunker. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. But now it, it's on a slight downslope. Has to pitch over the bunker, landed on a downslope. That is not an easy shot. Good news is he's got the wind helping him. The, the wind is in his face. He's still not sure that it's not in the bunker. Well, drama here on 18. Fleetwood's ball has missed the bunker. Not too bad. Just kicked it to the left now. Scheffler's got to take this one on. Tough lie. Got that lip right in front of him. Got to pick it up quick. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, that little half plug lie helped him hugely there. You see that ball hit the top of the, of the face and mm -hmm. came up with a weird spin. It came mm. out soft after it hit that and it came out with top spin and ran down there. What a break. Well, yeah, he may feel this course owes him one. He's not had a lot of luck out there today. There you go. Too far away from needle three, was it? Remember, he needs to make birdie here in all likelihood to make the cut. Oh! <laughs> yeah, that's worth it, Chair. He's a wonderful young man, a great sense of humor. This is a bit like the chip shot in a 16, just over the knuckle of the bunker. Going to try and kill it into the bank, get it over the top. Pretty good, nearly very good. Just get the five. Get out of there. Hand the card in. Come out fighting tomorrow. 16th Cameron Young for birdie. Coming off back to back bogeys. Oh, and that one's not dead. Back up to 18. And Adam Scott. He's two over. He's going to make the cut, but he'd love to pop this in for a par. Ouch. Two gone, I'm afraid, in the last three holes for the Australian, who so very nearly won the 2012 Open at Royal Leven. So he's in, but uh, again, he'll have an early start tomorrow. Now, coming down with four holes to play, he had two hands on the claret jug, but it was a loose grip. And we'll come back to 18, but first of all to Ricky Fowler at the 17th, and he makes his pass, so he stays at three over. That's two terrific pars, the last two holes. Two great saving putts. Brave stuff. There's an awful lot of effort going into the, these final few holes from these players. You can see what it means to make it through to the weekend 
in the final major championship of the year, can't you? And Tommy Fleetwood has this for a closing par and uh, a level par round of 71. Yeah. Very nicely done. He really had to work hard over those closing holes, didn't he? Good up and down at 16 for bogey for par at 17 and again there at 18 for par. And Fleetwood will head into the weekend at five under and you would expect that'll be enough to play his way into the final two ball with Brian Harmon. Scotty Scheffler makes his birdie from the greenside bunker. So the world number one is through as well. Wow, that was, that was adventure, wasn't it? What a four out of that bunker. Whew. Fatigue will have set in. What a tough, tough afternoon. He has been an early man in majors, hasn't he? Tommy Fleetwood, he's come close a few times. And is this going to be the weekend when he gets the job done? It could hardly come at a better place if it's going to come, but let's not forget, he still goes into the weekend five behind Brian Harmon, so plenty of work to do. As they head off, we're going to have a uh, change up in the country box. Who's joining Tony Johnston and Jay Townsend? It's a very warm welcome to Tom Abbott. Thank you, Dom. Yeah, what excitement we have for the weekend here at Royal Liverpool, but still an hour and a half or so for play to finish up in this second round. A number of players still out on the golf course under par, and the next group to finish up. Includes Xander Shuffley, who's trying to make the cut here. This is second to the par 5, 18. Ooh, that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, we've seen a couple of shots. Your heart's in your mouth when you see them head off over that corner and over the grandstand. It won't be a simple chip, but... Man, that was aggressive. Especially a three over par. I mean, all oh. he needs to do is make par. He's here for mm. the weekend. Wyndham Clark is a couple under. Just got it up and down out of the bunker at 17. This is second from the other side. And I'll update you on where that has finished up. Uh, it's been uh, a play that some have taken on, just knocking it down the left side off the tee. Cameron Smith has knocked it down the fairway. Well, it was a brilliant, aggressive driver off the tee. Leaving only an iron for a second shot, but needs a four or better to make the weekend. Oh. Just. How about a two? Brilliant. Just brilliant. Best of the day right there. He didn't shy away, didn't play safe off the tee, threaded the out of bounds and bunkers. Left and right off the tee with the driver. And this is just pure talent. The champion golfer of the year from a year ago, showing true class there, Tony. Oh, I mean, smoke oh, the drive. And this How is about a two? Just brilliant. Just brilliant. Best of the day right there. He didn't shy away. Let's have a look at this from another angle. High. Straight as an arrow. Nice bounce for a second. You thought, oh, oh don't do that. And it didn't. Came all the way back. And he's going to have a kick in eagle. That was just fabulous. Fabulous. Been waiting all day to see someone do that on 18. Ricky Fowler had problems here yesterday, an eight at uh, the final hole. He's going with an iron for safety today. Turn the hole. 
and oh dear. All right. Oh no. No. Oh yes. I think it stayed inside the line. The line runs oh, along the top of that little ridge, the cop as they call it. But oof. With a few spots of rain coming down that was uh, in the forecast for late in the day but it won't dampen the spirits as cam smith makes his way onto the 18th green and it won't be a departure from the championship early for last year's champion courtesy of that second shot he'll have a putt to get to two over par and make it in easily for the weekend and even if he makes birdie it will be uh, it will be good enough to see him in for saturday he'll have an early tea time tomorrow Well, that was just special. Well, this man challenged him last year for the title at St. Andrews. Cam Young on the tee at 17. He's been struggling on the back nine. Could use a strong finish, and that's a good start. <laughs> Aggressive shot, to say the least, there at 17. Nikolai Haggai out at the uh, 16th. And he's going along well, Tony. Mm. No, he's he's a talented player, isn't he? Got in here via the Scottish Open last week, and not the first player to misjudge that up that ridge and come up six or seven feet short. That's where Wyndham Clark's ball finished. Control it. I feel like. <laughs> that's it. Well, yeah. I feel like if I hit a low one, could just turn the face yeah. over. Yeah. Okay. Just a higher one. Just okay. Like that. He says he's going for the lower one. If he's going to do that, he's trying to hit it right of the front left bunker. And left of the other bunker and shanked it. Shanked it. Wow. Talk about the shank out of the long rock because we've seen it a couple of times this week. Jordan Spieth did it on the eighth. I mean, you'd think the club would turn it, be turned over. What happens there when it. You're asking a question of something we're not supposed to speak about. <laughs> That's a result of trying to hit the lower one, trying to swing it a little bit more inside the line. Oh, ugly. You don't even want to think about it. This is not an easy shot for Shoffley. Up and down to sleep in a little longer. Flex of the knees. I think he knew he'd carried it maybe a yard too far. Needed a very soft bounce, but it's not too bad, is it? Oh, this is not too good. Now, this is much more difficult than the one that Scheffler had because this is not a super deep bunker, not like the three at the top of your screen, short left, but it's still a decent height. When your right foot is out of the bunker, that, that makes more of a descending blow. You tend to hit a lower trajectory, and it's a downslope coming off the back of the bunker. Very difficult to not hit this at least 10 feet past the hole. I don't think he's even going at the flag. No. Oh. Just trying to gouge it out, get it on the green. Try and leave a tar tut. These bunkers can instill tremendous fear in you. Back over to the 17th and Cam Young for a birdie and what has been the fifth hardest hole on the golf course today, but we have had uh, 19 birdies. Oh. We've seen so many good shots in here and so few putts hold. Hole cut in a very tough spot.
Yeah, Nikolai for his par at the 16th. It's a strange leaderboard in a way with a player who has uh, a big lead, but a player who's won a couple of times on the PGA Tour but has never won a major championship before. So you think that the door is open. For, you know, look at a player like Wyndham Clark, still has a very good chance over the weekend despite being quite a way back uh, heading into Saturday. Yeah, for a guy like Harmon, you're only halfway there. But with a five shot lead, you're somewhat in control of your own fate. And if you're tied to the lead, you know, you can go out and play well and someone just can play better than you. But if Harmon goes out and plays reasonable the weekend, I think 10 under is a winning score, to be honest with you, with the weather coming in. Shame to let a shot slip away at 18, the par five. Playing as one of the easier holes on the golf course. But that being said, you can make an eagle, but you can also run up a big score, and that's what makes it fun, I suppose, to watch, not necessarily to play. You know, if you take, with the weather coming, it's going to be windy and rainy on Saturday's the forecast. It's going to be less wind and rainy on Sunday. If you take Harmon out of it, you're thinking on a very difficult golf course, mind you, it is going to be play a little softer, you're thinking five under is a pretty good winning score. It's, it's in his hands, really, isn't it? If you think 500 winning score, this is to go to two over. Shoffley's not out of it. And a player who's come close to winning majors on a number of occasions. A couple of runner-up finishes, a couple of third-place finishes in major championships. And that's a four to finish for Xander Shoffley. Four under tomorrow, gets to two under. Depending on what Harmon does, Shoffley has a chance. What a three at the final hole, Tom. Yeah, an eagle for Cam Smith. He may well play alongside Xander Shoffley tomorrow. This is 72 for Smith, but it guarantees that he'll be here for the weekend. He said he was emotional handing back the claret jug, more so than he expected. And he was able to take the claret jug back to his home club after he won it last year and they were having their uh, their prize giving evening and he was able to uh, go to his home club with the claret jug and get the reception from the members back in australia yeah what a feeling that must be yeah, go on Four. let's have another Four look at this the weekend because it was special. Oh. Just. How about a two? Brilliant. Just. See it again from this angle. It was this little bounce here, you know, that's Link Skulls, isn't it? You think, wow, if that kicks a bit right, it starts to flirt with that bunker. Mm. Best of the day, and just when the defending champion needed it, it was outside the cut line, makes that eagle three at the final hole to get inside the cut line. Just finish of a true champion. Ricky Fowler was fortunate here. He's very close to the out of bounds line, which is just to his right. eight to finish his opening round and not looking good. Right here after playing two, still in the left rough. Oh God. For the birdie and like. 95% of the field before him getting slightly flummoxed by what the ball does around that hole.
first twin brothers to play in the Open, along with brother Rasmus. Let's go to the 15th hole, and Rosner has this putt for an eagle. Pretty good. It was online. I think that, as you said, Jay, that little bit of rain we had has definitely just slowed these putting surfaces down. Now, this is important. You can see rain falling. Virtually straight downwind here, but out of the primary rough for Fowler. <laughs> You'd be standing here, Jay. Just you'd be thinking, please, please, let me get this anywhere on the putting surface. Need anywhere. To, needs a par to be around for the weekend. This is not going to be easy. Strike sounded okay. That went in with enough. Pace. It might be right up there in the uh, area where we saw Scheffler get it up and down, right up against the face. No, he's far enough away. No, that's playable. Not bad. Bio Kim is five over par. He's got this. Excuse me, he's uh, six over par. He's got this to get it to five over, so he needs a birdie eagle finish. And he's uh, fought his way back. He's birdied 15 as well. So this would be a really good late rally for the Korean if he can make it in for the weekend at three over, which is going to be the cut. We thought it might fall higher than that, but uh, the way the scoring is looking right now, three over is the number. I fancied Robert McIntyre to go better this week after coming so close last week and playing well the week before. 64 in those 30 mile an hour winds to a post to score and it was only two phenomenal birdies of 71st and 72nd holes by McElroy that tipped him but I think McElroy's back-to-back -back birdies might be birdies of the year but it was round of the year that 64 at Renaissance Club last week the weather was too good over the first two days for Bob it needs to be worse here Cam Young on the tee at the 18th Yeah, that'll do. I'll be able to get it home in two. Just a question of if he decides to take it on or not. Lowry. Rain's Golden hands. Yeah, rain started to fall a little bit harder, and that was just laying the sod over it from Shane Lowry. You just don't see that. Wonderful short game. Wow. Absolutely shocked to see that. Jay. Rosner for his birdie at the 15th. Okay, he's fighting back. It's been a tough day. He's had five bogeys on the card. Opened up with a birdie at the first today, but three over now for the round, but still under par for the championship. Here's Bryson on the tee at the 18th. We talked about that with the officials earlier in the week, about how comfortable they were with that play. I think the RNA is not comfortable with players hitting it into a gallery, but it is an option of the 18th that we've seen a lot of players take. Well, I think the RNA has kind of, have kind of forced the hands to play it over there with the out of bounds so close on the right. Lowry's a fourth, comfortably missing the cut for the 2019 champion. And the players are always going to, only going to react to the way the course is set up. Now Ricky needs to get it up and down. Very doable. For a guy of his talent. Sweet shot. 
I mean, you know how much this means to the guys to make this cut. Ricky Fowler doesn't hit irons off the tee the way he did on 18. That's purely down to stress. Just trying so hard. Too hard, maybe. But a beauty there out the sand. McIntyre even par on the day. Three over for the championship. Birdie putt. Needs to get down in two to be around for the weekend. Made some birdies today. He's got four birdies on the card. Struggled off the tee a little bit, just 6 of 13 fairways, 11 of 17 greens. Okay. Basically, it's the job done. Knock it in. Live to fight tomorrow. Well, he may well relish some poor conditions tomorrow if the, if the weather is bad. I was just thinking that from the west coast of Scotland. Uh, he'll be used to the weather that we're going to be faced with tomorrow. Many won't. Level par 71 for Bob McIntyre from Oban. Good whiskey in those parts. If you like that kind of thing, yeah. I tend to. <laughs> well, this will be very disappointing for Shane Lowry. No doubt. And you know, this was this was a lovely draw for Lowry. And McIntyre, they get on well, good friends. And that just about sums up his two days, doesn't it? Not a single birdie on the card. I think you would have got really good odds against that. Yeah, it's a true links golf course. He's a just an absolute genius on the links and just doesn't have his game right now. If you don't have your game on this golf course, it'll bring you to your knees. Fowler needs to take care of this one to be here for tomorrow. So we'll have some big name players playing early in the draw tomorrow, which will Bring out some fans, I think, at the beginning of the day. Cam Smith and Zamba Shockley in the group ahead, finishing at two over par. Ricky, three over. Bryson DeChambeau in the group behind, also three over par. A little bit of a wait for the group behind. Bryson DeChambeau, we understand, has laid it up. Remember, he went way left off the tee. Siwoo Kim in the fairway. 267 to the hole, easily within reach. Just taking a little bit off of that fairway metal. That is that's not a good leave. Not a good leave at all. Primary rough and, well, that bunker might be in his way. And this is where Cam Young drove it tight down the right. A much shorter second shot. Nicely done. Absolutely hard to the green. And he will have a putt for the fifth eagle of the day at uh, the 18th in this second round as the rain begins to fall here at Hoy Lake. And Brian Harmon 
a man who's won twice on the PGA Tour from the state of Georgia in the US with a five shot lead, 65 today. Cameron Young, I've been watching him playing the 18th. He's got a chance to get it to three under with that long eagle putt. So two putts to get in the house at two under through two days. Laurie Cantor, along with a few players at one under par, will be watching as we uh, bring this second round to a close. And Bryson with a sensible layup here. After driving the left rough, very nicely done. Not only a distance that he can have some options on how he wants to play it, but a good angle to a right hole location. Right correct, yeah. Less than full shot. I want to take a little air out of this one. Yep, you got it. Probably not land it much more than the front edge of the green. Should be a birdie for Bryson. He'll finish at two over par if that goes in. Right. Eagle required to make the cut. For Kim. Just keep fading a little. Nice. That's step one done. Back out to Richard Bland, 50 years of age. Playing in his fifth oh, open. Great shot. First played back in 1998. He had that look on his face like, I don't like what's coming in here with the weather. <laughs> and I've still got a few holes to go and it's not quick. Aggressive club selection for Hoygar off 18. Just a beautiful swing. I think you need to pan a little bit more left. He's not short off the tee. It's in the fairway, no problem. Shake of the head. No, I don't like this tee shot. It's too intimidating. Rosna. Softly. Softly. Long drive at 16 and. Settle down, settle down, well played. I think it's getting a little bit darker and murky out there. Sammy Valamaki here with an important birdie. Umbrella getting in the way, but it goes in. Gets him to three over par and on the cut line. He's a couple under for the day now. In the final group out there. And the rain coming down a little harder. Eagle putt at the 18th for Cam Young. Man who grew up at Sleepy Hollow, beautiful golf course up in uh, New York above the city. Yeah, well done. Him up to, to finish out, will he? No, gonna go and take shelter under the umbrella. It's chucking down now. Hang on, where's my umbrella? Sorry, boss, it's over there in the bag, the other side of the green. Yeah, we saw Siwoo Kim over on the right side with his second, so chipped up to here this for birdie so it should be a par but he is going to miss the cut eight over for this second round Laurie Cantor at the 15th for birdie 
Oh my word. What a shame. Uh, he's still under par for the day. Oh, just when you're just itching to get out of the way. Just please go in. Get under shelter. A round of 80 today for Siwoo Kim. Not like him at all. Especially when you think he was a couple under par yesterday and in contention and falls away today with that performance. Now Bryson to finish at two over par. really going to town on this line. To sleep in? For another hour, hour and a half? Okay. A lot of idiosyncrasies with his game standing so close to the golf ball. But uh, obviously something that he is feeling right now. It's interesting that uh, that putter is so, the shaft is so vertical. There is a rule that has, the shaft has to diverge from vertical by a certain number of degrees. That, that one's close. Nice two putt there from Cam Young. And a good couple of days as he tries to put himself back in the mix like he was 12 months ago on the old course at St. Andrews. And just in time that they don't have to play too many holes in this heavy rain. Rosner. Birdie tried 16. Just nudging it up close. Par at 16 is not a bad thing today. Nice tee shot for Bio Kim. He needs an eagle here. He needs a good one. Landed about a foot inside the out of bounds and is now on the side hill lie. That, that's a little mound that the out of bounds line runs atop. That's going to be a very tough lie, especially considering that with the rain falling, that grass is now wet. Yeah, this is a shot you would definitely like to be playing with a dry golf ball. Oh, that's gone in at pace right up the far side of the bunker. That might be an on the knees special to get out of there. Well, he's got some uh, compatriots there in the grandstand. You think they'd cuddle up and share that tiny umbrella? Ah, uh, Marcel Seam on the tee at the 17th. He's one over. Yeah, dropped a couple of shots on the back nine. Oh, oh, oh. We haven't seen too many short today. Only in the last hour when the wind kicked up and it got a little more chilly had did we start seeing the bunkers, that bunker in play. Now Richard Bland. Oh, after a brilliant shot in the 60, one of the best we've seen all day, that was just a shame to not capitalize on a great shot. Well, Brian Harmon 
is a man who likes to go hunting out in uh, the US. But, uh, the hunter is the hunted this weekend here at Royal Liverpool. As Tommy Fleetwood will be the home favourite. McElroy around in 70 today, flirted with uh, a really good day after the first half of his round, but fell away on the back nine. Still, he's in contention to go back to back, having won the Genesis Scottish Open in such uh, a stylish way with birdies at 17 and 18 in horrible conditions at the Renaissance Club last week. And when you think that birdie came from a side hill line out of a divot on 18, just one of the best iron shots you'll ever see into a very strong 30 mile an hour gusting wind. And had to wait a long time to hit his birdie putt to win. Great stuff from McRoy last week. Okay. Bunker can. Just get a four. Just get it on the green. Far enough back from the lip to be able to do so. Happy days. The lip on that bunker is probably, I would say, at least eight feet high. Well, Kim is not out of bounds. You can see the white line there. It's funny. It's not a straight line. It sort of wiggles along on the, what they call the cop, that little bank of grass. And he is going to miss the cut now. That one needed to go in. Such a deflating feeling, you know, you've, you've done something a little special at the death and the, the dream is still there. Now it's all over. Oh dear. Oof. Can he get this out? He can. I'm not sure he could have yesterday before they changed the way they raked the bunkers uh, this morning. Certainly taking its toll on Nikolai Hoegar. Smart play though. It was just about the only shot he had. Sensible shot. Not known for their umbrellas in Denmark. <laughs> for the par, we know how much this breaks from left to right. Just about, I don't think we've seen anybody read it correctly. Everybody's underread it. Oh, but not Marcel. Oh, he does wear his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? And that's why we love him. What a par! Two years ago at St. George's, the Open Championship, when Marcel Seam entered the week off the radar and came in with a great finish that week and really resurrected his career to come on. And, of course, he got that win at the Indian Open earlier this year in the DP World Tour. And uh, it's great stuff to see Marcel Seam playing at the top level again. Back over to the 18th. And I think Kim will be next to go. Just trying to get into the house now. Feel putt back down the green. This for Birdie to finish at four over, but it's not going to be good enough. Got 77 players inside the cut line at the moment. It's top 70 in ties, which is higher than normal on uh, really more most of the main tour 65 and ties now has uh, become the norm Good. Antoine Rosner at the T at the 17th coming off that birdie at uh, 16 excuse me 15 Hard 16 and a good safe shot away from the trouble at 17. 
until your ball comes to rest in the short grass, you are not comfortable at 17. And you can't see the, the bottom of the putting surface from down on that, that tee. They call it an infinity par three. Kazuki Yasimori's fourth shot coming up. He's right on the cut line as well. Oh, you could ask for an easier two putt to make the cut, couldn't you? I'm not sure if the problem is he's on a little bit of a downslope here, mm. and he, the ball's below his feet. I think eight feet right because there's a shoulder coming off that bunker mm. that's you know kind of the right side of your screen. It's going to push it left to right putting. I think eight feet hole high right is a fantastic effort. Mm. You wouldn't want to get too cute with the edge of that bunker, Jay. You get it a foot too far left and that it goes in the bunker. Steady. Oh, slowly, slowly, slowly. Well, that's the thing. If you hit it that hard, it doesn't take that break left to right. If you hit it the right pace, that's going to go well right. So you pick your poison, essentially, from a bad spot. And a big putt coming up for the 25-year-old from Osaka, who made his way into the championship courtesy of a tied for third finish at the Mizuno Open on the Japanese tour. Still a birdie putt to come here, despite uh, going in that bunker on the left side of the green. This time of the night and with some of the rain that's fallen, we've already had a couple of heavy showers. Difficult to get it to the hole, did he? He did get it to the hole, but just narrowly misses. Danes are very happy, and we were up there a couple weeks ago at the Major in Hammerlin, and uh, where his brother Rasmus won. And what golf-loving people the Danes are! Uh, they've been hanging on all day to see him finish. Well done, folks, and that'll mean a lot to him. There they are. Tom, that's dedication in this weather. The guy on the right hasn't even taken the label off his umbrella. He's not even going to use it. <laughs> Might take it back, get his money back. <laughs> his third time playing in the open and uh, second time he's made the cut. There you go, leave the label on, take it back. Only needs it if it really starts coming down over the weekend. Big putt here. This to make it in for the weekend. Uh, we've, we've been there and done this. Open championship. A putt to play on the weekend. At this point in time, it just means everything to Yasamori. Oh, what a pity. Well, you man who's ranked 944th in the world uh, to play the weekend of a major championship would be a big deal but unfortunately it's going to be uh, a fall at the final hurdle Richard Bland on the tee at the 17th Back up here with the rain softening the greens a little. Now Kim for a par. Oh. It's going to be the weekend off for the 32 year old from Seoul. He's been playing his golf mainly on the Korean tour. Mr. Mori 
and also missed the cut by one. But still a wonderful experience, Tom. Come and play an Open Championship on a testing links course. You'll go away with some serious memories. It's a pretty good throw there. Laurie Cantor struggling here. This for a par at the 16th. So it's going to be a drop shot at the 14th, a drop shot at the 16th, and he falls back to even par for the championship. So he can't afford to make uh, a couple of mistakes coming home. Rosda with the safe, smart tee shot. Just wanting two putts. If you had stood behind this green in the practice rounds and every guy that walked off said, would you take four pars here? They would have emptied their bank account for it. Just a <laughs> it's the most dangerous little par three you'll ever see. From the moment we arrived on property earlier this week, everyone was having their first look at 17. It was been the, the talk of the players and caddies. This is that big swing putt from left to right. Seam is the only one that's hit it high enough to have a chance to make it. Same thing as everyone besides Marcel Seam coming up on the low side. And most of them, Tony, low side and short, like bland. Yeah. The speed is fooling them yeah. as well as the line. Yeah, absolutely right. Seam. He's still got adrenaline pumping through his veins after that fabulous par on the previous hole. Yeah, that's it. Just Start step again. away, your refocus. Target. Solid swing. Take your target, solid swim. Good advice. You can hear the rain falling now. Not sure if the drops are getting bigger or closer together, maybe both. Nicely done. Just well controlled. Didn't try and cane it, just ease it down the fairway. You've done the hard work. Rosner now. To remain at one under par playing in the second to last group out there. We teed off today at five past four local time and now it's uh, five to nine, so a long day. Well, Brian Harmon has uh, led after two rounds, five times on the PGA Tour, but he's never gone on to uh, win an event when he's been leading through two days. And one of those was a major championship, the 2017 US Open at Erin Hills. Yeah, it looks Kepka won by four in the end. Harmon uh, hung on, led going into the final day, but was uh, outplayed on Sunday then. We did have some excitement earlier today at the 17th. A moment to remember for Travis Smythe. It's a tough, tricky hole. You've got to execute everything perfectly. I knew it was going to be um, on the green, which I was happy about. And then halfway through the flight, I was like, oh, this is getting good. And then as it was coming down, the, about to land, I was like, be good. Must have gone in pretty fast because the, the crowd just went crazy like straight away. Kind of upshooted in the wind and obviously landed perfect. I heard when I was in the scoring that a lady that can't break 100 actually had the first hole in one there. Yeah, so I'm the second person to ever have a hole in one, but first in a tournament. A moment I'll never forget.
Well, that was a moment to remember for Smythe, the man from Shell Harbour, Australia, and now Sally, Sammy Valamaki, trying to do exactly what was done earlier today. On the cat mark. Oh, oh, oh no. Now watch this. It's the wall of death. Down she goes. Back she comes. And that is desperate. Oh, it's on a down slope, too. It's, and that is a very deep bunker. He's going to struggle to get the elevation on that shot with the lip and his, you know, downswing, potentially. Oh. Needed two parts to be around for the weekend. It's going to be a tough one. Two under for the day. Played so well. Just needed to find the, the green from 132 yards. Laurie Cantor. He can't afford a mistake here, but this one looks like it's going to find the green. Oh, watch out. Don't spin too much. And it's going to be gathered up into the front bunker. Hmm. And it's not visible from now. Well, because I think that the sand has Ooh. dampened with the rain. It's yep. probably stayed close mm. to the face. Yeah. That's not even in view with our bunker cam, which is in the face. Yeah, yesterday, even when it wasn't raked up, they were still rolling back down into view for that camera. So that's going to be pretty tricky for Laurie Cantor. He's at level par, but uh, a mistake here, and the pressure will be on. You can't afford to uh, hit a loose one at the 18th, because we know the out of bounds creeps in there. Plenty of players on this first page of the leaderboard with dreams of lifting the claret jug on Sunday. We couldn't. Very strange. Oh, I just got sand in my eye. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Amazing cameras in many of these bunkers. 82 bunkers here at uh, Royal Liverpool. And some of these cameras are so well placed. It's just amazing stuff. You know, hats off and job well done to all of our camera men and women and all that. And uh, the operators of these cameras that are inside the wall of these riveted face bunkers. Just incredible stuff. Well, that was... Yeah, Valamaki played a nice one out of the bunker there. That was a fantastic bunker shot. He was up the back of the bunker on the down slope. You've got to stand in that bunker just to see how high the green is above you. I mean, it's 15 feet above you. Let's have another look at this. I mean, this is just horrendous. Please, just let me get this on the green. Better than that. To within maybe 12 or 15 feet. That's a great shot. We're watching the players come through the 17th today. I mean, we've seen some mistakes, but on the other hand, we've seen some beautiful, beautiful golf shots um, from very, very difficult spots. Well, we saw him hit it in the fairway. Iron for his second shot, albeit a driving iron. Let's change direction a little bit. A little bit more helping in from the right here. Earlier in the day, it was helping in from the left. Just trying to nudge it down the fairway. Uh, probably subconsciously got a little nervous of that cop and the white line out of bounds on top. Well, that's not a bad leave, not a bad leave. Got an angle in, just wedge it in there, 10 or 15 feet short of the hole, pop it in, 
head off for a nice dinner. Back over to the 17th. Should be Yannick Paul. Once again, same thing coming up short. And this is a new hole. And you just wonder, Tony, is this green just a little bit different texture than the more mature greens? That these guys are all seeming to come up short. It could well be. Rosner, he's out with a big stick. He's got birdie or eagle in mind. Doesn't tend to back off from very much, does Antoine Rosner. in the fairway, not in the bunker. The crowd around the 17th have been boisterous all week, which is great to hear, and Valamaki making that one for par. And they love to see it. I want to tell you what, if you were betting on that bunker shot up and down, oh. not many would have been saying, okay, I'll give... You would have been getting big odds on mm. getting up and down in two. We've had three sixes there and a bunch of fives, and I'll guarantee you most of them came from that right-hand bunker. What a par. And you could see he knew how much that meant because he's on the cut line at three over par. Well, that makes 18 so much easier because now you can work your way down there. Nudge, nudge on five, and you're playing tomorrow. You're not desperate for the birdie. For a couple hours, we were talking about the cut line possibly going to four. No way. It's it's a solid three. There's 76 players at three over or better. So it's, that's the number. Now, pop up for Laurie Cantor. Remember, he was in the bunker short. And that one nicely read. We'll turn on that from right to left. So he stays at level par. Those were two of the finest threes you'll see out of those bunkers this week. Wow. Good stuff. So as we take a look at the first page of the leaderboard, it is Brian Harmon, the man out in front with a five-shot lead. The 36-year-old, born in Savannah, Georgia, played in the Walker Cup. He was a young man back in 2005 of course Royal Liverpool uh, so where the precursor to the Walker Cup took place let's take a look at some highlights of Brian Harmon's day and we'll start with this birdie at the second and he was on a tear early in the round Tony on fire at the third another one boom back to back birdies and he was only getting started. The very next hole. Thank you. The hole's the size of a bucket. And this you need to have a few magic moments if you're going to lift the claret jug come the end of the week. That was a great way to save. Two brilliant shots at 18. This for Eagle to shoot 65 and post 10 under par. What a 36 holes it has been for the two-time winner. The 10th round of 65 in the open at Royal Liverpool. It was done four times back in 2006 and five times in 2014. And he sits proudly atop those iconic leaderboards on the 18th hole. And who will be there come Sunday night? Those are the only leaderboards that should ever be non-electronic in all of golf here on the 18th. 
It used to be the public schools from around the UK. Uh, op boys from those schools operated them, boys and girls. Soft, soft. Oh, has he soft. got a flyer? Well, if it was, it <laughs> worked out rather well. Nicely done, Marcel Sim. Beautifully done. I think before the rains came, that probably would have run well past the hole, but uh, the rains helped that one. Good, good work. I work is doing it. This bit's up to you. Big Stevie. He's as pleased as punch. It's quite special coming to the Open with, usually with Dad or, or your mom. I came with my father 30 years ago for the first time in 1993. And you spend all day here, and it's in your mind forever. I remember seeing Frank Novello top one up the 18th, and I've never let him forget it. I'm not sure have any With the look on those kids' faces, kids, let's go home. Let's, Mom's waiting for us. To, no, Dad. We came to watch golf, and they're enjoying every second of it. Maybe we'll be watching them in 20 years' time around Royal Liverpool. Who knows? So a few groups left to finish up. Jim Rowe, 29-year-old from Durban, making his debut in the Open, qualified through Royal Sink Ports. And it's a tough day today for the three-time winner on the Sunshine Tour. But, uh, he will certainly remember his time here. Dad's in the middle of the kids, just about staying dry. <laughs> Precious moments, aren't they? For the kids and for dad. And Tiger Christiansen, the amateur, is going to finish at nine over par. Named in honor of Tiger Woods and also uh, in honor of a, a boxer who was friends with his father who had a ring name of Tiger. It's a pity. It'll be a par, and you know what? 74 is not a score to be ashamed of today. Well done, young man. That is some head of hair, isn't it? I'm very jealous. I tell you, it's good hair in this group. <laughs> Getting ready. For the final fist pump of the day for Marcel. And the 43 year old with five wins on the GP World Tour will be around for the weekend. A birdie to finish. He's in at level par. He's 10 shots back. But as you were saying, Jay, earlier, if you take five under par, that second place finish, he's only five behind. He's certainly in it. Wasner hasn't had the best of days. He's in it as well. Uphill lie out of the rough. Dangerous shot. Waiting for the green to clear. Yeah, wet ball out of the wet grass. The only thing you don't want is to, for it to slide across the face and head out right. That is just spot on. Couldn't have run up there and placed it better by hand. see his golf balls underneath those metal barriers that have become uh, the norm on the closing hole at the yeah. open and it does mean that and then I can go kind of further. it does mean that there will be a ruling you can bring the golf ball four club lengths inside if you're outside of the the railings 
it actually can be a hindrance because if you're a club or two outside, you can, um, you can it's a better lie. Now, Tom, I know you've come to the dark side and you're an American now, but that's not metal fencing, that's chestnut fencing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Where, where's your heritage gone? I didn't know that. I also may have, um, I also may have said the wrong ruling. It's if you're within four club things. You can't was, bring it I in. I was going to let you slide you know, on that part. No, you can't part. let me slide. You've got to correct me. If, it's if, if you're within four club lengths on the outside, you yeah, can bring it cool. inside. That's it. Mark Littley. Chief anyway, yes. World yes. Tour yeah. referee. Yeah. Officiating. Yeah. You can't go, if that's your nearest point, you can't get any nearer than that, than that. So you have to go there, otherwise that then is not your nearest point. Yeah. Well, two groups to finish, both on the 18th. And you're on the tee at 13 minutes past okay. nine on Friday evening. You just want to get in. Well, it looks like the ball is back in play for Richard Bland. It's actually not too bad there. Nice and still. Thank you. Richard Bland was a little concerned, we understand, with the, there being enough light to finish the round earlier on, a couple of holes later. I tell you what, maybe he's a bit spoiled by these live golf events. Oh, I'll tell you what. There was no way the RNA were going to agree to that. They want to get this done. This also is, it has a bit of danger in it. Modern metal woods don't have much grooving on the face, and the ball can slip off there. Oh, that was the anti-slip swing. I sense another ruling. Luckily, Mark Linton has not gone very far away. Oh, it hit it hit it, the grandstand and bounced out, it looks like. No, it bounced oh, back. Oh, no, it bounced back. Now, another ruling. Well, back to the tee for Yannick Paul, who's six over par, so he needs something really special here. What you Americans call it a double legal, don't they? Albatross, sir, uh, always. Okay. All right, you haven't lost all your heritage. Well, it looks pretty good. Don't know where it's gone, but it looks pretty good to us. Yeah, the damage was done yesterday for him. Six over, and then opened up with a double bogey today, but he's fought his way back to even par. Nice gritty performance. It's an important one here. Three over par, right on the cut line. Has to hit a good drive. It's a big gamble right here. Needing a par going with the driver. Four left is better than four right. If it's four right, it's three. Off the tee. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, he went at that so hard. After getting making that miraculous par to be three over, I might have expected something a little bit more cautious. Rosner now. He's thinking birdie. get a little more in the mix for the weekend. Up. Oh. Oh, no. Like. Oh. Thought that was just going to grab a little bit, didn't he, on the second bounce? Yeah. Could have been water on the ball and the face, and it could have been a little skidder on the green as well. Hard to predict that. Now back to the tee. Laurie Cantor at level pass, so inside the cut by three shots. 
awful well then. It's the final tee shot of the final group here in the second round on the 18th. So, Antoine Rosner walking down onto the green. And we've seen Brian Harmon's highlights. Well, let's take a look at the man who is going to try and close the gap over the weekend, Tommy Fleetwood. This was at the par three six, needing something out of that bunker. Uh, looked like he might struggle to get out of there. Unfortunately, he missed the par putt, so it was a bogey four at the sixth. This was a long birdie effort at the 10th. Just two putts, please. Just please let me have two putts. No, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'll take one. Oh, what a putt that was. Uh, he dropped a shot a couple of holes later, but then birdied the 14th. At the par 5, 15th, his third. Just a low chip and run and beautiful touch. So hard to judge the pace correctly. That led to a birdie. This was his fourth shot at the 16th. So it would be a bogey there, but it was a, in the end a good up and down for his bogey. And he needed to work hard to save par at 17. Can you imagine the following he has tomorrow? They love him. And this for the par at 18. Massive cheers. Jubilation from his fans. There's a man from Southport, just 20 miles north of here. And after his round we got uh, the thoughts of tommy fleetwood he was speaking to rishi Fassad. tommy different day obviously very different conditions and a different score for you but how much satisfaction do you get in holding your position at five under yeah for sure i think especially um you know there was different things that i was happy with the, the way that i played for 10 11 12 13 14 holes played so well um so I was really happy with the way that I had controlled my golf ball and the way I played. And then um, towards the end, the way that I sort of had to stick in and grind out the last few holes, um, just had to, you know, use different skills in the end. But um, both of those were as pleasing as each other. And in the end, yeah, of course, you always want um, a couple more out your round. But I think um, level part today, it was tough. It was a tougher day than yesterday, it felt. Um, and you're following up a good round. So overall, it felt, felt good. Uh, on a poignant day for you, how nice was it to walk around this golf course with the support being one of the, the fans' favourite? Um, yeah, they've been they've been the most amazing uh, bunch. The fans, honestly, they really have. Uh, I was just saying that the, the the sort of the excitement of playing an open at home and and the unique opportunity it is to um, play this tournament so close to home. Um, you, you look forward to it, and then you, the people have just over delivered for me. They've been so they've been so great uh, to me. The support has been ridiculous and um it's it's honestly it's a joy to play in front of them all and um i've loved every minute so far for the first two days uh, and the final thing you know it is a very precarious position to be in wherever you are in the leaderboard because of what's to come over the next couple of days we're all wondering what the weather's going to do to everyone how do you set yourself up for the next two days uh yeah just um keep doing the same things that i've been doing uh you know stay consistent in um my practice in my warm-ups try and stay in the present out on the golf course and we'll, and we'll see um i've enjoyed playing so far i really have um and there's a long way to go in the tournament we're halfway there now um and uh you know there's well yeah there's another half to go and um at, the, at this point i couldn't ask for more from where i am obviously there's one golfer in the world that is in a better position than me uh, this week but um if you'd have given me this at the start of thursday i'd have taken it and i'm excited to see what happens over the weekend and so are we. Best of luck this weekend, Tom. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks. 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 Best of luck. There are a lot of people here excited to see what will happen over the weekend. Tommy Fleet will, will begin the third round here, five behind Brian Harmon at the top of the leaderboard. Rosner now for a birdie at 18. 
like most from that position, missing on the right. Everything comes off that slope of the back of the bunker. It's like a wicked lie for Lori Cantor here, just left of the bunker. As thick as anywhere I've seen. It is pretty uh, dreary out there, you have to say. But you, you want to get in, you want to finish. Cantor now the second. Get in there, you're just gripping it as tightly as you can with those last three fingers of your left hand. Just hold on to it. Now, Rosner. This is the post at one under par. Hey. Round of 74 today. A few too many bogeys on the card. Uh, but inside the, uh, the red numbers, tied for 11th one under. Yeah. Well, Valamaki was fortunate to avoid the bunkers, but it oh, seems as though he's in a pretty poor lie there because he switched back to a wedge. Well, all he has to do is push it up the fairway, maybe 100, 120 yards. He can comfortably get to the green, even attack the hole. Absolute must to get it <laughs> in the fairway. Not too bad. If you weren't going to hit in the fairway, that first cut on the left side is way better than the first cut on the right side. So Richard Brown still has a part for a birdie. He's uh, had an adventure on this 18th hole. And just running out of pace with a bit of moisture on the green. So it's going to be a five for Richard Bland and a very good couple of days to the man who is uh, over the age of... 49. Now back down the fairway, Yannick Paul. This one's going to go in. the green after this tee shot. Paul with an iron. Good shot. Not good enough. And he won't be here for the weekend, but just want to finish the day off nicely. Well, with the rain coming down, this final three ball making their way down the final hole here on Friday at the 151st Open. Well, Rory McIlroy will be a story this weekend. He's nine shots back after a round of 70 on day two. You know, I wanted to go out and shoot something in the 60s and get myself right back into it. But, you know, I think anything under par today was a, was a pretty good score. I think if, you know, if Brian stays at a 10 under par, I think he's going to have a really good chance of, of winning this thing. You know, pretty happy with my two days play, and obviously Brian's up there at 10 under par, but, um, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm out of it by, by any stretch, and, you know, another good couple of days, and, you know, hopefully I'll be in the mix. And McElroy would love to go back-to-back -back after that Genesis Scottish Open victory last week. Wow, would that be exciting if McElroy put himself in the hunt here on Sunday. It's pretty dark right now. The, our camera lenses open up to give it more exposure. Grass is wet. 
Just the parry quiet. Yeah. With the wet grass ball sitting down, Tony, Ooh, this is not, not easy to get within 30, 40 feet of the hole. No, not a guarantee at all, is it? Really, I think I'd be trying to leave this 15 feet short of the hole. Take my chances from there. Or maybe hit it to 15 inches. That'll do. Wow. <laughs> what a brilliant shot. It's. He thinks it might have gone in because it's so dark out there. He can't quite see. He might be a bit disappointed, but he'll be fine. He's going to make the weekend. He's going to be a tap in birdie. What a great up and down at 17 when there, he had no business getting up and down from the lie he had in the bunker. And birding the 18th hole, this is great stuff. Well, that just tells you how dark it really is. You know, he's, he's 100 yards away and can't see the ball on the green. Laurie Cantor with his third. That's good for it to go. Yeah, it's going to be fine. Nice shot. <laughs> can't wait to see his face look he's not going to be disappointed but when he, when he oh i think he's been told a <laughs> little bit premature <laughs> with the celebrations but you know what that shot was still worth a great celebration look at this this was not that easy. You see how much water comes off the ball on the grass? Snapping the fingers. Get down, get down, get down. Is it in? Is it in? Yes, it is. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, man. You've got to have a laugh sometimes. Great shot, and these guys have outlasted the rain, the dark, at the end of a long day. Brilliant. Well, the Danes left, the Finns are still out there. <laughs> oh, that was funny, wasn't it? <laughs> and he saw the funny side of it too when he realized. Start the day off with a chuckle and end the day off with a chuckle. Life is great. So just a few more shots to go here on the second day. And the light really fading for Yannick Paul. He's got an eagle putt and he's not going to make the cut. But still going to go through the motions here as you would expect from a top class professional. At this point, not even the cameras can make it look like normal daylight. It is really dark out there. Young eyes will help, Jay. You know, it was funny, Tony. I know you struggled to see slopes. Mm. I struggled and when it got dusk. I mm. couldn't see any slopes, uh, you know, when the light started mm. to fade. I was always one of the first ones to say, okay, let's call it off. And also very hard to, your depth perception goes, doesn't it, completely. So pace-wise, just nestle it up close. The way he plays, we'll be back at the 152nd Open Championship next year and have another go. Yannick Paul, a man who is uh, on the verge of making the European Ryder Cup team, fourth in the European point standing, so... We may so may well see him just outside of Rome in a couple of months' time. Now, Larry Cantor's got a birdie putt here. This will be his third birdie of the day. Came through the qualifier at Royal Porth Call, which will host the Senior Open next week. Down in South Wales. Yeah! Oh, nicely done. So a birdie to finish in a round of 70. 
playing in his fourth Open Championship. And now Yannick Paul to finish up. Got off to a tough start with a six at the first. Added two birdies since then. This would be, yeah, for his third birdie since that, uh, well, his third birdie of the day. And uh, to battle back somewhat from a tough start, but not enough to make it in for the weekend after struggles on day one. And now Valamaki. <laughs> what was a wonderful third shot to get in at two over par. And he will be here for the weekend in his debut in the Open Championship. And a few folks giving him a great reception. So we'll see how it plays out for the weekend here at Royal Liverpool. In the 12 previous Opens played at Royal Liverpool, the second round leader or co-leader has gone on to win six times, including Tiger Woods in 2006 and Rory McIlroy in 2014. McIlroy, one of those players who will uh, try to make a move on Saturday as we take a look at that leaderboard, which uh, lights up in the gloomy Friday evening with Harmon out in front. We do hope that you can join us tomorrow for round three of the Open.